industries in the Netherlands, and especially Georgia, where President, the Vice President, Canceled a trip to Georgia this morning after the suicide bomb assassination of that country's president by separatist rebels from the Abkhazia region. Continued fighting in the Abkhazia and South Ossetia regions has hindered Georgia's hopes of integration into Western institutions. Industry baron Kambain Nikolad seized power today in a bloodless coup, installing himself in the presidential palace behind a wall of political and military support. The charismatic billionaire plans on holding elections within a matter of days to affirm his seat of power and promises a pristine and profitable relationship with America and the West. Bringing high-speed fiber optic connectivity to areas of Eastern Europe that less than a decade past didn't have telephones. The technological leap is due largely to the efforts of rising information industries in the Netherlands and especially Georgia, where President the vice president called his visit to Georgia an honor and called Georgian president Kambain Nikolads a man with his eyes on the future. CIA training farm. Prove that you are the right man for the job. As Agent Sam Fisher, you have been recruited to spearhead the operational arm of the National Security Agency's third echelon initiative. Before being sent into the field, you must demonstrate that you possess the skills to undertake dangerous and covert solo missions. Sam Fisher. I can't believe you beat me here. I'd like to be early. Hello, Colonel. You can use my name. The room's safe. Lambert. Good to see you again. I trust NSA orientation is going well? Well enough. Everybody's been real coy about what exactly I'm allowed to know. It's the nature of the agency. We don't let any one person know everything, which means we've all got to work together. Even though I'll be out there alone. You'll be transmitting to us in more ways than you can imagine and we'll be online through your earpiece and opsat. And that's how we're handling training. Yep. Sorry to make you run the course. I know you've been taking care of yourself. I haven't been in the field in years. Sure. But tradecraft is something you don't forget. It's like riding a bike. Or wearing high heels. <laughs> be careful, Fisher. Everything we say is being monitored. You know how nervous the brass is about exercising the fifth freedom. I'll be good. Be better than good. Third Echelon is a brand new initiative. The role aggressive intelligence operations will play in NSA's future will depend largely on your performance. I'll see you on the far side of the course. All right, Sam, let's get started. Can you hear me clearly? Hi there. Good. That means the implanted speaker is working correctly. Now, the technicians here want to calibrate your equipment. Can you turn to the red emergency light on the wall to your left? Great. Now the one on your right. Okay, same thing for pitch. Look for another light up in the rafters on the ceiling. Excellent. Now look for one on the ground in front of you. All right, Fisher, we'll get through this as quickly as possible. We'll start simple. Climb up onto that ledge, over that pool. Let you do your thing here. You're looking at your basic assault course. I'll chime back in once you've passed it. All right, ladies and gents, it's so good to be back in Sam Fisher's shoes. I have missed it. So I don't really need to talk about this training level. It's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to be able to easily figure it out. One thing I do got to tell you is that it does take a little bit of time to get used to the controls. This is a 2002 game, so obviously modern controls are somewhat implemented, and you still got a little bit of that old school, so it can take you some time to get used to it, but it's not too difficult. What are my expectations for this walkthrough? How are we going to make it different than the previous ones? So in the previous ones, I actually took out some soldiers that were in my way. This time, we are not going to do that. If there is a legitimate way to get around a soldier, we will find it. 
And you're going to see that firsthand in the first mission that we do, which uh, will be the next video. So I am just really, really excited for the Splinter Cell series. You know, all the talk that's been coming out lately and... Who knows what's going to happen? It's only speculation at this point, but you know it's being made. You know it's happening, and I'm very, very excited for it. I know a lot of you actually subscribe to the channel because of the Splinter Cell series, so hopefully I've been able to bring a few people back to kind of see uh, anything that's maybe have changed since the X, uh, original Xbox version. I'm actually playing the Xbox One X enhanced version in 4K. I've created a little bit of a border around the sides just to make it uh, so it's not, you know, two black screens on the sides. We don't want that, but please let me know if it is a little bit annoying. I can change it in any way because I want to make sure you guys get the best enjoyable experience that I can offer you. So one thing I wanted to always mention about the Splinter Cell series is this was one of those games where stealth was directly in your fingertips. This was before Metal Gear Solid 3 came out. Once Metal Gear Solid 3 came out, that changed, in my opinion, the way stealth was done in an open environment. But this is still, to date, one of the best stealth infiltration games on a linear basis, right? The Metal Gear Solid series kind of went more open world. Well, this is uh, more linear. So the controls here can be, like I said, a little bit Good job, difficult Bishop. to get used to, but you should you be able to. Now, since it is the original Splinter Cell, that means some of the moves that you're used to seeing, like if you're a fan of Chaos Theory or something like that, you're not going to be able to have. You can't take out uh, lights with your, what is it, OCP. Uh, as you can see, the jump controls can be a little weird to get used to, depending on where you're standing in front of the door. Uh, but I just want to thank you guys uh, for supporting the video. I've got new um, goals for Patreon, so I definitely want to make sure to get that out there. And on the end, end of every video, uh, Patreons are going to be able to shine as I'm going to show off uh, one of the tiers for Patreon from now on in all my videos. So hopefully you guys enjoy that, and let's continue on with the video. You're moving on into covert ops. The objective is to sneak through the area without being detected. We've got live bodies in there. Some of the top CIA instructors have kindly volunteered to be your victims. Now we actually get to get into the nit and gritty of the stealth gameplay. So you can actually open doors stealthily. Uh, clearly in the later Splinter Cells, it's better implemented. But here it's just pretty much just kind of a look around to see if you hear any noise. Because you really can't open the door slowly. It just opens a little bit and then it moves forward. The next door is locked, Sam. You'll need to use your lock picks to get through it. As you can see, I'm actually playing on the Xbox, so therefore you see the original Xbox Duke controller, which is so awesome. You've got the white and the black buttons on the bottom. Those represent LB and RB, so don't be confused by that. Uh, all it is is your shoulder buttons from now on, so it shouldn't be too difficult uh, for you to be able to understand. Now again, this game, you can use distractions in this game, but I will try not to use as many as, uh, as I can. This next door is keypad locked. The man guarding the door has the code to open it, but he's been instructed not to cooperate. Convince him otherwise. There will be a few instances where I will have to knock out enemies, but only those that are directly in my way and have to be taken out. Like, there's no other option. And I will make sure that I will go hours and hours until I can find out if there actually is an option or not. Hi there. Hi. You're not going easy on me, are you? <sighs> Not so tight, that hurts. Sorry about that. What's the door code? 28469. It was a pleasure working with you. Likewise. You gotta love that sound. The sound of knocking out, it's great. But we'll try to keep it to a minimum. It is gonna be tough, and we always like to create a challenge on this channel, so I will continue to do that until my dying day. Because video games do not cause people to hurt other people. This next door is retinal scanner locked. These things are cheap and near impossible to hack. Fortunately, it's just a matter of getting the right eyes to the scanner. Usually an officer. The gentleman ahead is registered for the scanner. Convince him to open the door for you. 
Now in the later games, it gets a little bit better, but as of right now, you have to get directly behind a guy and then press A once it shows up. Now, this game is very hard when it comes to detection. I know you might think everything that you actually see me pull off looks easy, but I assure you it is not. You will go a long time wondering why am I being seen, why am I being heard, I'm moving slow or whatever, but the game on the hard difficulty can actually be a really, really good challenge. So I implore you, always make sure that you're making the proper decisions and choices when you run, when you walk, when you stealth, because it really does mean something. Let's work on stealth. Your gun should always be a last resort. Invisibility is your best weapon. You've got a network of photocells on your outfit connected to a visibility meter on your offset. If the meter's at four, you're lit up like a Dutch brothel. At zero, you're a ghost's shadow. One thing to note about weapons here is in the later games, I believe in uh, Pandora Tomorrow's when they add it, you can actually have a laser sight, which makes it a little bit easier to shoot. But here, the main thing you want to do is you never want to shoot when you're moving because your accuracy is going to be very low. Notice how the reticle gets smaller. So always wait to fire until that reticle is at its smallest. And even then, sometimes the bullet will not actually go where you want. So it can take a little bit of time to get used to, but I assure you, it's just the mechanics of being an older game. As you can see, even though you might be right on it, take your time, and then hopefully you will be able to. And of course, the amazing night vision. Still, to this day, one of the best night visions in a video game. I love the way it looks. I know it's not really realistic. Real night vision is actually more greenish, uh, more of a lighter greenish, I guess, or I don't know how you would say darker or lighter, but it just it doesn't look exactly the same, but this allows you to be able to see better. Are more fragile, and all you'll need to do to get past them is shoot them. Now, there are some cameras that you will not be able to shoot, and you can tell by the way that they're kind of made. So each camera will be different. We will be taking some cameras out, and we will be trying to just bypass some cameras. So I'll try to have a mixture of that. My goal also is to try not to take any damage. I, I did that on my last playthrough, but there was one instance in the game that I actually took damage and didn't realize it. So I'm going to even try to focus harder, try not to take damage, but it's not a guarantee that I'm going to do this playthrough without taking any damage. But I am going to give it a shot, as sometimes when you fall from a distance or smoke gets in you you might still take some damage sometimes the only way to pass a camera will be to stick to existing shadows and time your move. Shadow is a huge thing in this game, so definitely use it to your advantage. Know where your shadows are. Always look at your meter on the right side, and you Knock should be able to the be fine. In the and hide his body before the patrolling guard finds it. Now, I believe in some of the next Splinter Cell games, you're actually able to go up, knock someone out, immediately grab their body without them falling. But you can just do this. You can just grab them, take them back, and then put them in a corner, and then knock them out instead of having to actually pick them up. But everything is context sensitive. So once you knock someone out, you have to uh, bend down or crouch and then actually hit the A button once it appears to okay, knock them out. Sure. Let's bring or in pick them up. Guard to evaluate your work. Now, I will not be talking during cutscenes and all that kind of stuff, but this is the training mission, so I probably might talk a little bit over someone or whatnot. Now, for being 2002, the AI is actually pretty darn good, and you're going to see that in... Well, you're not really going to see how good the AI can be. It's actually going to look like the AI is pretty bad when you actually play it really stealthy. But maybe if some people want, I can do a video showing off of how actually good the AI can be, even hearing the slightest noise or something like that. But you're usually not going to see it in this video. Remember that discretion is critical to our operations. Covering up the evidence of your passing through will go a long way towards proving our usefulness in the field. I think it's been about six years since my previous Splinter Cell walkthrough of this game. I just can't believe how long it's been, but I am so glad again to be back. Thank you, everybody, for motivating me. The next hallway is the same idea, but for sound. I'll be monitoring a few hidden mics. Also, if anyone would like a no commentary playthrough of this, if you would like to have the game without my commentary over the top of it, let me know and I'll be more than happy to um, uh, make the videos no commentary as well and have uh, 
kind of like maybe two playthroughs up. But I want to gauge the interest in that to see if you guys actually want that or not. A lot of people like the commentary uh, to explain certain situations of when you're going through the game. Other people just want the the game itself. So let me know if you guys want a separate walkthrough for no Have commentary. You started yet? Fisher, holy Christmas, you're at the end. Phenomenal work. Let's move on. That's going to be it as far as me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this first video. Please give it a like, thumbs up, all that great stuff. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, also follow me on Facebook where I live stream every single day as of right now. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Love you all. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. That's got to be him. Yep. Sam Fisher. Let me introduce you to Vernon Wilkes Jr. Hello. Hey. I've heard crazy things about your work. I hope you don't mind. I told him some of your stories from Kuwait. We're all friends here. Right on. Junior Wilkes is a longtime NSA employee. He'll be your wheels, wings, and weapons. He coordinates transportation and equipment. Great. For sure. Man, you must be itching to get back out in the field, huh? It's all I'm good at. Well, it's all we need. Welcome to the NSA. I'm sure things are going to come together famously. Third Echelon is a brand new initiative, and we're going to have a lot to prove. Right. The two of you will be Third Echelon's first team on the ground. Be ready for it, and do us proud. Welcome to the NSA. Locate CIA agents Blaustein and Madison. Agent Allison and Madison work covertly in the Georgia Politician Arena for two years, securing a role under President Nikolai's cabinet after his coup d'etat. She vanished on October 3rd. October 7th, Special Agent Robert Blaustein was sent in to find her. He vanished on October 11th. Fisher, the sun's down. Time to go to work. Finding Agent Blaustein's our first priority. To locate him through a local NSA contact. I'm on my way. And stay off the streets. There's a heavy cop presence in this town. We don't have Washington's backing if this turns into an incident. Details on your offset. Welcome back, ladies and gents. I'm your host, Industry 01. And this is the second mission in Splinter Cell 1. This is, again, the Xbox One X enhanced version in 4K. Let me know if the sides look a little bit better. Hopefully they're not as bad. Sam, Grim's daughter here. I say jump. You should get through this fine. There's a room directly across the hall. Go there now. Sam, sorry about that. Get back into the hall and go to the stairwell at the far end. Make it fast. You've only got a few seconds. As you can see, it's not too difficult to get through here. Um, you just gotta kind of get used to the controls a little bit. Jesus, but that was close. Take a left just ahead and cut through the room. You'll find a stairwell on the opposite corner. Take it to the top floor. Once we get upstairs, we're gonna need to interrogate a guy up there. He's gonna tell us exactly what's been going on in the area. The contact is in this room. Let's hope to God he's still alive. Gergenitze. Yeah. I'm in this city. I'm gonna get you out of here. Don't bother. I'm as good as dead. We're looking for Blaustein and Madison. Yeah. Madison was deep into Nicolazzi's cabinet. She was onto something big. Blaustein must have figured it out. How do I find him? Blaustein's black box. Tracking the relay for his subdermals. It's stashed in his safe house just east of Moravia Square. Lambert. Do we have resources to evac this guy? I said don't bother. Whatever Madison found, it's big. She kept saying proof would mean war. I think Nicolaz wanted... Oh. You're gonna say checked out. Leave the corpse for the fire. He has to explain to his family. You've got a safe exit on the west side of the room. Take it. Make sure you shoot out this glass panel. It's going to clear the smoke, which will actually prevent you from taking damage as long as you shoot out the glass panel. And then we're going to move on to the next section, where it can get uh, a little bit more tougher as we now have enemies that we need to bypass civilians as well, and they can actually uh, see you very easily, so it can be kind of tricky. That was pretty tight. Still breathing? Doing my best. Good. Blaustein's black box is your next objective. He's 
running standard agency tradecraft, you'll find the box behind a big bookshelf or wall panel. Again, I want to thank all the patrons out there that make it possible for me to be able to make these videos. So if you haven't already, please become a patron as it completely helps us to be able to continue to do what we love to do. And since we have new Patreon goals on there, so you can check that out in the description below. You can just bypass this guy. We're going to wait here by the window. Even though you do not see him, there is a guy heading this way right now. It just took too long to head over the rail before we were actually able to see him. So time it right and open the window as well as go through the door as soon as he is coming through. Controls can make it a little bit weird. Uh, when you're going through a window like that, sometimes you can just jump and then make noise. So uh, checkpoints are very, very generous in this game. So you will not have to worry too much about restarting checkpoints and whatnot. But this is the old linear system of video games. So you're going to get checkpoints like every five minutes. Make sure you look at the code. Dang. What's the news? Blaustein's heart stopped beating 43 hours ago. Any reason the CIA wouldn't know about this? Nope. Nicer than the share. The subdermal went offline six hours after he died. Last active position was in a police station a few blocks away. Check your ops at. During this time, if you missed any jump, if you just jumped randomly, if something didn't work, if you did not land right there softly, then you will have alerted the guards. And we want to go with no alerts unless we actually use a distraction method to get by them. At least that is the goal for this walkthrough. The only time you're ever going to hear any weird noises is because I have distracted someone in order to be able to get by them without uh, having to take them out, which you're going to see up ahead. Uh, most playthroughs you're probably going to watch on this game, Fisher, they're not going to do that. I'm rescinding my street level restriction. I've been monitoring the Tbilisi police radio. These cops are as crooked as a Virginia fence. They're not going to want any more international attention than we do. Every road is open to you. Do what you gotta do to find those missing spooks. Lockpick system, pretty simple to use. What I used to do is actually something you don't have to do. All you have to do is just place your thumb pad in the correct position. You do not have to wiggle back and forth. Uh, I've always wiggled back and forth for years, and then I feel realized that you actually don't have to do that. This section can be the toughest. Uh, there are a lot of civilians in windows that you have to watch out for. Now, just because they see you doesn't mean they're alarmed or doesn't mean that you've been spotted or they're anything like that. We just want to be as professional as possible. So get down about halfway. If you're too high on the stairs, uh, he will actually jump up, grab the ledge, and then head over it, which will obviously get you caught. So make sure there's enough room for you to jump and you to grab it instead of actually jumping over it. There's a guy right above you right here in the window, so you still want to move slowly and you want to stay in the darkness. Here, once this guy turns around, you can move forward. There's a guy in the window up ahead, so stick to the left side and go up against the wall. He will not see you if you're up against the wall. A lot of people here... Might actually just go ahead and take the guy out on the stairs, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go hide in this corner over here on the right side while this other guy is still in the window. He's looking back and forth, so timing can be very, very crucial. And that's going to be the same thing up ahead in just a little bit. Uh, it's very tough to get by this one guy in the window. But we're dealing with a warehouse fire, so expect delay. So once he moves past you, what you're going to want to do is start to move forward, but you're going to want to wait. As long as you do not see the guy in this window, he will not see you from the other window, okay? You're good to go, which means he's walking back and forth at that time. There's also another guy in the windows that you see right there. So be careful. Timing might be a little different, but mostly it's always the same because when you enter an area, that's when the enemies actually spawn in. It's an old game. It's not like it is now where enemies are already pre-spawned. Here, you want to wait because this guy is going to be there. And there's also a guy that just came through the gate that opened it up. Once he turns, you're free to move. You can move as fast as you want just while crouched, but make sure you stay to the right side as there is a guy directly above us and there's a guy behind us. You can't see them because I'm all nice and stealth like. Make sure you pick up this distractible item right here unless you want to use your weapons but i will try to limit the amount of weapons that i use for distractions as i would rather use something that's in the environment we're going to head to the right to sneak this guy there's also a guy inside the window as well so you want to be careful make sure you don't see them or make sure that his back and the window is turned you can go ahead and move up get in this dark spot here and then we're going to set a distraction point now most time 
you're going to usually take this guy out because he goes into a position where he just stands there and you cannot get past him without jumping on top of him or knocking him out this way. So we try to make it a little bit more challenging. There is the music for a distraction. It doesn't mean we're caught or anything. It just means that we that a guard is investigating a noise. There is, this guy can be the most bothersome to worry about. So the only way you're going to be able to get by him without him being alarmed or spooked is you do it on his way back to the window that he's currently at. So you're going to watch him do like a little head bop here. Then you're going to see him start moving right. You do not want to go. If you go, he will see you because he looks directly into the window on the right side. So you want to wait about five seconds and then go. If you do so, he will be moving back to the other window and then you can get by without him making the noise of him seeing something which will alert guards uh, to your area, but it doesn't and it also means that a civilian saw someone uh, which I'm not sure if it's actually an alarm or not, but we want to you know, not have that happen, so well, that's the hardest section to me in this uh, level, so I hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll move on to the next one Code is already actually inside our opsat, so make sure you read it Go to your notes Here, you're also going to make sure you grab a distractible item because there is one guard that stands directly in front of you where the mission objective is, and he will not move Who unless you distract him. So you most people are going to take him out. I'm not going to do that. We're going to find a way around him. And that one took not really a lot of time, but he can do different things, and you'll see that as you come up. Here, just get up against the wall, and then we're going to move right alongside here. We're not going to be getting all of the data sticks and anything like that because I've done that before. We don't need to do that again. We just want to make this as challenging as we can. There's actually a guard in the room to the left, so don't make any noise. Don't be seen or that guard will come out of that room. It's a closet. I don't know why a guard is just waiting in the closet. This guy is actually a civilian. He's not a guard itself, but he's in here like kind of uh, working. So we want to go ahead and get in the back here and uh, identify the bodies. In order to do this, there's a camera. This camera cannot be shot. So wait till the camera is all the way on the left side, and then we're going to move to the right, and then we're going to get to an angle where he can't see us. Get as close as you can to the bodies first, because it's kind of tough uh, timing-wise. Wait till, again, it is on the right side. Move towards the bodies, and then we're going to head away. I've got Agents Blaustein and Madison. Rest in peace. Somebody cut out their subdermals. Where do we go from here? We follow the subdermals if we can. Mm -hmm. There's a security camera here. Good thinking. We'll track the subdermals from the video archives. The station surveillance room is on the top floor. This guy is going to be kind of doing a back and forth. He goes on the left, he sits in the middle, and then he goes to the right, and he goes to the middle, to the left, and he repeats that process. There is a can that we can grab. This was the closest can that I found uh, in order to use a distraction. I had to not find any other distractible items moving forward, so this is the one that you actually want to grab. It might be the only one in this level, I'm not sure. But once you see that it's clear, grab it, move slowly, obviously. If you move any fast at all, they will hear you and you will be caught. AI is actually pretty good in this game and I was very impressed. Even though I maybe not make it look like they're good, I assure you, the slightest movement, you will be caught. This section is pretty simple. We're going to move in, head all the way to the right side, and we're going to go around the back and into the left. There's a guy that kind of moves up forward. He's a civilian. You don't want to worry about him too much, but stay in the black areas. I'm trying not to use my night vision as much as I can because I want to show off how beautiful the game is instead of having this night vision look of the game. So hopefully you guys can still see and everything looks clear. Once you head up the stairs, this uh, section can be a little difficult. We're going to move all the way along to the back right. There's actually a guy being detained in the back door there. You will need a lockpick to break it if you wanted to, but there's no reason for the mission at hand. This is the reason we got the distractible item. Normally, you'd take this guy out and you would use the, uh, the computer. So this guy does different things, all right? Every single time, he's going to go for the can. He'll turn around, but then he'll move forward. Once he moves forward and out of the way, that is when you want to grab the computer. When you grab the computer, he'll do two different things. Either he'll head out of the, the room completely and you need to follow him and get to a safe spot or do what I do here. 
Great work, Fisher. We're scanning the videotapes now. There. That's our guy. We got him red-handed. Can you run his face through Echelon? Already on it. Hey, check it out. A license plate. 84KP214. Fantastic. Fisher, we got what we need. Rendezvous with Wilt, your work here is done. We'll get back to you once we've sifted this intel. I'll let somebody else. As I said, sometimes he'll actually move forward into the main room. But this time he decided not to. I don't know what triggers it, but it is different. So just be prepared for either situation. Get back in here and we're going to start uh, to exit the level. But wait. A true splinter cell leaves no stone unturned. Always pick up your objects. Don't leave any traces. We are a splinter cell. Move your way slowly through this next section. Pretty easy. We're going to head out the door that we actually passed downstairs. And that is going to be it, obviously, for mission number two, or considered the first mission, depending on how you look, uh, the training mission or not. Fairly simple mission. The missions from here on are going to get a little bit tougher. But this was the first time I've done it without taking anyone out, whereas before I actually took out the guy when I jumped on top of him. Because uh, I thought you had to. But no, you don't. You can figure it out. You can do it stealthy. You can do a no-KO run of this level. Mark a steady rise in Georgia's economy. Once central to the former Soviet Union's development and manufacture of weapons, Georgia has recently resurfaced as a potential player in the world military industry, with active contracts in Russia, Turkey, Germany, and even... has stated the need, especially in these times, for a reliable source of oil in the Middle East. Commerce Secretary Moore, on a visit to Azerbaijan this morning, noted the tiny nation's enormous potential for oil, calling on American investors to provide the necessary funds for tapping the reserves. In many ways, a leader from a bygone era. His beliefs are very firmly founded in Georgian orthodoxy. His political standings more in line with the early 20th century. Would you fault him, then, as a politician? No, no, not at all. Kumbe Nikolaitz is all politician. He's done wonders for the Georgian economy. A brilliant tactician. It's more a question of ethics. And ethically speaking? Well... Discover President Nikolaitz's secret. CIA agent Blaustein and Madison were killed for getting too close to information Georgian President Kambay Nikolaitz needed to protect. Yashchenko, Russian mercenary, is closely tied to Nikolaitz's secret. They have arranged to meet in the Ministry of Defense. It's go time. Echelon got a positive ID on your target from the morgue security cameras. A guy named Yashislav Dinko. How do I find him? By his license plate. And if he's not with his car? Then his driver will be. Grab him and make him talk. Don't be afraid to use force. Who? Me? Grim's daughter just pulled up the schematics on the Ministry. They've got a laser security grid online in the courtyard. So I stay out of the courtyard. And don't let them trigger any alarms at all. We still don't have any official approval from the Joint Chiefs for this operation. So one slip up and it's mission over. All right, ladies and gents, you heard Lambert. We need to get in, get out, obviously, without being seen. Easy peasy in this first beginning section, not too difficult. We're going to be heading downstairs. Now, since this is a no KO, this is a kind of getting in and getting out without being seen. We're going to bypass cameras. We're going to do all that stuff without having to shoot them. Now, there is one camera later that you do have to kind of deal with, but we're just going to shoot the light out because we don't, we're going to try to limit ourselves from actually shooting any cameras and I feel if you were to shoot a camera it doesn't make any sense because whoever is watching the other side of that camera obviously is going to know something is up and we don't want to do that so we're always going to go around cameras instead of shoot them if the game will allow us once we head into the garage we just need to uh, find the actual driver and then we are going to interrogate him first part of this level very very simple thanks to the patrons out there for making it possible for me to make these videos I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Think about becoming a patron as it helps me to keep making these videos and, and uh, allows me to be able to give back to you guys as well. So check out the link in the description. And of course, it is time to interrogate the driver so we can get some information. It is a mandatory knockout. What the hell? I'm going to ask you some questions. When I think you're lying, I'll do this. I... Who do you work for? 
Vyacheslav Grinkov. Tell me about him. He used to be Spetsnaz. Now he's mercenary. He works for President Nikolaj. Where do I find Rinko? He is meeting Mass in the elevator by the courtyard. Who's Mass? Philippe Mass, some computer guy. He has access to Nikolaj's office. What's this meeting about? I don't know. I swear, it's gotta be something bad if Nikolaj is willing to see Grinko face to face. I need you to understand that we never talked. I understand. Good. Convince me we never talked. If anybody finds out, Grinko will murder me. And you're frightened of Grinko. God, yes! I want to hear what Grinko and Mass talked about in that elevator. I'll need to deactivate the courtyard laser grid to get in position. Then do it. Once we are making our way back up, there is going to be a guard here. He's very easy to get around. All you have to do is throw a bottle. He's the guard that was upstairs patrolling the hallway before we came down into this area. So just place one outside in the middle. It doesn't matter. Most of the time, he's always going to do what you need him to do, which is he's going to head towards the bottle. He's immediately going to turn around and look in your direction. So make sure you do not go just yet. Wait till he turns back around. The camera is too far to see you. There's actually a camera right there to our left, but it will not see you when you get to this point. Please remember that there are still, if you have done it the way that I have, or maybe you've already taken out the cameras, there's still two cameras for us to worry about. So do not rush and always be aware of your surroundings. That's what makes these games so great. And that's what makes them more challenging is that for those of us that want that challenge, we need to realize that we have to slow our roll and we have to be aware of our surroundings. Every single time we get to an objective, every single time we get to a new room, study it, look at it, figure it out, and I'm telling you, it's so much more rewarding than if you just kind of rush in and shoot everybody. Here, we don't have distraction items, but we do have an amazing ability. It is called the jump. So all we're going to do is try to get close enough to wear him to hear us, but still remain undetectable, meaning that we're still in the, in the dark so he doesn't actually see us it can be a little tricky but you can still do it he's going to do the same thing as the previous guy which is immediately turn around to the other side as soon as he gets where he's going wait then he'll just randomly move off into another direction and at that point you're free to go shouldn't be able to hear anything and you should be able to make it to the next area without any problems there is a camera right above you here so make sure you immediately turn right and turn the light off in my opinion if someone's watching the camera and then the light goes off all of a sudden, hey, things happen. That's a lot better than all of a sudden someone shooting a camera. The noise of the fire and everything could still be heard. Makes sense to me. So we're going to go move on with the next section after we do this lock pick here, uh, which is actually going to be a little bit tougher, uh, but still having Maybe a lot of fun playing, playing the old Splinter Cell games. Let me know which one is your favorite, which Splinter Cell game is actually your favorite. Mine is still Chaos Theory. Uh, but I would love to know what yours is in the comments. I need a kernel down here. We're trying to get through a retinal scanner. I passed Colonel Kibashvili on my patrol. Want me to send him down? God, no. I hate this guy. We'll find somebody else with the land. As far as here goes, we're just going to go inside. We're immediately going to get into a crouch position before we enter the room. And we're going to wait for the security guard to come in and watch the magic. I thought the kitchen was closed. It's a special order for Colonel Kabayashvili. Ah, excellent. <laughs> May I? Please. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I just love the type of commentary that this game can actually provide. A lot of really, really funny moments. But we're going to go ahead and move on, and we're going to be throwing this. Wait till the guy actually leaves. If you want to, you can actually do all that beforehand. As soon as you enter the room, you can throw the bottle, and all three of the guards, or two of the cooks, and one of the guard will immediately do what I just did there. But I kind of like that little scene that plays out with him uh, doing that. But as soon as you exit, make sure you go around to the other side. He's going to come in. He's going to turn on this light. 
if you're quick enough, you can get out before he actually turns on the light and you're ready to go. Now I'm going to have a bloopers video or kind of a fun Easter egg kind of video here after the game, after I complete the game. And uh, there was one time, it's not in this one right here, but the time before this when I was recording, obviously, uh, the game glitched and the colonel stayed upstairs and he never came down. So I wanted to see if I could do it. And I actually figured out a way how to get the colonel uh, by going back upstairs without actually getting caught and then have to drag him all the way down without getting caught. It's actually pretty fun to watch. I wanted it to actually be in this video, but it just didn't look smooth um, because it was a glitch. So therefore I decided not to have it in there. You've got an incoming colonel, Fisher. Make the most of him. You'll need him conscious and cooperative if you want to unlock the retinal scanner sealing the door to the courtyard. That's detailed intelligence. Knowing everything is my job. Here, we're going to wait for the colonel to actually come down. This is what he scripted it's supposed to do. But as I said before, he didn't come down, so we actually had to go all the way upstairs, two floors, and find a way to drag him down without taking anyone else out. And it was a challenge, and it was so cool to actually pull it off. It just wasn't very smooth, obviously. So jump as soon as he gets down, and then we can actually take him out and not worry about anyone else. That is the whole point of this. There are two mandatory knockouts in this entire level. And those are the only guys we're going to mess with. So we're going to drag his body all the way over to the retinal scanner. There is no other way to do this. You have to take him, drag him before you knock him out, and then um, use the retinal scanner. Then you, you know, can knock him out, put him in a corner somewhere, and you're good to go. Uh, I did all of this during my live stream on Facebook. So if you have not, for any reason, come over... Uh, and checked out some of the live streams that we do. We learn our levels over there, so the way I can bring them to you guys here on YouTube. So support me over there if you want. If not, that's fine. The videos will be here for your enjoyment. It's time to head outside. You can pick up that satchel if you want. It's a medical first aid, not something we need. Glass elevators in motion. Make with the laser, Mike Fisher. It's mission critical that we hear what Grinko and Mass say before they reach the top. Abigail, why did you rip it out with pliers? We had some difficulty with Blostein's ship. You can see fibers of muscle tissue still attached. Nasty. Nasty. You're in the wrong line of work to avoid getting girl on your hands. Whatever Nikolaj does in Azerbaijan is his own conscience's burden. You are just a tool? You're a tool. I'm the technology. I'm the cleanup man. All the blood's on yours and Nikolaj's hands. I'm clean. And it is? It's what? Clean. Azerbaijan? Yeah, man. The operation's goddamn immaculate. Except for the files Nikolaj insists on keeping on his own machine. You need to talk to that... Sounds like we found the subdermals. I get nervous when the bad guys start making blood jokes. That conversation's going straight to the Joint Chiefs, and we're gonna need more. Nicolad's computer. You guessed it. Get inside his office and access that machine. Alarms aren't mission critical anymore. We're moving into Fifth Freedom territory. Once you're in her, you're into a new location, and we're gonna start the next area. Immediately there are going to be enemies here that are coming downstairs in the elevator. So we're just going to get to the room that's directly next to the elevator. And for those of you that don't know, yes, this is after the fact commentary because I wanted to focus to bring you guys the smoothest and best gameplay that I could and then be able to do the after commentary so I know exactly what I need to talk about. And uh, again, sometimes in these missions you can be repeating sections for an hour to two hours, especially in <laughs> mission number, or should I say the next mission, the oil rig mission, which is a very, very tough mission to do without taking damage and without being seen. So... Sometimes you're going to need that after the fact commentary, but most of the time it's always usually recorded during the mission. But for the Splinter Cell series, I prefer to do it after just so I can make it as smooth and enjoyable as possible. So once we head up this elevator here, we're going to save again and then we need to hurry up and use one of our disposable picks. There is a guy that's going to be entering into this area at some point, so you do want to be a little bit quick. You might as well use them. Remember, we have two and we haven't used any. Why not 
It's disposable. It self-destructs once you use it. <laughs> you can grab whatever you want on the computer. You can get a data stick. Again, none of this information is needed, but it's there if you want. If you're a diehard purist, we've done that already. This is strictly that stealth, get in, get out, quickly without being seen. This is what I was talking about earlier, where the camera is either you're going to have to shoot it or you're going to have to take out the light next to it. I decided to take out the light next to it because I feel, again, Sam Fisher would not shoot the camera. It doesn't make sense. However, in Splinter Cell, the accuracy in this game is very, very bad. So it might take you four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shots before it actually works. But eventually, <laughs> you'll be able to shoot it. And, you know, SMH. So we're gonna move to the roof now. On the other side of this room, if you wanted to, there's four guards and a break room. There are two data sticks you can get, which actually show you pretty much the same information that you're gonna get inside Nikolaz's room, but you still gotta do the main objective. This section can be a little tough, but then again, it's actually kind of easy. It just depends on RNG. So we're gonna be coming down here now. What's supposed to happen is you shoot the light, the glass breaks, and you enter the room with that little section dark. However, my aiming is just so impeccable and so perfect that uh, I don't break the glass, so I have to shoot twice. But immediately when you come in, make sure you get back out before this guy sees you. This time, he's just on his regular routes. He's not doing anything in particular. This is what he does back and forth once you break the glass. He does not change from this. This is what he does. You want to get up as soon as he heads to your right from the middle point. This will give you enough time to get the information you need and quickly head back to right where you were. Christ almighty. What do you have? Bad things. Keep transmitting. We need to see how far this goes. What's going on? Corpses, refugee camps. They've had commandos at work in Azerbaijan for weeks. How the hell did we miss this? Keep transmitting. Alert! All men for full alert! We have an intruder in Nikolaj's office! Wake up, you bastard! I want troops in there now! Grinko, sir. I've got three men about to brief Nikolaj's office. As you can see, the enemies are entering. Stay here. Do not move. They will not see you. But if you do move slightly left or right, you do run the risk of them seeing you. So I recommend stay put. Don't do anything. They're only in here for about 15 seconds. We headed for military action and we're going to need airtight proof. Once he crosses you on the right side, easy peasy lemon squeezy, get back up. Do the exact same thing, but this time the door's open and you can head out. You will have enough time to get out of there. That's the end of it. Thank God. What exactly is going on? You wouldn't. And we didn't know about it. Nobody did. What does he want? You can watch the news later. Rendezvous with Junior Wilkes for extraction. Make sure you completely run through this section. Do not stop. Keep running. Guards will see you if you slow down. Nicolás's office is clear. We're heading for the rear gangway. Who's there? Come out! I want an update. Why hasn't the intruder been caught yet? Do we have men on the rear stairwell? I'll reach the stairwell. Exit the point. Looks like our man took care of business, and we are done with this mission. What the hell did you find in there, man? Lambert's flipping out big time. What's he saying? That we're going to war. Georgian special forces have taken hold of villages scattered throughout Azerbaijan. Incredibly, Kambayn Nagalads appears to have been able to move thousands of troops across the border over a course of weeks, completely hidden from both local and international authorities through a high-tech... Number of Azerbaijani casualties are unknown, but early estimates number in the high... The freedom-loving people of the world cannot stand idly by and allow an act of such staggering inhumanity and scale. In their third day of fighting, U.S.-led NATO troops took three more Azerbaijani villages occupied by Georgian special forces. U.S. troops met only light resistance and suffered minimal casualties. The Georgian commando cells are becoming increasingly hard to locate as military intelligence suffers repeated... Kumbayn Nikolads has vanished, along with his top military advisors. Speculation points to Nikolaz's fear of a war crimes tribunal as motivation. A two-minute webcast from locations unknown 
Georgian President Combein Nikolaj called America and its allies an army of scarecrows, declaring them helpless to defend themselves or their homeland. The precise nature of Nikolaj's threat, experts fear, could make itself known within... Retrieve Georgian communication data. NATO and the U.S. intervention has pushed most of the Georgian commandos from Azerbaijan with only a few well-hidden cells remaining. One of those cells entrenched in an oil rig on the Caspian Sea is exchanging data with the presidential palace in Georgia via a secure network. It's go time. Fisher, we've uploaded your mission objectives. Grimstarter says the rig's encryption protocols are bulletproof, so we're going to have to let one of Nikolaj's geeks log on before we get a chance at any intelligence. Why would they be holding onto this rig? It's not Nikolaj's smartest play. That's what got our attention. Nikolaj is sacrificing several cells to hold on to it, so whatever's coming over the network must be critical. Mission objectives on your offset. Visual on hostile quarter. We're blowing the bridge immediately. Repeat, blowing the bridge. Welcome, ladies and gents, to one of my favorite Splinter Cell missions, definitely one of the shorter missions, but also one of the more challenging missions, depending on how you play it. We're going for that non-KO run through, except for the mandatory one that we actually have to do. Other than that, we're going to be getting by everyone, taking no damage, and we're going to make it look super, super easy, even though it is actually super, super tough. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video, and let's continue on. Bad news, Fisher. Something got the military's attention. Oh, boy. Your rig just got bumped into the single digits on NATO's strike list. Write yourself a technician and get that down. Time just got scarce. Everybody look lively. Our computer technician is returning with the encryption key. I need two men to meet him at the docking station and escort him to the data hub. Let's get this finished quickly. We're a sitting duck out here. All right, so all I can say is that this part took a very, very long time to be able to get everything work the way that you want it to, so do not expect you to be able to pull it off. Very, very simple and easy. Hopefully, that with the way that I'm showing you how to do it, it's going to make things a lot simpler for you. But this took a little bit of trial and error to actually figure out to make sure that we can get the game to work the way we want. So what you're going to want to do, as soon as you get up here, you want to make a little bit of noise. And the reason we do that is it's going to stop the guard at the end. It's just going to make getting through the next section slightly easier since we don't have to worry about him taking too long because he will start his patrol pattern. So getting a little bit of a distraction there goes a long way in saving you about 10, 15 seconds. Relay alert from Philip Matt. We have incoming American warplane. We got some American warplanes coming in, and I remember specifically in my last playthrough of this, I sang the American song from uh, Team America World Police. <laughs> oh boy, I was something special back then, wasn't I? But as you can see here, you've got this guy right here. If you time it correctly and you do the distraction like I did in the very beginning where you made a little bit of noise, you can actually just move straight down and then through. If not, then you're going to have to wait for him to come back and then go back. So it saves you like 15 seconds or so. Here it can be very tricky. Slow your roll down a little bit so this guy doesn't hear you. And move immediately to the left. There is a guy looking straight in your direction at all times, but luckily the other guys are directly in the way, so it's not too bad as long as you stick to the left. We're going to be waiting right here for the guy that's going to be coming. That's our friends from the Air Force. Ground troops are imminent. We'll keep you updated. He's going to turn this way, and then he'll move back the other way. That is when you want to move up. Get under attack! He's sustained heavy damage to... Get up against the wall. As you can see, it can be a little tricky sometimes. Immediately move to the left. Do not go to the right. I have been able American to make it to the left. Planes. They're coming in again. Reports of incoming troop transport. But if you want to make it every single time, go to the left instead of the right. You can go to the right, but it's very, very tricky. You can't move fast because this guard up here will hear you. It can be tricky, but you can accomplish it. So We just went with a safer route. We're going to switch this object, which is going to get their attention. 
Hmm? It's still spray. I swear, I turned it off. Sure, you did. I did. Now we're not going to move forward into the room where we just saw them go, as there's no way out, and it's pretty much a trap, because if you go in there and you wait too long, these guys will come back, and then you can't leave again without distractions or taking them out. So we're going to move to the right side. Just want to wait here until they actually get a little bit closer. Hardest part of the mission is technically over. I mean, the rest, you're going to be able to literally just run right through. And if you do not want run right through, you will not come out without taking damage or being spotted. This way actually allows you, yes, running straight through after this section right here, allows you not to be spotted and not to take any damage. If you do not do it this way, you will take a lot of damage, probably die, and you will be spotted. Change of plans, Fisher. You're going after that technician. That's changing the Downloaded the data to that. To allow us to find it. Use whatever force necessary. Drop down, this guy is focused somewhere else, but do not run yet, because he can still turn around and start following you. Now just start running from this point. Do not stop running. Run, run, run. notice a guard right next to that door. If you run, you're able to get through the door before the guard notices you and the door closes. So as you can see, we ran straight through and we're good to go. If you're crouched into the right side, you don't have to worry about that explosion. You do take no damage and nobody sees you whatsoever. And at this point, you just run straight through. There's also another door on the other side where you do not actually need to use your lockpick, but it's up to you. This way actually gives you a lot more time to catch up with the guy than the other way. Just grab him, interrogate him, and the mission's pretty much over. This Who the hell are you? Don't ask any questions. Answers only in the fast. I am the fast. Why risk manually extracting the data from the battle? That's the only way. We it with a non transferable boy on you, Scott Key. I'm just a messenger. I don't know. Something about an arc. What's that? I don't know. What Nicolads wants most. Where were you going to take the briefcase? I don't know. I wasn't going to find out until I was on board the escape ship. Mass is a complete control freak. Mass. Please, I don't want to. Ah! Philip Mass, Nicolads is lead programmer. I swear that's all I know. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gents. We're just going to knock him out. We're going to take his satchel, and we're going to take the briefcase, and that will be the end of the mission. How much longer is this going to take? Your daughter's on the line. Just running the encryption. Black hell! What's up, Grip? The data you glommed off the rig. There's no way the Georgians could have gotten this much intel without a man inside the CIA. Fisher, you're up. Sarah, hi. Where are you? On my way home. I thought you were going to call last week. Something came up. I'm sorry. That's all right. Were you in Georgia? Honey, you know I can't answer that. Yeah, I know. I was just watching it on TV. Ah! Sarah. Sarah! <laughs> Anybody have a line back to third echelon? I'm here, Fisher. What the hell's going on? Nicolas just declared war on the U.S. What? The Georgians hit our communications, transportation, power grids. We still don't know how extensive the damage is. 
What's our defense? What are we doing? What do we have? Nicolad's caught us with our pants down. All we've got is the laptop you pulled off the oil rig. My daughter. I know, I know. I I've got people heading over there. This whole country's a mess. I need to see Sarah. You know what you need to do. We're helpless until we find Nicolad's. You're heading for the CIA. Your mission just became critical. Failure at the Red Bear Army Community Hospital in Mississippi resulted in 17 deaths and over 30 injuries. Both county electricity and backup generators were destroyed, leaving military train traveling to Norfolk, Virginia collided with a commuter rail line after an apparent failure of its automated routing system. U.S. military has not released the contents of the train's cargo, though federal authorities have evacuated a 20-mile radius surrounding the wreckage. Though no official death toll has been given, initial reports indicate the deaths of over 40 enlisted men. Potential civilian casualties are believed to be much lower. Newspapers talking about cyber terrorism, an information crisis, information warfare call it what you will but realize that no american is safe until we mobilize our army rescue workers their information grid entirely disabled were unable to respond to the crash for nearly an hour injuries became fatalities as to combine nicolades the georgian president still in hiding though his first wave of cyber terrorism focused on military targets intelligence proposes that a large-scale civilian target could just as easily we have faced terror before and triumphed. I promise here to the American people that we will triumph again. Earth is too small a place for the perpetrators of these acts to hide. The United States and her allies will enact a justice that is swift, cruel, and absolute. Time to get to work, Fisher. Let me reiterate. We cannot afford any casualties. The NSA doesn't operate in the U.S. We don't spy on other agencies. I'm not here. That's right. You've lost existence privileges until the mission's over. We've synced a timer on your offset to a pause in the ventilation system fans. We'll have a limited window of opportunity to use it for insertion. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistrino, when your host here, and welcome back, of course, to more Splinter Cell. This is the CIA headquarters mission, definitely one of the toughest missions, but also one of the funnest in the game. And I'm going to show you some cool things that maybe you definitely didn't see in my last playthrough. We're going to uh, get through this with only taking technically uh, two people out, and those are both mandatory knockouts. Those are the only knockouts that we're going to do. Everything else, we're going to find a way to get around. Uh, so again trying to challenge myself in this version or in this walkthrough previously I would take out multiple enemies I'd knock them out I'd always hide bodies I'd still remain stealthy but in this specific instance we are only gonna take out uh, at least in this walkthrough anyone that we absolutely 100% have to take out and those are two guys one guy is at the very very uh, two guys are kind of at the very end of the mission so those are the only guys we're actually taking out everyone else we can find a way around them now this means you have to exploit the game slightly and I will explain that a little bit more once we actually come up to it but for now we're just gonna wait here for this guy to move there is a camera over there we don't have our camera jammer yet so uh, we can't get around it it is the kind of camera that I believe you cannot shoot so therefore we need to just wait until it's looking on the left side and then we can get around now immediately once you get right here here, this guard will start moving in this direction it is kind of like a script so therefore you need to just sit here and wait for him to move by and then it's going to create the game itself will create an opportunity for us to move along because he's going to turn and this is what I do so when I go through these missions and you can watch them on facebook.com slash 01 and you can see exactly how I learn these I figure out which directions that the enemies turn in I know it's not realistic but if you know which direction they turn in then you can exploit that he turns to the left, which means that if we just get on his right side, stay still. Do not move forward onto that railing yet or onto that uh, stairs, because if you do, you'll make too much noise as soon as you step on it, and then he'll immediately turn around. It can be a little tough to do, but just 
time it right, wait till he moves a little bit, and you're good to go. Here, you gotta wait for this script to happen. Once he goes through the door, then uh, you can kind of move on up, and then we're gonna head inside. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there is also another way to get inside the CIA headquarters by not using the, the, the fan, but I've never, I don't, I don't think I've ever, ever done that because I've always preferred the uh, stealthy approach as opposed to going straight through the front door or something like that. So it's up to you. Uh, you can do it whichever way you want, but this way, even though it does add more enemies and whatnot, it provides that kind of stealth desire that we all have inside us. So once we actually get inside here, it's not going to be too difficult. We're going to stay to the left, back. There is a guard that patrols up and down the middle section, but very easy to get around. We're just going to climb this uh, file cabinet here, conveniently placed. And we're going to head over to the other side. There are two guards that are looking in the direction that we actually came into this room, so that's why you don't want to go straight across the room from where we were, or else these guards will see us. There are metal detectors, so you can't go straight through there, so you're going to have to go through this door. Now, this is how you know if you're going to be good or not. You've got to time it, okay? It may look like I'm just opening the door, and I don't know what I'm doing, but I do, all right? This is how you time it. The guard that patrols up and down the hallway, he specifically goes up and down. When he is in the direction, or when he is closer to you where the two guys are, that is when you want to make sure you go through that door. And I already knew this, so I knew he was there, which means I knew that I can go ahead and get around him. Even if he did slightly see me, it, that doesn't matter. That is what you want to do. Otherwise, he will actually be in the other side of the room, and then he'll see you every time you enter. So make sure the guy patrolling down and up and down that hallway is closer to you as opposed to being at the very far end of the room. Here, we're just going to wait. Do not do this too soon, as you don't want two guards that you have to mess with. You'd rather just have one. So he's going to enter into this elevator. Also, make a mental note that if you look on the opposite side of this room, in the back wall, not straight ahead, back, back that way, there's that. You see the guard up there? He is that guard that you got by earlier, so he can still see you from that point, so just be careful. We're going to use a little distraction. Now, we're not going to immediately move forward. We're going to wait until this guy turns around, and then he's going to come back in the opposite direction. And then he's going to do like a little patrol pattern. Once he starts doing that, then it is okay to go ahead and flip the switch on the elevator. It's going to take a few seconds for the elevator to come back. So wait back in darkness. He will continue to make his rounds moving in different directions. Once you hear the noise that the elevator doors have opened, then you can go in. But just remember that it's on the left side or right side once you enter. And then we're going to head downstairs and we have a whole new section. Very, very fun level. I definitely recommend that if you're gonna play Splinter Cell, you gotta at least try this level out, or at least get to this level. Just got word from our man inside. He says your F-2000's in place. You can retrieve it in the storage room behind the generator backup. Goody. I'd be ignorant not to arm you, but keep it holstered. One agency fatality means the mission's over. Just remember there is a guy back there. That opens the door as soon as you pass that little section, so be careful when you're going through. We're gonna get on this computer because there Good. is a code it's that we need ideal. to get into the server room. Looks like we're covered. Like I said, this is tight as security gets unless Congress admits. Now here, normally, in order to be able to get into the next section, you have to take out a specific guard. I think we can maintain. But we're not gonna. Sure. I. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm just tired. Overtime. I'm on hour 15. It's a crisis, man. Crunch time. Meaning I gotta get back to it. I'll see you around. If you time everything right, the one guard is going into the uh, the soda can area, the vending area. This guy is leaving now. You can e you can get here, but you gotta be super quick because the guard will be coming back and going through this area, and he could see you sometimes. Now, notice where the light is. There's actually a guard right here. He is someone that you actually have to take out. Like, there's no way around it. You have to take this guy out in order to get the code. However, I took him out before I hit the record button, and I got his code. So therefore, I know the code, and the code does not change, at least in this game. So even though technically you have to take him out, but you don't have to do it on this walkthrough that you see, you just have to do it before 
Um, you have to take them out, find the code, or find it online or something, and then do it. So, it's a little bit of an exploit. There's no way around taking that guy out unless you already know the code, pretty much. We're going to be doing that a few times throughout the, uh, throughout the game. Even though it legitimately or doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's just the way it is. And we're going to use this computer, and I'm going to show you a cool little trick up ahead. So, we've got the code, which is 110598, and remember the main server code is 2019 from the uh, previous computer that we hacked. So, enter the code, and I'm going to show you how you can get by this next room with no problem at all. Now, I didn't come up with this or anything, but it is it is pretty cool. Okay. Split jump here on top, and then we're going to jump to the other side. Now, a lot of people may have had problems with this section, and then you can just get right by. It's a lot easier than you think. Might take you a few tries, but you'll get it. Grab our weapons, and then we're going to move on to the next section. Okay. 0J-867530. 5 0 j-8675306 0 j-8675306 now you'll see that this guy up here now you don't have to do what yeah, I do yes. I was debating whether or not I you wanted know, to get the distractible item you can actually go right behind him grab the soda can and get out but I was like eh, yeah I better do it because the soda can is actually going to be very very important for the next section if you want to get by without taking anyone out Another very, very difficult uh, section because of the way that the guards are not really guards, but because of the way the, uh, the repair guys are like kind of situated, it can make it very, very tough. Here, you just got to wait. Fisher, GPS shows you within sight of the server. Grim's daughter is standing by. She'll be ready to trace the leak as soon as you can get us access. Once he is moving away from you, that is when you want to move up. But do not go inside the server room. If you do, he will see you because there's so much light. So you want to wait. And get in this shadow right here. Once he turns back around and goes the other direction, that is when you can enter the server room. Any other time, he will see you every single time. There's just too much light in this room. Remember the server code is 2019. We're going to go through the left side first. And we're going to throw the can in the corner. I actually figured this out on stream. It was actually pretty fun. Now, you want this guard to see you. So stand right here, so you're like, there. He'll turn a little bit, he'll kind of see you, and he'll be like thinking, who's up there? What that does is it ruins his like uh, his timing, so right, it makes everything right. perfect. There's also the guy that's up in the left side, on the top of the room. Just there. The leak is a low security PC registered to one Mitchell Dard. Great. Dorothy's PC is your new objective, Fisher. So watch out for him. But you can get by that guy. It, it kind of like this guy ruins his his uh, what he's supposed to do. So normally he was gonna go he was gonna go to the other room up here. He was gonna go around and he was gonna check on what he saw. But he couldn't do that because the guard was the other guy was blocking him. So he stopped that route and he went back towards the can. It's like a perfect opportunity for you to use, and it works pretty much every time. So much coffee. I'm getting jittery. Here, obviously, you want to wait. Same tactics apply. Because there's so much light in this room, you don't want to, you know, have to worry about that. But as I was saying, because you didn't take out the guard that was in the room above, he can see through the area. So you do not want to get in the bottom section uh, anywhere else from where you actually saw me. Here you can just hide. Very tough to get by this guy without somewhat being seen. But just wait until he is, you know, running along, doing a pattern. And we can go ahead and start moving on to the next area. There is one guard that is patrolling this area right here. So, I don't know where he's going to be on yours. Maybe your timing's not the Please same note, as mine. No but go ahead and wait for him because he will be patrolling cafeteria. up and down this hallway. All smoking is restricted to designated smoking terraces on the fifth floor. And you're free to move on to the next section and we have our next checkpoint. Here, you just want to jump, the greatest ability in the game. And I think they took that away in Blacklist, right? Or in Conviction, I don't think you can jump either. Which is crazy. 
Every game you should have the ability to jump. It just makes sense. All right, so there's cameras we have to worry about here. But if you see that the way that they're moving, you can figure out how to get by them. There's also a guard up top of these stairs on the left. So he can see you sometimes, but there's enough darkness in this room that it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So stay back here until these cameras are out of the way. And you can move by them. And we can move on to the next section. Just gotta worry about this little uh, civilian guy here. Not too big of a deal. He's just copying some papers. Now here, there's nothing you can do about this. You absolutely 100% have to take the light out. It's the only way to get by this without being seen by the camera. So use your brand new weapon and shoot the light. And um, you've already got the code. 110700. And you're ready to move on to the next section. Well, tell Clarence I'm gonna have his ass and his badge for this. Because I'm looking at agency photographs of Red Bear on TV. Find out what agency media the press has. Anything they haven't shown yet, get back before they do. I, I don't know. I don't care. Fix it. Can't really get by this guy until he starts moving, unless you want to distract him or whatever. But he's going to head over to the soda machine. And you can enter. There is a turret here. There's a computer there as well. Get a data stick if you want. Use your lockpick. Or you could use your disposable. I don't like to use the disposables. Just because I love the, the lockpick minigame in the Splinter Cell series. I think it's fun. Enter this elevator and we are going to be heading, I believe, to the roof. Or to the upper area. And we'll have a whole new section. Because I'm Sam Fisher. I get in and out without being seen. Giggity. I just sent you Doherty's file. He's in information retrieval, Office 508. What do I do with Doherty? Stay out of his way for now. We'll get back to you when we find more on him. All right, this section pretty easy. The game well, gives you an obvious way for you to go. Get behind the desks, wait for the other guy on the other side of the room to not be looking, enter the room, and then immediately uh, go to the room that you see our main target exiting out of. Now, you probably won't know it's him at first, but this guy that's coming out of the room right now is the guy that we are going to be messing with a little bit later, so we want to get in this office and grab his computer. You always know if a computer you need to actually do because it has that red screen. Great work, Fisher. How are we doing, Grim? Working on it. Very clever back door. Looks like Philip Mass's work. Bouncing to a server. Surf Kalina underscore VA. We'll call back. Fisher, we're gonna need you to bag Doherty. What happened with Grim, sir? We'll worry about that. You worry about Doherty. Wait for him to take a smoke break. It'll make grabbing him easier. Details on your offset. Pretty simple. End of the room. We're going to wait uh, for this guy to finish talking. And then uh, Mr. I wear my sunglasses inside to move. And then we'll be good to go. Agent Marks has been trying to sell us on the idea of electrostatic Death by PowerPoint. Us in the military know this well. He wears his sunglasses inside so he can, so he can. Sorry. I did that in the last walkthrough, too, I think. <laughs> It's just too funny. Come on. To the Give me a break. These are hospital security access codes. The only parties who have these codes are hospital directors and us. If these codes came from CIA files, then... Excuse me. Yeah? yeah Once I he moves, then you're free to go. The, oh, hold on a sec. Um, I'm going to be a few minutes if you guys want to take a break. All right, I'm back. And we'll go ahead and use the disposable pick. Why not? Oh, man, that's rough, Don. Yeah. Like on the train. Is she all right? She's fine, but it was close. I mean, she says she saw bodies. Hey, careful with the coffee. So, now my whole family's spooked. 
My wife doesn't want to send the kids to school tomorrow. You spilled your coffee. Christ. In fact, I'm supposed to call her. I gotta run. All right. I'm going for a smoke. You gonna be around later? No, I'm taking off. Hey, you spilled coffee. Somebody's gonna have to clean that up. I gotta run, Mitch. Take it easy. All right, so there is our main guy. Stick here on this wall so that way this guy doesn't see you when he comes by. As far as I know, he stays in the room that he's going to and he doesn't come out. But he could come out if you wait too long. Now, you can actually kidnap Doherty now if you wanted to. Um, but one thing you need to remember is that in order to go through doors, you can't have him on your back. So it's best just to let him run his course until he gets into uh, the rec room. Saves you a little bit of uh, the, the pain of carrying him, dropping him, opening a door, picking him back up. I love the animations in Splinter Cell. Still to this day, some of the best animations ever. Even though it's not realistic to crouch walk like that, it still it looks so freaking cool. All right, at this point, you can go ahead and take him out. I recommend you do it now instead of waiting until he gets all the way inside. Junior Wilkes is in position for extraction. He's with Special Agent Baxter, an interrogations expert. They've got a disappearance truck parked in the back. Now, two different ways you can do this. You can actually keep him held and then enter and then keep walking with him until you get outside. Then you can knock him out and then you can start dragging him because you're a little bit faster. Or you could do it this way. I actually recommend that you keep him held in your hands uh, for as long as you can until you go outside. Um, sometimes this door doesn't want to open. Uh, as you can see, it, it takes a while sometimes. And sometimes it won't open when you have him held. Like, so that's why I opened it and then I came back. But then I realized it shut again and I got scared and I was like, oh, great. That sucks. But it actually will open some. It will open. So don't be, you know, afraid. Uh, when I did this previously, when I was practicing through it, the door would not open when I had him in my body, or when I had him on top of my shoulders, and therefore I was like, well, maybe you can't do it, so, but I guess you can. Stay on the left, or right side here. Even though it looks like we're right next to a light, which we are, uh, it's still considered to be stealthy, so. Makes no sense, but whatever. <laughs> All right, once he goes back the opposite direction, that is your time to go and move forward. If, for some reason, that you decide to do it at a different timing, I don't know if you're going to make it because you're in so much light here, and obviously anybody can see you. So I recommend waiting until you know that he's heading back the opposite direction. It makes the most sense that you'll have enough time to get into the darkness again right here. This is the longest and most drawn-out part because you have to literally carry him all the way to the extraction, which can take a while. I've got another complication for you. Some CIA security dick is chatting up Junior Wilkes and Baxter. How were they spotted? They weren't hiding. NSA presence on Langley is completely legit. Hmm. The only problem is me and Doherty. Right. A SIGINT ninja with an unconscious bureaucrat on his shoulder is less than copacetic, so don't let him see you. As I said, you can't open the door unless you actually drop him. Here, do not run. We're going to walk a little bit until we get down at the end of the stairs. Then you can stand up once you get to that point. Otherwise, this guard, or not really a guard, he's a civilian worker, will see you. Because he actually just got into that position right there as soon as we enter the door. So remember that. He will see you if you move too fast. But you do want to be quick here. That's why I'm walking and not crouching. Once we get close enough, then we can start crouching again because we want enough time to be able to go through this door because this guard goes up a little bit, then he turns right back around. So you don't have a lot of time. This guard down here does the same thing over and over. It's like a three-step process. Um, you're free to move down once he's starting to head right. Get all the way to the right side as much as you can. Even though you're against the light, he cannot see with his peripheral vision and stay to the right. As soon as he passes you enough, then you can start moving forward very quietly. This next guy is a very, very tricky character to get around. And it's not that he's tricky to get around. It's very easy to get around him. The problem is you have a section at the bottom that has a very, very, very long stretch of light. And because of the way that this guard's patterns are, you literally 
can get all the way down there without spooking him, without anything like that. Um, and he he goes all the way back up here. He does his whole pattern, yada yada. But he still has enough time to come back down and actually see you, unless you wait again. And it's a lot of waiting. And I don't want I don't want you to have to go through a lot of waiting. So what we're gonna do is we are going to get his attention. Not up here because he's too close. So we're going to wait until he's actually almost on his way down. Because then that provides us enough time to get into the little cover that the game has provided for you. Most likely to put the body so that you can actually probably just go up and knock him out. Because it does say incapacitate the CIA security. But we're only going to take out the one guy that is mandatory. So get seen by this guy. And move into this right box here. Once he sees you, he's going to come right here, but then he's going to go back in the opposite direction. Uh, or he's going to go in the direction that you came from. And he's going to be up here for a very long time. Which is going to give you enough time to just continually make your way all the way to where the end of the level is. Again, you can do that without getting his attention, but you will absolutely 100% either have to shoot out the lights or you have to wait. This long stretch right there that you see straight ahead has a lot of light. So, again, very simple. If you don't want to wait like that, and you don't want to do it the way that I did it, you can just probably take out this light here to the left to get rid of the light. You can hide in the corner there until he passes again. But why do that when, I mean, it's, it's, it takes way too much time. This guy is mandatory. You absolutely 100% have to take him out. There is no way around it. You mean you actually now, deal with the trick is making sure this guy up here doesn't awesome. see it. So, so uh, once he is right? not looking, grab him and then hide his body over here. Now, the other part is, because you stand in this area for a very long time, out in the open, and the guard up there will be able to see you sometimes, so you've got to get the timing right on when to go in, where to drop the body, so as he doesn't see you. So you don't want to do it when this guy is moving in that direction, because there's just not enough time for him to turn around and see you and this is not a big deal because at this point the mission's over you just get in there the mission will end and you'll still be alive it won't be a problem um but we don't we don't want that noise of him seeing us and then like chaos ensuing and hearing that noise is just not something we like thank god i thought he would never go away this our friend that's the man pleased to meet you and that must so be you can see what i'm doing oh, i'm getting right. over We're here going he can't see me from here even though it looks gone. like i'm in the complete light He's above us, but he can't see us. So you just want to wait just slightly a little bit to where um, his timing is a little Sarah? bit different. No. She's fine. The black and you'll see his head move here, even though you can't right. really see him that much right now. Let's get out of here. Thanks, Will. Appeared on the internet at 3 o'clock this morning. My declaration of war against the United States of America and its allies. Until every last foreign soldier has left Georgia, this war will continue on American soil and around the world, claiming the lives of the aggressors. The scales of power have been newly balanced, and we will no longer accept the tyranny of the United States. Blame the U.S. media for their part in spreading Combain Nikoladze's message. Ironic counterpoint to the situation at home, U.S. soldiers in Georgia and Azerbaijan have spent their fifth night without combat. Though tensions remain high, military intelligence has been unable to locate any remaining Georgian commando. Have dramatically increased their efforts to find Combain Nikoladze. U.S. intelligence is combing a constantly expanding search radius extending from Georgia. Each new country another possible secret alliance with the... Because what we have here is a situation where further airstrikes just won't do any good. Nicolette's army, if that's what you want to call it, is a bunch of... As morning relatives prepare funeral services, America's law enforcement and military forces prepare for the unknown, waiting for Combain Nikoladze's next move. 
Fisher, your mission is a man named Ivan. When Grimm's daughter got made in Kalinitech's server, Nikolaz's mercenaries got spooked. They're pulling up stakes, wiping out all evidence of their presence, including Ivan and his comrades. Who's Ivan? One of Nikolaz's geeks, a programmer. They're killing their own men. It's all evidence. Let's pray you find him first. Details on your offset. This is as close as we get. Are you sure you're cool with the details? This last minute stuff bugs me out. I'll figure it out. Well, be careful. I've already got a mother. What's up, ladies and gents? Here we go. A Splinter Cell Kalina Tech mission. Toughest mission in the game, in my opinion. Let us begin. Immediately, as soon as you start, uh, these guards are going to come out. Just do exactly what I did to get up against that phone, and you should not be seen. It might take you a few tries before you actually get it, but you should be able to accomplish it. Here, very, very simple. All you're going to want to do, pick up a bottle, and you're going to throw it in the vicinity of the two guards that are in front of the truck. No matter where you throw it, it doesn't matter as long as it is over in that area, then you should be able to get by this without any problems. He told me to think of them as sheep. He says we are... Once you see that they are gone, go ahead and start moving up, and you should be free to go. Get up on here, and we're going to shimmy across. Now, if you don't care about the no damage policy, you can drop from right here, right on to where you need to go. Otherwise, if you're like me and you don't want to take any damages in the entire run through, then you do not want to drop down and just keep going. West wing of this wall is clear. Moving on to six. How many encryption keys did you retrieve? Are you sure he's dead? Come on, we can see his brain. Of course he's dead. What about his encryption key? The key? Yes, the encryption key. I got it. It's destroyed. Let's move on. Of course, once they're done talking, go ahead and start moving forward. Just jump down. Immediately go over towards the door. Now, normally you will have to knock out this guard to get a satchel in order to get the key code, but we already have the key code, so therefore, um, I can show it off to you guys. So once you get that key code, move on in, and we're going to head into the next room. It really doesn't matter how slow or fast you are in this section, as no guards are right here currently, so you can just continually run until you get to the vent, as no one will have enough time to come in here and find you, so again, that really doesn't matter. Hey, what is that? Once you're in the event and you go over to the other side, this is where the game can start getting a little tricky. But of course, you've come to the right place, and I'm going to show you how you can get by without taking any of these soldiers out. There's going to be a cutscene up ahead as well. destroyed, every one of them. Thank God. Make sure you leave the bodies where the fire will get them. Of course. We're going to exit the door without these guys seeing us. You can do it. Don't turn off any lights or anything. And we're going to get over here in this back corner waiting on them to come by. Once one of the enemies come by, the other is going to head towards the end of this section where the elevator is. However, this guy that's going to be heading towards us can do different things. Sometimes when he opens the door, he stays inside and he just looks in your direction. Other times he will actually come back through the door and back into this hallway. I can't tell you which one is going to happen for you, as he did multiple things, so that's why you see me here. Once I pick up this object, I'm going to be looking back in the direction to see if he's actually heading towards here or not. But once you see that he is still just stuck there looking through, now he cannot see you through that glass even though uh, in reality he would be able to see you through the glass I assure you he will not be able to see you but just make sure he's not heading your way already because then you will get caught being out here we're gonna use this can as a distraction it doesn't matter where you throw it all you have to do is make sure that you throw it near these two guards once you've seen that they have heard it 
and you get that familiar noise, then you can head back into this room and we're going to get up against the wall. So, the way the distractions work is enemies necessarily do not stop at where you throw a particular item. So if you throw the item, they go and see where it is, but then they continue on sometimes, and then they go in completely different directions. Most of the time, these guys are always going to head back in the opposite corner of where you are, so then you can easily get by, and that should not take you too difficult to be able to figure this out. However, one thing I always want to make a mental note of, never leave your cans behind, ladies and gentlemen. This is a stealth walkthrough. We leave no stone, or in this case, can, unturned. We just sussed a little more out of Ivan. There's a group of mercenary programmers alive on the third floor. They're trapped behind a cluster of wall lines. You think they might have encryption keys? It's worth checking. If you're as fast as I can, you can immediately get over here, and then you're going to want to take out this light. This light's very important to take out for a little bit later. Make sure when you deactivate these wall mines that you do it when it, you hit the button when it's on green, not red. You will blow up if you hit the button when it is on red. I need an encryption key. We don't have any. Why should I believe you? There is a bomb. What? The Spitznas planted it to destroy the data archives, but they put it right next to the gas pipes. It will take out this whole floor. How do I get there? You will need the keypad code for the door. I think it's 33575. Once you're finished talking, try to make a little bit of noise to get their attention. Building specs, that geek story about gas pipes holds up. I'm on my way. Make it fast. You don't have a lot of time. You can always get up against this corner here. The guards will not enter any more than what you see them right there. And we have two minutes and 22 seconds in order to complete this next challenge. So follow them closely. The guards will do different things sometimes. So this may take you a few tries before you get the one that is uh, preferable. But we're going to head out. And that's why we took out the light. As we're going to be hiding right here in this corner. And the guards will be able to see you if you do not take out this light. Now again, guards might not always do what you see me here. That's why you want to wait inside the door until you see exactly what they're doing before you head out into this hallway. Now this is where you're going to need to start really moving with some quickness. As soon as you think you're ready, start going. However, you do have to slow your roll as soon as you get near any wall mine. But you can still move with a little bit of pace here as the wall mine will not blow up unless you're pretty much running. Use your melee to attack this window here. We're going to head along the right side of the room. And as you can see, you can do it. It's not that difficult. The biggest thing is making sure you give yourself enough time in the previous section, so try to get in and out as fast as you can. We're going to be using our lock pick here. It is a full-on lock that you have to do, so I believe there are five tumblers that you have to mess with. And of course, this could be the most nerve-wracking part. But you should have hopefully been able to get by those other sections with just enough time to spare in order for you to be able to complete this section. Now, if I remember correctly, I did the old 007 in my previous walkthrough, so I thought, eh, why not do it again? I've got a little bit of time. Obviously, if you want, you can go ahead and do it and save yourself 20 seconds or so. But I like to live dangerously. And I always remember the scene from Goldfinger where he waits until 007. And of course, the only thing that you can say in this situation is as follows. Like a glove. Great work, Fisher. That could have been bad. Oh, we've got a new twist for you. I hacked into the power grid. Somebody's thrown the breaker on the fire door circuit. Meaning you won't be able to open the doors until you found that breaker. Details on your upset. 
It's real nice to be back in Sam Fisher's shoes. I have missed it. So here you don't have to worry about any of these guards. If you stay slow enough, they won't hear you, as well as you can move by this one guard here on the stairs. And he should not see you as long as if you stick to the wall as close as you can. Head straight down the middle of the aisle, and then when you get to the beginning of the seats, that is when you want to turn left, and the guards should not see you. You don't have to take any lights out. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You should be good to go. I could spotted somebody in the auditorium. Maybe our intruder. I need backup now. Once these soldiers are heading your way, we're going to get into this corner right here, and we're going to get up against the wall. It's conveniently placed there, so a lot of other people maybe take out lights and they stay outside of this area and let them come through. You don't need to do that. Just get up against the corner. Here, you're going to want to do a jump in order to distract the guard. Not necessarily jump, but make some noise so that he actually comes exactly where you see me distract him. As you can see, it can be a little hard to figure out exactly where that spot would be. But once you've done so, he does not take the simple route. He actually goes around, and that gives you the opportunity to move on to the objective. Immediately start moving, because he's going to be turning back around. And you should be able to get back Anybody in time. Anything? Nothing. The bar. No. There is nothing out here. Auditorium's clear. We are returning to our post. Here, we're going to wait for the two guards that we passed, or that passed us previously. They're going to be coming back around and doing the same exact thing. So wait here. One guard is actually going to be heading through exactly where we are. So make sure you're up against the wall and you're in blackness, or else you do run the risk of him seeing you. The other guy is going to go completely around and do a right angle, and then you should be good to go without him actually seeing you. Now we can make our way to the objective. In order to complete this, you do have to take out one of the guys inside the room. You'll know which one it is because he will have a, uh, a sack on him or a satchel. But we're not doing that, obviously. We already know the code, so... I know a lot of people maybe don't agree with that, but I did say I wanted to minimize the amount of people we have to knock out, and you technically don't have to knock him out uh, on this specific playthrough. You can do it on another one, find the code, and then continue on. Wait until you have uh, enough time to make sure you get by him. You want to try to make as much noise as you can right here. I know it seems counterproductive, but trust me. Pick up this can as well. The guard should be heading your way. This is going to give you opportunity to go past them while they're uh, opening the door. And if you time it correctly, they should not see you, but it might take you a few tries. We're going to get up against this wall here, and we're going to wait for this guard to come around the corner. Now, you don't have to use this distraction item. You don't have to pick up the can if you don't want to, but I prefer to do that. So what we're going to do is throw the can, but make sure he doesn't see you throw the can, so stay as far back as you can. It's a lot of cans. And as soon as you throw it and he leaves, go ahead and make your way around the corner. And then we have this guy to distract, and we can open the blast doors. Hold, do you read me? Hold, I think I found something useful. A computer with a window that says, Fire Emergency System. Bullet, are you there? He will not go this way. He will go the opposite direction, so you should be able to always go this way without him worrying about him coming around this corner here. Now remember, the other guard is going to be coming around the corner as well, so you do want to wait. Do not move forward. I know it's tempting. You think you might be able to make it, but don't do it. Good work, Fisher. Opening those fire doors cleared your path to Ivy, but it did the same thing for the hey. Russians. You better make damn sure you get to him first. Once he heads in that direction, you'll also see that the other guard is going to be coming back. It could be different timings depending on what you did to distract the other guards. Again, all I gotta say is just be a little patient. This isn't a speed run through. This is a uh, minimalizing any type of contact with the enemy in any way whatsoever. This is one of those missions that you absolutely 100% positively have to knock people out. And you're going to get into some action scenes. So there's nothing you can do about that, but I'm going to show you how to get around all of the enemies and only knock out anyone that you absolutely have to. Update on your situation. To cover our asses politically, we clued in the FBI. We're gonna have to leave Ivan for them. So what am I doing here? Ivan's a technicality. 
All we need to trace Nikolai's is his encryption key. Get that, and we're golden. We were already checked this hallway. We might have missed something. We'll check it again. How could we have missed somebody? Listen, this aura came down directly from Vyacheslav Grinko. If just one of these geeks gets out of here alive, he'll skin us all. Yeah, well... Well what? Nothing. Hold on a second. I need to visit the little boy's room. Make it fast. Let's take a fan or let's take advantage of Mr. Poopy, Mr. Poopy Face. And we're gonna head out as soon as they start to turn. We have our trusty can that we picked up. We're gonna throw it to the right. He will not move from this position unless you distract him, therefore you will get seen. And go ahead and climb up here. Who are you talking to? Who's on that phone? Please, don't tell me who! Here. I don't want the damn phone. I want you to tell me One thing to note that as soon as you get close to him, he will automatically stop what he's doing and conversating, and then he'll do this here. Otherwise, he will not. So it's just a scripted thing. Hurry up and get down. You don't have enough time to grab him, so just get as close as you can and knock him out before he turns, and you should be good to go. Are you Ivan? I... Yes. You are American? Great. Yes and no. The police are on their way. Until they get here, I'm the only friend you've got. And I'm not a very good one. We have to leave. We have to hurry. They'll find us soon. That's not my job. I'm here for your encryption key. That wasn't the deal. The deal still stands. The feds will get you out of here alive. But first you have to give me the key. That wasn't the deal I made with the woman on the phone. Listen, do I come to your job and tell you how to murder civilians? What? No. So don't come to my job and tell me how to do mine. The feds are on their way or here already. You're gonna be fine. You can give me the key or I can take it. That wasn't the deal. You're working from a very limited phrase book. Listen, just give me the key. I'm tired and I hate making people scream. It gets me down. Here. Thanks. And until the feds get here, find a better hiding place. God damn it. Fisher, you're gonna like this. It makes me nervous when you say that. The Russians are all over the top floor. They're gonna have to do some cleaning before the Osprey can safely touch down for extraction. Now, you don't have to actually pick up this can, but I just wanted to show you that once you travel between one area to another, you do not save anything that you have in your hands. So we're gonna move on to the final section and the toughest section in this map. All right, so first things first is we're going to pick up a can right here. Now, you're going to need to distract enemies. I've actually done this where I've actually shot the light out and did it a different way, but this way is a little bit more consistent. So just throw that over there to get some of them looking in the opposite direction, and that'll give you an opportunity to move forward. Now, this might take you a few times. There's nothing you can do without being seen here. You're going to be slightly not you seen, but something seen. They don't know it's actually you, of course. But get up here, and we're going to move our way around the other side. Just make sure that no other guards are looking whenever you're climbing here, because you still can be seen. Once you drop down, immediately move straight and to the left side. And you should be able to get over here in this corner before they actually move up. I cannot wait for more Tonight's work is some of the worst I've ever done. It will be over. This is where the automatic action starts. Nothing you can do about this. You will be seen here. Nothing you can do. But if you get in this corner and then you jump, you can actually go across the other side without taking any damage and without them technically really seeing you, even though they actually still do see you. Here are the only three guards that, well, not the only three, but that you have to take out in the mission, except for the one guard next to the one guy. So we're going to use our sticky shockers and we're going to take this out one at a time. I'm going to try to do this without taking any damage. Now, you noticed that you heard someone get hit there. So, actually, I took out all three guards without seeing the other third guard. That is because the ricochet shot that I did on the first guy went to the other guy. That was planned. If you actually shoot it specifically in a, a, an area, it will take out this guy down here. As you can see, he is on the ground. It took a while to actually... Um, Figure that out. It happened by accident, so it was kind of cool to actually get it to work, but if you shoot in a specific area, once the guy comes out, you can take him out by a ricochet, and then you can take the other two out with regular shots. 
So do that before they throw grenades at you. And as you can see, you can get by there without actually taking any damage. But those are the really the three only guys in the action sections that you have to take out. Everything else you can do nice and stealth-like. Here, we're back into stealth mode. It automatically brings you back. We're going to do a few distractions so that we can get by these three guys. Otherwise, you will not be able to get by them. All you got to do is shoot out that first light. And then shoot out this light here. And it should get enough people's attention to all of them to move. However, it can take you a few times before you get this exactly the way that you want it. As the guards do not always do what you want them to do. Luckily in this one, both of them went out. And we just need to wait to the moment before we actually move on. That guy moved, so we should be good to go. Take a mental note as well, as there is another guard up here in this section. So quickly get to the darkness before that guy is able to see you. Depending on how long it took you in that previous section, obviously the guard might already have been there. He might not have been there. It's just, you know, you got to get lucky. You got to figure out timing wise on when you can do certain things. Next section is the toughest to do without taking anyone out. And oh boy. Here, just keep on moving up and then you're able to get by him. Just stand next to him and just be like, hey, what's up, dude? Once you move forward, we're going to wait here at this corner. And we're going to distract the guy that's going to be walking down. Wait till you actually see him, though, or else you'll distract the guy that's right above us. We don't want him to be distracted. We want the guy at the bottom floor to be distracted. You'll see why. Once you see him there, now go ahead and jump. Now you're good to go. Now, I've had this work for me 99% of the time. Do exactly as I do, get seen, move immediately to this corner, and then immediately right angle it here. If you do so, this guard will always walk in the same line that you do, but keep going straight. Very, very important. Otherwise, this guy could be going back in different directions. That will work 99% of the time if you do it exactly how I do. Take this light out. Very, very important because guards will be coming over into this area. Once the cutscene is over, you notice that that guard is there. He would have seen you if you were not up against the cover and took the light out. Now, this is super difficult. As you can see, it does not work all the time. So, what I'm trying to do is actually do a jump from the corner of the wall to the top of where the helicopter is. Every time you jump, a guard is going to hear you if you fail it. It is something that you just cannot pull off on a consistent basis. But you see me here trying, as you can see, it's a little dark in that area, so it's a little hard to see where the corner is. Now, this is going to take me a few tries, but there is another option. And that option will only work if you still continue to do this way. You need to continue to try to jump up into that upper area. It is okay if you fail but you need to continue to at least try. And at the end of the video, I will show you me actually doing it. However, I took one little bit of damage um, during it, so therefore I didn't want that to be the one because we're doing a no damage playthrough. But as you can see, it's not very easy to do this jump, but you can do it and you'll actually see me do it towards the end here. Uh, it's a little tough. Now what I want you to notice is the guy stopped shooting. Once you hear them stop shooting, that is when you want to start moving forward. But wait until this guy is moving to the stairs. Once he's on the stairs, his programming can't see you, it can't detect you or anything. Notice that nobody knows where we are, we haven't taken any damage, and we're still okay. Once this guy moves, let him go to the left. He'll stay stationary for a little bit. You can go ahead and start moving forward. Head up the stairs. There's also another guard on the other side of these. Uh, this ladder but he's aiming in the direction so he could possibly shoot you once you get up here if you wait long enough everything will go clear and he will stop shooting and turn around this is your opportunity to jump forward this will work every time if you do it the way that i do it now at this moment 
I'm going to show you how you can actually jump up there and make this a lot easier, but it is a one in a million shot and it takes too long to repeat the checkpoint, so I don't recommend it. As you can see, I took damage, so therefore I didn't count it. Um, Mission's not over. What about Wilkes? We're scrambling for a replacement. We might have a runner in Japan we could borrow, a woman named Cohen. What's in Myanmar? Nicolads. We used the Kalinatech data to pinpoint him at the Chinese embassy in Rangoon. Chinese support for the Georgians? The political situation isn't good. If they are backing Nicolads, you better find rock-solid proof. I don't want to go into World War III without a good reason. You've got some time before you reach Rangoon. Want me to patch a secure phone line so you can talk to Sarah? No. Disaster was narrowly averted at the Pickett Gap Water Treatment Plant in Tennessee. Plant management attribute the malfunction to a remote viral attack, possibly the latest act of terror in the Georgian information crisis. Still have no leads in the search for Combane Nicolades. NATO and charity groups working in Azerbaijan continue to uncover the corpses left from what was only the beginning of the Georgian president's campaign of high-tech terror. If not for the swift intervention of plant employees, hundreds or even thousands could have become life-threateningly ill from contaminated water. They say we're safe and all right, but then they tell us to boil our water. Seeing the disaster averted at Pickett Gap, a possible turning point in the Georgian information crisis, marking the first time American authorities were able to recognize and overcome one of Nikolaz's acts of terror. Described early diplomatic negotiations with China a mixture of silence and antagonism. The Chinese claim that the U.S. are using suspicions of Georgian support as an unfounded excuse to inspect Chinese weapon stores and have so far refused cooperation. If possible, lending an even greater urgency to the search for Combain Nicolades. Find the Georgian-Chinese connection. Using intelligence gleaned from the Picket Gap program, Third Echelon has traced communications between Nicolades and the Chinese embassy to Myanmar. Any suspected connection between Nicolades and the People's Republic of China must be proven before any action can be taken. Your contact is in place. Our man in Burma or Myanmar. Whatever. Where do I find him? A rooftop a few blocks from the embassy. Says he's under a large red sign. To respond to the phrase, a bright cold day in April. We've updated your opsat. To be clear, if you kill anybody, this mission's over. You slip up on this one. I'll find a fallen shelter and learn some prayers. I'm glad you understand. Be good. All right, so what you saw me just do there is actually kind of tricky. Make sure you skip talking to her at the beginning, and then you should be able to get through there a lot easier without any worry. But if you do talk to her, they'll already be in place, and then you will not be able to get through it as easily. Don't worry too much about noise here. 
Although you do want to make sure that no one is directly looking when you land over here. Like this guy. Make sure he's not looking up. Stay in this dark area right here. And have a little bit of patience before we actually make our way into here. Wait till they pass us a little bit and then you should be good to go. Again, I'd like to thank all the patrons for making it possible for me to be able to continue doing what I love to do. Don't get too close so they will be able to hear you. We are fishing with dynamite. Nuclear dynamite? America is a big fish. I hope the general has the nerve to follow this through. The general would skin himself alive for the empire. And it's not wise to question him. He's questioning. I've come this far. I would follow him to my grave. I too would follow him to your grave. Me too. Here, we're just going to be following them. I'll be a little bit of distance behind. There are certain moments where they actually turn on their flashlight. And there's a section up ahead when they will... He'll come all the way back. That you have to be careful. Other than that, it's just pretty much tailing them. Uh, it's not too difficult to do. And... Uh, should be able to get it on your first time. The Georgians are another story. Nicolas is a great man. Yes, of course. Definitely. The colonels I could do without. What about Grinko? Frightened. Me too. He is a good soldier. He'll make an excellent sacrifice. Yes. Here, you're just going to want to wait. This guard does come almost all the way back here. So if you move up too much, obviously he's going to see you with that flashlight. And at this point, you're pretty much going to be good to go for going straight ahead. Just give him a little bit of space and you'll be all right. I don't think we can beat the Americans. But what about the Ark? What about the General's device? We've got... Of course we can hurt them. But America has spread too far. We could never crush all the cells. Not this again. What? Tang's got this idea about fast food restaurants and amusement parks. They have the American version of terrorist cells. You know, small, widely scattered, independent, high-tech, coordinated propaganda centers. Aren't you clever? You will see. We can kill their soldiers and flatten their capitals, but we will never beat their hamburger stands. This is why I hate being on patrol with Tang. This point's when they're going to start separating. Uh, the guy in the back is going to go off to the right. Just keep moving forward. And this is where you're going to get up.
Stay right here. And wait till he passes. And we're going to be meeting up with our contact. And we're already pretty much halfway through the level. It's a bright, cold day in April. Good, good. Take this, okay? You late, but you're here. Okay, we need to do this quickly. Go ahead. That map will show you the general's office in the courtyard. I thought it was the ambassador's office. It was, but some Chinese general has been using it. You can see for yourself. You get into the embassy grounds through the rear service entrance. Is there a gate? Yes, but a delivery truck will be pulling through shortly. You can sneak in past the truck, no problem. But you only have one chance at it. Solid work. I'm very good at my job. Okay, bye-bye. This is definitely one of the more easier missions in all of Splinter Cell. The lighting in this game is just so amazing. Alright, this is where it can be a little tricky. be a little tricky sometimes to get through there, but it's not too bad. Make sure you stick to the uh, shadows here. Word of caution, Fisher. That truck's going to be your only chance to get inside the embassy. Be quick Don't here. There is a guard. Going on. All you need to know is this. If you do find Nicolades in there, be ready to scramble. One wrong step could mean more. If anybody in the embassy triggers an alarm, we're pulling you out. The mission's over. Wait for this guy to go by. Now there's going to be a dog up ahead that makes it super, super tough. Whatever you do, make sure he is not following you before you get to the save point. Because if he is following you, he will automatically find you and there's nothing you can do.
Now, as I said, the dog is just gonna pretty much hunt you down. Which is why you want to stay in the water. There you go. Follow your buddy. Okay, looks like we might be okay. So hopefully that means we're alright. Looks like the dog isn't following Good us. Good lord, Fisher. That's General Kong Ferong. Good lord. Who's that? He was the chairman of China's Central Military Commission until 01. Very high PLA muckamuck. A Chinese general talking to Nikolaj isn't good news. Whatever he's going to say when that conversation resumes just became our highest priority. Stay with him. Time to get invisible. Anyone so much as sees you when the mission's over. Now remember... It can be very difficult to get past that dog because he will find you out. You literally have to kind of wait in the water. Um, I had to restart many times because the dog would just always come and locate me. So we're going to need to use the mic one more time. And there is the exit. So we'll have to figure out how to get across. Not the only ones I'm worried about eavesdropping. They are just the most stupid. Of course. How many times will the signal be rerouted? You also believe your Kona Peninsula base untraceable. I understand the psychology of war. Yes, yes, yes. I've attended many executions, but never Americans. Oh, hold on a second. Driver, how far away is this for me? Ten minutes, maybe more. But we'll have to stand a police check along the way. No, it's not worth the trouble. I will just walk the broadcast like everyone else. <laughs> yes, too true. <laughs> you are a wicked man, Mr. Nicolas. I hope your performance goes well. Take care. They're going to execute the soldiers. Sounds like it. You've got to stop them. Rendezvous with Coley. I'll forward her the coordinates for Mook. Mook Tell Ball. Right. Auspicious hunting ground. Damn straight. The time for subtlety is past. I need to get this to the Joint Chiefs. See if this means war. All right, so the next part is we just have to get across the street. But we have to go through a lot of light to get there. Trust me when I say, just be patient. Now is not your time. He moves forward, he turns around, he looks back, and then you're like, ah, this is the perfect opportunity. However, tiseth be not. And I know there's this big red light there that you think you could be seeing, but don't worry. 
kind of got to wait like two cycles before you have the perfect opportunity to move forward. I'm sure there's another way that you could do it, but none that I found that make any sense. As you can see, this can be quite tough. I think your best bet is when he moves now. Very close, but we're good. As you can see, that can be quite quite tough. Hop in the back. We gotta go. Grab hold of something. Though the evidence itself has not been revealed, U.S. intelligence is claiming to have proof of China manufacturing nuclear weapons, a blatant infraction of international treaties. China has made an unmitigated denial of the charges, restating the belief that... Diplomatic talks with China continue to crumble. U.S. military forces are mobilizing towards the anticipation of possible hostilities. China again denies any involvement in Combein Nikoladze's... Oh, my God. Broadcast through the Internet just minutes ago. Cannot allow my nation to be subjected to the blatant international despotism of the United States or the cronyism of its allies. The world is not yours alone. And the soldiers you send into it are all equally guilty of American fascism. At 5.30 p.m. Greenwich Standard Time, the United States soldiers captured in a just war against their motherland will be executed. Their deaths broadcast for the world to watch. Fisher, we're getting close to war. Nicolas kills these men on live broadcast, we're sunk. Are we worrying about the broadcast or the murders? For now, the broadcast. It'll buy us time to stop the killings. Nicolas is broadcasting from an antenna on the roof. That's your first objective. You'll find the rest on your offsite. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back, finally, to a new episode for Splinter Cell. This is our no-knockout walkthrough, pretty much making this entire game as challenging as pos possible. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this first section here, pretty easy. Just do what I do. You should be able to get by that section uh, without any problems. But uh, next section is going to be a little bit tougher. Colonel, this is Badri. The landmines are in place. Make sure nobody without the polarized thermal sensor enters the courtyard. Make sure you try to make as little amount of noise as you can. Go slow. Take your time. Now, there are two different routes that you can take through here to get you through. I'm going to show you this specific one, which usually works more than the other one, so that's why I'm showing this one off. Make sure that you always put yourself back into crouched position when you land. If you do not, then you'll land loud. So, in this game, was the first Splinter Cell game actually made you have to hit the crouch button every single time you got off on another surface, whereas in the other Splinter Cell games, when you were already in a crouch position, you would land in that crouch position. Unfortunately, in this game, it doesn't work that way. So you have to press a few extra buttons in order to make sure that you land soft. But as long as you stay away from the light, you're good to go. Continue to move slow. You should be fine. Now, the next section up ahead is very simple. All you're going to want to do is make sure that you only move when it is darkness, and then you should be good to go. This level is... I think a lot would agree the hardest level in Splinter Cell. That is because this game was just not meant to be played the way that I play it. So it's really tough. Once the lights are out, you can move forward. I want all identifying details stricken from the roof. 
Make sure that you stay off of the actual roof. If you land it all on the roof, you're going to get a warning. After the first warning, you will automatically have someone come out and then you're going to be caught. Once the light goes out, that's when you can start to move forward. If you don't, you'll be seen from down below. And then just pretty much move exactly like you see me. It's not difficult to do. You can do it on your first try. It's pretty easy. However, every section of the level after this part is going to be where true patience and love of stealth is going to come in handy. We're playing the game completely different than what this game was made. This game was made to knock people out. It was made to probably kill a few people. It wasn't made to do it in a kind of bypass everybody situation, which is why this level is mandatory for actually knocking people out. What the hell just happened? The broadcast antenna's down. We've got no outgoing signal. You're under attack. The Americans are here. They've taken out the broadcast antenna. Get Nikolaj out of here. I want his helicopter airborne now. I want a squad of technicians with an armed escort on the roof and repairing that antenna. I want the Americans found and killed. Yes, sir. Sounds like you shook things up pretty well. It's only going to buy us a few minutes. Find those soldiers, Fisher. Make sure immediately as the cinema is over, you run over to this area. A guard is going to be coming through. Be a little patient at the door, wait for him to go by, and you should be good to go. Now when you open this next door, be slow. Don't move immediately. Wait right here just a second. This is going to keep the door open for the guy long enough so he can go right through the door instead of the door shutting and then having him to open it again, which can cause you sometimes to be seen. We have Nicolaj on board. Estimated departure in. This is a very, very tricky maneuver. Obviously, remain as silent as possible. What we're going to do is we need to make sure that we land on the sink in crouched position. If you do not land on the sink there in a crouched position, you will be heard and then you won't be able to pull this off. Just steadily creep your way, do the creep, and then you should be able to get by this guard. It might take you a few times. Very, very tricky to do, but it's crazy. All right, so for this next area, it's pretty simple. We're just not going to take them out. But unlike the other games, when you use diversion lures and you use your gas, it actually knocks them out in other games. But in this game, it just disorientates them, and you would actually have to go up to each individual one and knock them out. Since we're not going to do any knockouts for people that we don't have to, you can actually get through this by using one division lure on all three and then just hurry, move down, and go into the next area. Which, I will say, the next area is definitely one of the toughest areas in this game, period. Use the gas. As you can see, they're stunned. And just go ahead and move on by them. We're not knocking them out. Now, automatically, you know, they're going to be wondering what just happened, but they won't come into this room, so you're good. Here is the toughest room in the game. This is the freezer section. I'm sure a lot of you probably remember this and how tough it is. There are so many enemies in a very small area. Do exactly as I do and... Hopefully, after about a million tries, you will be able to do what you're about to see. First room, pretty easy. Wait till he moves, then go. You need to have your thermals on because there is a turret here. And you will not be able to see the turret unless your thermals are on, so you won't know if you can move forward or not. Now here, this is the room that's going to cause you a lot of pain. We're going to do this without taking any one out. Oh boy, it's tough. Now I live streamed this and it took a total of about six hours to complete this entire level the way that you're seeing it done in just a short period of time. Obviously a lot of edits, checkpoints, 
learning the levels. It's crazy. So get right here, wait till he turns, then you can move forward. Sometimes you'll be seen there. It's very, very uh, finicky. As soon as this guy turns around, you're going to get up here. You're going to immediately get out your division lore. And you're going to set the noise. And you're going to do it like five times in a row. Super fast. If you've done it correctly, this guy will start looking in that direction. And he'll be stunned for a little second, just waiting there. Then the other guy on the far left side is going to move across to actually investigate. This will give you the room to actually move up and to complete what you need to do. This is is very very difficult to pull off and you will not get it every single time that's the nature of this game in in pandora tomorrow in chaos theory a lot of strategies that i've showed you are things that you can replicate very very easily because the controls were better everything was a little bit more modernized and everything felt better in the original splinter cell the controls really get in your way and there's a lot of different things that can happen that can screw you up but here you're going to want to move and do this. The reason that we actually climbed the pipe was because this turret right here. If you try to go past it, the turret will see you and of course you're going to take damage. Since we're trying to go for a no damage and a uh, stealthy, stealthy ghost kind of walkthrough, that adds the challenge to it. And I'm telling you guys, if you could leave a like to show your appreciation for the hard work that this took to actually do it would be greatly appreciated. Also, become a member of our YouTube channel. It helps us so that we continue to do it full-time. This is how we get paid, so any little bit helps. Thank you guys so much for uh, everything so far. All right, so for this next section, very easy to do. Just It just depends on where this guy on the right is. Sometimes he's up there, sometimes he's back. If he's back, it's a lot quicker, but if he's forward, you really have no way of knowing when you come into this room where is he going to be. So, wait until he's moving in the opposite direction. Inch by inch, you're going to want to sneak past this guy here on the right side. Make sure you stay as close to the wall that you can, and then you should be okay. It might take a few times, but you should be able to get through without any distractions. Here, you're just going to want to go ahead and get up against the far corner. Jump up so you can actually grab this. Wait until this guy is turned around before you actually do that. And then when you drop down, make sure you do exactly what I do. Don't try to just jump in there because you'll just continually, you won't, you won't be able to jump in. So you have to do that right there. You have to go in from the grate. Here, I mean, very simple. Get out, wait for the guard to be moving in the opposite direction. Once he is moved in that opposite direction, then it becomes pretty easy uh, to escape the first half of the level. Now, the second half, I would say, is the toughest part in this level. I know the freezer is a ridiculous section, but what I'm about to show you is something that will take you millions and millions of tries to do. And then it's very tough, but as you will see, you can pull it off. Alright, so we're going to be heading into the next area. It'll do a little cut here. All right, so here you're going to want to immediately move as fast as you can until you get to this point and then move to the left. I find it easier to use the uh, SC-20K instead of the pistol because the pistol is horrible. Pistol does not shoot right. You're going to see this guy's shadow. Once he turns, take two steps forward and then run. Zoom in. Shoot. Zoom in. Shoot. Move around the horseshoe and then all the way to the back behind the turret. I know you can't see what's going on right now, so I recommend you watch that a few times in order to completely understand it. We're going to switch to pistol here. You should be able to get by without the turret hitting you and without the guard seeing you. This guy does different things. Look back and see what he does. If he continues to move back, then you're free to move forward. If you see him start to turn around, you're going to want to not move into this area just yet or else he'll see you right here. It just depends on what he does, and it's always different. Here we're going to take out and deactivate the two turrets. Actually, you only need to do the one that's on the left right here, because the other turret will never really see you from where we're going, so you can just do the one. You saw what I did there. I ran up against the corner, and then I ran so that this guard would hear my footsteps, and the other guy is just doing his patrol. This is really tricky. Make sure that you turn around and you go slow when you go through here. 
Wait until the turret is on the far side. Now, this will take a few shots. Even if you see me aiming perfectly, it's just how the game is. The game is horrible when it comes to aiming. And then do a nice little roll, and you're good to go. Very tough to get through. Holy crap. I, I, I wish... Just watch the live stream, and you'll understand how tough it is. Once they're done talking, you can move forward. Now you've only got the final area in the game, and it is a lot easier to do once you memorize where they're coming out. It's probably one of the easiest to do in this level. This is where you absolutely have to knock out people. There's nothing you can do. But it says you need to kill the, the main guy, Green, Grinko, I think his name is. But you don't have to. You can actually knock him out and you will still get... Um, it'll still count. Grinko wouldn't let them torture us. He kept saying we had to look pretty for our execution. What you're gonna want to do is you want to go all the way to this side and talk to the Chinese ambassador. You are American. You're Chinese. The PRC ambassador to Myanmar. I must speak with a representative of your government. They hear everything I do. Shoot. Kong Furong does not represent the will of China. He is a splinter faction of the Chinese army. All of them fanatics and fools. What does he want? First, Taiwan, with others to follow gifts to the PRC he thinks they will not be able to refuse. How is Nicolaides involved? Trade. Farong provides transport and munitions in exchange for weapons-grade nuclear waste. Does China know? No. And unless they are issued proof of Farong's activities, I fear the certainty of war. What's the proof? On the computer in his office. My office. He has overridden and reset the lock. I force him to open his computer and forward the contents to the PRC. And our countries don't go to war. Such is my hope. All right, here we go. So immediately run up and go to the left. We're going to get out our airfoil rounds and aim about right here. It's going to take you a while before you get used to it. First guy is going to come right here. He's going to pop his head up and you're going to take him out in one shot. Second guy is going to come running up on you. You're going to hit him in the body as soon as he comes up and knock him out with your fists. Third guy, you want to go ahead and switch to your, um, whatever you call that one, I, the sticky shot. Wait for him to come around the corner, shoot. Immediately switch back to your airfoil, get up, and we're going to take out the guy in the red beret. Immediately get down and get ready to fire another shot on this guy as soon as he comes around the corner, and then hit him. All that's left is uh, Gringo, and then what you want to do is uh, use your Sticky Shocker, and this might take you a few times. There you go. So, once Gringo's dead, they scatter. Let's hope so. Gringo dead! He killed Gringo! Repeat that! This is what Gringo is dead! Fisher, Echelon just picked out an intercept. Mirong knows that Grinko's dead and Nicolades is gone. That's not good. Get back to the embassy. He's trying to destroy the evidence that could keep us out of a war. Right. Since the unexplained interruption of the webcast executions, no information of the captured American soldiers has surfaced. Has instated a complete media blackout regarding diplomatic negotiations between the U.S. and China. Authorities warn of the very real possibility of Georgian mercenaries releasing falsified news reports. The possibility that China was in any way involved in the still unconfirmed execution of American soldiers. In the hope that the crisis can be averted before leading to world war. We'll make this fast, Fisher. We need proof that Farong represents a splinter faction opposed to the Chinese government. Am I still on leash inside the embassy? Not at all. You're fully authorized to use lethal force. Fifth freedom with everybody, except Farong. We can't risk killing him until we've got proof. We're done with politics. This is war. 
This is as close as we get. Lambert's worried about spooking Farong. We'll make it work. Do good, Agent. I don't want to go to war. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistrain one your host, and welcome to the next video in our Splinter Cell walkthrough. This is something that I never thought we'd be able to say, but I believe that we have accomplished a world record in this level, meaning that we take absolutely nobody out. Nobody. The only person that we even touch is the main target that you have to interrogate him. We don't even kill him. We don't knock him out. We don't do anything. So I have figured a way how to get through this entire level without taking a single person out. And I believe... I'm not 100% sure, but I believe I might be the only one. We're going to have a whole mess of keypad locked doors to get around, and we won't be able to count on captured intelligence for the codes. And you'll need to improvise. So, again, if you want to watch how I figured all of this out, uh, you can check out the live stream. Other than that, I'm going to pretty much just guide you through this entire mission here. We're going to wait here. The rest, just do exactly what I did. As you can see, it was very easy to get through. Once he actually turns around, that's when you can go ahead and make your way forward. first part of this uh, entire level is very, very easy to pull off. And all you're going to be doing is a little bit of platforming, so I can get the chance to go ahead and explain a few things to you that's going to happen up in the next section. So, the next section, you're going to go up against these three guys. Normally, the game is meant for you to take those three guys out. And the reason I say that it is scripted for you to take them out is because there is music that plays. So once all three of those guys are alive, the music will continue to play. But once you take out those three guys, the music will stop, and then you continue on with the level. However, if you're able to figure out how to get around those guys without taking them out, the music will still continue to go, which is kind of like a glitch, but you will be able to get through the next section. We've got an idea for the keypad locked doors. Go ahead, Grim. The average temperature in the embassy might be cool enough that you could sense a heat difference on the keypads. It's worth a try. These doors are our only way forward. All right, so here we go. So normally you would take these three guys out. But we're not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is we're going to shoot out the light. It will not disturb them because there's other noises going on. We're going to sneak around this guy and we're going to go ahead and move forward. It's very easy to do, but a lot of people might not thought you can actually do this. Now normally when you take them out, the music stops. But because we're not taking them out, this music will continue the rest of the first part of the mission. How does it look? I don't know how much of this we can use. They've wiped me most of them. Lambert, take a look. Oh, you're dead. I just found the missing RSC in 239. Back in a second mission. If you don't want uh, to be seen, you have to take these two lights out or else those guys will still see you. New objective to Turtle. There's a convoy of trucks in a warehouse on the embassy ground. Sure they never leave. I know you're not equipped with enough explosives, but anything with a full tank of gas is a bomb for a fuse. So I need to worry about radiation. The components aren't assembled. Won't trigger anything nuclear. First thing we did as soon as the uh, as soon as we got control is we ran. You gotta run. It uh, it makes it so they hear you and they do what they're doing here. I want that convoy ready to move. If done correctly, they should be moving back and forth and get into this corner. There is a camera, but if you stay on the outside that you saw us run around that little uh, area there, then you're in the dark. And then here you can just go ahead and move forward. Now, these guards will do different things, so sometimes you just have to fly by the seat of your pants a little bit, but you should be able to accomplish exactly what I did, and it shouldn't take you too long. Here, just enter the door and then turn back around. We'll be calling out for you. Relocate your patrol to the main hall. So the thing about this section here is you need to use your thermals to see which the, the codes are. But if you're quick enough, then you don't have to. As soon as you see him go up the stairs, wait one second, and then go. If you do that, this guard will not see you as you exit. Go through the door, and then back out. That resets the timer for the door to close. You're going to get on this right side here. Now you got to watch out for the turret. Don't move too far to the left. Wait until the turret is looking to the left. And then go up. This can be a very tricky thing to do, so just, you know, give it a few tries. 
Now this is even trickier. Sometimes you won't be able to jump on this wall. So just all I can tell you is try to do exactly what you see me do and you should make it. Make sure you have your diversion camera out. Use the noise and then you're free to go. Now you're going to climb this here. Now what we need to do is we have a lot of lights we have to take out if you want to do this correctly. So first light is going to be on the left here. As you can see we moved a little bit too far but the shooting is not very good with the pistol. We're going to take out that light. We're going to take out this light and the one above us. As you can see it's really bad. And you still need to take out one more right there. I know you can barely see it but you've got to keep shooting until you get it. Every night, every light needs to be taken out in this specific area because guards are looking right at you and you won't be able to make it over here unless you do it. Now it's going to take a while. So you might be asking, why are we doing it this way? That is because there is a way for you to get around. That's right. We can get around the guy who does the, the eye thing or whatever you want to call it. Normally what's going to happen is the commander or the colonel is going to use the retinal scanner to open the door. Then you knock him out and then you go up to that door and use the retinal scanner on him. But if you create a distraction while or should I say just after he used the retinal scanner then you're able to get them to move out of the way while the door is still open and you can go through. It is very tricky, and you're probably not gonna get it. This is something that is only gonna happen maybe once in a million times. This is not something you can probably pull off or replicate on an easy basis. But if you're able to do exactly what you see me, because what I did was when I went through this level, I finished it and I took out the three guys and I took out this guy. But then I thought to myself, maybe, just maybe, we can find some way to take to not take anyone out. So I went back in the live stream and we redid it, just these first two sections here, and then we found a way. Unfortunately, this takes a little bit longer because if you don't shoot out all the lights like I did, then they're automatically gonna be, you would already be past this part, but because you have to shoot the lights out in order to hang exactly where we're hanging. Because you gotta get close enough to do this. Make a little noise when you drop. Notice, you already heard the thing start going. Don't drop until you hear the noise. Once you hear the noise, that means he's already done it and you can go ahead and create the distraction. Boom. Guys, I believe we are the only person that may have figured this out. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but that was a freaking challenge. All right, so moving on here, you're going to immediately, as soon as you get past this threshold, jump down and go to the right, and then immediately come back to the left. If done correctly, these two guards should not be able to get the drop on you, but they will start moving forward. This can take you a few times as there's a guard on the left as soon as you enter this area that will see you. He's the one that originally sees you and then this guy sees you as well. So it can be a little tricky. You might get seen a few times, but you should be able to get around it. But as you can see, the music isn't playing anymore because it loaded into a new section. So thank God. Remember, we did that. The game was not expecting us to do it. We literally broke the game and that's why the music continued to play that whole time. Here, wait, he's gonna see you. As soon as he turns, move up. Don't move too fast because he'll hear you and then he'll move to where you are now. So you don't want to move too fast, but you don't want to be too slow either. This is so he keeps going around to where you originally were and then you can get around. Next section is really easy to get through. All you have to do is just wait for like uh, uh, two seconds in one part, which is kind of confusing because this little section right here has its own save point and it's really not needed. So wait till him to turn back the other direction and then you can go ahead and move forward. It might be a little hard to jump through here sometimes. But there's a retinal scanner here. That's why you need to hurry up and try to get as close to him as you can. Here you're going to go ahead and get out your diversion camera and you're going to put it in the bottom of this area right here where I'm aiming. Wait a few seconds. Trust me, waiting is, is what you want to do because you don't want the other guy to hear it. 
Once he moves in, then you can move up. This can be tricky. There's a camera right above you. So wait until you think you're going to be able to make it without the camera fully seeing you. As you can see, very tricky move to pull off. Here, you should be able to run, but do a roll. Because there's a camera straight in front of you. And if you wait too long, the camera will see you. Alright, so here you just want to make sure no one is looking in your direction. And if you've done it correctly, you should be good to go. That's enough, man. We've got more than enough fuel on board, and we need to get moving. Okay. This part's pretty easy. Go ahead and switch to your SC-20K, and we're going to go ahead and shoot the, the gas. Or the pump, should I say. Now, there's nothing over there. I was just waiting for him to finish what he was saying. And we're going to drop down into the next area. Now, this part can be a little tricky. Because sometimes this guard will still see you, even though he shouldn't. But it does happen. And I don't know why. It's just very finicky. It's kind of like you've got to be in the most perfect spot for this guy not to see you. Otherwise, you are absolutely 100% going to have to take him out. But give it a few tries. I mean, you can try different areas on here uh, where I actually get works. But it doesn't always work. Sometimes he will see you even if you're in this exact same spot. Now make sure you uh, quickly get to this little shadow area. There's another guard that's going to come up. He's the guy that we're going to be following. I need help! The general is trying to kill himself! Where are you? His office! Hurry! Alright, and just follow him. The other guy is far enough back to where he won't see you. Now you want to stick as close as you can to this guy. Don't let him get too far ahead. This is all on a timer. You need to be able to uh, get these codes on a quick... You have a timer. You have a limited amount of time to actually do this. If you don't do it in the correct amount of time, then the mission will just fail. So you're going to use your thermals, and you can see it's going to go lightest to dark. So it's going to be um, 1, 4, 5, 6. Hopefully you're able to figure that out. So the darker it is, or should I say the redder it is, that's the, the last number. And then the lighter it is, is the number that you want to hit first. So that one specifically should always be 1, 4, 5, 6. Now remember, all of this is on a timer. So you got to get up quickly and you got to get through each door as quick as possible until you get to the checkpoint. Because you will fail this if you are not quick enough. Now this one you can see that it is 1, 8, 3, 4. And again, it just follows that pattern. The lightest to the reddest. 7, 9, 2, 1. And there you go. Last up is the final checkpoint, and you should be good to go on this one. This one's not too difficult. I'm going to shoot myself. Not in the face. <laughs> you are American. You are the cause of all my sorrows, yes? Perhaps you will do me the favor of killing me. Immediately go to the left side and jump up over this. If you don't do it quick enough, he will shoot you and get behind him. 
I'm going to unlock the data in your computer, and you're going to help me. Go to hell! You can't force a dead man into anything! You're not dead yet. The rest of your life is all you've got, and how painful that is depends on your cooperation. My life was suffering long before you got here. Do your worst! <laughs> Will do. Where did Nikolaus run to? I don't know. I don't care! You owe the man no loyalty. He fled. He betrayed you. I hope you find and kill him. But I do not know where he is. Okay, we're going to use the computer. Now, he just falls to his death. We don't actually do anything. Therefore, technically, we didn't knock anyone out. He just falls to his death. Fantastic work. How does the data look? Solid. This completely separates Ferong from the China. Fantastic. And the relevant stuff to the Joint Chiefs. Or with the same to China. Sure, we're done in my Meet Cohen and get the hell out of there. Alright, so just be careful. You see me stop at certain places. You can still take damage in these uh, sections. And that's it, ladies and gents. We have done something I don't believe anyone else has. If, you, if they have done it, let me know. I mean, that'd be great to know. Fisher, it's time we talked about the Ark. What is it? What Nikolaj wants most in the world and what we're going to catch him by. That's all we know. We know the Ark is hidden somewhere inside the Georgian Presidential Palace. And we know Varlam Kristavi is letting him take it. Who's Kristavi? The new president of Georgia, pushed into power by our friends at the CIA. It doesn't make sense. We'll do the thinking. Your primary mission in Georgia will be Nikolaj's. We get him and the game's over. The good guys win. Were you talking to Lambert? Yeah. How soon before we touch down in Georgia? We don't. You'll be making a halo jump. Good. Dad, is that you? Sarah, it's good to hear your voice. Are you coming home? The TV said you guys beat Nicolas. It's not that simple. So you're not coming home? No, honey, not yet. But soon. A collective sigh of relief as the U.S. returned to a state of amicable diplomacy with China. The swift action of the CIA and Chinese intelligence revealed a splinter faction of the Chinese military covertly supporting the Georgian information crisis. Declaring a national day of mourning for those lost in the Georgian information crisis. Confirms the consummate defeat of Combain Nikolaj's cyber warriors. The acts of information terrorism have come to an end. And in a ceremony later today, President Bowers will be issuing an official thanks to the CIA, FBI, and U.S. Special Forces for their role in bringing an end to the crisis. Though his whereabouts are still unknown, Combain Nicolades is essentially powerless. We have torn off the scorpion's claws. We have severed his tail. And he cannot stay hidden for long. Welcome back to Georgia, Fisher. Our cleanest path to the Ark is President Kristavi's records. Details on your offset. What if Kristavi gets in my way? Don't touch him. He's copacetic with the CIA. If Kristavi dies, the mission's over. What's up, ladies and gents, and welcome to the final mission for our Splinter Cell No Knockout Hard Kind of Invisible Ghost to Walk Through. So, check this out. You can complete this entire mission without taking anyone out. The only thing that you have to do is obviously kill the main objective, but that is it. Everything else you can get around, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. This wasn't easy, but it also wasn't super tough like uh, some of the other missions. Uh, the hardest thing right here is just getting through this little parkour section, as you're probably going to die a few times. Um, it's just the way that the game is programmed and whatnot. It's, it's really hard to do some of this parkour stuff, especially when you're trying to leap jump from one area to the next. Sometimes you can calculate the wrong angle and then you'll accidentally fall to your death. But other than that, it won't be too bad. So once we get up here, all I can say is that this is not how it's going to happen for you. Is maybe you'll get lucky. If the enemies seem like they're in 
this type of orientation when you come up to the part that I tell you, then that means you should be able to get through it exactly like I do. But there is a lot of what ifs. It always depends on where the enemies are when you hit this save point right here. That will depend pretty much where these enemies are going to be. So if you're in the same spot, this is how you're going to want to do it. Otherwise, it's going to be different. Why don't you clean up after your dog? Who is that? Get that damn spotlight out of my eyes, you filthy sniper! Notice how all the enemies are on the right side, so that's not always going to happen. Sometimes these enemies are going to be on the left. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. So just watch out for the flashlight. Speak up a set. And make sure you're moving slowly. The dogs will start to follow you automatically. There's nothing you can do about that. But if you're quick, you're good. You're going to make a little bit of noise here. That is to get this guy's attention so he'll come and inspect it. Quickly, if you've done everything in the amount of time that I have, get over to here and hurry up and get to this code. This code will always be the same, so whatever you see me enter, 2126 will always be the code. If you do it quick enough, you can get to this point and have this ready. The other guard that you distracted, he's still in the other area. So once this guy turns around, you're free to move to the left and you can get through this section without any problems. Hopefully it'll work out the same way uh, as it will for you. So this next bit up ahead is pretty simple. All you want to do is go to the far side of the room to trigger the next thing, and then immediately come back. Stand on the left side of this door. Do not stand on the right side of the door. If you do in the right side of the door, the guard that comes over to that area will trigger the, uh, the laser, and then for some reason, just because you're close to it, you'll automatically be seen. There's going to be a total of four guards that come out of this door. So wait to the fourth one. Just turn around and make sure that no one is looking in your direction. And as you can see, you should be able to get through here with no problem. Here, if you can do a jump correctly, you can make this a lot easier, but sometimes Sam will jump to the left, sometimes he'll jump to the right. So in this instance, he jumped on the left side to the right. If he does that, just shimmy along the way. As you'll see, there are three lasers right here, so obviously you can't jump them. You're just going to need to keep moving. And you don't even need to let go. Just keep moving to the left, and Sam will automatically let go. Jump up here as well, as there's other lasers. And then we'll move on into the next section, which you want to do exactly what I do in order to be able to pass this. Those aren't palace guards. Some kind of special forces. Georgian elite. Probably Kristavi's men. Which would suggest Nikolaj's is local. Does that affect my game? No. Find those interrogation files. And Kristavi's men aren't going to be much friendlier than Nikolaj's. You're authorized for lethal force. Now, if you do everything the way that I just did, this is how it's going to work. I if you wait till he's past that pole that you saw him at as soon as I started going, then he will not hear you and you are good to go. Sometimes the guard below can hear you, but a lot of times he doesn't. He doesn't really matter. Even if he does hear you a little bit, it doesn't matter. You're going to be fine. So you're going to go up here, move slow enough to where you're not making too much noise, and you're going to be able to get this code without knocking him out because you are, we already have the code, so I'm just going to tell you what the code is. 7002. If you do that um, and just kind of inch your way forward, now you do originally get the code off of this guy, so you do have to knock him out once um, to get the code, but if you already know the code, then you're fine. So you're going to have to wait a little bit here, as this it all depends on how long it took you to get through the room before, because you have to wait until they come to this point. Then they're going to start going back, and then the two guys are going to come out, one on the left first, and then one on the right. Wait till the one on the right is coming out. Make sure you guys click join to help us out. This is what we do for a living here on YouTube. So um, click that join button. There are four different tiers that you can join. It's just like Twitch subscriptions. It helps us out and allows us to continue to make these awesome videos for you guys. This is what we do for a living, meaning that um, if we're not able to sustain it, obviously we're going to have to... Uh, not be able to do YouTube pretty much um, in, in order to so we want to be able to continue so just if you can help out it always does help if you can't just make sure you always leave a like and you uh, share the video as much as possible
If you've done everything the way that I've done, you should have no problem getting around the camera. The timing-wise should be perfect. And then just use your lockpick to get through here. This next section is not difficult at all. You just need to be as quick as you possibly can be. Now, the Xbox and PC versions are a little different, and this will not be the same exact way on the PC version. So as soon as you jump here, start running and go as fast as you can. If you take too much time, he will see you every time you're on this laptop. But if you do it now at the point that I did, he will get a little glimpse, but he won't go into aggro mode. And you're good to go. The Ark is a Saturn. What? A special atomic demolition munition. You mean a nuclear suitcase bomb? Yeah. I'll get back to you. Obviously, we're going to wait for this. Be a little patient. The Ark is the mission, Fisher. Get it. It's in a safe inside a vault in the library. Locked by scanner to Nikolaj's retina. So I'm going to need Nikolaj's alive. Maybe it That's was right. part of this Nikolaj's business. Wait till the guard turns. And make sure the camera is facing in a different direction. There's going to be one guy that comes through this area here. Stick to the right side and get up against the wall and uncrouch. He should move exactly by you without actually seeing you or hearing you. And you've pretty much made it through this section. You got one camera to worry about, but you're in the dark enough to where you can just continually move even if the camera is looking right in your direction. And we're going to move on to the second part of the level. Here, you're going to have the code inside your OPSAT. Nikolaj is inside. Everybody at alert. We are retrieving the ark. Be ready to get out of here. 6676. Six, six. You're going to get all the way up here. Now, these guards can be doing different things. A lot of the time, they bunch together, but sometimes they could be at an equal spacing apart. So I can only give you the uh, strategy for when they're a little bit bunched together, but if they're a little spaced apart, you just got to kind of... Be on the lookout and go when you think you can go, right? A lot of stealth has to do with a lot of just kind of getting a feel for everything. So stay close to these guys. As soon as he turns, then go ahead and switch the object and go ahead and set your uh, elevator to down. Sometimes this guy can see you, so if you are spotted, just start it over. This next section is really tough, the next two sections. But we'll show you how to get through it uh, with no problems. We have an intruder! Some kind of American commando. Get Nikolaj into the vault, keep his head down until we take care of this. This is an automatic detection. Here you're gonna move forward to the right, keep going, do not stop, move as fast as you can, and you will not get hit. A lot of people are gonna be like, whoa, how did you just do that? Because that's a tough little thing. Just do exactly what I do, and you'll do it every time. Here I'm gonna use the air four round on Nikolaj's because I don't want him to actually detect me, even though it doesn't matter. But I, th I think it's fun to just kind of knock him out a little bit. Even though we're not knocking him out, we're just using one. Just to keep him still. And then we're going to go ahead and interrogate him. Tell me about the ark. Let me walk away. I can make you rich. I know what it is. I want to know where it came from. This gets you no help. What are you going to do with it? With what? The Ark. Where are you going to detonate it? Kill me, or let me go. What you're doing now is hopeless. Tell me about the Ark. This is pure. I'll say no more. Nobody move. Hands in the air. Nobody move. Nobody move. Switch to your smoke Come grenades. And who is your friend? An American? And wait. Yes, him. You will give us the Ark. I am not God. You will give us the Ark. I honestly don't know what you are speaking of. Christavi knows it is a nuclear suitcase bomb. And he knows you have it. Eleven men. Does he know that it is already in America? What? The Ark is not here. Keep talking. The only thing in this vault is the activation. The bomb itself is in America. If Christophe guarantees my freedom, I'll tell you where to find the Ark. Give us the activation key. This spy has the key, this American. You'll have to take it from him. I can give you the location, 
but only on the condition of my safety and freedom. Agreed. You two, escort Mr. Nicholas out of the library. You, who are you? Don't talk, Fisher. We're arranging for a blackout in five seconds. Make the most of it. When he counts down and you hear two, Give that's when you want to move forward. You can hand it to me, or I can take it from your corpse. You have five seconds to decide. Four seconds. Three, two... Who did that? Do what I do. We're going to throw um, two smoke grenades to the right. And then air four around. Hit him. Keep moving. And there you go. A lot harder than it looks. As I said, that could take you a while to get. So remember, two smoke grenades to the right. Immediately go to airfoil. Keep moving while you're shooting the airfoil round, or else uh, you still might get shot. Wait till that guard is past that pillar, the third one, the and then you're good to go. American is carrying intelligence vital to the safety of our nation. His capture or death is our highest imperative. All I can say is it's going to take you a while before that actually works, but I promise you will be able to get it. Easy headshot. Sharp work, Fisher. It's time to get scarce. That data you're carrying is the last of it. The last of what? Nicolette's threat against the U.S. Here, you're just going to remove as quickly as you can. Shot fired in Kastavi's office. And get up against the table. What's Kastavi's status? Cover President Kastavi. Now, the reason we're up against this table instead of like what I did on my last walkthrough of this game is because we're this is a spot that you can get, one of the only spots where you're still kind of invisible. There you go, ladies and gents. Follow the rest of it, and you should complete the level. Make sure you land soft here. There you go, ladies and gents. Intelligence gained from the Georgian Presidential Palace identified the Ark as a special atomic munitions device. The fact that it was already in place a short distance from Washington, D.C. made Nikolaj a clear threat of the safety of the American people. In accordance with the Fifth Freedom, that threat was neutralized. Good job. An eight-story apartment building and surrounding four blocks in Hopegate, Maryland, were evacuated today by the National Guard. Authorities cited a gas leak as the reason for the evacuation, stressing that today's events had no relation whatsoever to Combein Nicolats or the Georgian information crisis. Hopegate, less than half an hour from downtown Washington, D.C., will... Since the recovery and confirmed identity of President Combein Nicolaz's corpse, 
five days ago. Palace guards fatally shot President Nicolás in the midst of what appears to have been an attempted ousting of acting president Varlam Kristavi. In a press conference this morning, U.S. President Bowers lauded the American people for their courage. We were injured, we stumbled, but we did not fall. The world knows no hardship or terror that American tenacity cannot overcome. The world knows no problem that American ingenuity cannot solve. <laughs> and so Dad, I extend my so deepest funny? admiration to every U.S. citizen of the world, to every civilian and every soldier standing firm against the terror and tyrannies of wicked men. History will not forget your resolve. <laughs> History will not forget your resolve. Dad, what's going on? You haven't laughed since the Reagan administration. <laughs> it's nothing. Forget about it. We have kept the bright flame the of American line, freedom burning me. throughout oh. the world. May God clear our vision and strengthen our minds for the work to come. And may God bless America. You're not leaving again, are you, Dad? Hello, Rafford. All right, Fisher. We'll get through this as quickly as possible. We'll start simple. Climb up onto that ledge, over that pool. So I decided to go ahead and add the little Easter egg at the beginning of the game. This is the training level, and I know a lot of you had asked in my first training mission video to show the Easter egg, so I thought, well, we would show it at the end of this one. So hopefully you guys enjoy. So just do a little jump over to this side. Uh, the code is 5656 and you get the chance to speak to Grim. Thanks again, guys, for watching the walkthrough. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Who are you? You must be Sam Fisher. I'm Anna Grimm's daughter. Pleased to meet you. Third echelon lead programmer. You've done your homework. Some of it. I'm still a little foggy on my opsat. The Operation Satellite Uplink. Basically just a multi-million tax dollar PDA, but it'll tally everything you'll need to know to complete your missions, so make sure you're comfortable with the interface. No need to introduce yourself. I've already got an earful of your history from Lambert. I'm not as mean as he says. On the contrary, the man thinks you should be canonized. <sighs> what? The saint of shady causes? I don't know. How about the saint of well-directed sins? You were involved with Second Echelon, right? Yeah, briefly. I had some ideological differences. Like what? It didn't respect the human element. Were you there for the burnout in 2000? Yeah, but I don't even have clearance to think about it. Good luck on the course. God damn it, Fisher. I went out on a limb to get you recruited for this detail. What the hell are you thinking? You're fired. You're out of the agency. Game over. Sam Fisher will return, and so will Sinistra 01 in Pandora tomorrow. Peace out. What's up ladies and gents, boy do I have a special video for you today, check it out, we are playing Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, that is right, now up until I believe mid-August, uh, you can actually get for free off of UbiPlay, the, um, off of Uplay, the uh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell original PC game, right, now, why is this cool, well, you guys know the walkthrough that I did a couple of years back on you know, this game. Uh, however, I did it for the, uh, that special edition PS3 version, right? But that version did not actually have all of the levels that were released for the game, right? So there's these three new levels that we actually never got a chance to play because they weren't included in that definitive, uh, package of the Splinter Cell series. So what we're going to be going over today is we're going to be going over Cola Cell. This is one of the missions that we never got a chance to play. So I'm going to be doing this stealthy, of course. And yeah, so hopefully you guys are going to enjoy. We're going to, let's see here, uh, create a new profile. Now, unfortunately, um, we're going to do it on hard, of course. Unfortunately, 
Uh, the way the PC version works is you can't do 1080p in the PC version or anything like that. It only goes up to a certain thing. So I'm not sure if I'm going to stretch it or if I'll just leave it the way it is now. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into this, guys. This is Cola Cell. We're going to start it up. I am playing this with the PC controls, so I do apologize as I've played the level a little bit trying to, you know, get to know the layout. But I'm still not a 100% expert with using uh, keyboard and mouse. Can't figure out how to use a controller for this. I would rather play Splinter Cell with a controller, obviously. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Uh, it's pretty cool to play a level that I never actually had a chance to play before until now. So hopefully you guys enjoy. This is going to be stealthy, of course. There are a few enemies we're going to have to take out just because the mission requires it. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoy, and it's go time. Fisher. We got an okay from the Joint Chiefs for Grin's daughter's plan. Crazy. All you'll need to do is get Mass logged on to his terminal. I'll take care of the rest. So it's definitely been really confusing actually getting used to these uh, How controls. Close is he? First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a distraction here. What sort of stories? Who's out there? All right, first part of the mission is set up. Jump over this little thing right here so you don't get detected. This is definitely not one of those missions where you can go all the way stealthy. You will get into a firefight, so... And there will be a few points where I will probably save. But yeah, it's been fun. See, just pressing wrong buttons here. <laughs> it's been fun playing this game again. It's great. Uh, it's been so long, but I'm so happy. We're going to switch to our lockpick. That uses the W, A, S, and D keys. A little different. Alright, this is one of the variables that comes up here that uh, changes every single time, so... Probably will be saving here. I always, I'm still trying to learn Seriously? the controls. Yeah, I was just a kid at the time. I think my second year. Again, I apologize if I do something that looks you? weird. No, no, that guy saw action in Afghanistan. He's been in the game since the 80s. So the Good point to save right here. Ones? Well, the first ended up in a coma. The other one, Grinko broke off three of his fingers. Jesus. Blinded him with a spoon. Gross. All right, let's see what randomness we can come up with here. This guy is coming into this room. Okay. That's alright. As you can see, he'll stay right there. Make sure you turn your thing all the way down so that you don't run when you get out of here. Uh, controlling this game on a PC is definitely different because you don't have that smooth controller. And we're still able to get by. Nice. Alright, so this is another random part here, so it's always a good opportunity to save here as well. There's a guy, you don't see him now, but there's a guy that was standing there, so that's why we went this way. Hurry up and get out your camera. There is another trap, so you want to make sure that you jump over it. And again, the only way you're going to see it is if you use this vision. All right, now the game gets a little less stealthy, but... Attention! This is Colonel Alexeyevich, acting commander. All personnel to full alert. We have enemy forces on site. Possibly multiple hostiles, definitely armed. 
Oh, personnel to full alert. We have an intruder, and I want his head on a spike. So here, stay in this back corner, or else they'll see you. Even if you try to get up there, they will see you every single time. Stay in this back corner and wait till you see someone. You can use your other vision if you want. There he is. That's kind of your cue to know when to go. You're gonna go to the room to the right here. Should just have enough to get there. Alright. And this room will now be empty, so. Fisher, you've got a Georgian colonel named Alexeyevich incoming. Alright, so I recommend you go ahead and save at this point as well because there's, um, you don't have a lot of time to, uh, to interact here. Why have we not passed the checkpoint? Sir? We've come from open ground through three points of entry into a highly secure area without being stopped once. You have an escort. Don't second guess me, tovarish. Yes, sir, Colonel Alexeyevich, sir. All right, so you want to hurry up. You want to distract this guy just enough right there. So that he will come down here and stay here for a little bit longer. This is going to give you a opportunity to uh, to grab this guy. I'm going to do a double jump here, in the corner. You don't have a lot of time, so you need to hurry. This is very, very time specific. You got to be fast. And uh, the only way you'll know you didn't make it is if people start all of a sudden shooting at you. Alright, looks like we made it. So, uh, I don't know if you remember where we went through one of the vents. There is a retinal scanner that we have to get this guy to. I don't know if you can actually knock him out and take him over there. I can't remember if you could do that. I know you could do that in the in the the other splinter cells, like the later ones, but I don't know if you can knock him out, take him to that um, to that eye point retinal scanner, and it still work. So I think you actually have to take him while he's still conscious. So pretty much after this part, it's going to get no more stealthy. You're gonna, we're going to have to take out a few soldiers. We could. We're going to try to see if we can run by a few, but um, it, when it comes to when it comes to the next part, it's definitely not meant to be stealthy. But we will do our best to try to keep it as stealthy as we can. So we just got by him, now we're just going to take him all the way. And not too much left. It's been fun playing this again, and uh, there's still two more missions that we're going to be doing. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy, and please don't forget to uh, to leave a like and to share this video out there again so other people can see some of the levels that I never got a chance to actually finish. So this is pretty cool. Alright, we got access, and we're going to take him out. Just hide him in the corner here. Man, it's so weird playing this with a uh, controller, or without a controller. Alright, go ahead and save here is probably a really, really good opportunity. Another, uh, a lot of things you need to do. Alright, so we're going to take this guy out in here. With the old classic sticky cam. Crap, crap, crap! Just stay out of my way, shoot! Shoot, you incompetent buffoons! Can't think surrounded by you drooling troglodyte communists. You did not away. What? What was that, Nikolai? Did you say something? Nothing. So he's gonna follow this sticky cam, and then we're gonna shoot him with a sticky cam in the head. Took a little extra one, but we got it. All 
All right, so this is where it gets just ridiculously tough. So let me explain what I'm going to do. As soon as uh, we force him to go into the computer here, um, three guards are going to come busting through the top. So the problem is that these guys will kill you very, very quickly. So we need to take these guys out. We can't just run through them. Uh, we'll die very quickly on hard, obviously. So uh, what I'm going to do is... Unfortunately, you can't just kill a character when you're in the this state right here. You can only hit the button and knock him out. Because of that, we actually need to kill him. We have to go back into our gun once we knock him out and then kill him. So then, obviously, we're just going to try to take uh, each one of those guys out one by one. However, it's pretty difficult to do because they blow pretty much this area up and we're going to be heading upstairs. So a lot of different things that can happen, um, but uh, yeah, let's do it. Alright, he's dead. So get out of here, Sick Cam. I'm not sick, he's a shocker. We were already halfway. Alright, good. We're almost dead, though. Uh, we do have air hole for him. Alright, good. I don't know. Can we pick up the year uh, four rounds again? I don't think we can. Alright, we ain't out of the woods yet. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how I've been able to figure out how to get by this. Obviously, there's probably better ways to do it. Um, but, yeah. And this would be a good point to go ahead and save again. We're not out of the woods yet because there are still lots of uh, enemies around. So you can't go through this door until um, until you've actually been in this room. I know it's a little weird, but this will take you downstairs. As you can see we've got very, very little health. I don't think there's any... Uh, we'll go ahead and get that. Definitely want to use the distraction. Alright, so we're going to try to sneak by these guys. Easier said than done, right? You can see that mirror's going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's crazy. Who's out there? And we're good. We made it, ladies and gents. Nice. Now again, if I had a little bit more time with this level, I could probably maybe try to manage to not take anyone out. Um, like those, especially those guards in that heavy combat section. But, uh, you know, that's how it is. It was fun getting the chance to play this game again, and there's still two more missions that we're going to be completing uh, for this, and I'm definitely going to get used to, you know, my hands on the PC controls and stuff. So, guys, thank you so much. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video, and, of course, I will see you next time. Peace out. Bitches! What's up, ladies and gents? Sunshine on One, your host, back at you, and we have got more Splinter Cell, the original, 
HD. Of course, with bonus missions, this is on the PC. So, uh, thanks to a fellow subscriber out there, I've been able to um, go into my INI files and actually make this 1080. I tried to do uh, 4K and I tried to do 1440. However, um, the game is just not optimized for that, as it uh, the frame rates are not even above 60. Uh, even though it should be because the game is <laughs> is over, you know, 12, 13 years old. But um, so we just started to go with 1080p. At least it is full 1080p, so it should be good to go. This is going to be the second bonus mission, and we're going to pretty much get right away. I love how quick that these just load up. So this is uh, Yusuka Infiltration. So I'm going to go ahead and read this this time. Again, we're going to be doing this in a stealthy manner. We are going to have to take out... Uh, my goal is only to take out one person. That one person is a must um, if you want to go through the uh, story parts. If you don't want to go through the story parts and you're going for like a faster time, uh, then you might be able to get around. But because of the story parts and because of just that, and I want to give you as much story as possible, we are going to take out one guy. So... Uh, let's uh, go ahead and read this information. Information collected at the Kola facility indicates that the cell operating under the command of Colonel Alekisevich has standing orders to capture a Russian submarine manufacturing facility on the Kola Peninsula. Third Echelon monitoring reveals that the Russian nuclear submarine Veskla, I, I'm probably saying that wrong, is currently docked at the facility. The submarine must be located and Alekisevich's remaining men must be stopped. I'm horrible at names. So hopefully you guys enjoy, and without further ado, it's go time. We've updated your objectives. Your first target is a Russian sailor. We spotted him by drone. We think he's the only shipyard employee left alive. What makes him so special that they let him live? That's what we're about to find out. Oh yes, Synthes 301 studies the art of invisibility. <laughs> so you can tell me what movie that is from, that is right, the movie quotes are back. This is of course classic Splinter Cell, so like a glove. Here we go, alright, so you can see there's a guard right over there, so as soon as we drop down he's going to be moving, if you've been doing it in the, the amount of time that I have. Slowly roll down here a little bit. What I'm about to pull off is very, very difficult to do because we're not taking this guard out. So get out your jammer camera, camera jammer. Uh, run up here as you're going to need all the time you can get. Here we go. You need to get around to his right. He is going to turn. As soon as he turns now, go. As you can see, I'm freely able to move in the light because he turned. And you're good to go. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Alright, get out your uh, your weapon here. You're going to want to wait a little bit. This guard's going to come into the room no matter what you do because there's two different routes that you can take, but either one of them will get his attention. Wait just a little bit. That is done so we can uh, get around into this door. Now you'll see there's this. Nothing you can do. You will be seen by this. Actually, you're not even seen. He, it shoots automatically. There's nothing you can do about it. Like, even if you actually paid attention, it didn't see us. It shot when it was facing the opposite direction, but it's just an automatic thing. The other one is a camera and a pipe there, but if you shoot the camera, he will hear it no matter what. Again, this is only because we are actually taking out that soldier. But this is the safest route to do because you'll see why here in just a second. As you can see, we were able to get around, and he was never able to see us. This kind of sucks sometimes that this happens here. There we go. Yo, there's a reason I'm trying to be a little fast here, because there's a guard that just went into the bathroom right there, so run past here. There's two other guards that are going to be coming up these stairs, and you're going to want to get around them. In order to do that, if you're fast enough, like I've been, you're able to get to your objective first. However, if not, you'll need to wait down in the basement area. And here's a camera. You don't need to shoot the camera. Slow your roll when you get here so the guards don't hear you. The camera won't see you from this point on. Eating like that, you are going to get fat. I can't help myself. My own mother never cooked so well. Maybe you didn't salt her well enough. There's three guards. Now, if we were to distract him right now, we could get inside. We can go into that room. If you forward the conversation, you're able to get in and out without taking any guards out. But I do not want to skip the conversation, as I want to give you the story, the reason that this mission even exists. And it's the only story you really get, so that's why we're doing it this way instead. So wait for that guard. As soon as he turns around, then you can go. 
Get out your night vision. Don't get too close to this door, or else he will be able to see you, as he's going to use the keypad. This is the guard we're going to take out. Again, you cannot take him out by skipping the conversation by actually you doing a diversion while they're talking and then getting in here and then skipping the conversation. Well, you can pick up the satchel here, I guess. Babadav. You're not one of them. Quickly, untie me. No. But I do have a few questions. You're... you're not here to help me? I'm not here at all. I can't take you with me, and if I untie you, it'll only mean trouble when the Spetsnaz find you. I don't have much time, and I need to know why you're alive. Oh, God! They killed everybody but you. Why? I'm... I'm a submariner. I operate the broadcast system on the Vselka. She's docked outside. Broadcast system? The submarine has a good communication system. Very flexible. The Azeris are using it to transmit signals north. So how can I get at it? You can't. Not now. They, they keep submarines submerged. So how do you get at it? We radio to the submarine from the compressor control room on the fourth floor. You need a passcode to get inside. I'll bet you know that code. Please. Untie me. I'm getting cranky, Barbara. The code is 8027. I wish we could save him, but we can't. I'm gonna need it to surface first. We're working on it. I'll get back to you. As you can see, uh, everything should be timed correctly. You can get around. We figured out how you can force the sub up. Deactivate the compressor. They'll only have a few minutes to decide between surfacing or sinking to the bottom and suffocating. Details on your offset. I don't think I'm going to be making any friends on this job. So, this is where you need to go in and get to your notes. You can see it's 8027. Go ahead and switch over to your camera jammer. Crap, wrong button. Everything is built off a specific time pattern. There's a guard in this area, two of them, but he's actually looking in the other direction right now, so. You'll see right here that this guard will not be able to see you, and there's also a guard right there, too. Two of them, actually. Wow, okay. shows you within a stone's throw of the compressor. Get ready to move once you've thrown it. The men coming out of that sub aren't going to be happy. You're underestimating my charm. Alright, so... Watch yourself. Sometimes there's a, um, a glitch that can happen. We're going to shoot out that light and this light. So, if you go through this door there, like when you're coming through, there was another... You remember the guard that, that came through there that we were able to sneak by very fastly? Well, you can go through that door. There's a guard waiting, a colonel that you can get through a retinal scanner that will take you to where you need to go into this room. That's another method. But you have to actually take someone out. This one requires you to take no one out. However, sometimes the guards can glitch when you do this part uh, and not actually come through this door. So hopefully uh, it won't glitch on me. These guards here are going to be making their way up. But um, the last time I did this perfectly, uh, they didn't come up at all. They just uh, they never showed up. <laughs> and I couldn't get out of the room, so... As you'll see, the door is shut now, and you can't you can't you can't go through. So you have to wait for them. However, if they never show up, well, I guess you're just screwed. So, I mean, the the only <laughs> this would have been a very short lifespan for uh, uh, Agent Sam Fisher if the enemy just decided, you know what, we're just gonna leave the door shut. Um, don't open the door for the enemy. There's no other way out of this room, but uh, the enemy's not smart. Hopefully it doesn't do this glitch again. Please tell me they're going to come through.
There we go, they came through. All right. <laughs> that makes it so much better when they come through. Congratulations, we did it. Now there's going to be two more guards that are going to be coming. So you're just going to want to wait at the stairs here. No way to get around these guys as they're, by the time you get to here, it's like kind of canned automatic where they're going to be heading up the stairs. And there's literally nowhere to hide at, on, like, in these actual stairs. So just wait for them. So another successful mission wasn't too hard to figure out. I wanted to get the, the best timings and stuff like that. Sometimes you have to manipulate guards in order to, to get around and uh, obviously there was a one small glitch where the guards didn't come through but uh, it looks like we're clear and good to go now so only one more uh, section with guards but they're actually pretty easy to get by. Again, it's another canned thing, so just get to this point, and they're going to be coming through. Make sure you're not running when you do this. And congratulations, you have completed this level. Second level, it's time to now infiltrate the sub, or actually get on the sub. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed another stealthy mission for Splinter Cell, Fantastic the original game. Pressure. Thank you for all the love and support so far. Hopefully you enjoyed, and of course, we'll have one more mission for you right after this. And of course, I will see you next time. Peace out, bitches. We've updated your objectives. Your first target is a Russian sailor. We spotted him by drone. We think he's the only shipyard employee left alive. What makes him so special that they let him live? That's what we want you to find out. As you can see, you can get by that dog if you just keep going. Because we are Sam Fisher, studying the art of invisibility. Who failed the jump. Um, sorry. <laughs> now you can run a little bit because you're going to need a little bit of extra time. Remember, we're not taking him out, so that's why it makes it just a tee bit more difficult. So here, I'm actually going to use... Um, no, I guess we'll go ahead and use this. Door shut, we should be good to go. Sometimes you're not able to shoot this. Alright, looks like we were able to get the cam without him being actually alerted this time, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so this is a little difficult of a part. Wait till the door shuts that way so he doesn't hear. Yes. El perfecto. So we did this that way we can actually get by. There's other ways you can do it. You can go behind there and, and not worry and, and get behind there, but... I would rather be do figure out the like stealthier, um, cooler ways to go around. So, all right, go ahead and get out your uh, lock pick. The thing about these is they are actually set. I don't know how I just got... What? This guy came all the way over there because he heard that? And slow your roll down here. Like that you are going to get fat. I can't help myself. My own mother never cooked so well. Maybe you didn't salt her well enough. <laughs> Be nice. 
Anyway, we need to get back to our patrol. Relax. Nothing's going to happen. This is the easiest job we've ever had. Us and our sailor friend both. But dinner is over. Come on, Arkady. So you can get, get around without coast. taking one of these guys out. However, you have to skip the conversation that happens, and we don't want to do that. And that's where you need to go. We have an unauthorized presence in the compressor room. Send the team immediately. Intruder in the submarine compressor room. The camera will never see us because of the fact that we took out those two specific lights. But here, uh, there's nothing we can do. We just gotta wait. Waiting for the guards to come up that you saw. Now, either you can go back... Um, you can go back the way we came, or... Which you'll have to use the camera jammer again. Or you can also go the other route, which, uh, again, in order to get through that route the first time, you actually had to... Uh, take a guard out and uh, use a retinal scanner. So that's why we went this way, so we wouldn't have to take him out. So we're just waiting for them to come up. Should be three of them, I think. They like to take the time, what can I say? So, how's everybody doing today? I hope you're enjoying your weekend. They really, really want to just uh, uh, take it as long as humanly possible. Might be glitched. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I guess it has to be glitched. What's up ladies and gents, welcome to the final installment of our bonus missions for Splinter Cell HD, the original, this is the PC version. We're going to get right into this, this is the final bonus mission, unfortunately there were only three ones that we haven't played. If you guys would like to see another walkthrough of Splinter Cell on this channel, let me know in the comments below of this. Um, maybe also put down some parameters, like some things that you would like to see to make it more tough or challenging you know maybe no knockouts only knock out the ones you have to i don't know I'm, I'm leaving this up to you guys i know how much you love splinter cell and i want to keep you guys happy and i want to keep pushing out these videos so to keep you coming back for more and more i know it, it gets harder and harder when i play all these stealth games and then they're done and i want to make sure that i can keep you guys coming back more and more so with that being said it is time to finish this up and this is going to be yuselka submarine and we'll go ahead and read this. Colonel Alexievich's men have taken control of the Veselka in her berth and are attempting to acquire the warheads from several SSN-20 Sturgeon nuclear missiles. The main computers on the bridge of the sub must be accessed to determine whether or not the warheads have been offloaded. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoy and uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this. Again, I will, just like in the previous video, if I have any cool bloopers or fails which I'm pretty sure I will uh, I will put those in at the end to give you guys a good laugh so again thank you guys for watching and of course it's go time Fisher Grim's daughter needs you to get inside the communication room there's a central server inside you'll need to tap into can I ask why as long as you don't expect an answer for the nature of the agency be good all right it's time for the final mission here we go this is the toughest out of all the bonus missions. We're going to be doing this, of course. No knockouts. Wait till this guard can no longer see you. 
And we're going to be using a diversion cam. It's the same thing as a sticky camera. However, you get to whistle and you get gas. We're not going to use the gas. We're just going to use the whistle. All right, start running. You don't have a lot of time to do this because we need to distract the next guard very quickly. Who's out there? Before he's able to get to the light. If you do this, then he'll walk right by without actually turning on the light. Which allows you to go through this section. Now, if we wouldn't have stopped when we did, this second guard right here would have seen us. Or would also come and investigate. And that would screw the whole timing of everything up, right? So that's why you just want to... As soon as you hear those first words, um, scroll all the way down and, and stop going so fast. I'm using PC, you know... Uh, terms when I'm doing this. Now you'll probably see a couple of bloopers on this part because this one's actually qu pretty difficult. Uh, I don't know how many times I failed on this section right here uh, just because of bad throw, bad throwing of this right here. There we go. You gotta get it through it. If it accidentally touches anywhere else then it's gonna screw something up. So give yourself a little bit of time here. There's a reason that I do that is uh, you want the guards to be in the right placement. Stand against this corner, you should be good. Who's there? <clears throat> Maybe I'm crazy. Congratulations. Not easy to pull off right there, but it's still fun when you actually get it to work. Oh, you gotta love it. We are gonna be saving here because this is probably one of the most difficult parts. All right, get out your sticky cam. Definitely one of the more challenging parts coming up here. Pick up this med kit as well, as there is a battle up ahead, and if uh, you take a little bit of damage, you're probably going to want to do that. All right, so he should be heading this way, yep. Play sticky cam about right there. He's going to see it on his way back. Get a little bit ahead of him, but not too much. And you should be good to go at this speed as he'll turn the other direction. Still blood frozen in some of the walls. Are you taking the pills? They help me sleep, but they don't stop the nightmares. They kill so many, so easily. Forget about them. They were sailors and soldiers, men who chose to live by the gun. They should not have been surprised to likewise die. Alright, so you gotta watch out for this guy. You can. Um, go a little bit faster than I did, but I decided that, you know what, I'm just going to take it slow. I'm not going to screw this up. This isn't a speed run. And as soon as he's fast, then you've got plenty of time. Plus, it really actually doesn't matter because the guy downstairs uh, isn't going to be where he needs to be if you get down here early. So, it's better just to do it this way. Make sure you crouch. And we're just waiting on this guy. Once he comes by, we're going to sneak up behind him and we're going to try to stealthy get around him. There's a guard up ahead that is on the top floor that can sometimes see you. So that's why you need to be a little bit smarter when you're going to maneuver around. This guy has a light too, so... Alright. Walk normally. Now when he gets to the point where he's turning, then you can speed it up one notch. When you get to the stairs, slow it down again. And you'll just be able to get uh, away from him without him actually seeing you. See? Now he's going that way. Make sure you stay clear of this guy there. See? He will be able to see you if you don't have that little grate there kind of blocking his view. Alright, so we're about to the our main objective here. And then it's time to escape. Not out of the woods just yet. It's 
So it looks like we're gonna have to wait one more. This guy does a very, very small turnaround radius. Congratulations. Like I said, though, we're not out of the woods just yet. Okay, we've got the signal. Can you trace it, Grim? I might even be able to read it. Looks like a video signal. Yup, there. Lambert. Fantastic. Fisher, time for you to make yourself scarce. So we are here. Where is this intruder? He's got to be close by. What exactly did you see? A shadow that didn't have anything casting it. Just keep your eyes open. Alright, so far so good. Yeah, why not? Alright, make sure we're up here. And this is going to be a little difficult. Watch out, Fisher. You've got incoming. You sound surprised. I'm gonna wait for three guards. You'll see one from the bottom and then two from the top. There's the second one from the from that, so it means we're good. just made it look at that nice nothing you can really do about anything like that unless you just take them out but there you go that's pretty much how you complete it guys you got to be super super quick to get in there they will be shooting at you no matter what unless you actually take them down but ladies and gents that is it all three missions are complete thank you so much for the love and support on these three videos uh, long time coming I do not have access to the ps2 bonus missions I'm sorry uh, but there, I guess there's another PS2 mission that uh, that's out there, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to play it unless it is available with a PC. Uh, again, I apologize for that. So after this, I will show you guys some bloopers and some funny things uh, of me dying. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed these three videos. And again, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see any of the Splinter Cell walkthroughs done in a particular way. As I know, that is one of the series, excuse me, that is one of the series that you guys absolutely love on the channel. So... Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And of course, I will see you next time. Peace out, bitches. Fisher, Grimm's daughter needs you to get inside the communication room. There's a central server inside you'll need to tap into. Can I ask why? As long as you don't expect an answer. The nature of the agency. Who is that? Be good. Some kind of so we're going to get over here. We're going to use a diversive cam. Diversion cam. Which of this guy is past the point of where he's going to be able to see you? It's actually okay. You want to get his attention there. This is the only way that I found out how to kind of sneak by and without having to use one of your cameras or something like that. So wait. He's actually going to do a little turnaround right there. And you were able to make it by. Hello. This next thing here is definitely difficult to get by. Which is why I want to go ahead and save there. Because this is a crazy, crazy... These two people... Um, 
yeah, you, I mean, you've got to be perfect in the stuff that you do here. All right, we're going to get out our sticky cam. Wait, let him get a little bit of distance so you can start speeding up a little bit. We're able to sneak by him. Nice. So we are here. Where is this intruder? Got to be close by. What exactly did you see? A shadow that didn't have anything casting it. Just keep your eyes open. tomorrow. just called me. We have a problem in East Timor. What kind of problem? A big one. What is 
Douglas doing here? That's exactly what you have to find out, sir. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome to Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow. This is our re-walkthrough where we're going to set even more challenges than the original walkthrough that we did so many years ago. So hopefully you guys are ready for this. Again, this is played on the hard difficulty. And of course, this is made possible by those that are on Patreon and by those that are members of the channel. So make sure you become a member of the channel or on Patreon to help us continue to make time to be able to do these types of walkthroughs. So hopefully you guys enjoy. We're going to be trying to go through this entire game with minimizing or pretty much a ghost walkthrough as much as possible. If we don't have to knock someone out, that's uh, what we're going to go for. So hopefully you enjoy. I'm your host, Sinistrina1. It's go time. Fisher, welcome back to the front. All right, so here we go. Everything is pretty self-explanatory in the beginning here, so I'll just let it play out. Let's work on stealth. Your gun should always be your last resort. Invisibility is your best weapon. We've got a network of photocells on your suit connected to a visibility meter on your opsat. If the meter's at three, you're lit up like Times Square. Now, one thing you'll notice is I've blurred the outsides of the screen. Hopefully that makes it a little bit better for you guys to see the inside. This is the Xbox One X version, so the game is in four by three. Uh, you can actually get it on the store right now on the Xbox but it doesn't allow you to play in widescreen unlike the pc version but that's the hardest version to get to actually run correctly so that's why i went with the xbox version i'll try to have the light on every now and then because i do want to make sure you guys can see and this game is very dark and it can be very very hard to see at some points so there's really not much i can do but if i feel that it's going to be a problem then i'll turn uh, the night vision on to make sure that you guys can see exactly what i'm doing or if you have any questions on any parts just let me know in the comments below, and I'll always message back and let you guys know. Um, kind of type it in. That way you can make it a little easier for you. So, again, this is the tutorial level. Not too much is going on here, or should I say it's not too difficult to figure out. There are just about two sections that you might have to complete a few different times to figure out how to get through it. But that's what these walkthroughs are for, is to limit that uh, re uh, replayness uh, on you guys as I go through it so you don't have to. So if you follow this guide, you should be able to get through these sections pretty much your first time go, as long as you follow it to a T. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. It takes a lot of time to make these. Obviously, some of you saw the live stream. Um, uh, like I said, there's a few sections up here that can be a little tough. Each mission has its own rewards. And Before you infiltrate the embassy, let me reintroduce D.P. Brunton, our interagency consultant. He's got an update for the mission. I'll keep it brief. I'm sure you know I'm excited to be part of the team. The Joint Chiefs want this mission kept non-lethal and alarms at flat zero. We can't endanger the hostages. Understood. And with some due respect, leave anything Lambert can say to Lambert. I don't want the voices in my head to become a crowd. Get inside the embassy. This situation is delicate and largely unknown, so walk softly. One thing you'll notice is that the voice talent is different. Grimm's daughter is different. Obviously, they got Dennis Habert to do the uh, the voiceover for Lambert, which you guys might know him from Allstate or 24. Uh, again, he does a good job, but he doesn't do as good a job as the original Lambert, and that's because the original Lambert just has that perfect voice for it, whereas when you have Dennis, you know his voice, you've heard him in other things, it doesn't have that realisticness to it. You know what I'm saying? So I prefer the original voice actors. But they do come back in the, the next couple of games, so no problems there. We are going to have to use the distraction here so we can get by this guy. Now, you can actually use your pistol to distract enemies a lot better than in the previous game, as they won't automatically be onto you in this game. It'll be more like they'll just be worried about the sound. So you can use your pistol sometimes to get around certain enemies just by uh, shooting something. There are mines here, just like in the previous game, so you just got to watch where you step, use your thermal goggles in order to be able to get around that and you should have no worries again this is probably the easiest mission in the game just because it is teaching you how to do the new maneuvers that you can do in the game itself which there are quite a few new ones uh obviously the swat turn that we did earlier and then we have a uh the jump which is from the previous game right here however now you can actually do a jump with and continually go higher and you'll see it right here. 
So all you got to do is move over to the other side and then jump again. And then you should grab whatever ledge is on the opposite side of where Sam is kind of like maneuvering, if that makes sense. Other than that, it's uh, pretty easy to get through these first couple sections. Here is where it's going to start to get a little tricky. Grim's found you a back door. Avoid the main gate at all cost. Blueprints show an ornamental stream running beneath the entrance. Looks like a viable way in. A little wet's better than a little dead. That stream's your way in, even if it means moving slowly to minimize your noise level. Fisher, be careful. This village is a walk in the park compared to what needs to be done inside the embassy. Stay to the left here, and you should be able to get by the guard without having to use any types of distractions. However, this guard up ahead, the game technically wants you to interrogate him, but if you want to see those interrogations, please, by all means, watch my other previous uh, stealth walkthrough. This one's a little different. The situation is getting worse in the embassy. They seem to be killing hostages now. This one we're actually going to get by. I've got a man in my way, Lambert. How flexible is my zero fatality mandate? As a rock. In fact, we want you to make a new friend. From your onboards, that man looks like one of Sedano's lieutenants. Interrogate him. Find out what he knows about Sedano's defense parameters. The chatter we're sifting sounds bad, but lacks specifics. Details on your ops at. So we're just going to shoot a distraction, not right at his head, but close to it. And then he will stare and look at that, and then we're able to move on by without actually having to mess with him. Otherwise, if there was any other types of way, I would do that as well. The other one you could do is using your whistle. But I'm going to try to minimize the whistle as much as I can because I feel that mechanic is just too overused. But it's time to move on to the second part of the level, and this is where it'll actually start getting challenging. The flash notes confirm there was a hostage situation. Indonesian militants. Yeah, but the hostages are somebody else's game. You're here for information, and especially the information held by Douglas. Shetland's your objective. We need to know how much data was lost. Make sure you stay up against the cover. Freeze, Fisher. Don't shoot! Not a muscle. I'm American! Sedono is right on top of you. If he sees you, this mission is over. But why me? I, I didn't see anything. It is a little Why ridiculous that he doesn't something? see you there, but the squat turn pretty much... No. I, I keep saying Just squat turn. <laughs> well, he's squatting and he's turning, so... But it's the squat turn. Wish. It uh, uh, pretty much makes you invisible I whenever you're crossing that, even though you go into the light. Give me a bonds. I... And this Thank is the you. only guard in the level you 100% mandatorily have to take out. Talk, damn you. Where is it? Is Shetland safely separated from the others? Uh, absolutely. Keep... Douglas, it's been a while. Fisher? My god, man, you're getting old. You still in one piece? Where are the rest of the SEALs? I'm working alone. Haven't been Navy for a decade. Then who are you with? I'm here on damage control. Just came to smash your computer. Thank God. Oh, should I say the CIA? Keep guessing. I tried to destroy it, but who knows how much data they were able to pull down. I've consulted on security for targets all over the world. Who do you work for? Delta? No. Staying anonymous. Uh-huh. Maybe you've got a use for this storage device I pulled off the gorilla I killed. Thanks. How'd you hide it from your guard? Just wash your hands when you're done with it. was PGP encrypted. Easy stuff. For all the good it did us, the body text is gibberish. Brunton thinks it's a regional Indonesian dialect. We're looking for a translator. But we got the sender's alias, Please Mortified Penguin. And four words in the body text, Redbeard, Saulnier, and Springfield. My CIA people came through for us. The dialect is Timorese Mambe. There's an agency bureaucrat oh. working in the embassy, an Indonesian linguist, a woman named Carlson. First name, Ingrid. She's being held in a tower off the garden behind the embassy grounds. Grimm's working on a way to contact her without alerting her guard. Carlson's your next objective. Details on your upset. 
All right, make sure you do what I do. Do a SWAT turn here, and those guys should not be able to see you. Other than that, really the only way you're going to get by that uh, without taking out any lights or anything. I'm going to try to limit the amount of lights that I interact with as much as possible. But we are going to use distractions. Obviously, you have a whistle as well. We're going to try to limit the amount of whistles we do, but sometimes we are going to have to use a whistle. So just throw the bottle here. We're going to try to get all three of these guards to look in the opposite of direction of where this is. Otherwise, one of them will always look right here, and then you'll be seen. Other than that, we're going to, you know, keep trying to remain, only, uh, remain as ghost as possible. You're not going to like this. Chances are. Security camera tap shows a lone guard overlooking the next courtyard wearing night vision goggles. There's an automated searchlight they haven't shut down. Should be blinding through night goggles. You're telling me to stay in the light? I said you wouldn't like it. All right, I always did love this section, but unfortunately there's just... It doesn't do it enough, you know what I mean? Like, I wish there was more sections that had this type of stealth where you actually have to stay in the light in order to be stealthy. I always love this concept. But this section's pretty easy to get through. Up ahead, the guard is in the window, and then the contact that you're supposed to meet up is on the right side. So make sure you go to the right when you uh, go down. Also, when you drop down, you've got to hit B to let go, but then also hit B again to make sure you drop into stealth mode. If you don't, you'll land loud, and obviously that guy will hear you. You don't want that to happen. So always get in the habit of hitting B twice when you do these types of jumps here. B once to let go, B again to drop. Nice and stealth lack. Ingrid. You must be my blind date. I hope the bit with the flashlight helped. It did, thanks. I'm doing the best I can. This hasn't turned out to be the desk job I was hired for. I'm a word cruncher. Word crunching's what I need, look. Nice PDA. Are you saving up for the color model? Can you read it? It's phonetical mambe. Not a native speaker, but fluent. Gives numbers for a meeting place. 4857 North. 0308 East. 18 hours. The only reference to the location is Solnier. That's not Mambe. It says they're only a few weeks from securing the uh, ingredients for the Springfield demonstration. And that's it. It's signed, Mortified Penguin. Mortified Penguin? Your guess is as good as mine, but I wouldn't recommend guessing. And while you're at it, forget everything you've seen, heard, and said. Are you going to be all right if I leave here? Would you stay if I said no? No. Well done, Fisher. There's a nice synchronicity between those coordinates and the name Saunier. Both match a cryogenics lab in Paris. And we just got word from Delta. They're sending their boys in. Which means you're off the leash. Merry Christmas, Fisher. Shoot all the gorillas you like. You have a quick exit downstairs at the base of the tower. Cohen is waiting for you in the village. The Osprey can't land in the village. Cohen's afraid of being too good a target. Cut the power from all the spotlights in the village. They'll fly as low as possible to pick you up at the end of the pier. So this can be a little tricky. You've got to wait until you have the right timing. Stand exactly on the ladder where I do because you're underneath one bar. If you're right on one bar or over, this guard will see you every single time and then you won't be able to do what you're going to do. He also varies his pattern up a little bit. He never does the same thing each single time. So this part can be a little tricky, especially when you're not knocking them out or when you're not doing any distractions. So give it some time. Do exactly what I do. Wait until he comes forward and then turns around, and then you can go ahead and take out the spotlight. Immediately get down. And then we're going to move on the right side here. We're going to go up against the wall. Uh, he gives you enough room that he'll go right by you, and you don't make any noise when you're on a wall. So if you try to maneuver around him in a very slow, stealthy way, sometimes he will still be able to hear you. So if you do this, you won't make any noise, and then wait a few seconds for him to go by, and then get into the cover. Here we've got one more guard to worry about, so stick on the outside. If you do, he won't see you. We're just going to wait here, because we're going to be safe than sorry. Uh, you might have enough time if you go in, like, say, right now and do it. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just be safe and make sure. So, same thing as before. Get right here and just 
if you want. Now you can try to risk it. You can go ahead and go ahead and go now, and then see if he doesn't turn around at this point. But um, me, I like to be a little patient sometimes. Stealth is all about having patience. None of these walkthroughs are speed runs. They're meant to show you how to get by them in a stealthy manner. But at the same time, in a more realistic kind of way, uh, even though Sam can't see around the other side, I feel, well, that's realistic. If he can't turn his head to see, then I should wait until I know that that guard is not looking. Not just because it's a video game and it's logic. You know what I mean? So I try to make my walkthroughs as realistic as I can. But again, they are video games. Sometimes that doesn't always work out when a guard goes right by you. Uh, and he would easily be able to see you normally in a real life situation. But that's the end of the level. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you again so much as we continue our Splinter Cell series um, re-walkthroughs here. And of course, hopefully you all enjoyed. Thanks again so much for watching. Love you all. And we'll see you on the next mission, which is Paris. And it's a doozy. Peace out. Rescued from the U.S. Embassy to Dili by Delta Forces, stationed at the nearby training grounds of the Timorese Defense Force. All but one of the hostages have been accounted for, though. Continue to voice protest at Japan's formation of an information self-defense force, promising sanctions of both... Responded to General Kellner's announcement of increased U.S. military presence in East Timor with cautious support. Justifiably wary of the response from neighboring... Welcome to Paris. You'll have time for sightseeing later. Thanks, Lambert. Grimm extracted enough from Sonier's security systems to trace Mortified Penguin's movements. But we don't know why, what he wants, or who he is. Is he still inside? Hard to say. The man's cover is rock solid. Are you saying he's CIA? If he is, he's under deeper cover than I've ever seen. We've got intel linking him to at least a dozen French Syrian terrorists. As mortified penguin? The email alias is all we've got. It's ridiculous, but that's probably the point. Like the smiley face on a cobra's hood. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Industry 1 to Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. Hard walk through, pretty much ghosting. What? As much what? as we can. I thought you said something. You're jumping. Calm down. How long do you think it'll take them to find the Frenchman? What do you mean, Frenchman? We're all Frenchmen here. I mean the French Frenchman. The security guard? Yeah. I don't know. He must have found a pretty good hiding place if they still don't have him. I hope the others don't leave without us. It's a very interesting little cutscene here, because I love how he says the French Frenchman because they hired like American actors or whatever they hired to, to play French people. So it was it was uh, pretty hilarious right there. But uh, this section is pretty self-explanatory that you've seen so far. Shouldn't need to explain anything, really. We're going to shoot these two valves here. Um, I've decided to stretch the video because I did a little poll and most people wanted me to stretch. So I've stretched the 4-3 image into a 16x9 so that you guys have a full screen. Now this is because the Xbox version only does 4-3. You're, You're in. Grimm's daughter suggests first accessing the security terminal on your floor, so she can investigate network activity in the complex. She can't do it remotely. No, the important files are off the grid. His case file says the founder was worried about the government stealing his client's files when the apocalypse rolls around. Paranoia-based security. That's our mantra. So this part is, all of its, this level is definitely one of the easier levels to get through. Uh, this is still a level where you are uh, forced to knock out just two soldiers, and uh, that'll be coming up ahead. And as you can see, sometimes the buttons don't always work. Like, I wanted to, to get up against this cover, but it just would not do it, so I was had to click other buttons just to see if the buttons find were still anything? working. I can't even but find um, for the most part, we're going to be able to ghost west. and stealth by what pretty much everyone in this level, except two main people that we do absolutely have to take out. Right. And the reason we have to take them out is because they will destroy the objective, and we don't have enough time to distract them without destroying it and getting it at the same time. Uh, so it is a mandatory uh, two-person knockout in this mission. Other than that, you can get by every other single guard and remain completely ghost. 
Search every inch of the auditorium. We never know. It's not until, like, um... I don't know, I would say the middle half of this game is when the game really, really starts to get very, very difficult, especially when you're going for that complete stealth type of walkthrough. Now, I was debating if I should just go ahead and try to figure out how to play the PC version of the game, but I still feel like I'm really at home when I play the Xbox version, even though it is in 4.3 and I have to stretch it. Confirmed. The basement is clear. Although we will I be doing repeat. Chaos basement Theory's PC clear. version. I proceed now and destroy all the computers. Fisher, we need those access codes. As you can see, this is exactly what you're going to need to do. These guys are a must in order for you to be able to complete this objective. But of course, we're also going to hide the bodies so that uh, we still remain stealthy. The earlier Splinter Cell games have a system where even if nobody comes into this room, the game, before it moves on to the next checkpoint or before it does its next thing, it randomly sweeps to see if there's any bodies that you have taken out that are in direct light. As long as they are not in direct light and they're somewhat hidden, the game will consider I mean, that okay. Great work, Fisher. What do we got, Grim? Let's see. Mortified Penguin cracked their system directories. Looks like all of his attention was focused on the client databases. Meaning, he was looking for specific frozen dead men. What do the client databases say? Nothing from here. It's a separate network. Oh my god. What? What? The mercenaries just remote triggered a bomb timer. Where is it? The signal is coming from the boiler room, further down the corridor. Here you're going to have to be patient. There's no reason to rush up, especially if you're not taking anyone out. We've got another situation like we did in uh, the Kalina Tech mission in the previous Splinter Cell. Where we just have to wait until the correct timing before we can move on. This guy will eventually leave. Um, right now you can't see him in this lighting, but if you turn on your night vision goggles, he's sitting there waiting at the edge. Uh, and you just want to wait until he, like, actually moves. And then once he does move, you're pretty much good to go. As you can see, he is gone now, so we can go ahead and move forward. And then you've got plenty of time to take away the bomb, and you're good to go. And, of course, after this, we're going to move on to the second portion of the mission. You don't have much time. Hurry up. I almost wanted to do the 007 thing again here, but I was like, ah, I won't okay, waste too done. much time. Well done. Now you can access the database. That's one floor up and your next objective. They just unfortunately don't make games like they used to, you know? Splinter Cell is such an amazing series and I love it so much. All right, so as we continue on here, there's just a few extra rooms that we need to go through. They're very easy to figure out. It won't take you long. As you can see, there's a remote mine there, so just stay away from it. Don't run too fast when you're going by it. Here, everything just relies on you getting over to this point as quickly as possible. And you're just going to wait until the guard is not looking in your direction. Once he is not looking, then go ahead and do the door. You don't have to shoot any lights or you don't have to create any distractions. I mean, this is a pretty much distraction-free walkthrough um, as much as possible. If I do have to throw a bottle or whistle or something, it'll be only because I never found another way to get around it. That's the only reason you're going to hear anything. Otherwise, it's going to be Sam Fisher is a ghost. I found the guard on the security cameras. I think you were right. Looks like he's behind that big bolt type door. The label on the monitor says body processing room. I'm inside the client storage database. I'm tapped. Taking a look, see. I see at least eight clients Mortified Penguin pulled up in detail. Anything in common? All frozen in the last six months, and all cheapskates. They all booked economy. Where did Mortified Penguin hit next? Limited storage. It's where Solnier stows all the ND-133s. That sounds like your next objective, Fisher. Find us some French brains. Turn off the light and then anything. immediately move forward. Hey, Do your best. Me. Details on your opset. That is one of the distractions you have to do, otherwise he will just stare and stay in the same location and he'll never move. So you have to turn that light off. Here, it's pretty easy, obviously, just get, get around the camera. Now you also have a device that allows you to 
uh, deactivate the camera while you're holding it. That is another option. We'll be using that later on in the game, but we don't need to use it right now as you can easily get by this camera and the wall mine if you're just smart and you move slow. This room is, again, very easy to do. You're just waiting patiently uh, for the guards to get out of here. So as soon as the guy that you see in the back corner moves to the right and heads into the next room, this guard here will move from his position. And once he moves from his position, the one by the uh, computer, then you will actually be able to go in and get the computer information that you need. Uh, so again, it's all about patience. Stealth is, is, is a patient type of game. So you just need, or patient type of genre. It's all about patience, guys. I know everybody wants to move quick and you want to play games that make you move quick but Splinter Cell has always been a series about waiting for that precise moment to move and I feel that is the challenge that a lot of people just can't go through they don't have the patience to wait for it but unlike them us this channel this community we love it we love the patience we love knowing that we can figure things out and you'll see that especially in the next mission when we do the train level as uh, the live stream that we did was so fun to do to figure out how to get by without creating distractions or other types of means of uh, getting through that section without taking anyone out. Also, as you can see, the uh, the codes, they show up as soon as you hit the, uh, the keypad so you don't have to go into your menu system. I've got your French brains, Lambert. So that's what happened to them. Mortified dumped the clients and took the ND-133. I guess we can assume he's not CIA, if he's willing to murder. Murder frozen organs. You can't murder the dead. Semantics. I think we've got a way to ID the Penguin. The security guard everybody's so excited about? His name is Francois Coldebuff. Our intercepts suggest he got a lucky picture of mortified Penguin with his cell phone, was wounded, and locked himself inside body processing. Processing? Where they pull the brains out of the skull. Introduce yourself to Mr. Kodabuff and get that phone. So we got a save point right here, and this next few rooms... Um, I mean, how do I say this? This room's pretty easy. Just follow what I do here. You're going to deactivate the turret. There is one guard in this room to the right. You can't really see him, but he's uh, right there. Just sneak past. Now this next room is, there's, I haven't found a way to get around a guard being disturbed. Um, uh, or should I say down with the sickness? Uh, sorry, I have bad jokes. But you're going to pretty much get up against here and you're going to go slowly. Now you can be damaged and of course all of my Splinter Cell runs are no damage. So follow the path that you see me do uh, as you do not want to get damaged by the steam. And it looks like you were right. Said he the guard. Once you get past a certain point, you're going to have to, if you want to limit the amount of them moving around, move slowly like this. I know it looks really weird, but do the Sam Shuffle. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, but this is the only way that you can move slow enough because Sam only has two different distinct movements during this. You're still going to get heard. Don't get me wrong. This will not keep you from being heard, as you'll see here, because once you round the corner, even when you're doing this method, you still make too much noise rounding the corner, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing you can do about it. I hear right there, do you see that long movement he does just around the corner? But you want to con continue to do this, and that is because you don't want the guard to go into the other room, because then it takes forever. So if you just move ever so slightly and do the Sam Shuffle, then you should uh, be able to get by this section without no one seeing you, even though you have to do a little bit of a distraction and there's nothing you and it's not like something that it's just it's one of those things that just happens that there's no way around but again now we're in the final section now normally if uh there are two things that can happen either you have to knock out the three guards that are going to kill the guy in here or you kill the guy so or you knock out the guy aim at the handle stop stop it's obviously not working 
We're, however, going to uh, not sure do either one, kind of and we're going to do a distraction on the three guys so that they don't we'll actually kill here. the guy Maybe if we can't inside this room. Can uh, and that way you can get through the level without uh, knocking anyone please. else out, and no I'm one else messes job. with him as well. I'm not here to add to your troubles. Are you badly hurt? No. I'm living, I think. You are? I'm from the phone company. There's been a recall. What? I'm gonna need to take your telephone. I... I'm very confused. Give me the phone, Francis. I always thought he looked like the uh, Hitman from, like, Hitman 2. So that's Mortified Penguin. The early Hitman Compliment 2. Mr. Silent Assassin. On his photography. We got a facial match off CIA databases. Norman Soth, U.S. citizen. What's that ID code? Does it mean he's an agency asset? No, it means they don't know. I'm running him through Echelon. We could have a location on him within the hour. Great work, everybody. Make yourself scarce, Fisher. Cohen's waiting outside for extraction. Right. Again, right what? here, uh, the, they're going to play a cutscene, and then they'll break through, and then they'll kill the guy. But if you distract them, you stop them from doing all of that. And you can distract by shooting this little valve here, the, the door handle. What's that noise? As you can see, doing that doesn't knock them out, and it also means that they're distracted by that, and you're good to go, move on, and you don't have to worry about them killing the other guy as well. So it's like a win-win. But there you go. There's the mission. Hope you all enjoyed. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. It's always my pleasure to bring these missions to you guys. And uh, thank you for watching the live streams. Don't forget to hit that join button, as that is how we can continue to do what we love to do on here. So... Love you guys. Take care of yourselves. And of course, I will see you on the next video. Peace out. Additional 8,000 U.S. troops arrived in East Timor today in the biggest... Military intelligence released the information that Deridan Doa leader Suwadi Sadano was not only responsible but on site at the March 28th hostage crisis at the U.S. Embassy to East Timor. Headed by Abraham Zerkazi to reverse engineer the programs developed for the Georgian information crisis was declared a success by its U.N. Sporadic clashes with Deridan Doa guerrillas along the East Timor border. No U.S. casualties were... What do you think? The world is small, nasty, and complicated, and everybody dies alone. Hmm. What do you think about Norman Soth? He's small, nasty, and complicated. I guess how he'll die is up to him. I don't think Soth even knows whether or not he's still working for the CIA. I'm a good judge of character. That must be why we get along so well. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrano 01, to the third mission in Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow, the infamous train, which we're going to be able to get through without taking anybody out, and hopefully you guys enjoy the stealth.
ISIS agent or a terrorist. Those things aren't mutually exclusive. Hippie. Until we know different, we're treating him as a friendly. So don't blow his cover. Any alarms mean mission over. The trap sees you before you see him. The mission's over. Don't do anything to compromise him. Does that include killing him? Yeah. You leave him alive, if you don't mind. Updates on your upset. So one thing I need to make a mental note, it can be a little hard to hear me during this because the the sound and how loud the outside is, but this mi mission is pretty straightforward. You should be able to complete this without any problems. Now, one of the first things to note that if you actually look through the optic cable here, an enemy will appear, but if you don't, he will not appear. So just do not look through and you don't have to worry about the enemy. Another complication for you. Found the credit cards our man Poindexter, a.k.a. Soth, used to buy the train tickets. What's the complication? Two seats in coach. Looks like you have at least two terrorists mixed in with the civvies in the cheap seats. But you're dealing with tight quarters. All of this is pretty easy to figure out. The only distraction we had to do was the light, because it's the only way you'll get into that hallway without a guard just automatically turning around because of a civilian seeing you. So you got to turn the light out. Here, you just need to wait patiently for these guys to kind of uh, move. Once this guy moves, the next person you got to worry about is someone that you have to wait until they sleep. Other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory, and it shouldn't be too difficult for you to be able to figure out how to get by uh, these sections. She does take a little bit of time before you can actually move. So again, be patient and then eventually she will go to sleep and that's the only way to get around uh, without her just setting off an alarm. Now, you're also gonna get detected slightly here. There's nothing you can do about it in the section up ahead. I have tried so many ways, but it doesn't matter what you do, you'll still get that uh, sound right here. There's somebody there. See, I mean, it's just there's nothing you can really do about it. But it's not like you're really getting detected. It's just they see something faintly. Here, you're going to wait for this guard. He's going to come back around and then turn. Make sure that you do wait. Don't go out there because he will see you. And there you go. You've got past the infamous outside of the train, which is uh, not too difficult. The rest is super, super easy. Just being patient and uh, being stealthy like we love to do. Brunton's chums in the CIA came through for us. Sauce's right leg has more prosthetics in it than Lee Majors. Apparently, he had a disagreement with a landmine. Might register different on thermal. Perfect. Monsieur, you requested earplugs? Ah, yes. I'm very sorry, but I couldn't find any. If your neighbors start shouting again, please feel free to call me and I'll ask them to be quiet. Thank you. I'm very sorry. I still think to this day this is one of the coolest missions in Splinter Cell. Even though it is technically considered one of the easiest missions in Splinter Cell, it is also just one of the coolest. I love these types of train missions where you've really got to try to be as stealthy as possible, obviously. I'm a big fan of those. Looks like we found our guy. And we just need to go up and talk to him. Wake up, Poindexter. First, you tell me, who are you? I'm your Uncle Sam. Come to make sure you're still one of the good guys. How do I trust you? Your name's Norman Soth. Ask me about the chestnut tree. Okay, fine. What are you doing here? If the men I'm with catch us talking, they'll kill us both. Then make your Sedona story fast. It's an agency job. The Joint Chiefs want a military presence in Indonesia, and I was part of the plan. That's all I can say. Who's your runner? Clifton Finch. What about the cryogenics lab? Sir? What is it now? 
You have a phone call. Stay hidden and don't make a noise. Sorry if I woke you. It's him. Is this a fresh phone? We put the chip in just an hour ago. Good, let's go to the bar car. I don't want to talk here. He was lying about his handler, wasn't he? Yeah. Finch has been on sick leave for 16 months. Hack the laptop now. And trail Soth, laser mic that call. We still can't risk blowing Soth's cover. Fisher, we need that phone call. Dime to a dollar, he's talking to Sudono. All right, so here we're just going to get up close enough to him. You can easily do this. Make sure you stay crouched and get out your laser mic. And we're going to move on the right side once we get past this window, and then we can just focus on him. Go ahead and listen to uh, what he has to say, and then we'll move on from there. It depends on our Mossad leak. I don't know, 80%, maybe 90. I just have a bad feeling about this train. I think our cover's blown. Hold on. No, it's just a feeling I have. I don't think it's safe to talk right now. Okay, but make it fast. I'm glad. Stay worried. Shin, bet. Are you kidding? I could barely believe Mossad, much less. Of course, of course. Always assume they know what you're doing. Exactly. It's a joke. Right. Mein Gott, I can walk. Four more days, tops, then you're bulletproof. It's not safe to talk now. I need to get off this train. No, no, I can't. It's not possible. Of course. Till next time. Good work. Grim? Give me a sec. Focusing on the Timorese Mombe for expediency's sake. The new translator will take a few seconds to catch up. Take your time. There. Springfield demonstration. 80% plus fatalities. Custer would be proud. What the hell does that mean? Nothing good. What about that? Might be daily phone calls to delay release. Translator still a little hinky. Right. We've got enough to work with. Get topside, Fisher. We're pulling you out of there. All right. Well, the hardest part's done. We just have one guy to sneak around, and he is very, very easy to get around. You just keep moving forward. If you've done everything in the correct timing that I've done, then you don't have to worry about him whatsoever. But if you're a little bit slower, you can still get around him, uh, but just continue to move forward. He doesn't turn back in this direction. And then you just have to kind of race to the end as you get an automatic scripted alarm. We've got visitors. Our cover's been blown. We're getting off the train now. Talk to me about level of force. It's them or you. There you go, ladies and gents. Hopefully you enjoyed the infamous train mission. It's only going to get tougher from here in Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. So don't forget to click that join button, become a member, leave a like. Let me know what you guys think of the walkthrough so far. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. of Indonesia has submitted formal protests against supposed U.S. sorties across the Timorese border. And if Indonesia's government continues to hamper our efforts to combat terror, we will make our displeasure known. Has effectively driven the Deridandoa out of East Timor, crushing individual cells of guerrilla fighters. The situation in Indonesia should be resolved within have given U.S. troops for limited sorties onto Indonesian land, but only under supervision by...
Lambert, do you really think I need these two nannies? I'm a big boy, you know. Sam, on this mission, we have to work closely with the local authorities. It's related to the bank account we found on Salk's laptop. A large payment was made to a charity cover-up for a Syrian terrorist cell operating in Jerusalem. I knew the Penguin was a benefactor, and... You'll have more details once you get on site, big boy. This looks like a touchy mission. Grunton is coordinating with local intelligence. Mossad? Even better. Shin Bet. Spooky. Who are we torturing? Just you. First thing you're going to need is to retrieve your SC-20K. Wouldn't it make more sense just to give it to me? We have the barrel altered to reduce sonic placement. Only one man with those skills in the area. An old arms dealer slash CIA plant working out of the back of a small shop. He'll be waiting for you. Details on your offset. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinister Channel 1, your host, and welcome back to definitely one of the toughest missions in Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. And we're going to do something that really hasn't been done out there on YouTube, at least as of yet. Um, but this is uh, pretty crazy. So there's a lot of knockouts that you're going to have to do in this mission, but there's a lot less than you might think. Normally, uh, the amount of knockouts that you have to do, kind of like almost scripted in a way, is about five. There's two in the beginning. Uh, in the section up ahead that you cannot get around. Absolutely impossible. And then there are three more in the final section of the game that you have to take out on a normal basis uh, just because of the way that the game is structured and it's like kind of a scripted automatic sequence that happens when you get in the elevator. So I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you two different ways. One way that allows you only to take out two people in the entire level. Just two. That's not the one that we're going with. That's the second method. The, the method that we're actually going with is taking out just three people instead of the five so technically in this game you have to take out three people there's nothing you can do but you can allow one of them to get back up and therefore that's the two and i will explain all of that as we get a little bit further into it now when we did this on the live stream it took quite a bit of time to figure all of this out so hopefully you guys enjoy the effort and enjoy here, the home. mission let me just finish my orange juice you can everything you've seen up to this point is want. pretty straightforward okay, it's just about sneaking uh being smart Aware of your I surroundings. Now. Use the boxes here to do your SWAT turn. Now, this section up ahead, you have to take out the two guards. There's a bottle uh, at the beginning of the boxes right there if you want to pick up the bottle to, to do it with the bottle, but we're just going to do it with knocking them out like on a regular basis. We just want the guns and the money, Saul. We'll take your life. We have no choice. We need to have them dead. Nothing you can do about that. There's no other way to do it except you have to knock them out or kill them. One or the other. We decided to go for the knockouts. It is mandatory, but uh, technically those are the only uh, two guys that have to stay knocked out. Berkowitz. Oh, thank God you showed up when you did. You are Mr. Brunton's man, no? Who were they? Thieves. They shouldn't have been able to get this close to me. There must be something wrong with my security arrangements. You've got something for me. Yes. Only a small thanks compared to what I owe you. Now, if you actually talk to this guy again after picking up your weapons, he will take you to a range if you follow ah. him stealthily, and you can pick up another um, sticky shocker. However, we don't need to do that because there is a location to pick up more sticky shockers and air four rounds Good. towards... The Feeling end of the section. With a warm gun in your hand? Much thanks. Your next objective is named Dahlia Tal. Brunton? Ms. Dahlia Tal. She's a Shin Bet agent in deep cover with local terrorist cells. She's our link to Norman Soth's terrorist connections. One of the choice nuggets of intel we pulled off Soth's laptop. Find Dahlia. She'll lead you to the mercenaries. So just make sure that you wait for that guard. Again, the other option is to follow uh, the guy who, the arms dealer, and then he'll take you down here, and then he'll take you to the right instead of hey, where we're please. going. Please, can you tell me when the curfew ends? No idea. We had an incident in the Christian area this morning. Was it serious? Pretty serious, but less than the one last week. Now be quiet. 
God, this city is becoming more and more dangerous. Wait for this guard to pass. He's going to pass straight through you. There's a little section in there that you can do the uh, split jump if you want and uh, jump on him and knock him out if that's your thing. Pretty cool. Here, there's two options. Either get against the wall on the end or get against this wall and do a SWAT turn so he won't see you. Makes absolutely no sense, which is why we chose this one. Here, you can just immediately run all the way down. I'm, I'm not sure, actually, if this lady here seeing you causes an alarm or an alert, but I don't like to take the chance. So I just try to stay out of sight, out of mind from anyone. Civilians, guards, it doesn't matter who it is. I don't want anyone to see me. I'm a ghost, except for the two guys I had to knock out. But that's mandatory. Okay, it's not till you get to Chaos Theory where you get more open levels to do stealthy without taking anyone out. It has never been a safe place anyway. The curfew is not respected enough. So either you can stay down here and head to the left of the light and just wait for them to finish talking and then move along. Or you can climb the ladder. If you do climb the ladder, wait here a little bit. The reason we're waiting is because this is old technology. Therefore, this guy doesn't really spawn until you get close enough. So now this guy spawns on top of the buildings. You'll see him over there. Uh, right there. He will not spawn until you get a little bit closer, you know, that and that's so why you want to wait Nothing until they're changes. almost done with their conversation. The the As you can see, they're starting to move now, and growing. then timing-wise, it's a lot better. Otherwise, you'll have to be waiting a long time. The guards will move too far up, and then their patterns are going to be different. So if you do it in the amount of time that I do, then you're fine. Other than that, if you stay on the bottom ground, just make sure he's not looking as you're crossing uh, the floor, and then you're good to go. Here, there's two options. Either you can stay next to these guys. Uh, there's a little thing that you can get on right next to him on the right side. But if you want to be even more stealthier, we're going to move to the right. It takes a little bit longer, but it allows you to remain the stealthiest because there's a little area behind here. And then you can just slowly creep your way up into the next section. Just watch out for these guards. There's are two of them in this section. Like I said, really the hardest part of this level is that ending. It's just because it's it's totally scripted. It's an, an, an immediate alert, but we figured out a way to um, not even get the music playing. So we don't even get the alert. And it took quite a long time. If you watch that live stream, you can see how much effort goes into these videos. Uh, and then the Splinter Cell community coming together on the Discord channel. So if you want to join, the oh, look at that, just popped up. If you want to join the Discord channel, uh, do so as well if you want to learn new strategies and games that we love. Here, we're just going to continue to move slow. Our contact is going to be this one that's going to be coming out right now. Make sure you go up this pipe slowly. Do not rush up it because he will turn around. One thing about Pandora tomorrow is the enemy AI is a lot more uh, finickier or finicker, whatever you say it. Uh, fi uh, I don't know. They're a lot more, um, I, I, I'd want to say smarter, but <laughs> in some cases, you know, you could be right next to them and they won't see you. So the first section is done. There's technically three parts in this mission. Definitely one of the longer Splinter Cell missions if you don't know what you're doing, even long if you do. And uh, we're going to be moving on to part two after this uh, scene. I have a clear identification of Dahlia. She's waiting for you near the church. She's wearing a traditional white outfit. The code is, is there a special hour for the mass? Answer, only in the morning. Is there a special hour for the Mass? Only in the morning. You took a long time. You're American. Who are you? I'm friendly and looking for a friend of mine. You've seen this man? I feel you wouldn't be asking unless I had. What was he doing in Jerusalem? Buying a weapon. Details, details. I don't know any. Something biological. The Syrians have supposedly had it for over a decade, but it was too dangerous to move until your friend came along with some kind of storage devices. What was the deal? 
Your friend got the biological agent. He gave the Syrians a small mountain of U.S. currency and one of the storage devices. Where are the Syrians? Where's the device? I'll take you to the device, but stay out of sight. Anybody sees us together, and we'll be far from the only people killed. All right, so first thing you want to do is you want to take out this light. You have to on the Xbox version, or you have to use some type of distraction. The light is the best because, as you can see, it creates no distraction at all. Whereas you won't be able to get by this section because of the two civilians on the right. They're going to hear you or see you slightly, and that causes the guard to, you know, come close to you and stuff. And we don't want any type of noises, any type of distractions, unless we can help it. And that is the best way to get through that, at least on the Xbox version. I believe the PC version is a little different as that light is not really there. Here, you have to go through the light. I mean, you could shoot the light, but you're still going to cause a distraction either way. So just go through it and have him see you just very slightly. Now, you haven't been seen or anything. He's not on you. That's just like caution music, I guess. But there's really no other way around it. You've got to either shoot that light or just quickly get through there. So I decided to quickly get through there, that way limiting the amount of interactions I have with the level. And most of this stealth is pretty explanatory. You guys should be able to get through this without too much problem. It's just getting used to the controls and how they move. Wait. You knew I was coming. Sure. My people contacted me. Said that if you had any doubts, to mention the name D.P. Brunton. What will you do when we reach the Syrians? I'll get you inside to see them, and then drop out of sight. If you're able, I'd appreciate a lack of witnesses. Definitely a lot of good stealth in this as going through a city with some civilians, not a lot, but some. Here we're going to be doing the infamous SWAT turn again. They put it in a few levels, but we're going to wait until this guard is actually going around. Because obviously he would be able to see us from the outside. So wait till he moves to the right and then we can start our SWAT turn. Now you might not even have to do this. Maybe they don't see you, but I never not did this if that makes any sense horrible english there because i just like the way it looks i like my sam to be a little bit cinematic at the same time but being practical which makes no sense considering this game has no practicality in it whatsoever when it when it comes to some of these mechanics especially the swat turn here immediately move like don't wait you gotta you gotta immediately move and go because uh, he's gonna turn around and he will see you so you've got to go down into this shadow part area and just wait for him He's going to come back in this direction. Don't follow her. And then he's going to move forward. So wait for him to pass. Don't move too far forward because he will see you once you try to go into that light. There's no civilians in these shops, so you don't have to worry about anyone seeing you from the sides. Stick here to the left side. He doesn't go up any further. And then you can move up. Now, the same thing is going to happen with this guy up here. He'll only go to a certain point, and then he will turn back around. So there's two options you can do. You can either be ridiculous, like uh, I show you here in the next uh, few minutes with a part. Or you can just do this. As you can see which way he turns, if you go to his opposite side, you can literally stand next to him and then move up. I know it's a weird thing to do, but it allows you at least to what get through it a little outside? bit quicker. We're well past curfew. I'm so sorry. I just had to take care of my sick father. He was wounded in... Of course, but we can't make exceptions. I'll have to insist you return to your house immediately. Of course, officer. I'll be right on my way. I'll escort you. Excuse me? These streets aren't safe, curfew or no. I'll walk you home to make sure you arrive quickly and safely. That's not necessary. I don't mind at all. Here, let's go. See, in a normal situation, he would have called really in for backup, probably. Necessary. And that really wouldn't have worked. But you gotta love good old video game writing. We're gonna go ahead and hide the body. It is not necessary. But I'm a purist. I'm gonna hide the body. And this doesn't count as one of our knockouts. We didn't do a thing. Nicely done. Does this change our plan? No. 
The biological sample will only be at the Shoshana warehouse for another few hours. We can't afford to let it get away. We just need to be more subtle. If I see you between here and the warehouse, I'll have to call off my part of the assignment. Right. Is there a way I could get up on the roofs? Yeah, that works. Over there, you should be able to get up. I'll meet you at the warehouse. Okay, make sure you stay in this uh, shadow right here, or else he will see you there. We're going to move up to the right. I tried everything I could to see if I can <clears throat> get up closer to him and then sneak by him, but there's really not a way to do it unless you do a distraction or a whistle. You could probably whistle for him right here, then move around this back left side, and then go around to the front. That's probably something you could do if you like to whistle, but I've really limited the whistles I've done so far. I've done zero, and I'm going to see how long I can go without using that specific mechanic. And it can be tough because the whistle is very handy, and it does make the game a lot easier when you're trying to use distractions. Here you're going to get up against the wall. You don't even really need to. Just wait for this guy to come out. He does not come out until you get this close, and then you can get by him. I don't believe there's any other way to get through this section stealthily without at least knocking out some of the guards. This is the only way you can do it without knocking out the guards. If you try to go any other direction besides this back way, then you're, you are gotta deal with them directly. As you can see, there's just so many lights. You probably have to shoot out a bunch of lights. You can see her on the left, far left side up there. You can actually still talk to her, even if she does see you. But if you're out in the open, that's when the mission, I think, will end. Now, don't think that you have to knock this guy out. He blocks her from going on. But if you stay here, he'll stay there infinitely. But once you start moving to the left, he will start to go. Now, this is the part that I was talking earlier where we're going to defy logic and uh, normal stealth parameters to do this. So there is a, uh, there's a bottle at the beginning of this long, you know, walkway or quarter, corridor. You can Miss, pick that up to distract me. this guard. We're not oh. going to do that. Oh, thank goodness, a police officer. You startled me. You can't be... I was so worried because of the curfew. Imagine the type of character you could run into out here. You need to... I'm sorry, but I really need to get home. I shouldn't be out past curfew. Exactly, miss. Thank you so much. Have a good night, officer. It really doesn't make any sense that he allows her to go in there, because that's where the thing is. She's literally walking right to where uh, the, uh, the sample is. So here we're going to get on his right side. I know it's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. But technically, it's the only way to do it except for a distraction. Because he stands right in front and he looks right at the gate. So this is where we're going to pick up the extra sticky shockers. Um, we really don't need it in this case because of the way that we're playing. But for those of you that do the other method, I'm going to show two methods back to back. The first one is going to be the method that I prefer. And then I'll show a second method. Um, and it's going to be a little tough to explain because a lot happens in a very short period of time. So I'll do my best to explain after the fact because... There's uh, conversations happening over when I'm doing it, which makes it a little bit tougher to explain to you, because I want you to hear those conversations. Who do conversations. the Syrians think you are? A double agent. They think I'm betraying Mossad. Why are you being so helpful? Our governments are allies. Our enemies are yours. You don't have to come to the warehouse. Teamwork isn't exactly my M.O. You can take it up with your superiors. Brunton, I believe his name was. Here we go. You ready? We're stirring up a nest of vipers here. You want to come inside? We not are not taking her out. Fisher, we need Dahlia Tal dead. Kill her. Don't think, just do it. This is going to make getting through the last section a breeze. All right, guys, here we go. Damn it, Fisher. We needed her dead. Why? Shinbet's not playing a straight game. It's not your job to question. I'm going to need a little more warning to shoot unarmed women. Are we aborting the mission? No, we can't. But you just dug yourself a deep pit to climb out of. Sign off, Brunton. 
We need to talk. Get the sample as soon as possible. You're in a fifth freedom situation. All means are acceptable. You see what I'm doing, right? Do exactly what I did. I'll explain that in a second. Then we're gonna move up here. We're gonna run. What's then we're gonna roll. Who is that? Right before we get to that uh, pipe on the left there, and then start slowing down. This is gonna make those two guys uh, hopefully move that way. Now they do different things. They don't always have the same pattern, so this will take you quite a bit of time to do. Notice how there's four enemies here. Normally there's only two, which means one guy is knocked out. That was the guy that was directly in your way. There's no way you have to knock him down. You cannot get by without knocking that guy down. The reason is his hitbox is too big and you can't walk around him if you do an air four around like we did with the second guy, okay? That has to happen. You have to knock him out. Now, the second method that I'm about to show you is uh, letting the guy, that letting the second guy see you knock down the first guy, okay? Letting him see it. What that does is it, even if you airfoil him, once he gets back to normal, he's just going to get the guy up. You don't get, you don't actually get seen at all. In both of these situations, you never actually get seen, which is why none of the actual music for like people firing at you got seen. Here, you're just going to wait till that guy moves. Move slowly here, all right. And so once we get to this point, I'm going to show you the second one. The second one allows you not to knock anyone out except for the first guy, but he gets back up, so technically, he's not knocked out. Hopefully, you understand that. So just two different methods. So I'll go ahead and talk during this one. Again, this is going to be a little different, all right? So what we're going to do is not do the ricochet off of the wall with the air four round this time. We're just going to knock the first guy out, switch to our ring foil, wait for the guy to come closer so the guy in the bottom area doesn't see him, then do an air four round and uh, run past him. Do not take the light out. Okay, notice no music. There you go. Notice no music. No, no, like you've been seeing music. And then the method, same method applies here where you're going to run, make a lot of noise so that those two guys come and investigate why you uh, float on by. As you can see, those are the two different methods that you can do. Again, I prefer uh, the first one is the best one, even though we have to knock out that one guy. He's a mandatory knockout no matter what. Even if he gets back up, He's still mandatory, but those are the two different ways, and we'll continue. Fisher. You ever read the Chamberlain chapter of your history books? No need to act cute. Dahlia Tau is close and no doubt eager to repay your mercy. Shinbet wants the ND-133 and knows there's no official repercussions for killing somebody who doesn't officially exist. She's got sniper stats that could disprove Kennedy conspiracies, needless to say. Yeah, you said jump and I didn't. When I get back to the States, I'll sit facing the corner in a cone hat. Okay, so you have to take that light out because these guards all the way down the hallway will not move unless that light is out. The only way we get them to move is if that light is out. That is a must. But other than that, that's pretty easy to get by. Uh, you just gotta take that light out wait for the right timing, move up, get into the elevator, and once you're in the elevator, they can no longer sense that you're even near, even if you're standing right in front of them. Here, all right, there's going to be, I think, a total of two or three people shooting at you, sniping. But if you take out these two lights here, the second and the third light, you can get through this. I was going to try to use my Air 4 rounds to limit the amount of bullets that are in the area, but it's very... I don't know, it's uh, very shoddy when it comes to shooting in this game just because it's an older style game and it, it doesn't always do what you want, especially even when you're shooting all your weapons. Here we're going to stay in the darkness. You can see one of the enemies right here. We're going to shoot to the left of the enemy, but way left of the enemy. That's going to create a distraction. Stay in the blackness as much as you can. And you should be able to get by and you have just completed this level with you only technically out knocking there. out three people. Mission's complete. You think that small box is the real thing? I hope to God not. There's certainly been suggestions in Syrian intelligence that they've been developing agents. All we can do is let Bellagio do his job and hope. You think smallpox is the Springfield demonstration? I don't want to guess. Meet Cohen and get out of there. 
Your soft spot for Dali has cost us more in the region than you can imagine. All right. So there you go, ladies and gents. Mission is complete. If you have any questions on getting through that tough section at the end, let me know in the comments or on Discord again. Link is always in the description. Love you guys. Please take care of yourselves, and I will see you on the next one. Peace. Derridendo forces have claimed victory after U.S. troops have retreated from two engagements near the... ...released an official statement on their strategic withdrawal from the small skirmishes on... ...of Springfield, Texas after the non-voluntary smallpox vaccination. Health workers could not divulge... They should tell us what they know. It's our lives. Dramatic footage from Television Free Indonesia showing Dara Dandoa leader Suwadi Sadano apparently engaged in battle. It remains... There's too much noise on the line. I'm not sure we'll be able to connect you to Sarah before we land. We'll have the agency file on Pandora tomorrow, ready by the time you touch down. You're right. It's Sadano's insurance policy. He misses a phone call, the virus gets released. We're vaccinating Springfield, Texas. But until we know how many other pox boxes there are, and where, Sedano is a glaring tripwire. We're going to have to tiptoe around him. Did Grimm write these smallpox flash notes? Yeah, she's a poet in her own way. But she makes an interesting point. We slip up in Indonesia, and those images could be illustrations of anywhere in America. I'm sorry, Fisher. I can't get Sarah on the line. I don't know what I'd say to her anyway. This is going to be a complicated mission, Fisher. We're running it in cooperation with Displace International, so your old friend Douglas Shetland will be local. Good. I can work with Shetland. What's Shetland doing here? A ghost army operation. He'll give you the brief. Howdy, Shetland. Fisher! My god, old man, you keep turning up in unexpected places. I'd hope the next place we met would have been stateside. I'd like to buy you a beer, see how Sarah's doing. Let's leave home where it is. What's this ghost army business? Psyops, a distraction. What's my part? Your handler should have your objectives. For my part, Sedano's plane in the yard near the village needs to be sabotaged. Since I was going to be in the neighborhood anyway. Much appreciated. I've got a dozen displaced snipers around the camp. You won't see them, but you better believe they're there. It's good to see you again, Shetland. Once we're back home, we'll get that beer. Glad to hear it. We need to have a talk about some work I might have for you. I've already got an employer, and they hear everything we say. Good. They should know a man with your skills deserves more money and autonomy. A man should fight any war but his own, especially in the America we've got today. Is there anything you can tell me about Sedano? Why is life so valuable? My guys have had two dozen chances to see what's on his mind with a sniper bullet. Nope. Sorry again. I've got a dozen itchy trigger fingers on that man. Real hard to keep saying no. You know everything you need to. I'll see you once the mission's complete. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome to the fifth mission for Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. Definitely a real challenge to do without no knockouts, but we're going to be doing that today, so hopefully you guys enjoy. So here, you don't want to move up around the left yet. If you wait here, the guard will actually do something different, and he'll make it a little bit quicker. Uh, if you wait here, he's going to move to the right and sit on that bench in front of us. If you were to move up, he'll follow you in that same area. And then the timing for you to be able to get by is a lot tighter. So if you just wait before you turn that corner, the guards will always do this little pattern right here. Now this guy, if you didn't wait, 
he'll do exactly what he's doing, but he'll stop right there and turn around. So it's very, very beneficial for you to wait at that corner before uh, you move around. This section is not too tough. It can be just a little frustrating if you are if you don't have the patience. This is where you have to deal with all of the mines. You don't have to take any of them out, but you're going to want to stick to the left side and you're going to use your thermal. Hello, I don't want to get blown up. And why are my chances any better than yours? So if you stick to the left, you because won't have to worry too much tracks. about these. Not all there is going to be a certain point where Sides you're going to have to go to the right. Just look for the trip wires. I can't look for trip wires. I'm drunk. And it's going to be about right I'm here. You're going to see two, game. one there, and then you're so going to see one up ahead right there. So Remember, you need to go in between those two and then move over to this yeah, right side. Let this guy pass. Be careful, man. One guy is going to blow him up because he's an idiot. And then you can jump over this final one right here. Oh no! Hey man, are you all right? And there you go. You're past that section. And then now next up, we just need to deal with a few enemies here, which are actually not a problem. And the one thing I love about live streaming this is I get some good tips from other players out there. So make sure you join the Discord community. You should be closest to Donna's plane, Fisher. Really? Because uh, there are some really good Splinter Cell players out there that just absolutely love the series as much as I do. And uh, they know this game like the back of their hands. So if you want to talk to those types of people, please join our Discord. Go? The link is in no, the description. The and you can chat with other kind of awesome There's stealth so gamers. So here we're just going to move around to the left. This plane forever now. Try to stick to the so shadows Dono as much as possible. And you can plant go and double the C4 the the right plane. here. That'll keep you occupied. Good work, Fisher. There's going to be a guy that automatically comes out once you plant it. So make sure you get up against this wall and then move. Quickly do this because he does turn around and he will see your shadow. So get around that corner quick. How much quick. longer do you think they'll be here? Until they convince the U.S. we're not worth the trouble. This next wow. section is something that I always did. I always used the whistle no, um, no. to get the guy to come out of the shack. The so I always machetes. would turn Which the light off and then use the whistle to get the guy to come out. But you actually don't even need oh, to do that. If you're quick enough, here. you can like turn the light off and hit the switch money. at the same time. Somebody it's very follow. risky, yeah. but uh, I pulled it With off so the first time I tried it, so I it's think you can too as well. Productivity is up. Security is tighter. Just keep yourself useful and patriotic so you don't end up on the chopping block. You just want to wait a few seconds for this guy on the left to go by you. And then once he turns, that's when you want to do it. You want him at the furthest point. Turn those back on! Do that, and then immediately move up. Like I said, if you're quick enough, you can actually do it all in one go, and you don't have to worry about using the whistle method. Now, this is probably considered the trickiest portion in this mission, and that is because it's a lot of scriptiveness. There's one guy on the bottom level here that will automatically see you no matter where he is on the map unless he's distracted. The only way he won't see you is if he's distracted. So here, you're just going to wait for the dog to go to the right, and then you can get by so what you're going to see me do is we're not going to do a knockout, but we're going to set things up uh, for us to be able to get by. It's actually really, really tricky. We're going to grab a bottle here. The dogs are so see the guy on the left? They must be hungry. He will always so. see you There's if you try to wrong. use the zip line and you have quiet. not distracted him. Hey, now, the guy on the right you isn't a problem. He is out of the way, but the guy on the left will always no, see you. No, not yet. You got some beer left up there? No, and leave me alone. So we're going to wait until these the guy on the right is going to move forward, and then he's going to move to the right. Once he moves to the right, the guy on the left will slowly start to move to the left. Once he is about to move to the left, you're going to want to throw the bottle behind this tent. This will get him to actually come around the tent over to the other side. So he's distracted, he can't see anything, and then you can move up the ladder. This is the only way that uh, I've been able to figure out how to get by this without taking anyone out. Now, what we're also going to do is use our Air 4 around on the guy that's up on the ladder. You'll see that you can't get by him without doing some type of distraction. Either a sticky cam diversion or something like that. It's up to you, but using the Air 4 around gives you enough time to be able to move. Whatever you do, once you shoot this Air 4 around, don't stand up. Just continue to move forward. Sam will automatically grab this, and there you go. You have just done it without setting an alarm off. I'm inside the camp. The core of your mission is Sedano. He's on site. We need you to locate and trail him. But again, don't let him spot you. Pandora tomorrow? That's the idea. We haven't been able to trace this daily insurance call remotely, so we're going to need you to get in there with a tap. Fifth Freedom with Sedona Militia. 
but don't get spotted before tapping the phone. Updates on your ops at. Good afternoon. It is, sir. Things are going good. This section isn't too hard. It's a lot of just kind of like follow the leader. So we're just going to be stalking Sedano in the background. We're going to wait till this guy turns around. You can't do it any quicker than this because the way everything is lined up, you just got to wait. Once he goes past you, then you're going to go underneath this hut on the right side. And then you can move up. Don't be too fast because there is a guard that is on top of where you are. And if you move out of here too quick, he can get a glimpse of you sometimes. So just kind of wait a little patiently. And then you can move forward. And then we're going to continue to follow them. And we're going to have our sticky camera ready. Any complications? Of course. Sedona changes the passcode for entry twice daily. He doesn't write it down. He gives it verbally to his three top lieutenants on site. So I grab one and make him talk. No. We need to stay discreet. We can't afford to have Sedono panic and skip a call. Use the sticky cam to overhear those conversations. Details on your ops app. Doesn't matter where it is as long as it's close. To overhear the code. How does it go? Real good. We're ahead of schedule. On? Product. Hmm. We'll meet tonight. I want to review our distribution arms. I'll be there. Good. The code for the big house today is 1492. Can you remember that? 1492. I got it. Good. There's a colonial home overlooking the compound at the end of the village. That's where Sedona makes his Pandora tomorrow phone call. That's where you'll need to be to tap it. Trail him, so you'll be sure to be there on time. Now you're going to be seen by that guy pretty much no matter what because of where he's located. But he doesn't really see you, he just sees something. But there's really another way around that. Either you gotta shoot a light out, or you do that. And I prefer to do that than shoot a light out. Because he'll just stay exactly where he is the whole time, and you can't get by him without doing some type of distraction. We're gonna stick to the left side here in the shadows. And we're still following. Give him a little bit of distance. There's still two other sections that you can do the uh, sticky cam with, but we've already done it, so we don't need to anymore. And we're going to get up against this wall here. And we're going to move on to the next checkpoint. Now here you're going to want to be a little patient. You're going to move to the right side. And you're going to wait in this little dark area over here. Hopefully you guys can see everything okay this game. The lighting is amazing, but it's almost too good because good sometimes the blacks can be really is, dark. Sir. I'm worried about the men. How so? I want to make sure they're not using the product. But I don't think they would. They're all good boys. Yes. We'll arrange for a spot check tonight just the same. All right. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wait until the guy that's roving comes back and then turns. Now, there's a guy on the right side. You can probably just barely see him. For some reason, he doesn't see you when you go across here. But he will see you if you do it too early. So, he won't see you if you wait just a little bit like I did. Here, you're pretty much free. We're going to stick to the in, uh, inside of this area up here as we're going around. And we're going to move all the way to the right. The guard won't be able to see you from the far right side. And this is pretty much it for this section. And we're going to be moving into the lower area section. This is actually a pretty long mission. A lot of different sections. Three different, um, like, completely new areas. And essentially, all we're doing is following him until he gets to his house. We're going to wait for these guys to go down. They're going to go down uh, a little ladder. Once 
once he goes down, he's the final guy, then you can go ahead and slowly make your way to that same area. Be very careful because there is a guy literally right beside you. So move slowly and you should be good to go. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next section. Got a heads up for you from Grimm. We're going to be losing touch in a second. There must be copper coils or some kind of grid ahead of you. The refinery proper is a dead signal hole. Good luck with your airplane, pilot. We're going to be out of contact as long as you're underground. I'll try not to get too lonely. Simple here. Just get up against this little edge. Wait for the other guy to pass you, because he just goes back and forth, and then we'll go ahead and jump over. Make sure you're not landing on anybody down here. And land softly as usual. Head to the door. Now once we get to the door, we're going to open it up, and we're going to go up the stairs, and then we're going to go ahead and hit the switch, which is going to turn off the light. Turn that back on. Get up against this wall. If done correctly, stand, and you should be able to get right by him. And get up against this wall and go all the way to the side as well. Is the plane all right? Yes, it's almost ready to go. Go. Don't waste more time. All right, so we're just waiting for him to move up. Once he does, we're going to take out this light that's straight in front of us. Now, you might not need to take out the light by what some people were saying, but I'd just rather be safe than sorry. Uh, there's two lights that I'm taking out, but you might be able to just get away with the one. Now, remember, the pistol aiming in this is not always good. So switch to your laser. This is going to be a hard shot to do because there's a guard to the right and the airplane pilot. So it's a tough shot to get that laser lined up. But if you've done it correctly, you should be good to go and you what can get by this guard. Who did that? And then talk to the airline guy. Eternal dirt. Thank God you found me, ignominious getaway. I'm short on time. What do I need to know? This name, Stanley Nakaryakov, Golden Triangle affiliated. He lives in the Lei Yuman district of Hong Kong. But don't broadcast it electronically. This part of the world is made of ears. My encryption is solid. I Probably my imagination. There's more to Japan's ISDF than they're letting on. How do you know? I've seen two other uh, CIA resources disappear. So how do you know it's the ISDF? Money knows everything. The name is Stanley Nakaryakov. Got it? Yeah, just one piece of advice. Don't take your plane. All right, once you're done talking to him, we're going to go ahead and use the code. You already have the code. I believe it's 1623. Or 0623, sorry. And we're going to get another checkpoint and move on to the next section. Welcome back to Fresh Air. Do you have the name? Fisher. Go tap that phone. We'll talk about the names later. Just uh, follow them and wait against the edge here. You're going to have two guys talking. You're just going to wait till they leave. I'm going to kill somebody if they don't stop shooting soon. That noise is going to break my ears. Seriously, they're ringing. Nag, nag, nag. I'm a musician. My ears are very sensitive. Why did they always give us this patrol? What about me? I've got to listen to the constant gunfire and your constant complaining. I feel like somebody's kicking me in the head. Now there's an idea. Once they're gone, there's going to be a pipe that you can climb right here on the left. It might be a little hard to see if you don't have your night vision on. And we're going to make our way up the top of the roof. We're going to stick to the left side of the roof so the guys on below can't see us. And we're going to go ahead and climb through the hatch. Hit Y to lift your legs up, and we're going to scoot along all the way to the very end. And then we can slowly start to move on to the next section.
careful. The access to the house isn't as easy as it seems. You should wait for darkness. All right, so the thing about this room is you're going to wait a little patiently. There is a tree that is slowly moving along with this guard, as you can see it below. You want to use that shadow to keep the guy on the right side from seeing you. And if you are fast enough, you can actually make it in one go. So use that shadow. Don't move too fast or the other guard will hear you. Wait till he moves around. There's also a turret here that you got to watch out for. Here is where you want to be quick, because that guard will turn around. And hopefully you'll be able to make it in one go, and you won't have to wait too long. So in this next section, we have two guards and a, a light. Um, it's pretty easy to stay out of the light. However, you've got to move slow. If you do not move slow, the guards will hear you. So finding that perfect timing of when to go is a little tough, but the best timing to find is when the light is heading back in the other direction. About right now. This other guard is going to be coming out. But just make sure you're moving slow and you're not moving too fast. Now you see the other guard went to the right side and this guard is there, so you should be able to climb up at this point if you've done it in the timing that I have. And stick to the shadows on this far left side. Now this is where you're going to use that code, 1492. You can actually get to the code while still in the shadows. You don't have to wait. But you do want timing of where the guards are to be perfect because this section is still going on even when you're in the new checkpoint and you're in the new section. As the guard out here can still see you from outside. Gonna do some SWAT turns. Today's code is 0526 5173 337 3889. Just move with Sedano. You really don't actually have to do any of this. You can actually get up against the wall on the opposite side of where I am now. Today's code is it might be a little bit safer for that guard not to see you. 337 3889. Pandora tomorrow. Good. It's me. Today's code is 0526 5173 337 3889. Pandora tomorrow. Once he gets on this Good. final edge right here, he's going to move up and uh, mess with his laptop. That's when we're going to want to go ahead and move up. Now, there is a camera in this area, but you can easily bypass the camera just by, you know, the proper time. Or you can shoot the camera and then you can move up. It's up to you, but you got to remember that the guy on the outside can still see you from in here. So, Always try to be aware of where you think he could be. Always look out there just to make sure he's not looking. And of course, we're going to do this while the camera's looking away. Good work, Fisher. And the camera won't see you when you're this far away. And you're good to go. Make sure you hit this little button right here. If you don't, you're going to get shocked. I know it, it happened really fast. And also, get out your flashbang. Now, there's other ways that you can do this from what I heard. Some people in the chat said that you don't need to use the flashbang, but I feel this is what Sam Fisher would do in this Fisher, situation. Please. Don't make a move. Shetland will take you out of there. Is it's 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 uh, I guess you can just kind of wait for a minute and then move, but I feel like that's not realistic. I'm under attack. So we use the flashbang. Doesn't knock him out, just disorients him and then we can go ahead and move on. So there you go ladies and gents, mission complete. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, I will see you on the next one. Peace out. To outright mockery of the U.S. military's inability to either capture or kill Suwadi Sadano.
the guerrilla leader has appeared on the front lines of nearly every major being sold over the internet and have become popular across the world. Even their wearers seem largely unsure whether or not irony is. I mean, it seems like we went to war without declaring anything, and a war we're kind of losing. I don't know what's... Bringing the smallpox vaccination death toll to six. Still no word from government officials regarding... You're just about in position. Right. I see the abandoned, but where's the shipyard? Underground. The dock was made for submersibles. What's up, ladies and gents? So welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrina One, and we have the next mission for Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. Hard walkthrough with minimal interactions, things like that. Uh, there are going to be a few knockouts we have to do on this mission because it is mandatory. Uh, but I will, again, try to get around any situation I can. Watch out for the laser here. And you should be able to get through this first section pretty easily, all the way till you get to the elevator. It's not too difficult to do. Uh, Timing-wise, you should be doing just fine. Again, this was another live stream that I did uh, as we went through the mission, learning it and figuring something out. I tried to do something a little bit more unique in the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned uh, for that. Maybe you've never seen the mission done in that kind of way, or the, the ending section done in that kind of way, and hopefully you'll appreciate the amount and effort that it actually took to uh, pull it off. So here, everything is just very, very straightforward. Uh, so I just want to reiterate that after Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow, we are going to be moving on to Chaos Theory, and we're going to be making that even more challenging than we did before. Obviously, with no knockouts, minimal interactions, things like that, what you're uh, used to seeing on the channel as of late. So hopefully you guys have been staying safe inside uh, during this pandemic, and hopefully everything between you, your friends, and your family are going well. We're going to jump here, and then we're going to be able to do the split jump into the next section. Here you're going to want to go ahead and get up against the crate and just wait for the guy to start moving. You can actually get around him now, if you do a SWAT turn now, he won't shoot you. As you can see, there's a turret there as well, and there is a zip line. So you could go the zip line route if you want to, which I feel is, you know, obviously more of Sam Fisher's style. But to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense in this section because there's a guard that's going to be sitting right down, like eating or doing something. And you literally zip line right above his head, and you have to climb the zip line right there which is to me out in the open compared to where he is and i feel like he would realistically he would see that so we're not going to go that route we're going to do something a little different we're going to go this way which is the same it uh, doesn't add any difficult you just got to wait until the turret is not looking in your direction and then you should be able to go here we've got a little uh metal gear solid action with the uh, laser trip wires through the uh, if you remember through the little garage area before we got out onto the um the tank boss battle. And then we're going to be moving on to the um, control room section, which can be a little tough. Of course, it just depends on uh, how you do it, if you do distractions. So I'm trying to do no whistles, so it makes it tougher. GPS shows you're a stone's throw from the control room. Walk softly and use that technician. If you raise the sub yourself, you're going to bring up a lot of Dara Dandoa, who won't be happy to see you. You're underestimating my charm. So here we're going to get up against the wall, and we're going to wait. One guy is going to be coming out. There's no way you can climb the pipe, even though it looks like you should be able to climb the pipe. Unfortunately, it is not a climbable pipe, I guess. So the first guard's going to go, and there's another guard that is sitting down at the desk. There's, there's too much light, so you can't just sneak by him. Why aren't you in the hall? I was just sending an update back home. What about your patrol? It'll still be there when I finish. But if you wait, he will move, and then you can actually get in. Now, getting out is going to be a different story, but you can at least get in pretty easily. Why is the light out? It's broken. Listen, let me finish this email to my sister. Sure. Tell her I haven't forgotten her. Go to hell. And we're going to interrogate this guy. There's no way around it. You have to um, actually interact with the computer.
This is going to allow the sub to come up. Make sure you don't knock him out too quickly because you still need to actually get him to talk to the people on the sub in order to make sure that no alarms go off. Garrett, what's going on? We weren't supposed to surface for another four hours. Garrett, are you there? Answer me if you're there. Otherwise, I'm pulling the alarm. Tell him we're kosher. What? Tell him nothing's wrong. Okay. There's no problem. I had a warning light flash on the ballast tanks. I'll put you back under as soon as they're fixed. Copy that. <gasps> Thanks. All right, so we're going to pick up this item right here. Now, again, I, I want to do this without using a whistle, because the whistle is just too easy to use. It's just too overpowered. So switch the lights off here. It's really the only way you're going to be able to throw. Put that down. And then you can turn them back on. And the reason in this case we turn them back on is because he will do a different pattern if the lights are on as opposed to if they're off. If the lights are off, he will stand there, turn them on, and then go back outside. Whereas if the lights are on, he will stand there and then he'll move it further inside. Now we just need to wait for this guy. Now you could have possibly got into the black as soon as that guy moved that way. It, it is possible, but I just didn't take, I didn't take the risk or the chance, but it is something you could do. Right, see the black there? You could have got up against the right wall and waited for him to pass and then moved on up. But then you also run the risk of him seeing you because he just does a quick turnaround and then goes right back. So you definitely want to wait for things to kind of get better here because the guards do some weird turnarounds here. They do like a 360 in like less than a second. So you can be seen sometimes. So you got to really be careful, be a little patient and uh, it'll pay off for you in the end, of course. So we're moving on to the next section. We have one guard here on this platform. You can easily get by him if you just stay to his left. He's going to stop, get up close as you can to him, and then eventually he'll turn around, but he'll turn around from uh, the right side, so you'll be able to just snoop on past him, or you can get against the wall on the left. It's up to you. So this next section, make sure that you do not enter the uh, enter this little elevator thing. Just use the switch. Because the developers have put a little secret down that you can actually use to stay stealthy because there's a guy looking with a light. Here, you're going to wait till this guard turns. There, now you want to go. Grimm's daughter's got her hands on Komodo's security personnel protocols. Inside that submarine, you're going to be outmanned and outgunned. That's everywhere I go. Here, you're just going to go ahead and get on this left side here and wait for this guy to pass, and then we're going to make our way into this sub. If you're quick enough, you can get in there before he sees you because there is light around this area. So normally he would be able to see you if he turns around. We're going to head down here. There is going to be a guard that patrols this area, so you're going to want to hurry up and get on this right little area up ahead, which will allow... Make sure you stay to the right here. Try not to get into the light. And of course, once this guard passes, then you should be able to freely get by him without any problems. Here you're going to want to be a little slow, as there are a few guards sleeping. So you just need to be careful.
and make your way further down the sub. We're going to do a SWAT turn. And we're going to switch the light off. It's the only way to distract him. Otherwise, you could do a whistle. But since we're... This is a no-whistle run. <laughs> I can't over-explain just how easy it is to use the whistle in some of these situations. It's very, very overpowered. There's going to be a guard coming through this door, so we're going to wait here for him. This guard we actually need to take out because he is going to get us into the closed-off section with the thermal scanner, or the retinal scanner. All right, we're going to go ahead and hide his body over here. Nobody will come over into this section. And this is where we'll be leaving in just a few moments as well. We're going to make our way inside, and we're going to get right up against this right side here. I'm going to go down a cup of coffee. I'll be back in a few minutes. Can you bring me a cup? No. You know the equipment's too sensitive for us to drink in here. Once he leaves the room... Then we're going to go ahead and move up, but you need to be quick because this guy on the left there by the computer is going to be moving to the periscope, so you want to make sure that you're you're moving a little quicker here. Even though you are in the dark, as you can see, sometimes you get a little bit in the light. Great work, Fisher. What do we got, Grim? Just need to find the terminal's ID number. There. Looks like we've got five subscribers. Satellite phones. U.S. numbers? Yeah. Echelon's linking them to a private military corporation. Something called Displace. We'll run a cross-check on their recent contracts. Five PMCs line up pretty nicely with our five pox boxes. What's my part? Amityville time. Get out. If we got the pox boxes, then there's nothing stopping us. The Joint Chiefs will want to move fast. Rendezvous with Cohen. It's about time you introduced yourself to Sedano. All right, so first off, we're going to grab um, these two smoke grenades up here. Try to do it quickly. There is a guard coming up. And you're going to put your face to the wall so that he doesn't see you. When he turns around, you're going to want to go ahead and knock him out. Mandatory knockouts from here on out. We're going to use the four smoke grenades. We're going to go down here, and we're going to uh, do the little trigger. And then immediately head right back up. That just sets off the scripted trigger. And we're going to be using smoke grenades to take these uh, enemies out. It can be tough to aim, and it will take you a while before you can actually get something like this, but this was actually, uh, took a very, very long time for us to actually get it, because sometimes the barrel was, would explode. So place them where you see me shoot them. Now, alternatively, you can go down the sub on the outside, and then you can sticky shock and get them all from the corner. But I prefer to do it this way, because it's a little different. And there you go. As long as you place those smoke grenades in uh, the same manner that I did, you should be able to take them all out with just smoke grenades. There's a total of four enemies. Again, you can uh, get on the sub and do the regular Sticky Shocker Air 4 rounds if you want. But I like to try to mix it up, do something a little different, and uh, we decided to go for um, knockout by smoke grenades. And there you have it, ladies and gents. The fission is minished. Hopefully you guys get that. But uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Love you all. Don't forget to leave a like. Become a supporter. Hit that join. Become a member. Helps us out tremendously. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Not the strategic airstrike in Kundang aimed at Sedano was successful. Military intelligence will marks a dramatic reversal in U.S. and coalition efforts in Indonesia. General Kellner predicted a favorable resolution within. Even if Sedano has survived, he's dropped so completely from public view that 
hostage taken by Sedano from the U.S. Embassy to Dili, is still unaccounted for. Shadownet is coming together better than anyone could have expected. Sedano's insurance policy is as good as canceled. So what are the Joint Chiefs suggesting we do with Sedano? We take him alive. We learned with Nicolaz how assassinated leaders tend to be stubborn ghosts. To infiltrate the TV station first. This is where Ingrid and Sedano are. All right, ladies and gents, welcome back. I'm your host, Sinistrina One, and we have got more Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. This is a tough mission, definitely one of the toughest. There's also a few things that are different than the PC version in this mission, and we'll go over that a little bit later. But infiltration wise is pretty simple. Hey, Follow the route that you see me do. We're going to be yeah. taking a Why? rooftop route, which is going to be uh, your best one. bet to get across yeah. without uh, being Alan seen. Maybe you can do it stealthily on the bottom, but there's no point. The I Something think this wrong? is the way Sam Fisher would do no, it. He would no. get on this the rooftops and he would go around all of these side. enemies. So oh, if you follow here to the left, you'll actually see another area that you can climb up right here. Once you climb up, scoot along to the other side, and then we're going to continue along the roof. I think the roof option yeah, is the stealthiest the way to actually get into this section. Now there are a few parts, especially the next section, which are just ridiculously tough to get by with no distractions and obviously no KOs. So before we even get into that section, as all of this is self-explanatory here, I'm going to explain a few things. So when you get to the next section, there's about a total of five guards. Two are in the courtyard before you get to the sewer entrance. And then where the sewer entrance is, there's a total of three guards. Thanks, man. Shouldn't take so because of the patterns that the three guards do, the timing is very, very tough in order to be able to get by it. So this took me about a couple of hours, the second section, just to get the timing right. I tried different things. I tried different areas. I tried maybe shooting out some lights, but of course, I don't want to shoot out lights. That's never a goal of mine to shoot out lights. So I decided we can figure this out. We can do it. And I, the route that I in, eventually end up do taking here is the only one that I was able to find. Now, uh, I don't know if it's any different on the PC, um, but there are a few things that are a little bit different. Lighting situations are a little bit different between PC and Xbox. So sometimes you can get through a section on PC that you actually can get through on Xbox because of the different lighting. And that's the same way for the PlayStation 2 version as well. But that one has a way more drastic difference. Let's hear. Go ahead. Ben Young says your boys aren't wearing their headgear. That's right, sir. Night vision's not safe with the lightning. Flash-blinded snipers would be useless to you. So how are we covering the parking lot? We've got extra men down there. It should be fine. So as you can see, if you do everything that I do, then you should be able to get by this part. Pretty simple. These are the two guys that are out in the courtyard before you get into the where the sewer entrance is. Now this next section here is what's really, really tough. Is There are two guys that stand right next to the sewer hole, and then there's a third guy that patrols around. So if you don't move forward from this point, the third guy that patrols around does not move. He stays right at that section straight ahead, and he looks directly at the sewer hole. So the only way I was able to figure out was to actually get him to move by moving to this location, then he'll do his rounds. If you don't move to this location, he will not move, he will not do his rounds. He'll just stand there and stay there looking at the sewer grate the entire time. So now that we got him doing his rounds, that's what we want. The ideal situation is to have, as soon as our guy walks past us there, the other guy is turned around, they're both looking at each other. If you've done that, then you know that everything will line up. Otherwise, 
you might have to do a restart because things won't line up and it'll take you like six rotations before you're actually able to get to the sewer. Uh, obviously, this is depending on not using any distractions. So as you can see, the, that guy is looking towards us and the other guy is looking towards the van. Don't worry about the guy towards the van. We need to inch ourselves up to where it's right on the first line. So in that middle left line of where our invi er, uh, invisible meter is, if you go above that line, then this guy on the left will see you when he's coming back. And you can see he does his pattern all the way. But if you've done it exactly the way I do, at least on the Xbox version, I can't attest to the PC version, but uh, at least if you do it like this, this is how you can get by. Otherwise, you cannot, there is no way on the Xbox version for you to get by in any other type of method without using any distractions. Uh, just because of that third guy and the way that he does everything. Uh, it took, like I said, two hours. I tried hundreds of different ways to do it. Uh, I tried staying on the left side before when I came in. I tried staying on the right side and going around the van to the other side, which is a plausible way as well, but it just doesn't work out with everything that you need because how close the guard is to the sewer crate. But here you're just going to want to move slowly. Get out your uh, jammer. The only way to get past this camera and hit RT before you actually get around the corner otherwise the uh, the camera will see you automatically and you'll have alarm level one here as soon as you get past him move as quickly as you can to get over into this dark space before the guy turns around if you don't do it correctly he's gonna see you you can still get through it but since we don't want anyone to actually be uh, aware of our location or, or see something that we haven't planned so now we're going to move on to the next section. Not as tough to do, but still can be a little challenging. So go ahead and get out your, and then you can just keep going. If you've done it in the correct amount of time that I have, then you don't have to worry about the light. There is a sniper guy up there, but he won't hear you or see you, and the light won't see you. So the next section here can be a little tough because it's another one of those, the guards do the exact same thing, so you've got to wait until their paths line up to give you just that brief few seconds of being able to get into the next area. The reason I say this is because when you jump on this thing that we're going to jump on up ahead, it is covered and bathed in light. And you'll see these two guys patterns. You'll see what they do is always exactly the same thing. So you can't jump up into this little green patch Cole right here right to mistrust Ms. because there's a reason for that of what I said. Under the wall. She's an honest to God agent, a lot more than that hapless desk jockey she was playing. So really, you're just waiting until you get that perfect pattern to where the guy is going in that direction and the other guy is already turned. See, this is not the right one. You've got to wait just a little bit more. The next pattern should be the one where there's going to give us just enough time to get up and around. Unfortunately, they don't have the jump like they did in the original Splinter Cell. You can't jump from one corner to the other corner. I tried the corner jump and it doesn't work. But if you just be a little patient, then you can get up here. We are, however, going to do a split jump here. and then make our way up to the roof. You do need to shoot the roof. It is. It shouldn't cause any alarm or anything like that, but you've got to shoot the roof just because you need to be able to get inside. I mean, I suppose you could melee it, but I don't... I'm not sure actually if you could even do that. So just shoot the roof. It's not going to be that big of a deal. And make your way inside. There's only one guard in here. You can actually get by him pretty America easy. realize that no war will ever again be fought away from their shores. The Americans will never understand the cost of their rich, fat, blissfully lazy lives until the American people have felt the sting of the terror the rest of the world bears for the sake of their affluence. Nothing. Can Obviously, stick to the shadows. He is going to be coming alone. back. Don't move too far forward because you'll see the light will end about right here. We'll take so make sure you go back a little bit. Home of the aggressors. As I stand Wait till he goes now, by and then go ahead and make your way towards the, the elevator. Efforts of this world so Try to be a little quick because he does turn around and he will be able to see you. I just uh, took way too much their time here. Almost got caught, but we did. And we'll move on to the next area of the game. as long as they insist on threatening.
And now you need to find Carlson. Sedono's keeping her around as a translator and bargaining chip, but she can move through the station with relative freedom. We're hoping she can quietly get you close enough to Sedono to grab him alive. Sedono needs to be caught by surprise. Obviously, going to wait till that guard is looking in the other direction. Both of them were looking at the same location, so you do want to wait and not just rush into there. You're going to do another one of those split jumps right here. And make your way into the next area. We're going to be using a pipe to climb. Don't rush and get on the pipe. Give it about a few seconds and then get on the pipe. If you're too quick, even though you're completely in the dark, somebody will still hear something for whatever reason. I, I'm not sure. But just wait a few seconds. And also, and I think I said this in my previous walkthrough, whoever decided that this drum set it was a drum set is, is has never played drums in their life. They set up the toms like they're quads. And there's no floor tom. And... I don't, the symbols are just in a line. <laughs> it's just the most ridiculous, and I'm just a drummer, so I, I see these things. But we're going to go ahead and drop down. Make sure you tap Y and then tap B twice so you land softly, and then we're going to move on. How much longer will this take? 20 minutes at least. I told you my Hebrew's only passable. Sedano's waiting for it. I'm doing the best I can. Where did this come from? You know I can't tell you that. There's something in here about the angel's ex. I'm putting a note next to it that I don't know the translation. You might want to point that out to Suwadi. Sure, sure. Just hurry up. All right, so what I did was I showed you that there is a two-way mirror, or a one-way mirror, should I say, that, um, that the, the other what person the can hell? look in. Now, because of lighting situ situations and uh, whatnot, you do need to distract this guy, but just do a running distraction. Otherwise, as soon as you enter the room, you don't have enough time to get to the switch, at least in the Xbox version. Uh, there's just too much light around, and he will see you every single time. So what we're going to do is just do a little running distraction here, not like a whistle or anything. That's going to get him up so that you can actually do this. As you can see, there's just too much light, and there's no way for you not to be seen uh, coming into the room right there. Hello, Ingrid. You? I didn't think it would be you. You knew somebody was coming? I've managed a few brief exchanges with the agency, enough to know I need to get you close to Sedano. Can you do that? Yeah. There's a retinal scanner on the studio I've been authorized for. You made yourself friendly fast. Sure, Sedano's a sucker for a smiling woman. Would have been a different story if Soft were around. We've hired a chopper to pull Sedano out. If you can get him outside, we can get him back to the States. Ingrid's a godsend. I keep benching myself. Play along. Trail her to the warehouse. It's our... All right, so move quickly as possible to get behind her. If you do not, there's a glitch on the Xbox where a guy on the left side of the wall on the place that we were at where the drum set was sees us or hears something. I don't know why, but that happens every time unless you get out of that room, at least on my walkthrough, as quickly as possible. It is completely a glitch, and it was very frustrating because I had no idea where it was actually coming from. But here we're just going to deactivate this, and we're going to move to the left side. There is a conveniently placed bottle, and we're going to need to use this bottle. Remember, I'm trying not to use the whistle at all. Maybe you could use the whistle, but I think the bottle is a, uh, a good one to do. We're going to throw the bottle inside this room here to get this guy to look in the opposite direction. Once all clear, then you can get by him. Now, you can either throw it into the next room or you can throw it there. I recommend throwing it there because sometimes when you try to throw it into the next room, a uh, glitch can happen and the guy can um, screw up. Now, here's the thing. This guard here, they really expected you to take him out. The guard that we just distracted, he glitches in this area. It's really, really weird. But this is the part where you have to take, like, five, I think it's five or six soldiers out. So in order to do this, we're going to be using uh, the tools that we have available to us, sticky shockers and uh, just whatever we have. Unfortunately, we don't have any smoke grenades, so we can't do that. That would be okay, the easiest I'm method, obviously, because right you can just do smoke grenades and take them all out. You have to take the left-hand path. I 
I might get slowed down with the guard. So wait for me on the other side. So if you wait here, you're in the dark so they can't we see you? We just intercepted a call from Salt. He blew Miss Carlson's cover. So no one knows she's CIA. Any one of these gorillas might gun her down. camera to uh, kill a few with gas and there you go now that guy right there he will just stay and look right there at the door I mean I actually think his programming is done meaning you could walk right in front of him and you don't even have to worry about him seeing you his program stops when you get into this area so like you can knock him out and he still won't even fall he's just dead uh, there is however one other guy here but there's a glitch so he just ends up being, as you can see, stationary right there. And unfortunately, he just glitched out or whatever, uh, looking in the whatever direction there. So I did this a few times, and I, I didn't want to have to do it again because it, this part can be very, very tedious. So if you do the method that I do, I found it to be very, very simple and easy. Now, again, if we had smoke grenades, I mean, obviously all of that would have been so much easier. You could sticky shock the first couple of people and then do what you have to do on the rest with smoke grenades if that's what you need to because I really like using the smoke grenades but um, if there's any on the map I didn't look around to find them so hey it's my guardian angel thanks you all right? still breathing here out the door once I have Sodoma where do I meet you the roof not the most subtle option in the world but we're not using a military chart so hopefully we'll have a chance to slip by. All right. So again, best method for at least for myself to take those guys out was to do two sticky shockers at the beginning. Wait for the other ones to start coming. Sticky shock them, diversion cam them as much as you can. Sometimes we'll go to the opposite side. If that happens, then just wait till he comes around the corner and then uh, take him out. I mean, it should be easy peasy lemon squeezy it, it wasn't too difficult to figure this section out just trying to do it without obviously uh getting caught or taking any damage i need technicians i need batteries i need men in the studio now sedano's taping immediately i know your local intercept grabbed that but you need to hightail it to the recording studio i'm getting a glut of side chatter about escape routes the studio's likely to be your last chance to grab sedano if he gets out He'll either vanish or be killed, neither of which we can afford. All right, you're going to wait until this guard starts going in the other direction. Remember, there is one guard to the left here. It's hard to see them, but if you move too fast, he will be able to hear you and turn around. Get in this corner here because you just don't have enough opportunity to hide somewhere before the other guy turns around. But it's pretty easy to get through this section and shouldn't take you too long. Once he's done, then you're free to go ahead and move up. You're going to climb the wall to the right, and then you're going to get in the corner so that uh, nobody can actually see you. You don't have enough time to get to this thing and actually get inside the vent. Only have enough time to get over to this corner, so just wait right here. And then, of course, wait until the guy turns around, and then rinse and repeat and do the same thing. All right, last, last section up ahead is when you're going to grab Sedano. You can do it stealthily, but as soon as you grab him, all enemies are going to be on you. But they will not hit you as long as you're uh, you're not giving them an opportunity to. If you stay on this corner right here, the light won't see you. And if you move quick enough, you should be able to get by here without anyone noticing you. Stay on the right side as this guard is going to be heading down. Now you do want to wait just a few just a few seconds here before you actually grab Sedano. Wait till he leaves. There you go. Now you're free to grab him and uh, continue on. Don't shoot. We can't take the risk of killing Sedano. Leave him now and you're dead. At this point, you're just going to move Leave forward now, and you're going to go dead. to the retinal scanner, keeping you and the enemies uh, safe for God. each other. Once you use the retinal scanner, don't God. worry, they won't shoot you.
continue to make your way all the way up. Great work, Fisher. You're well on track to becoming history's most prolific unknown author of world events. If I had any blood left, I'm sure I'd be blushing. Is Ingrid in position on the roof? That's right. And the helicopter, too. Keep Sedono conscious until you've made visual contact with Carlson. Can I get a confirmation, Fisher? Sedano's alive and you've got him? Yes. Fantastic. Don't worry about leaving a mess behind you on your way out. We're arranging a sweep up after your golf. We're not in the clear yet. Get Sedono to the roof. Ingrid's waiting. Uh, but we only just met. Kill him. I'm not afraid. No such luck. I would have gift wrapped him, but I couldn't find any duck to him. It always shocks me how young he looks. Like a little kid compared to his face on television. You honestly liked him? No. Respect me, but I know he's a monster. He has a child's idea of war. He can't tell the difference between a citizen and a soldier. He thinks the whole world is a morally viable target. There's only one nation on the planet fighting the whole world. Huh. Whose side are you on? You know I can't say that. Yeah, I know. I don't know who you are or how you do what you do, but thank you. I hope we can work together again. Where's the left? All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. I can't tell you how tough some of those parts were. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, thank you so much for all the love and support. Love you all. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you on the final mission for Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. And then, yes, we'll be moving on to Chaos Theory. Love you. Take care of yourselves. Peace out. Sedano's capture by U.S. intelligence effectively marks the end of the incident in Indonesia, securing for the Timorese. Intelligence has confirmed Suwadi Sedano's connections to so-called Golden Triangle heroin, has agreed to a U.S. military presence in East Timor as defined by Timorese government. This beginning of what the Bowers administration hopes will cannot underestimate the cost of democracy, nor overestimate the costs of the alternative. Are we sure it's soft? The echelon match from the airport security cameras only had a 2% margin of error. So this is our last pox box. If soft decompresses it, our first cycle of infection will be in the thousands. And nearly impossible to quarantine. What does Soth get out of it? Sedano's already finished. And what else? He's already got the device on site. We spook him in the slightest, and he sets it off. It's down to you, Fisher. truck that should get you through security and into LAX. I've arranged for a small distraction. If it comes together, it should open a small window of opportunity. You make my job too easy. Just respecting my elders. And if anybody sees you, you've lost your ride and the mission's over before it begins. You've always had a talent for the obvious, Lambert. All right, Fisher. You're inside LAX. You're kidding. That was way too easy. Basically, we've got gaps in the armor. And you're not the only visitor that slipped through. Soth. And the last ND-133. And a handful of hired mercenaries disguised as LAX employees. I'd be willing to bet they're still fresh from a smallpox vaccination. No. So you may be able to ID them by their higher than normal body temperature. We have no choice. We need to have them dead. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back. I'm your host, Understrander One. And this is the final mission for Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow. This is a mission where, the only mission where you've actually had to really kill people. And uh, pretty much everyone that you see me take out and kill are people that you absolutely 100% have to kill. Even if you tried to show, nobody could hear you. I won't. Good. Who do you work for? Los Angeles International. Ah. Your lives will get more painful as we go. Who do you work for? I'm a citizen of the world. That wasn't my question. You can kill me. Where's the ND-133? So you don't have to listen to them. They don't really give you any information, and you probably want to take them out as quickly as possible. 
you'll know that you kill them right. by the mail sign in the bottom right. You got anything on how they're communicating? Yeah, it's an ultra wide band local network, node based. They've got. We're looking at nine terrorists you're going to need to neutralize before you find Soft. If all of Soft's men have been vaccinated for that? smallpox within the last 10 days, then it's a safe bet they're running a few degrees hotter. So the reason you want to take out that guy quickly is because there's dogs in that beginning uh, portion, garage level. So the dogs will sniff you out, so you need to get out of there quicker. Uh, there, you just want to pretty much set up a distraction by turning off the light, get around the maid, and you're good to go. Here, you're going to have to take out, I think, a total of four guards, or uh, enemies, whatever you want to call them. And it's not too difficult to do, but I'll show you how. Hey, nice lariat. What? I like your lariat. Smart move, buying your own. These cheap pieces of crap the tightwads upstairs hand out break weekly. Oh, thanks. Are you new here? I don't think I've seen you around before. No, just new to the shift. Ah, usually part of the graveyard shift. Yeah. Then you must know J.M. Terry. Listen, I gotta get back to work. Oh, sorry about that. Got a tendency to gab. Take it easy. So make sure you inch your way up enough to where you're not at least to be seen here because you need to get as close to this guy as you can in order to have enough time to get up to him, knock him out before the other guy turns around. Once you do grab him, the guy will not turn around for a while, but if you haven't grabbed him, he will automatically turn around and then see you if you take too much time. So the method for shooting is always switch to your laser because obviously everybody knows that in the first two Splinter Cell games, the accuracy on the pistol sucks. So if you switch to your laser, you at least know that you're hitting the head, although it still might take two or three headshots to uh, actually kill the enemy. And you'll know because the blinking mail sign that you see in the bottom right of the screen. So keep shooting until you see that blinking mail sign. Here, come at it at an angle. If you go directly behind him and grab him, it will not work. you got to do it at an angle or hey, else they'll see you. I don't think I've seen you here before. Uh, I'm new here. Oh, well then. Welcome to the team. Thanks. You must be Bob's replacement. Yeah. Great. I hate to say it, but Bob was a little too thirsty for his own good. That's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. You had a chance to check the numbers for the conveyor tension yet? Uh, no, not yet. Was just about to get to that. Well, get to it. I can't get started until I've got those figures. Yeah, sure. I'll come find you when I've got them. Thanks. All right, so there's a glitch that if you stand on the conveyor belts on this right side, you will get stuck. At least on my game, it was a glitch. So move around them and then go to the darkness. You should be able to get up behind this guy and take him out super quick, super clean, and super easy. And again, all the guys that I am showing you, if you use your thermal vision, it will tell you which ones to kill. They are the ones that have the hotter, darker thermal temperature. It's pretty easy to figure out, so you should never kill the wrong person. Now this can go different ways, because sometimes uh, the, the guy that you need to take out is going to be in a different location, even though you've done everything timing-wise. So he might be in a different location than you see. You might get a little bit of an alert here, but it's it's not an alarm or anything. Uh, the game just puts them in different places, different times, so you'll never get the same one every time. But if you do get this one, then this is exactly how you're going to do it. But you always want to wait until he is turned. Once you see him standing there, that is when you know that you can go. If you do it any later than that, the guy will turn around and see you too quickly before you can uh, hide the body. why we're getting to this little area right here. This is your only safe haven for when that guard is moving closer, because otherwise he's just going to see you. But once he does turn, then you're free to go ahead and take him to the only location that is completely dark, and that is also where he hid the body that he killed in order to take the guy's disguise. Or not disguise, but in order to um, take his shift, I guess. And then, of course, you're going to have to wait again. 
Great work, Fisher. For the other guy to turn so that he doesn't see you coming out of here. And then you're free to move to the uh, the next section. Go ahead and move up and grab this one here. Every time you come into this room, it's like the, the room starts, so you'll, it'll always be the same way. The next guy that you have to get around can actually be a little bit more tougher than I make it to be. Sometimes he will hear you when you're on the conveyor belt and there's nothing you can do. It's just sometimes it doesn't work. So just, you know, restart the checkpoint and hopefully you'll be able to get it because luckily I was able to get it on the first time, but that does not always happen because this guy still somehow hears you um, even when you're moving across the conveyor belt. So as soon as he moves, go. Try to stay as far to the left as you can and hopefully he won't hear you. But uh, that's going to be it for this first part of the level, and then now we're going to move on to the second section. Fisher, we have additional intel. It seems they have two more terrorists who have infiltrated the waiting zone in the office area. Fisher, you cannot leave any terrorists behind. This will jeopardize the rest of the mission. There are only two more... Uh, terrorist you have to take out and we're following the one right here But he pretty much sets up everything you always want to get and do the uh, squat turn here I Say squat turn, but it's called SWAT turn <laughs> I Got to step out for a second. No problem. I can cover things here It's crazy how you go the whole game without having to kill anyone and then all of a sudden you got to kill so many people so just wait for him to open up the door. Once he opens the door, grab him. You can interrogate him or not. It doesn't matter because the next section won't spawn in until you get until you reach the checkpoint. That's the great thing about these older games is uh, they don't uh, spawn until you do it. Howdy. What the hell? That's the question, exactly. I hope your answers are so apt. Where's Soth? Where's the ND-133? Who's Soth? Poindexter, Penguin, whatever he told you his name was. Where's your employer? Whatever you know won't help you. By the time you reach him, it'll be too late for all of you. It was definitely too late for him. So get out your camera jammer, because that's the only way you're going to be able to get by this camera. I suppose you can take out the lights, too, but camera jammer is a good weapon to use. Or gadget. Here is the final guy. He's going to be right in front of you. So just uh, grab him, and then we're going to take him to the other side of the level. If you could just tell me your original destination. You were going to tell me exactly what you are supposed to do here. It's a mistake. I'm not who you think I am. Interesting. And who do I think you are, then? Stop! You're making a mistake! By killing you? Probably not. Speak to me. Good work, Fisher. That takes care of all but Soth's men. And the chatter looks like they're with Soth. We're nearly certain he's in the catwalks above passenger ticketing. Work your way up there and find him. Neutralize him and the others and retrieve the ND-133. I know it makes absolutely no sense that you can sneak through this room like this, but they really put an emphasis on what is dark and what is light. So this is really the only place you can stand without being seen. This guy will see you if you're closer to him whatsoever. And of course you want to wait until the guy outside moves past your point of view so you can actually move forward. Soft in the ticketing area. We need to ID him. 
Fisher, spot soften the area below using your thermal and binoculars. Okay, we've got him. Affirmative. He's carrying the last ND-133 box. We're going to use our camera jammer again. And we're going to head to the final area in this level. Guys, I can't thank you enough for the support that you've given me on this walkthrough. I know I've done it before, and it means a lot to me to know that you guys are back when we add more challenges. Maybe sometime in the future we'll do a PS2 version of the game, because I hear, you know, there are difference. There's a lot of differences. But, uh, yeah, so here we go. The elevator stopped. Thanks, Lambert. Soft's men cut the power from above. Cutting off potential interruptions. You need to get up there fast. If you can smash your way through the emergency exit, there's a crawl space that will let you up onto the catwalks. Get to it. We don't have much time. Now this part's a little tricky, just because of the way you have to go above where you need to go in order to drop down on it, and still it can be a little tough to do. So, just understand that it's an older game. But if you're playing this at this point, you know. So we're going to go all the way up here, then we're going to jump down, and then we're going to try to angle it to where we can actually jump down to the next section without creating a distraction or making too much noise. Which, as you can see, doesn't always work the way that you want it to. It can be pretty tough. We've discussed this. Right, right. What about our Midway and Vegas flights? I don't want to release until they're disembarked. Yes, but are they off the plane yet? Excellent. Only a few minutes now. Out. This really doesn't look like an accident to me. The security guys already looked at it. You'd need a cold chisel to shear these bolts off like this. Whatever. Let's just get it fixed. I'm off in an hour, and I'm not looking for any overtime. Now, there's really nothing you can do to not be heard or uh, seen slightly. I mean, at least I didn't find any way to do it. It's just the way that the game is programmed. One of the guys that is a maintenance worker is looking directly at the ladder that you have to climb. So you get seen slightly, but it's not a, oh my gosh, what are you doing here? It's more of a... Did I see something kind of uh, stare? See that guy right there working, doing maintenance? Once you go to this ladder on the right side, I mean, he's going to see you climb up. And when you take out these guys above, they're going to hear everything. There's just nothing you can do to not hear um, all the stuff that's going directly above them. But at that point, you don't have to worry about alarms. You don't have to worry about anything. You just take them out, and then you can complete your mission. So it's not that big of a deal. Now, this is where the guy is going to see you, but just slightly. You can see he's looking directly at the ladder. Nothing you can do. There's too much light baked in this area right here. Who is that? But other than that, you're good to go, and we can start the final process. We're going to sticky shock all three of the guys. You don't get a lot of time. I wish you could interrogate Soth, but it doesn't really give you time to do it. There you go. And like I said, because you're just right above them, there's nothing you can really do about... What happened to you? You know, them saying stuff down there. Hey, are you okay? And there you go, ladies and gents, complete. Phenomenal work, Fisher. But don't slow down. We're only a few minutes from I don't know how many thousands of dead. Get the ND-133. I've got the box. We still have 11 minutes on the timer. Damn, damn, damn. That's five minutes.
less than we were counting on. Even my offspring, we couldn't get it safely out of L.A. city limits. We need something to seal it in. It would have to be reinforced steel to withstand the force of decompression. We'll evacuate the airport. That should keep casualties below 1,000. Fisher, maybe you can get low fast. If the box decompresses inside some kind of containment in the basement, we may be able to get casualties down to the dozens. I've got a better idea. There you have it, ladies and gents. Hope you all enjoyed the walkthrough. Thank you so much for being here. And we're going to be moving on to Splinter Cell Chaos Theory next. Love you. Take care of yourselves. Peace out. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistrina One, your host here. And welcome to our 4K ghost walkthrough for Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. What does it mean to be a ghost? In my eyes, it means leaving no traces behind. That is what a ghost. Touching no one, leaving no traces, getting in and getting out without being seen. We're going to be doing challenges set up on an individual level basis, meaning that one level will have a different set of challenges that we create for ourselves. These challenges were suggested by you, the community, in the community tab that I did on YouTube. So thank you for those ideas that you have given me to be able to do this. We're going to be playing this in 4K. In order to do this, you have to go into the INI files in the system, as well as download a few extra things to do that. However, I'm not going to show you how to do that because I don't want to ruin the experience or mess up your game. If you want to figure that out, you can just look it up on Google or someone will write it in the comments below. For this specific lighthouse mission, it's not very tough. So the challenge that we are adding for this is going to be no night vision. If you do not like the no night vision, no night vision challenge, let me know because it can be very difficult to see in this game. Otherwise, I'll explain everything as soon as we get in. Hope you guys enjoy. like a Chinese Jiangwei class cruiser with a North Korean destroyer escort. Events in the Yellow Sea took a turn for the worse today when North Korean and Chinese forces blockaded and boarded a Japanese cargo ship. The North Korean government released no official statement, and their ambassador remained out of contact. While at the UN, Chinese Ambassador Long Dan urged the US and her longtime Japanese allies to remain calm, calling the blockades a legitimate response to what the rest of Asia views as a possible remilitarization of Japan. 
This blockade is an act of war. The NSC is working on a formal response, and they've ordered the USS Walsh to close at flank speed. The Walsh is the most advanced spy ship in history. My best man will be on board. What do you know? Chinese and North Korean ships working together again. It's what we expected. That's a 056 prototype, Chinese. Exactly. How are your sea legs? I haven't lost them. Good. Because the 056 prototype isn't the only new fish in the pond. Admiral Toshiro Otomo, head of Japan's newly formed Information Self-Defense Force, had this to say. This is another distressing attempt by China and North Korea to further depress our faltering economy. The ISDF and Japan appeal to our allies for the military support promised us under the post-war constitution of 1946. The fact remains that in the eyes of many in Asia, the ISDF itself is a violation of the post-war constitution prohibiting Japan from maintaining a military force capable of striking beyond its borders. In Asia, the memories of Imperial Japan are still fresh. Fisher, an American engineer named Bruce Morgan Holt has been kidnapped by a Peruvian separatist group called the People's Voice. Their suspected leader, Hugo Lacerda, is a hardcore revolutionary preaching information warfare as the only realistic means to achieve revolution in modern society. We need you to get in there and recover or destroy any information Morgan Holt may have been forced to divulge, and if possible, rescue him. As for Lacerda, He's just been bumped onto our target of opportunity list. So if you have a shot, take it. Hostage rescue isn't normally our bag, but Morgan Holt was part of Project Watson, the UN committee that studied Philip Mass's handiwork after Georgia. Some people are worried that this kidnapping is just a cover-up and that Morgan Holt is being interrogated for classified information about the Mass colonels. Fact is that some of the tricks Mass came up with could be used to do a lot of damage. We need to contain that information at all costs. The target area is a lighthouse attached to an abandoned Spanish colonial-era fortification and some nearby structures. We don't have an exact location on Morganholt, so you'll have to find him yourself. Insertion will be at night by Zodiac onto the beach beneath the fort. Thermal imaging shows that there are some old natural and semi-natural caves under the fort, so you may be able to use those for infiltration. All right, Fisher. The helicopter will drop you a few kilometers offshore in the Zodiac. You'll have one of my Zodiacs and logistical support in and out of the target area. Extraction will be by helicopter from the top of the lighthouse. This place International holds the contract with Wright Pritchard Technologies to protect their VIPs in potentially hostile situations. We did a thorough threat evaluation for their project in Peru, and we accepted the VIP detail on Morgan Holt. The guys who came after him knew what they were doing. This was not a tourist grab. I lost three good men in the snatch, and I'm currently preparing a rescue plan for approval from Morgan Holt's family and Wright Pritchard. This is going to cost this place a lot of money. So as a recommendation by a few people in the community, he asked for me to do this with the assault loadout, meaning we're not going to be using any gadgets during this 
uh, mission. I'll be doing mission-based um, objectives, meaning that everything that you see is going to be mission-based. So some missions might have different challenges that we add. We're going to do this on a mission-by-mission -mission basis. So this mission, we're going assault, and of course we're going no night vision. Now the no night vision parameter is only going to be if you guys can accept this. The reason I want the night vision on is because it's very difficult for YouTube to actually render this in a very good quality, even though it is 4K. So if you guys can see everything on screen and you're happy with that, then we'll do every mission we can without night vision. Otherwise, we will use night vision just so that you guys can see what's going on. Down there, Fisher. Everything all right? It's coming from up ahead, but Lambert. When I think Gorilla, I think Kalashnikov. What do you mean? I've had enough AKs fired at me in my time to tell you that wasn't one. All right. See if there's anything unusual going on with their equipment. Keep us posted. Also, of course, this is going to be only mandatory KOs. There is a total of one mandatory KO that you need to do in this I mission. I think you're right about the equipment, Sam. Yeah, they got themselves a little stockpile of high-tech kit here. The SSCC code is lot one of five. See if you can find the other force. I'll do my best. The other parameters I'm setting for myself are no distractions except for the light. And we are going to be using the light OCP because in some places it is very, very needed. Don't you think he's had enough? He's had enough when he can't talk. Bulky, madre de Dios, he hasn't been able to speak for an hour. He could be faking it. No! <laughs> Jesus! See, I bet he's faking it. Faking it? His tongue is a lump of coal. His brain is... Enough! Saul, give him more. It's already at the maximum. What? Should I bring down another battery? <laughs> what do you say, amigo? You want another battery? <laughs> Wait a minute. His... Uh... His ears! Look! Smoke! I think I'm going to be ill. I think he's dead. <laughs> Only one way to be sure. Uh, I'm going for a walk. We're also going to be going at a quicker pace through these levels. Meaning that I'm going to be doing it fast, like a speedrun, but we're not going to be doing it like a real speedrun. It's going to be more like a what would Sam do in a speedrunning situation. Down there, the sound isn't the problem. You should smell it. You're sure he's dead? Deader than Elvis. All right. Leave the body. We still need to recover any traces of the interrogation. Grim, we'll call you back. Sam, it's Grim. We need to make sure that whatever Morgan Holt might have told them about Mass's algorithms never leaves this site. Okay. I detected a wireless link coming from the technician who left the room before you entered. So I'll need to recover any data he might have uploaded to their servers. Exactly. From the looks of it, these gorillas have a pretty temporary setup. Seems unlikely they have any kind of alarm system on location. Good. So as you'll see here, it is very difficult to see enemies, especially when you do not turn on the night vision, because this game is very dark and the lighting is very, very good. Even for a game that's now 15 years old, this has some of the best lighting. But again, every mission we're going to go for the optional objectives. There might be one bonus objective that we don't do in one of the missions, just I think it's in the soul mission, because of the parameters of what we're trying to do, keeping it stealthy, uh, not dealing with any enemies and things like that. But other than that, it's going to be pretty much a 100% obviously on every mission. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the challenge that we're setting up for ourselves. Now, the reason I've decided to go with an OCP playthrough is because there are the way this game was made was certain situations you just can't get by without either using a distraction or an OCP and if I want to go into a mission and leave the mission without having to use anything That's four of the five crates, Sam. so I just wanted to show you no one that me, I really wanted this to work but it just won't you know I think that confirms it, Fisher. yeah seems like Lacerda is long gone script turns around we'll see if we can track him through echelon don't worry about him for now. There you go. We'll keep you it worked. Wow. Keep your eyes peeled for the last one. 
All right, so what I just showed you was a snippet that I did when I was trying to figure out how to do it without using the OCP. It is not something you can pull off on a regular basis, therefore I do not recommend doing it, but I wanted to show you that you can do it, but it's very weird. Scripts and everything just kind of mess the game up when you try to not take out that light, unless you use some other type of distraction. But I just wanted to prove to you that you can do it without using the OCP. That server is the one that the tech transferred the interrogation record to. You'll need to access it. Good work, Sam. That wiped whatever information Morganhold might have given them. Don't they wonder what happened to it? It was easy enough to make your little intrusion look like a memory allocation error. Don't worry, we give you the best tools. So clearly from this, he was on the opposite side and we had enough time. Now, that could be totally different. Sometimes he's in different areas, so all I can tell you is that every time you go through it, you just have to kind of fly by the seat of your pants and Good do whatever work, you need to. We can analyze the intelligence you gathered from those crates. We can make a lot of people's jobs a whole lot safer. How come no one ever does things to make my job safer? If you want me to hire some more analysts to interpret information for you, I can do that. On second thought, the danger's not so bad. So we will be using one gadget, and that is our binoculars. This is going to allow us to be able to scan things from a little bit of a distance which is going to be needed. I've decided that we are going to do that at least, but every other gadget like sticky shockers, sticky cameras, if we can do it without, that is going to be the goal. I've tried to make this as difficult as I can while still enjoying the game, and hopefully you guys appreciate it. Let me know, of course, in the comments. Maria Narcissa. You're not trying to set me up on another blind date, I hope. The Maria Narcissa is a boat. So was the last girl you set me up with. Fisher. Sorry. The Maria Narcissa is a cargo ship owned and operated by Celestinia Inc., Portuguese shipping company. Registered in the Philippines, cross-Pacific freight contracts. Lots of details missing. Sounds suspicious. Sounds like I'm setting you up for another date after all. Can't wait to meet her. Fisher, your primary objectives are complete. Extract you whenever you're ready. We'll need to signal for a helicopter pickup from the top of the lighthouse. Make sure the light is out first. Will do. Sam, from everything we're seeing here, it looks like Lacerda's already flown the coop. Scratch the objective. You don't need to worry about taking him out. We have to knock him out. It is mandatory. And there you go. You have completed the mission. That is our one and only mandatory knockout. This is the easiest mission to do this way. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We are going to be adding more challenges to different levels, so some levels will have bigger challenges than other levels. It just depends on how, what you can do inside that level and what works and what does not work. So this one, you absolutely 100% have to knock out that final guard. And again, we're going to get through these missions in a faster rate. Don't forget to become a member. It helps us to create more videos. Love you. See you on the next mission. Peace. Events today jeopardized diplomatic efforts when North Korean armor encountered a so-called self-healing minefield while attempting to withdraw from the area. North Korean forces were adequately cautioned that self-healing minefields along the DMZ should not be considered cleared obstacles. We're back at the brink of war, and now we find out it is the Japanese? The Japanese are allies. I don't care if they're the Christmas elves. They sank the Walsh. We don't know that their government was involved. We know Admiral Otomo was involved, and we know where the gentleman is. We have to go in now, immediately. The fact is, we don't know how far the conspiracy goes. If Otomo's actions are sanctioned by the Japanese government, then the only solution is military. But if he's acting alone... Your man again? He's already in position. Send him in. The State Department has lost contact with all of the U.S. officers who work at the Kokubo Sosho with the Japanese Self-Defense Force. It looks like the SDF have taken them prisoner, and they're refusing to answer our calls. In typical fashion, the Japanese are circling their wagons. Either they're afraid to admit they've lost control of Otomo, or they're actually sanctioning him. If that's the case, we'll have to come clean with North Korea, which will spark a massive war in Asia. If not, we need to find out what our officers know and figure out what to do about Otomo before North Korea finds out what's going on. Sam, even if the Japanese government is not sanctioning him, Otomo still clearly has the capacity to strike. If he's still in control of the information arm of the SDF, you'll need to deal with him very carefully. There's no telling what kind of havoc he could unleash.
Last contact we had with any U.S. personnel in the Kokubo Sosho was a fragment of a phone call from Major Harper, a logistics advisor to GSDF. From the sounds of the call, the room he was in was raided by Japanese troops and he was taken prisoner. It doesn't sound like anyone has been killed, and if there's any hope of maintaining peaceful relations with the Japanese, you're going to have to keep it that way. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome to the final mission for Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. We're going to be going in with the assault loadout. Thank you so much for watching. I can't stress Go time. this enough. If one Japanese soldier dies, we risk World War III. Any fatalities and I abort the mission immediately. I understand. Locate our officers and find out what the hell is going on there. I'll find them. So, after the previous mission, which is Bathhouse, this mission is pretty much a cakewalk. There's just a few sections that can kind of confuse you a little bit, but under the gnats, it really is a way simpler mission to be able to get through nice and stealthy. And you can, of course, do it without knocking anyone out. So first things first, we're going to open the door. There are two different locations you can come through here. There's also a camera there, so what you want to make sure you do is stay away from the camera. So when I pass this little section right here, there's another door right there straight ahead. That is where you can go through to get to the same place we're going to be going here in just a minute. However, there's a faster and better location that you can do here. However, it can be a little trickier because there's one jump that you have to do with a guy who's kind of like mopping the floor. If you don't want to have to worry about that guy, then I definitely recommend going the... The body of kidnapped American computer engineer Bruce Morgenholt was discovered in a village in Peru this morning. Implicated in the kidnapping and failed ransom attempt is Hugo Lacerda, alleged leader of the People's Voice, a newly formed guerrilla organization. Here we see the USS Clarence E. Walsh en route to the Yellow Sea for her first assignment amid rising tensions in the region. Dubbed the flagship of a 21st century fleet by Defense Secretary Mason, who reaffirmed America's commitment to our Japanese allies. It is our hope that the presence of the Walsh, now the world's premier electronic and information warfare platform, will help defuse the tensions in the region. Information you recovered in Peru makes it look like Hugo Lacerda was contracted by a third party to kidnap and interrogate Morgenholt. His payment was in weapons. He appears to be using those arms to equip his own men and pay off debts to other guerrilla groups. Or maybe Lacerda is a nickel anti loser, but maybe he's learned some things from Morgan Holt that we don't want anyone to know. Maria Narcissa is out to sea, so there's no escape. Board her, search her, find out who Lacerda's been dealing with, and then make sure he doesn't have an opportunity to spread what he knows. Fifth, freedom. What Morgan Holt knew about the mass kernels, recursive computation, and weaponized algorithms is akin to what Oppenheimer knew about atoms or what Turing knew about digital computers. Project Watson, the United Nations investigation into the mass kernels, will be remembered for centuries alongside the Manhattan Project as fundamental research that changed the nature of warfare forever. Imagine if Che Guevara had kidnapped and interrogated Oppenheimer in 1959, and you have a pretty accurate parallel of the situation we're in right now. We're going to send the helicopter out about 40 clicks ahead of the Maria Narcissa and leave you in the water on her course. You'll board covertly onto the bow. Search the ship and the holds. Find out what you can about the arms shipments and who Lacerda is dealing with. Satellite imaging shows the Maria Narcissa racks a small launch on the stern. That will be your primary extraction. If things go badly, we might be able to arrange to pluck you out of the sea. We'll keep the Walsh inside a helicopter range of the target vessel at all times. If something goes wrong, we should be able to assist in extraction. If you play it safe, we'll recover you in the ship's launch from open water once you're out of visual range of the ship. All right, ladies and gents, here we go. A Splinter Cell Chaos Theory expert ghost walkthrough. We're going to always go with the assault loadout unless we absolutely have to, to do another one. Uh, the challenges that I've set for myself on this one are going to be uh, no gadgets besides OCP, 
We are going to be using night vision to make sure that you guys can actually see the game. We are not going to be using any SC20K, no distractions, and no perceive distractions, meaning that no enemy can actually see me. Fisher, we just pulled up Celestinia's last dry dock report for the Maria Narcissa. They have a newly installed central alarm system. Don't tell me. Three alarms and the mission is over? Of course not. This is no video game, Fisher. But you don't want the whole place alerted to your presence. Keep it under control. So what that means when no guard can see me, that means, yes, they can see the OCP, they can see the light going out, however, they cannot perceive Sam at all. Meaning that nowhere in this video here will you hear a guard act like he saw me. So first thing is we're going to OCP this light. You're going to wait just a little bit, because you want to make sure the guy up there is actually plenty far ahead. This is actually pretty tough to do right here. Get into this corner of this pipe, then turn around and go ahead and OCP this light. If done correctly, he should not see you. Turn your night vision on, move up when he does, and then quickly move up a little bit quicker when he's turning around. If you do not do that, he can and will shoot you. Now, the reason I did the OCP on the top above the stairs was because then he will go for that, and that'll give us the room to get in without him noticing. Now, we're also going to be shutting all doors. The only door we do not shut is this door here, because it is impossible to shut. Fisher, it looks like Lacerda is spreading around his newfound wealth, paying off debts with some of the arms that were delivered to him. You want me to scan any more weapons crates? Better idea. Plant tracking devices on them, and we can see who they end up getting delivered to. Okay. Good job, Sam. That's the first crate. Keep your eyes peeled for any more. All right. Fisher, we just intercepted a radio call from the Maria Narcissa. She's reporting a hull leak and asking for an escort. The ship is sinking. No, but apparently several compartments are flooded. You'll need to activate the bilge in the forward machine room to access all the cargo holes. Of course, since this is a no traces, we are shutting all the doors to make sure that we leave no trace. Absolutely zero way of anyone saying that Sam Fisher was here. There was something there, just a moment ago. Everything you see me do is always done precisely in exactly the way that you want to do it. When you're trying to go through this game and this level, it's very difficult to do it the way that I'm going to, and you'll see that up ahead. There should be a large pump in here that you can use to drain the forward cargo hold. I'll find it. I would say the toughest challenge that I set for myself is only saving once and doing the uh, no one can perceive sand. Very, very tough to do. You gonna start that pump there or what? I don't know how this stupid thing works. Captain Diego says hurry up or we'll sink. Well, if I do it wrong, we might sink faster. Then don't do it wrong. So we need to OCP this light, which can actually be tough to do because of how it sways back and forth. Notice how they notice the light. That is okay. They can notice the light going out. That happens all the time, especially in a ship like this. Good job. That'll drain the flooded compartments. Now you can search for the bill of lading attached to Lacerda's shipments. All right. However, they cannot actually kind of look at Sam and say, what is that over there? And then go and investigate. That is the toughest challenge I've done in, I think, any Splinter Cell, because it's so easy for them to just get a glimpse of Sam, but I'm no glimpses. I'm betting that Lacerda's shipping container is somewhere in this compartment. The bill of lading should be mounted on the side. I'll have a look around. Good work, Sam. It looks like whoever delivered these arms to Lacerda was operating through a proxy. Who? Mercantil Costa Fuerta Seguridad de Panama. Offshore bankers? Yeah, the cigar chomping kind. Great. I love bureaucrats. You still need to recover the transit ledger so we can figure out who else Lacerda is dealing with. Try the ship's office. They should have that information. If you're quick, you can actually keep going and then get up and then get down into the next area before the guy turns around. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you want to play it safe, you can do it the way that I'm going to do it here. Yeah. Tell me you found the library. 
somewhere on the top deck. As soon as he turns around, then you can go. This section can be quite tough because they can perceive Sam Sensors easily. Sensors in your suit are detecting a lot of fumes down there. Yeah, I can smell it. Some kind of gas leak. Could be enough to be a serious explosive hazard. We can't have any firing in the engine room. Wonderful. And don't expect the enemy to be smart enough to realize that. They might still open fire on you if they see you. I get the message. I'll be discreet. So as soon as he passes that, that's when you want to go and stick to the right side move all the way around. Now, again, this room is very notorious for one of these guards to just see Sam out of nowhere. Even though he's not alarmed to him, it's just he sees something moving down there. And then he goes and investigates. It doesn't actually ruin your stealth rating or anything. It's not actually getting caught. It's just we are limiting ourselves from even having those types of distractions or encounters. There absolutely is no other way to get up here with that, without getting a perceived uh, encounter. That's the only way around the entire thing. If you try to go the shortcut route, uh, one of them will perceive you. It's just uh, you can't do it without someone saying, hey, what is that? But that's the way you can do it without worrying about it. Wait, of course, until he leaves your sight, and then you're good to go. Next up ahead is where we're going to do our one and only save. And, of course, making sure that we shut the doors. I would say it is very possible to do this without saving. Because you can actually complete everything after this in one run, if you know exactly what you're doing. So the trick to this is, you're going to get up on the side like you saw me, and then you're going to press up twice. And that's going to put you right here. This should give you enough room to where the guard is going to go by. However, there are instances where he will see you automatically. It is not a get-out-of-jail-free area right here. So sometimes the AI will just see you for no explanation. But most of the time, you can get around it and he won't see you. Immediately move up. Don't let the door shut before you get in. Because if you let the door shut before you get in, then you, know, then you have to open the door again, and the guard will hear it in that hallway. No traces. This was very tough to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the live stream of us actually going through this. Great turnout. Don't forget to click the like button right now. This is such a challenge to do, and we're going to be doing the whole game like this. So please, if you are watching, click that like button. I would like to see a huge number, at least 300 likes on this video. I think we can do it. Here we're going to wait till he uh, gets by. Immediately, as soon as you see him, start moving and then move forward. If you're a little bit too late, then he will see you and you're you're screwed. It can be tough to get the timing down, but you can do it. And now we can move on to the next section. Sam, you're near the ship's office. This deck, starboard side. I'll find the transit ledgers there. That's where they should be keeping them. This part's pretty easy, just make your way around. We are going to use our binoculars, that is not a gadget hey, that I've taken out of the here? game. Yeah, However, no SC20K gadgets and the uh, only using Bastard. the OCP. I hope someone cuts his because if you don't use the OCP, then you have to create other types of distractions, like throwing a bottle or firing a gun at a direction or something. And that, to me, is not ghosting. If I have to fire a weapon, I am leaving something behind. They say Lacerda's container is full of sugar cane and coconuts from a man named Nikaryakov in Malaysia. Nikaryakov. I remember that name. Nikaryakov is a code name that Philippine drug dealers use to indicate arms shipments. So instead of nuts from Malaysia, the Serta got guns from an imaginary Russian? Exactly. Now why don't you go find out where Lacerda is hiding? The captain probably knows where he is. Good idea. Why don't you head to the bridge and ask? Okay, Sam. Judging by the numbering on the crates, that's about half of them. See if you can find the rest. In this uh, level also, we're going to go with no night vision only, or excuse me, no thermals, only night vision. So we're not even going to use the optic cable to know when this guy's hey, turned Tom around. Up. Inside, there are two that. guys facing no. each other. One is facing right at you, so you have to time it correctly in here. order to get into the room without any of them seeing you. Time. 
complaining about his quarters or something. Bastard. Thinks now that he's got a little cash, he's king of the world. He'll get his one of these days. You'll see. Two seconds after you hear the first movement, that's when you want to open up. Took a while to figure that one out. OCP, something move there. a little closer, and then we're going to OCP the second one. Immediately move. You don't have a lot of time, because he will perceive you if you are not what quick enough. He has not perceived us. He has only perceived the actual OCP. This guy turns good around. Good good. Sam. Two more crates to go. As you can see, we got through there without actually anyone seeing Sam. Very tough to do. But that's the only time we're going through that room there, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Because I will show you a way around that area when you come back. If you know where you're going, you should be able to complete the Lucerda thing now. However, the game doesn't allow you to do it until you've actually found out where it was. One more crate to go. So this next part here is very, very tough, and I think everybody knows it is, especially when you don't have a sticky cam. Wait till the captain turns around. As soon as he does, we can go ahead and leave. Hell, see me, Captain. Make, Make sure you shut the door on your way out. Six minutes. Maintain speed. Si, senor. Scope Keep going here. this way. We're not going to go up yet. We're going to go all the way around. There are two guides right above us to the right, so therefore they will perceive Sam. There's a guy right above us right there. He will not perceive Sam because we are completely in the dark. So if we were to go the other way, they would have perceived me going up that ladder. Therefore, we don't want that to happen, so we go around to the other ladder where no one perceives Sam. It's worse. They say that since the wreckage of the first shuttle, it's still attached to the docking Leave this door open for now. If you do not leave the door open, then uh, you'll have to open it after you're done. And that will give this guard a sound to listen to to come back quicker than you want him to, and obviously you won't be able to do this. So what we're going to do is something I said I, I didn't do in the first two splinter cells. Uh, that's the whistle. So we have to use the whistle. Otherwise, you could use the OCP, but you want to use the whistle in this situation. So wait till you see that guard go across to the right and wait about eight or nine seconds. Then you want to go ahead and move forward to do this. Whistle in the middle and immediately go up against the wall. My God. If you go up against this wall, the guy moves slower to actually investigate. This gives you more time to grab the information and get out of there at the, uh, before all in one go. So Lucera is holed up in the captain's quarters. Where's that? Third deck, fourth side. The two interior stairwells are the only access to that deck. Now, if you've done timing correctly, that guy's already going to be passed, which is what I was watching out for. We can shut the door, and we don't have to worry. We're going to go back exactly the way that we came, because that guy behind us will perceive you if you try to go ahead and go down the ladder. Even though you will not get caught, you will still be 100% stealthy, but I know I'm saying this all the time. It's that perceive word. <laughs> that is what makes it so challenging, because you have to go a little bit more around to do certain things. We just don't want any guard to even think, maybe, did I see Did I see someone? You know, we don't want that type of interaction. We don't want a guard, after the mission is over, talking with his buddies and be like, yeah, I thought I saw a guy creeping around the, you know. No, not in Sinistrano 1's walkthrough. We are going for the ultimate challenge. Here, we're going to go back to exactly where that cr last crate we got was. Obviously shutting the doors. However, there's a glitch here. It does not let me jump over this. So normally you can jump over this and it'll just do it just like it did in the beginning where the guy was sleeping, but it didn't. So I got really nervous here, but you could still go back around the normal and nobody will see you. All that's left now is to take out uh, Serda and to grab one more of the bonus or the optional objective. There also is a bonus objective if you interrogate Lucera. Um, there is also a little glitch that happens here, which doesn't normally happen. Keep this door open. Don't shut it. Never, 
Never in my life have I been so insulted. I don't see why you're so upset. He got you past the inspection. You think it's easy to get through the canal zone with all the crackdowns these days? I don't care if it's hard. You think my job is easy? No. But this insult, forcing me to bribe an inspector out of my own pocket. No. This big shot, this vice president, Senor Segundo Ruiz de Medeiros. Ha! I'll show him. Fine. Mark my words. I'll make him pay. I'll make him pay double, or my name is not Hugo Lacerda. Great. I need another drink. All right, so there are three guards in there, including Lacerda. We're just going to grab Lacerda, and we're going to take him out. Let Normally, when you take him out of this room, and you go far enough, it doesn't trigger the other enemies talking. However, it did it. It doesn't normally do that, so it was a little bit of a glitch. But go all the way out of the room into the other area, and this shouldn't happen either. You shouldn't have to hear them talk as well. But it just did on mine. Shh. Don't make a scene. <gasps> Madre de Dios! Not exactly. But if it makes you feel better to pray... Please don't kill me! Lacerda, come on! Bring us a drink! Calm him down. Uh, uh, see, si. I'm looking for some rum. What, you need a hand? No, no, I, I'll find it. Good job. Please let me go. I won't tell them I saw you. You don't understand what's happening here, do you? Morgan Holt, your goons tortured him to death and I'm holding you responsible. Oh, no, it's not my fault. The only thing worse than a coward is a liar. You gave the order, and now you're gonna die for it. Please! First, tell me who contracted you to kidnap him. I... I don't know. I swear! I was contacted indirectly. I was warned not to try and find out. Come on, Lacerda, hurry up! Uh, un momento! You'd better let me go, or they'll come looking. You... <sighs> Good job, Fisher. I'll inform the Joint Chiefs that Lacerda is no longer a threat. Your primary objectives are completed. We can extract you whenever you're ready. Of course, we're going to hide the body in the dark, and then we're going to shut the door. Sam is a gentleman, and this is no traces. Well, there you go. The hardest part is done at this point. We have one more box that we need to tag and where we can exit the level. I mean, there's still about six enemies we need to maneuver around, but it's not as tough as it may look. Now, the guard can be here looking in this direction once you come out, so be careful and look around that corner just to make sure. Also, a guard can be right above you, so just make sure that you're doing this in a slow manner. As you can see, that guy just comes right there. Do not go up these stairs. Wait right here. If you go up the stairs, even if you're silent and nobody hears you, nobody sees you, you will he'll automatically just start shooting. So just get in this little area right here and let him let him do his thing. All right, so I can't tell you how awesome this was to achieve. To do it with only one save, I was very happy. But I also still wish I could have done it with zero saves. Um, we're never going to do the whole zero save walkthrough because the way that this game uh, is, is that I love this everything doesn't love always happen the same way every time you go through. Oh, it's I always different. Burning oil. Um, that was the last of the weapons crates, Sam. Now we'll be able to track them wherever they go and see just how connected Lacerda is. Enjoy it while you can. But there you go, ladies and gents. We've completed all of the objectives and we are heading to the exit. Don't forget to leave a like to show your appreciation for the tough challenge that we have provided for ourselves. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. All I can say is it's been my pleasure to bring this game to you guys once again. Give it some love. Make sure you watch the entire video. Become a member to help us continue to do what we love to do, and that's bring videos to you guys. You have no idea how important it is being a patron or a member, um, especially in these times when ads are really low and everything just is uh, a little bit crazy. So, yeah, as you can see, all zeros down the line. It's not a speed run, but I still felt like we got through it in a very fast uh, 
manner because we did it as I felt Sam would actually do it. Every walkthrough that I've always done uh, when I when I don the the goggles has always been more as if Sam was in the as I if I was actually Sam. What would I do in that situation? How would I go about in doing it? You know, would I rush through an area even if it is stealthy? You know, would you do this? Would you do that? It's always about what would Sam do. W W S D. <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks again so much for watching. And uh, I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you on my favorite Splinter Cell mission of all time, The Bank. Peace out. With still no word from the North Korean government, China's Long Dan again urged all sides to come to the bar. We have now a late response by Admiral Toshiro Otomo of the Japanese ISDF. Despite the ambassador's efforts, nothing has changed. The Japanese people must continue to endure harassment and humiliation. We eagerly anticipate the arrival of the us. Get back to Panama. Hate to eat and run, sir. We have a few loose ends to tie off before we can rejoin. Well, you can make it back for the 4th of July. I'll show you one heck of a good time, boy. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Fisher, the arms that Lacerda had were purchased by someone using a Panamanian offshore bank as proxy. I want to take a peek inside their records. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. This op can't look like a U.S. intelligence gig, so to cover it up, you'll need to crack the bank's vault and lift some bearer bonds. Property of the French government. I hit the bank's servers last night, but I didn't find much. All their workstations run drivers for plug-and-play hard drives. I'm guessing they secure them physically every night. Crazy world we live in where electronic intrusion is more of a threat than physical intrusion. Anyway, they probably store the drives in the main vault, meaning they're not going to be easy to get a hold of. First, the good news. You've been in this bank before. You were part of a CIA raiding team that went in in 89 looking for some of Noriega's drug money. Most of the intelligence we have on the bank actually comes from your team. The bad news is that we have a lot of physical security. Lasers, motion sensors, locked doors, cameras, the whole lot. And none of it was there in 89. We've also contacted a, a specialist to help crack the vault. You better talk to him. Look, I don't know who you are or why I'm helping you, other than it's better than staring at the ceiling of Marcel. I hear you have to face some Mason Wells 88. Well, it ain't a one-man job, but they tell me you can do the work of five men. Fine, I says. I had your mate Willie make a little deposit for you. You'll be needing some things from a safety deposit box in the little vault that we can use to crack the main one. We'll continue on our course for the Yellow Sea and send you back by helicopter to Panama City. I have no authorization to act inside Panamanian borders, so you'll be operating covertly out of the embassy. You and your partner will be on your own in Panama. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinister Channel, your host, and welcome to the Bank Mission, my favorite mission in Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. This is on Expert, adding extra challenge. Let me explain a few of the challenges. One challenge being only OCP that we can use, no other SC20K gadgets or whatsoever, no perceivement of enemies. Enemies can't know we're there. This is a complete ghost guide and no saves. And this one was a very tough to do because there's one section that we get to. I'll show you how uh, tough it is, but uh, here we go. Sensing lights? No. What do they do? When they detect movement, the light turns on. That's... that's amazing. Like magic, I think. So that's the OCP that we're going to use. There's no other way. You have to distract that guard, and the OCP is the best way to do it. Other than that, you can go ahead and move up. There will be a few things that I explained throughout this. Um, there's really just one section that I had a little trouble with, and it's just because... For one reason or another, it's very the timing is very, very little, and you've got to be really on it in order to be able to get by without actually being um, hurt. Fisher, I've got a copy of a work order here that the bank filed with their insurance company. It says the dome windows over the lobby are magnetically locked. See if you can find a breaker or junction box up here and power down the locks. Right. Also, don't forget to leave a like. 
for appreciation of how much effort that we actually put in to try to make this as perfect as possible. So leave a like, become a member, it really helps out the channel so that we can continue to do what we love to do. Good work, Sam. That shut down the magnetic locks on the windows. Hey, wait a minute. Power spike. The lobby. It looks like a laser grid just came online. Lasers? Lasers are so... 90s? I was gonna say 70s. Can you please stop making me feel old? Got bad news for you, Sam. You are old. Fisher, here's our advisor. He'll walk you through the steps that'll get you into that vault. Be patient with him. Oh, he's one of those. Right. Hello? Is this thing on, then? It's on. I'm here. Have you been briefed? Whatever. Listen, this is the Mason Wells 88. Each one is unique. If you want to get a butcher's up this girl's skirt, first thing you need to do is authorize an opening. How do I do that? The bank president and the treasurer will each have an authorization lock in their office. There'll be another one in the security office. You need to disable all three. Okay. So remember we have a, a new feature in Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, the hacking. That's a relief. Our installer seems to be compatible with their local OS. That's it? Just plug and play? That's the idea. No fuss. Get all eight of those forged mails uploaded. Make the robbery look like an inside job. Exactly. The hacking is not hard to do. Uh, it's actually pretty easy, so I have no reason to explain it to you. Uh, here, we're just going to wait for a guard, and then we're going to get around the camera. You can OCP the camera if you want to go through this quicker, but I'm limiting the amount of OCPs in this walkthrough as well. Only the ones that I feel are absolutely necessary for us to be able to continue on. So I will not be using... I will not be OCPing any cameras whatsoever. So we're just going to wait till the camera is looking to the right. If you time it right, you can get through. Sometimes the camera could be in a different spot, depending on how long it took you to get up here. Here, there's one guy that's going to be coming across. You just need to watch out for him. Do not start the hack if you see him. Wait until he uh, leaves and goes in the other direction. Then you can do the hack. Sometimes you can actually make it before he shows up. Sometimes you can't. It's really hit and miss, and every single time it was different. We do, however, need to watch out for these guys here. It depends on how quick they're moving up, but we're going to have enough time to get by them right there. Now, this next section was the hardest part for me, and I'll explain why in a second. Looks like more lasers ahead, Sam. This whole place is singing with photons. There's a guard who seems to be walking around here, no problem. Maybe he has some kind of beacon. Get close and you can stay in his electronic shadow. So, we're going to get as close to this guard as we can once that we've hacked that. Now, this guard is going to be talking to another guard. And getting up to that guard is going to be very, very tough to do. But you can do it, but it will take you a few tries. It's all about how much you press on that thumbstick. It's probably easier to do on mouse and keyboard, but it's really tough to do on controller. But at least we get to do one of Sam's coolest moves. In this game, they make it even cooler. I was just thinking something. What's that? Did you ever notice that this bank doesn't have any bank machines? Of course. Why do you think that is? Because they don't want people to hack the bank machines. Hack a bank machine? Whoever heard of that? It's not the realism that's... As you can see right there, it does it twice. So that does not mean that I saved or anything. All that means is that for some reason my my PC goes directly to desktop and then I have to put the game back in. I know it's, it's ridiculous. But you want to be super quick. I mean, right here, as soon as he turns, go. And you can just barely have enough time to make it. As you can see how close that is to actually do. And if you watch the stream, you can see how many... That took two and a half hours just to be able to make happen. So, And then I didn't even do it on stream. So I had this has been recorded after the stream. So this is not the same video that you guys are seeing from the live stream. I just told myself I have to do it. I didn't want to do any saves. And so finally I was able to do it. Of course, we're making the mission, which is actually pretty easy to be a lot tougher than it is because of those restraints and those challenges that we set for ourselves. Otherwise, this mission is a breeze. I mean, guards can see you left and right and never really, really see you, and you still get 100% stealth. But when you go around and you do it this way, as I've said previously before, it really, really adds that 
layer of realism and challenge to the game. We're going to use this guy to actually get into the room, otherwise we would need to hack. Now there's another way that you can actually get into the room via a air duct, but since we're not going around that way, we're going this way, we actually do not need to use that method at all. I feel this route is um, the smoothest. Security authorization. Two more to go. Good thinking, Fisher. Now, even if you're caught on camera, they won't be able to ID you. Ah, no defying again. That's half of the forged mail, Sam. Four more to go. Thanks. I've always found it hard to count past three. No need to be smarmy, Sam. Breaks every night. Uh, let's see. It also looks like some of the audio got desynced, so when it goes out of game, it looks like it desyncs the audio, so the audio gets a little bit ahead of what you see in the video, and I do apologize for that, but I don't know what is up with my computer, it just, for some reason, and it does it twice, it's going to do it right up here again, and I, I just, I don't understand why it does it, but... It's like a program or something is trying to load up and it makes it go to a desktop and then I don't know it's so it's really weird we're gonna listen to this Chinese ambassador to the United States Long Dan was recalled to China today for an emergency meeting with government officials regarding ongoing problems between Korea and Japan Long Dan is expected to renew his efforts to bring Korean US and Japanese delegates to the bargaining table so you're going to have to be really careful here because there's a little bit of a problem. Um, this guy might be looking in your direction. So just wait here until you see him. Make sure you know where he is before you start to move up. Once he gets up enough, then you should be able to climb over without him seeing you. Now the courtyard can be a little tough if the guy is in... Um, if he's going in the direction he's going in, because if you try to stealth and go around and use the method that I do, you will notice that you're in just a little bit of light. So even though there are four, well, technically five lines in the stealth meter, if you got zero, one, two, three, and four, so that's a total of five, even if you're, ju even if you're barely, like right there, even just that much to be above um, zero, you can still be seen by him. So when you see me do this, it's always about getting it to where your meter is at the lowest amount that you can. Uh, otherwise, he will perceive you and he will see you. And again, I'm sorry for the desync and audio, but like I said, it's going to happen again here. So. Right, that's authorization done. The outer cage to the vault should be opening as we speak. Great. Twice. It happened twice the case, in the one I'm recording. It's crazy. Box. You may dropped off some kit for you in one of them. All right, I'll let you know when I'm there. Oh, no, Zerkazy. That's exactly what I didn't want to see. Zerkazy? Is that some kind of dried meat? He's probably the best computational theorist in the world. He worked with Morgan Holt on Project Watson. Where it is, he's gone off his nut. Sounds like bad guy material to me. In sports, pitcher Akira Watanabe arrived in New York yesterday for his first practice with his new team. After a full day of evaluations, head pitching coach Matthew Furland stated that Watanabe was, quote, easily the best baseball pitcher ever. All right, so we've got everything opened and ready to go. Listen to cues. We're not going to be using optical cables or anything. Once you hear them stop talking and move away a little bit, that's when you can start moving up. Otherwise, they will see you because he's working on the panel on the door. We're going to grab the second to last email here. I'm telling you, he was a rat. 
No chance. It was way too big to be a rat. Maybe it was a monkey. Or, or a bear. Ha! A bear. You're crazy. I know that thing. Great work, Fisher. One more forged mail and we're covered. There. Doing my best. Sam, it's Will. Turtle said one of these boxes had some equipment in it. Chest level, right hand side, number 1024. Careful with that gear. What is all this stuff? It charges it for the vault, and the other thing in me, Bob, is a telemetric lockpick. A telemetric lockpick? Head down to the main vault. We'll walk you through it there. All right, next you need to pop both of these locks at the same time. That's what the telemetric pick is for. Exactly. It reads your movements in one lock and mimics them in the other lock, real time. You guys use some cool toys. Right. Now, once you get the feel for each pin, you have to wait a second for the telemetric pick to sync up. Once it beats, Bob's your uncle, you can pick the pin and move to the next one. Don't try and pick a pin before you're in sync, or you'll have to restart. Right. Give me Alright, now place the charges over the main pins. Once they're all in place, well, I'm sure you can figure it out. And... Open Sesame! Lambert, we're in. Great work. Sam, get in there and find those hard drives. You don't have to do anything on the way in, but you do need to remember that you're going to have to OCP this whole thing on the right there. Uh, it was a really, really clever way to get you to, uh, to be caught. I have fragments of a message here from someone named Dvorak. Echelon doesn't have a file on him. Wait. Well, that's weird. What? The deleted messages. They're 512 encrypted. I haven't seen 512 since Philip Mass. I killed Mass outside several Morsk. I remember. And it's confirmed. So this is someone with access to some seriously classified information. Zerkazy? That's a frightening possibility. Great work, Fisher. Now any investigation into the robbery will only point back at the investigators. So the Panamanian government will end up sending some innocent banker to prison? Innocent, if you don't count providing arms to revolutionaries. Oh, right, I forgot. Bankers. Evil. Good job, Fisher. Now the whole mission will look like a robbery. <laughs> They'll never know why we were here. Lambert, now that I'm holding 50 million bucks, I think we need to talk about that raise again. Mm. 25 cents an hour and not a penny more. Deal. All right, Fisher. We'll extract you as planned from the same location you were inserted. Over the wall from the front courtyard? That's right. Redding will be waiting for you nearby. On my way. And that's pretty much the whole bank mission. We shut all doors, left no traces. We even OCP'd the laser so that uh, we didn't actually deactivate all the lasers. They turned back on. Nobody even knows we were there. So they just think someone else came in. They have no clue that Sam Fisher, working for the NSA, came in and did what he had to do. And that was the whole purpose of this. And again, I'm sorry for the desync, but I don't know how to fix it. It's been a computer issue that I've had for years. And I'm sure people that have seen me play other games have seen where it'll go, especially live streams, where it'll just go to desktop. And uh, it just desyncs audio for you guys. Like in my game, everything is still in sync. But because I'm recording with Shadow Play, Shadow Play desyncs it a little bit. So it's like a half a second behind. But there we go. We finished it and we did it with zero saves and nice and stealth like, no uh, perceivements. I didn't say that as much as I did in the second cargo mission, though. So you guys should be proud of me. But hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Next mission up is going to be the penthouse. So Zerkazy and Morganholt are the only two people who ever saw those algorithms. And Morganholt is dead. And Zerkazy is connected to a mystery guest we know nothing about. Devorak. Morganholt and Zerkazy are geeks, not terrorists. Maybe this Devorak is some kind of puppeteer. No hitter, bottom of the eight. 2-0, New York in the eight. Akira Watanabe is on the mound. He's pure concentration, pure focus. This is no coincidence. You're on your way to the Big Apple. Bruce Morgan Holt and Abrahim Zakezi were partnered together on Project Watson, the UN committee that cracked the mass kernels. They're the ones who discovered 512 encryption, the same encryption used in the messages you recovered at MCAS Bank. 
If this so-called Dvorak person has somehow gotten his hands on mass-based IW algos, we're in a world of hurt. I've been trying to penetrate Zerkezi's private network since we connected him to this mess. I've seen some tough network security before, and I expected Zerkezi to have top-of-the-line tech, but this is crazy. Zerkezi's server isn't just impenetrable or invisible, it's like... It's like looking for a shadow in a pitch-black room. It's driving me crazy. Things are turning sour in New York. It's been 24 hours since the blackout, and no one has a clue when it might end. We've got sporadic reports of unrest all over Manhattan, but it hasn't started to spill over yet. Word coming down from above is that the National Guard will be deployed within the hour. We'll need to insert you into an alley behind a building adjacent to the Target building. Watch out for civilians. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistra No One, your host. Welcome back to more Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. This is our ghost walkthrough on expert mode, achieving 100% and trying to set up as many challenges as we can. So for this next mission, which is called Penthouse, obviously we're going to continue to go in with the assault loadout. The only reason we're doing that um, is just to say, hey, we're not using any of these extra gadgets. Still, this video is not going to have any of those SC-20K gadgets. Very minimal interaction with the environment. Only one save, even though we actually get through the entire thing without restarting. So technically we play it through one time, but I do save at the heliport just in case something would have happened, but it doesn't end up happening. So with that being said, the challenges are just like the previous video, and of course it's go time. Fisher, the National Guard was deployed into Manhattan about an hour ago. I feel safer already. Watch your fire, Sam. Those boys aren't expecting to see you and they'll attack on sight. Do not, I repeat, do not kill any of them. I'll be careful. Good. Now the only thing that makes these sections difficult is the fact that some of the enemies uh, will do different things. Like this guy, he turns around, uh, he took longer to turn around than he normally does. There are little situations here and there throughout uh, this game where you repeat a certain section or something like that. Enemies will do different things. They will not always do the same exact thing. But getting through this shouldn't be too difficult for you to be able to figure out. Now here in this section, obviously, these are National Guardsmen. Therefore, we are not taking any of them out. We're not going to do that, period, anyways. But as far as the story goes, this these are just... These are not the ones that you were worried about. You're just trying to get to the area of where you need to go. Now, sometimes you can be heard when you're crawling down this pipe. Sometimes you can't. It's very, very random, and it makes no sense. You have enough light down here? I think so. These barricade lights are battery-operated, so they should be okay. I have flares, too, if I need them. All right. Then we'll concentrate on getting power to the CP before we break out to the perimeter. Sounds good. Try to stick as close to that right side of that door as you, as, uh, as you saw me do, of that little entrance point. And hopefully you'll be able to get through. Fisher, looks like the National Guard are trying to restore the power to the building's elevator. That's probably your best way to the top. I'll see if I can hitch a ride. It'll be a long climb if you don't. You need to be very quick. As soon as this guard moves, you need to start moving. If you do not, there's another guard that comes through, and he will pretty much find you immediately. Uh, so you do need to be careful and just continually move up. This video is a little bit longer because there are certain sections that enemies just would not um, allow us to get by because when we're playing it the way that we are with no perceivement it is very difficult therefore you cannot rush through some certain areas without being perceived so you have to take your time in certain areas and you're going to see that here as there's going to be a few sections where the guard would normally move in this pattern but uh, for some reason he just they decide not to and they just stay where they are or something similar to that effect. So yes, this is not going to be the fastest ghost walkthrough that you see, but it's the only one that does it without being perceived, and therefore it creates whole new challenges that just you don't see in anyone else's videos. You want to make sure that you stay right here. If, say, you were to save, this guard would do something different. If you were to save here and then restart from that checkpoint, the guard would not move up immediately. He would stay in one location, and you can actually get by him, like, way quicker. Almost like a minute to two quicker than you can if you go through it for the first time. So, 
if you've watched my live stream previously, you'll see that when I was going through these learning the levels, and we were saving at specific spots, guard behaviors completely changed. So when you, it's going to make things interesting going forward when you, uh, when you practice something and you get versed on it, and then you go back and try to do that, but then realize that because you're not saving, everything changes, and the guards don't do the same, they don't react the same way. It makes it a lot more tougher. Here, you want to just move slow. Don't risk, you know, being uh, hurt or anything like that. And we're just going to get up here. There's... There are some times that you can actually get to that little spot that we're about ready to go to after this um, before the helicopter actually gets out and lands. But as you can see, there is the point that I saved, but you saw that I saved and there are no edits, meaning that, yes, well, you know I was I planning on restarting this, like but we did it dark, all the way through. Right? Yeah, but this guy over here, all his lights are on. How can that be? Well, the richer you get, the more paranoid you get. Guy probably has his own generator so he can keep his security system running. Security system? Who's gonna climb 15 floors to break into his apartment? Like I said, paranoid. As soon as he says that and turns around, go ahead and move up. Remember, there's a lot of sound, so you can actually move a little faster than what I do here and hurry up and get against here. As you'll see, the guard has already turned around and would have been looking in your direction, so you do need to be rather quick. Now, in some cases, you can actually make it as soon as this guy with the flashlight turns around, you can go. But it's not 100%. Sometimes that guy on the far right side, you don't see him right now. Sometimes he will still see you. So it's better to just wait to make sure that you're 100% good. Again, being perceived does not give you an alarm. So if you don't care about that challenge, then go. You're totally 100% fine. You're not going to get caught. However, I don't want them to even know that I'm here, and I, I reiterate that over and over again, but that's what makes this game more challenging to me. Fisher, satellite shows you've reached the Casey's building. County clerk's office has construction permits on file for the floors below the penthouse and in the neighboring structure. Any plans or blueprints on file? I'll have Grimm look into it, but with this blackout. I understand. I'll see if I can dig up some plans down here. Good idea. So we're going to wait till he turns around, and then we're going to immediately go off the rail. You want to go off the rail. Don't follow him Fisher, behind him. That's a hired gun if I've ever seen one. He's no night watchman either. He's a merc. He's got the same kit as the guys who were protecting Lacerda. This whole situation is getting uglier by the second. See if you can find out who these characters work for. Will do. The reason that you don't want to follow behind him, even though you can actually get into the room already and then wait in the dark, is because if you move up any further than what you see me do right here, this guy that is coming out right now, when he goes back, he will talk to the guy at the elevator. And if he does that, then you no longer have the opportunity that you present yourself by if you wait outside of the room. So if we wait outside here, he's going to turn, and then he will not speak to this guy yet. Not until the next one. It's kind of like a trigger. So once Sam enters the building, the guard is triggered the next time he comes into this area to talk to that guy at the elevator. So this gives you an opportunity to go in here, get on the left, and you'll notice that once he passes me, when I move, he will then start talking to the elevator guy, which gives us plenty of time to get through here. Permits, architectural plans. Interesting. Zerkezi has a hardened panic room off of his bedroom. I'll check it out. Looks like he also filed plans for construction in the next building over. The next building? I'm no architect, but if I'm reading these plans right, both buildings are connected across a rooftop. I'll leave the relevant data on your offset. Should help you navigate. Thanks. Fisher, Zerkezi's cameras project an infrared beam so they can see in the dark. If it's an infrared beam, I can see it in my night vision. Exactly. And listen, it would help us keep tabs on Zerkezi if we could use these cameras against him. Gotcha. I'll try and run some taps. Good work, Fisher. That's one camera tapped. There should be five more. I'll keep my eyes open. They're all pretty easy to spot. 
So when you go into this area, these are the only really distractions you have to do. And we're going to be doing a whistle. Otherwise, you could turn off the light. But the whistle to me is um, is better because I feel like if you just turn off the light, to me it's like, okay, why would a whole light just go out and then I look at the switch and I see that the switch has been pressed. Someone had to have pressed that down. Therefore, I feel like that would give up my no traces. So whistling, you know, there's many people can interpret it whistling in different ways. I'm just trying to justify why I do this, the things the way that I do to make it more challenging. I don't recognize you. How long have you been with this place? Three months. I just got transferred up from Peru. I was on the um, <clears throat> VIP detail. This place? That's Doug Shetland's company. I know. Fisher, if Shetland turns out to be crooked... If Shetland is crooked, I'll take him down myself. But I have a feeling there's more to it than that. Could be. See if you can find out who's in charge of this protection detail. Maybe someone inside this place is playing both sides. You got it. So we have to wait for this guy to come through. Once he does come through, he's going to do a turnaround, but he'll turn around to the left. Make sure you don't get off this cover here too quickly, because even though you're still completely in the dark, he will still perceive you, and then he'll come look for you. The other guy's already turned around, so you're free to move this way. So we're going to grab the second camera, and also the third one is in this room as well. This is also where you exfiltrate. And there's going to be a sneaky way to exfiltrate as well, so you don't have to use the OCP. I think we only use the OCP a total of, what, one time in this mission? Which you really don't even have to. You could uh, do some other type of distraction when we go back into the other area, because it's that guard that's sitting in that one room where we whistled, where we have to use the OCP on the radio. You don't have to use the OCP on the radio, you can do some other type of distraction, maybe throw a bottle, but I just feel that, I don't know, in certain situations, everything that I do is always set up to where exactly how I feel Sam would in this situation. Now here is another difference between saving and not saving. So when I was going through this mission, when I would save just a little bit before this point, it reset this guy's timing so therefore he never came up immediately after I was done tapping that wire so therefore I was able to go ahead and move on continually and free so these are situations where sometimes saving could actually help you to get through the mission even quicker because it changes enemies it's like the, the game notices something different and it resets enemy timers or something like that don't worry about this guy seeing you as long as you're underneath the sound meter you're 100% Stealthy, and then we'll move on and grab the fourth uh, camera tap. This is also where the panic room is, where you can get the other objective. Good work, Fisher. That's four of six cameras tapped. I'll keep an eye out for the other two. Remember, we still shut all doors. Make sure that we leave no traces. Gotcha. Who? Dvorak. Where is he? According to this, he's in the building next door. You can get there across the rooftop through the magnetically locked doors. How do I get through the doors? They're not magnetically locked anymore. Thanks for the help. All right, so here, um, this is uh, where you can do the, the famous uh, wall jump, split jump, if you want, but there's no real reason to do it. So what you're going to want to do is get over here in this corner and then angle yourself exactly how I do. Once they're done talking, the guard is going to come out. Wait a few seconds, but don't be too slow because you want to make sure that you get in to where you don't have to open the door. If you have to open the door, the guard inside will turn and hear the door open and then you will be caught. So the only way this works is if you get in the door before the door closes from when this first guy opens it. It's not difficult to do, but at the same time you do have to be a little bit more proactive when you're trying to get to the door. The guard that just passed us, he is a guard we absolutely have to take out 
if you want to be able to complete 100% of your objectives. You will not get 100% if you do not take this guard out. And the reason that you need to take him out is because you're going to interrogate him to get more information, and you need that information for a 100% walkthrough. Otherwise, we would have let him be. I'm allergic to flowers. Maybe you should talk before I sneeze and accidentally cut your throat. Oh, God! I'll tell you anything! Good. Start with your boss. What's his name? Nedich. Uh, Mylon Nedich. He's in charge of uh, all our VIP protection contracts. And how many of those under his protection has he killed in the last, say, six weeks? Uh, wh what? What kind of scam is he running? I, I, I don't know about any scam. I swear! Mylon Nedich. Echelon's got nothing. He doesn't even exist. Hmm. Uh, whoever he is, he's playing both sides. We need to inform Shetland. No can do, Sam. We can't compromise OPSEC for private interests. Fine. If I find Nedich, it'll be less of a problem. Admirable of you to protect your friend, but... You said he doesn't exist. I'm just correcting a bureaucratic error. So this situation Good can be a little tough. Camera, Sam. We'll have guys watching Zerkezi 24-7. Always happy to keep the donut dippers busy. Now... You see this guard here. Remember, there's also that guy inside there. So it just depends on timing-wise what happens. I got very, very bad timing here, which adds a lot more time to the video because as soon as the guy behind me turns around, this guy comes. And as you can literally see, you cannot move forward because, yes, you can move forward and you won't be seen and you won't get an alarm. But since we're going no perceivement, which is something we say in every Splinter Cell Chaos Theory video, <laughs> you have to be a little bit more patient. Here is the only time we're going to use the OCP. Again, you could find a bottle and you could do it that way. You could do a whistle to get by him. There's other different things you could do. But we're going to do the OCP. Piece of junk. Unfortunately, you can't just stay on the wall because the moment you come off the wall, you get seen a little. I tried, but you just cannot do it. Um, you can see that all those things that I try out are always done in the live stream before we start recording, so you can always check those out if you want to know my thought process on how I actually go through and figure these things out. Here there are two entrances, one on the bottom and one on the top. We're going to go to the top. That is because we would need to distract a guard on the bottom with another whistle, and I'm trying to limit the amount of distractions. So wait till he turns, and then you can move up here. This is where we're going to be waiting a while. Uh, there is a... As you can see, a remote bomb right there. So you gotta uh, watch out. Because if you move too quick and too fast in this area, it will blow you up. Here's the thing. This guard, he patrols back and forth. He also moves a little bit further down into the room. However, for some reason, he did not want to move further down the room. Really, that's almost the only opportunity that he gives you in order to enter the room. You've got to enter the room fast, and you've got to enter it on the complete left side. If you try to enter the room on the right side of the window, or even in the middle of the window, the, the remote bomb is going to just blow up. Because uh, you're moving too fast, and it recognizes you, and it just explodes. So this takes me a while. I'm thinking, okay, he's not doing... Um, what he usually does is, and that is move further down the room. So we actually have to time our movements perfect and to the T if we want to get this to work. He's going to go, he's just going to keep going back and forth. So it really is about just really having that perfect timing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get as close to the left side as I physically can uh, while still remaining stealthy. So wait till he's moving back in the other direction and then we're going to get on the left side of the window. Then we're going to wait uh, for that perfect timing in order to move up. Unfortunately, he just didn't do what we wanted him to do, so that's why this one took a lot longer. During the live stream, it was pretty easy. He moved around and we got in, like, super quick. So 
So we're going to wait one more. I believe the next one is the one that we're going to do it. And obviously this added an extra two to three minutes. But when it comes to doing it the way that I'm doing it, obviously you want to be safe and careful. Got to be quick when you move there too, because remember if your meter is even slightly up, he will perceive you, and then that's it. Here, same thing. Stop first. Make sure you're stopped. Whatever you do, don't go into the vent while you're while you're already pushing forward, because then you could set off the remote. So you same thing for coming out. You want to make sure that you stop at the end of the vent, and then you do it. So. You don't have to do what I'm about to do here. I'm going to go through it as if this is Sam's first time going through this. He has no idea how to do this sequence. No idea. If you want a faster time, you can do this sequence if you already know what you're doing. Just go ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and do it as if this is Sam's first time and it's a story related. You must be Dvorak. Yeah, um, uh, well, Dvorak, huh? I had thought this area was, well, uh, off limits. You're not Dvorak. Well, um, since we're being blunt, well, no. Then who are you? Such a rush you're in. Hmm. Fancy some tea, do you? Lambert, something weird is happening. I'll say. What do I do? The old man seems harmless. Indulge him. See if he knows anything. Reminds me of poor old Jiggers. <laughs> oh, Jiggers. We hardly knew ye. Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, well, one might ask you the same. I'm looking for a man named Dvorak. Ah, Dvorak, <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, you're not going to find one. <laughs> this way! Ah, <laughs> yes, here we are then. This is Dvorak. Jesus. I think I just figured out why you couldn't hack in here, Grim. Uh, yeah, no kidding. What the hell do I do now? Uh, hold on while I find a slide rule. See what the old man knows, Fisher. Okay. If this is Dvorak, who are you? Um, I am Dvorak's keeper. Thank you most kindly for asking. And what is this? This Dvorak? Dvorak is, well, you likely wouldn't understand. I'm sure you're right. But let's have it for the record anyway. Dvorak is a mechanical representation of a self-referential axiom of number theory. Dvorak encodes its own logical structure within its own executable cycle and recursively derives a more accurate representation of itself with each successive execution. Right. Grim, did you get that? My god, it's an infinite state machine. Fine. What do I do? If Zerkezi is using this... Grim. Sorry, uh, Sam, we're gonna need a copy of Dvorak's output so we can work out the algorithm it's built on. How do I get its output? It runs on punch cards. Punch cards? You'll need to restart the sequence and initialize each tower in the right order, and then retrieve the output stack. How do I know the right sequence? You'll need to hit the switches in order as the tubes start to heat up. Ask the old man for help. I need your help. Indeed. What can I help you with, my good fellow? I need you to help me initialize the Vorak so I can retrieve an output stack. Ah, Dvorak. Well, that is certainly something I can help with. <laughs> Why don't you restart it? I'll initialize the towers on this side, <laughs> and you can do the other side. This is pretty self-explanatory. Just do exactly which one lights up. Also, you can do this all by yourself, and you could have done it in like five minutes less. But I felt that this is what Sam would do in this situation, since he has no idea how to even do these. And it kind of, I, I like it. I like actually going through it, and I'm glad that they put this in here to where you can actually have him help you. Aha! There you go! 
Mm -hmm. Your output stack should be ready. Mm -hmm. All right, I got the stack. Good work, Fisher. Time to make yourself scarce. Get to your primary extraction point. On my way. If you went through the door downstairs where you saw the red, you'd need to hack it. And there was a guard waiting outside that door. You'd have to distract him in order to get to the bottom area of that outside roof. Remember, we didn't decide not to go that way because we didn't want to have to distract that guard. So we're going to go back this way. Now, everything depends on timing-wise and where the guard downstairs outside on the roof is activated. So sometimes it might take you longer. Maybe he'll be closer to where we're going to be exiting to make it even quicker. But here, stop then do it and it should not blow up there's going to be a guard all the time coming through here as soon as you get to that point follow him very closely and exit out the same way you came in don't forget to leave a like everyone comment on these videos watch them for as long as you can because watch time means a lot uh, sharing them on your Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever you can. Becoming a member on the channel. All that helps support us so that we can continue to do what we love to do. Um, again, you know, I love playing stealth games and I want to let these games shine. Hopefully we'll get some news sometime soon on a new Splinter Cell, but who knows. So all we have are these games to kind of live vicariously through right now uh, when it comes to stealth stuff. So I appreciate you guys coming back. Even though you've seen me play this game before, it still means a lot. Even though the views are not really there, but we just got to keep building and, and keep growing back. So here, obviously, you're going to wait. We couldn't make it across the roof without that guy actually seeing us. But when you drop down, make sure you drop down on the concrete and not on the gravel because you make too much noise. Here, you probably could have went, but I wanted to be safe because, again, I'm technically doing this with no saves. Even though I did save, this was still that first time, so therefore I did not, um, I did not restart any checkpoint or anything. So at this point, I did not want to take any risks whatsoever, and I'm just going to wait for him. Once he's, once he's gone, make sure the other guard behind you can't see you. And then land on the side here. This should uh, make it to where you land soft. Make sure he's not looking, and then go ahead and move forward. We are almost done. All we have to do is get to the exfiltration point. We're going to have to use another whistle distraction. Again, if you don't care about these things, you can just shut off the light. It's the same outcome, and no one perceives you. It's just... I don't know. If I was someone, Someone's up to something. and someone turned off a light, I went to that light and saw that someone flipped the switch when I knew the switch wasn't flipped, I felt like I would be alerted. Even though we did knock out a guy, so already somebody knows that, some, that's, that somebody was breaking in. That is clear. I just... I don't know. It's just that, that personal, like... Um, that perfectionist in me, I always try to strive to to make the best quality and uh, to give you guys the challenge that you guys deserve. If we're going to play again, if we're going to play a game again for the second time, I want to make sure that we do things we did not do in the first game. So, as soon as he moves up, we're going to jump over here and stay to the far right. There is that guard looking from the outside, so you have to stay against this side here or he will see you. Luckily enough, you can get all the way to this point and you're still completely in the dark. So you're just going to wait for him to come back. And once he does, you're going to enter the room to the left. Inside that room is a vent that takes you all the way to the elevator. If you do not use that vent, then you have to OCP the camera. Because there is a camera looking directly at the elevator. And you will not be able to get by it without setting off an alarm. So we're going to go directly to the room to the left. And we're going to immediately climb to the left as well. And there you have it, ladies and gents. You've just completed Penthouse. You did it with zero perceivements and technically with no saves. Even though I did save, but I did not use it. And you can see that in the, in the, uh, in the live stream as well if you don't believe me. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. It's been my pleasure, of course, always to bring you these games, um, and uh, let's check out how we did. All objectives completed, even the bonus objectives, and some missions I will be doing bonus objectives. One knockout, 27 minutes and 48 seconds. Again, not a speed run, but a lot of things uh, just made us have to take a little bit more time without getting perceived.
Now coming to you from our New York City broadcast center, we have Patrick Dunn of Watershed Electric on the line. Mr. Dunn, what do we know at this moment? All we know so far is that this was not an accident. If it's not an accident, then it must be intentional. Both us and the Japanese have been hit by this thing. I think it's pretty obvious who's responsible. Here's a Tomo. It appears we have something in common, Admiral. Our analysis of the information of footprints shows that the pressures which collapsed our power grids appear in many ways similar to those that collapsed our markets. I am certain the Koreans and the Chinese are involved. Let's not jump the gun here, Admiral. We've had our microscope on a man named Zerkezi. He had access to weaponized IW Algos following that business in Georgia. He was also a major DOE consultant after the blackouts here in 2003. Yes, we are aware of this connection. Has Zerkezi been found? Not yet, but it won't take long. I'll keep you posted. Fisher. I'm afraid we might be facing an orchestrated attempt to push the world into a major crisis. Zerkezi might know more about information warfare than anyone on Earth. And the fact that this place is combat-ready, essentially stateless and better equipped than most governments, we need to find out fast whether this is a coincidence or whether someone inside this place is making a major move. That said, State Department has several very significant contracts with this place. This thing is extremely political. I hate to do this to you, but keep it clean. Recon only, no fatalities. This place's offices are on the top three floors of the Hans Center Tower in downtown Manhattan. Recent financials indicate that they have invested heavily in their local infrastructure in order to maintain full operational capacity following even a major terrorist incident. Satellite confirms Grimm's data. This place is up and running at near to full capacity. It looks like they might be holding a meeting with members of New York City Council, possibly making a bid for protection or policing services to supplement the National Guard. They're prepared and opportunistic, that's for sure. But I wouldn't expect anything different. My money says they're playing fair, but if the boss wants to take a closer look, then that's what we'll do. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinister One, your host here, and welcome back to our Splinter Cell Chaos Theory Ghost walkthrough. This mission is called Displace. This is another mission that we can almost fully stealth. There's just a few things that we're going to need to do in order to make sure that we can get through this nice and stealthy. There is no assault option because you're actually technically not allowed to take anyone out or kill them. That's why there's no assault. So we're going to go with Redding's recommendation instead of the stealth. We're not going to be using our SC20K again, and we're going to set up the same type of challenges in all of the previous episodes so hopefully you guys enjoy this was definitely a fun mission to figure out as well as a, a tough mission to get through with no perceivements let's go time fisher we need to find out if displace and zerkezi are working together but until we know you want me to keep it quiet don't kill anyone or i'll abort the mission the pentagon has contracts with displace all around the world the president will have puppies if he finds out we're doing this the hell do I care what Marco says? I don't even know it. I'll tell him you said that. So the thing Go about ahead. this first area Boy, is in order to actually get whatever. into the building, you have to deactivate the fan. So one of these guards is automatically going to be aware something is going on because of the fan being turned off right here. It's not a perceivement on us, it's just, it's something that absolutely has to happen. I tried many different ways to see if I could turn the fan off, depending on where the guards were situated to where they wouldn't notice the fan being off, but it's really scripted, and pretty much they're going to notice every time unless you just take them out. Ideally, you want the guy that is out in the yard to be the one that actually sees the fan. However, sometimes the guy on the inside sees the fan. That is something you don't want because he takes way longer to get there and then you'll have to wait out in the front yard a lot longer than you normally would. So we're going to wait till he turns around and then we're going to move up. However, you can do this with him only being alerted the one time because of the fan. 
if you're fast enough, you can get in here, pick the lock, open it up, and go ahead and get down before he has the opportunity to see that you have picked this lock and that it's open. It's not a very stealthy infiltration in my opinion, and I wish they came up with a different way. It's cool and awesome to go through the fan, but it just says, hey, someone's in here if the fan is off and the the door or the uh, the thing that was locked is now not locked. You know what I mean? So, in my opinion, this entrance isn't as stealthy as I think they could have made it. And we leave a rope, which doesn't make any sense either. Now, you can jump down. However, you're going to pretty much lose almost all of your health. And we're going no damage. You're certainly entitled to request protection at that level from the National Guard. I agree. But let's face it. The National Guard is a massive, cumbersome organization. Sure. That's what we need. A presence. On the contrary. The people want protection, they need protection, but they don't want to see protection. Good work, Sam. Now you'll be able to access the central server on the first floor. This wireless stuff makes life a lot easier. Yep. Welcome to the Wi-Fi era. Remember, you're saying that to a guy from the era of Hi-Fi. Hi-Fi? As in, like, high in fiber? Uh, don't put me in adult undergarments yet, kid. What? Come on. I want to show you something. So that briefcase that we just hacked is something that you need to hack. You have a few different opportunities to hack it. This is the one that you do that you're already waiting around, so you might as well do it here. And you just have to find it. Again, when they added this tool, this hacking ability, wirelessly to the game, it did make a lot of things a little bit easier, but they've added a lot more toughness in the enemy AI. So I think it's a fair trade. There is some bonus missions that we need to do, secondary objectives, and we're going to do that one right here, since we have to wait for these guys to actually move forward. Also, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out. Comment Sam, below as well. Sam, each different divisions seem to have their own server farm. I put a program on your opsat that will build a little backdoor into their networks. You want me to upload that to each division server? I would appreciate it. Since you asked so nice. Good work, Sam. That's the first of their servers. If you can upload that to each of the other ones, I'll be able to snoop around as much as I please. I'll see what I can do. And of course, as always, if you want to see how you can fail this mission, or how things don't always go the way you want, check out the live stream as we went through it and learned it. Aw, oh, man. I love that. We have to get some of those at City Hall. Email me and remind me. I'll set you up with a good deal. Whoa. That was weird. Yeah. I've heard of this. It's called an electrochromic window. A small electric charge can change the opacity of microscopic crystals embedded in the glass. Cool. I'm thinking that your OCP should be able to toggle the state of the windows. I'm uploading the specification to your OPSAT. So, Thanks, Will. Show me. In the lobby of the Empire State Building, there are four brass rondelles, art deco pieces. Each rondelle... There's not a lot to explain in these first areas here. You just need to be stealthy. What? Like engineering? Financing? Real estate? Which, at this point, is something I think you guys can do pretty well. Elevators. Elevators like this one here. Huh. Okay, Julian. What's your point? My point is that every single day... Once they do move, you're going to move up straight ahead. If you move any towards the light on the left, the guard that is sitting at the desk at the other end of the hall, he will always notice you, so you've got to do it from this in between the couch and the table. Stairs are cheaper than elevators, Tom. Why don't we have stairs as the fourth discipline of skyscraper construction? No one is going to take the stairs up 70 stories. And does anyone ever question how much an elevator costs? We're going to OCP of this light. Not. Right. And I'll tell you why. Because the It's the only way to get to the next area without that guy seeing you. You can't go along the railing on that right side because he will see you get over to there. Now, he can do two different things. Either he can go left where we're going or he goes right. It's more preferably if he goes right, but it's really the same outcome. You just have to wait maybe about 10 seconds longer if he does come your way. For those of you that want to have some fun, you can actually follow that guy over to his treadmill, and you can OCP his treadmill, 
So that way he falls, and it's actually pretty hilarious. server and you'll make me the happiest girl in the world. You're easy to please. Access is a girl's best friend. Don't forget to become a member. It really helps us to create better and bigger videos for you guys so that we can continue to run this channel. Uh, this is our full-time job, so again, thank you for those of you out there that are members already. You guys are truly, truly helping me out. And my family. He's got the new Prince of Persia. Yeah, I heard it's awesome. Gonna be game of the year, man. Can't wait to play it. I'm pretty sure they're talking about Two Thrones. I think. Because when this came out, I believe Warrior Within was already out. Now watch out for this guy that's going up the stairs. He can do two different things. Either he could stay downstairs for a little while longer, or he can go upstairs. This thing's a little tricky, so depending on how long it took you to do that hack, this guy is already in place. As of right now, if, if you've done the same timing, you can go ahead and get to the door. But I was being very cautious, because at this point I was already playing it for two hours, and there was just tiny little mess-ups here and there that would happen. Because I'm going through this with no saves. Zero saves on this mission is a very, very tough thing to do, because anything can happen, especially when you're trying to go for a no perceivement. So, we're going to go ahead and wait for him to actually get up and then come back. So, I contemplated it a few different times, whether or not I should go, but then I was like, okay. And, of course, once he's passed, then you can go ahead and do the door. I can't wait to sniff around and displace this laundry basket. Uh... What? This laundry. Isn't supposed to work I like totally this. forgot. Don't worry about that. That's nothing that you can do about that. That is not seeing you. It's just that when you hack something, it goes from red to green, and it's an automatic... If anyone comes to that location, they will automatically hear or see that that has been hacked. But there's really nothing you can do about it. If you hack an item like that, it's going to turn red to green. Bingo. Bingo. Damn! It looks like someone has shunted the data we need off the server. Login name M. Nedich. Mylon Nedich? That name is coming up an awful lot, but we still don't have anything on him. Probably a pseudonym. I'll see if I can find out who he really is. In any case, we need to get access to his computer. His office should be on the upper floor somewhere. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but... I see it. Power's coming back on. I see it, Grim. You got company. You might want to... I see it. These guards can do okay. different things, so... All I can tell you is just be patient. Watch out for this camera here. And there's also a guard looking on the other end, so don't enter into the elevator until he turns around.
We're going to take immediate right, and then we're going to record a conversation. Now, the conversation is very bugged, so just zoom in and make sure you're as close to where you see me as possible. That way you'll actually get it, even though you really won't be able to hear the conversation too well. Reported 1300 tomorrow. Okay, I'll be there. Good grab, Fisher. Mylon Nedich's real name? Jesus. Milos Nowak. Milos Nowak? Who is he? The barber of Bosnia. Suspected war criminal from the Bosnian conflict. Allegedly scalped some of his prisoners. Wanted in The Hague? Yeah. Bet you dollars the dinars that he doesn't make it to trial. That's okay. I think my money's safer on the Nikkei. So we're at least halfway through the game at this point, which means that the hardest missions are still to come. Between Soul, Battery, and Bathhouse, those are some of the toughest missions in Splinter Cell. And with the challenges that I have created for these games, are going to make it even tougher. Now, that's going to be where the, we get to the point where I might not be able to do the No Perceivement Challenge. Especially in Bathhouse, because there's a few places that you walk across that there's no way not to be perceived, like towards the end of the mission and stuff like that, so it's going to be tough. Hokkaido. Hokkaido. Isn't that basically the Alaska of Japan? Yeah. Looks like Mylon Nedich has secretly relocated Zerkezi there. Interesting. Now we definitely need to talk to Shetland. Will its State Department handle that mess? You're going to Hokkaido. We're sending a helicopter to evac you from the roof. So all we have to do is watch out for the camera, and then we're going to go ahead and make it to the stairs. If you've done everything in my timing, this guy is going to be exactly where he is, and you should be able to get by. Three, four, eight, five. Don't be like me and enter it wrong. I did three, eight, four, five. But that's it, ladies and gents. Mission complete. Another fun mission to do in Splinter Cell Chaos Theory and to do it 100% ghost as much as we possibly could. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Let's check out our stats. Bonus objectives complete. Opportunity objective complete. And secondary objectives complete. As you can see, we've also done it with all zeros down the line. As happy as we are to be back online here in New York, our thoughts turn to our loved ones who are defending us on this beautiful 4th of July. We go now live to the Yellow Sea where sailors aboard the USS Clarence E. Walsh are celebrating. We have Seaman Anthony Palmiera from Brooklyn, New York. Tell us, Seaman Palmiera, how you'll be celebrating Independence Day. Well, the captain's going to have a, a big barbecue on deck. And tonight, we'll have our own fireworks. Talk to me! Captain, all of our command systems crashed. Nothing's responded. Seaman Palmiera, can you tell us what's happening there? Tight, Sam. I'll call you back. It's the Koreans, Mr. President. I recommend that we declare war immediately. 
If it was Korea, there would be 200,000 men coming over the DMZ right now. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe uh, an exercise. A, a test launch gone wrong. That's impossible. The Koreans can't even detect the Walsh. Never mind track it on radar and sink it with a 30-year-old Chinese anti-ship missile. I have reason to believe the ship was crippled with an information warfare attack. Not a chance. The Walsh's systems are... Unhackable? The Walsh's EW suite is built on kernels first identified by two of the world's leading computational theorists. One of them was found dead in Peru last week. I'm about to pick up the other one. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not sure what we've just witnessed here, but I'm afraid something terrible My has God. Just occurred. Amazing what they show on TV these days, huh, Sam? World's gone crazy. I guess you're in the right business then, Doug. What are you doing here? I'm looking for a guy named Milan Nedich. Heard he works for you. Lots of people work for me. Haven't you heard? First security company to make the Fortune 500. If you're looking for a job. I'm not. Is that so? If you keep doing what you're doing, you'll just end up another unknown soldier. I'm not in it for the fame. Your buddy Nedich is dirty. Cut him loose. Unlike other employers, I don't cut people loose. If you got evidence against one of my guys, I'll help you bring him in. But I'm not gonna send a man up the river because you say so. Fair enough. Just stay out of my way. Thanks for the advice. In case you change your mind. Fisher, if I can't throw the Joint Chiefs a bone, we'll be at war in the next 24. I need you to bring in Zerkezi for questioning. Mylon Nedich has moved him to Hokkaido for protection. I have no idea if Shetland is aware or involved, but I'd like to find out. However it turns out, don't let your personal concerns get in the way. In my opinion, there are too many coincidences here. Zerkezi is the only living person who could have orchestrated the sinking of the Walsh. Even if the Koreans did launch the missile, it would almost certainly have required Zerkezi's help to actually hit the ship. And this business with displays. I know you don't want to hear it, but I think Shetland's dirty. The kidnapping of Morganholt, the protection of Zerkezi, relocating him after the blackout, it stinks. Looks like Displace rented out the entire retreat. It's low-tech and quiet. Don't expect servers and security. Expect aware guards in tune with the environment. You're going to need to rely on more traditional methods, up close and personal. Japanese ISDF conducts a low-level monitoring of the activities of anyone employed by a PMC for as long as they are in the country. We discovered yesterday that this place has rented this retreat and a number of our agents printed microphones in the location. Unfortunately, we were not adequately prepared for the increased importance of the location. The microphones are detectable using standard tools. Needless to say, it would be best if this place did not find them. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistrain 01, your host, and welcome to the next mission for Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. 100% expert stealth, trying to do as many challenges as possible. Again, we're going to set things up that the game was never meant to be played like just so that we can add that added challenge. First up, we're going to be using the Assault Loadout, just like every other previous video, uh, to kind of just give us less gadgets to use, even though we're going to be using no gadgets at all. N next thing I want to say about this mission is you can go the whole way without actually knocking anyone out, except for the target that you have to kill. There's no other way around that. He is the only guy that we are going to kill, uh, but it is, it is a must-kill, and you have to do it. Other than that, uh, as we go along through the level, we will explain everything that has to happen. There's a lot of craziness going on in this level, so hopefully you guys enjoy. It's go time. Fisher, remember, I need you to bring in Zerkezi alive. What about Nedich? Nedich is another story. Isolate, simplify, complete. We're on the same page? Affirmative. Guys, don't forget to leave a like, share the video. It really helps the channel out, especially when it comes to stealth. Let's keep this community together and keep it going strong. So as soon as this guy turns around, we're going to move up. All I can tell you about this guy is he is the best guard in the entire Splinter Cell universe. Meaning that you will be seen for no reason sometimes here, and there's just going to have to be a time that you get it right and you're able to get by him. 
other than that, there's really not much that I can explain. This guy, I guess, has a glitch in the programming, and sometimes he'll see you even when he's not looking in your direction, and you just kind of have to restart and go with it. This is a pretty old game, and there is bound to be problems, when, especially when you're playing it on a newer system, so this is just something you're going to have to expect. But once you get by him, uh, you're pretty good for a little while. This guy, you want to be as quick as possible. As soon as he gets to the point where he wouldn't be able to see you anymore, you're going to move around to the right. You're going to wait just slightly so that he turns around right when you're passing his vision, and you should be able to get up and around without him actually noticing you. Now, you don't have to scan the license plates. I do it, but you don't have to. It's not going to give you anything, at least the two that I do. So be quiet around here as there is a guard looking pretty much right where you're at. We have an optional objective that we need to complete, which is to disable all of the microphones. The first one is going to be found up just ahead. As soon as we cross this vent. Now, this is another no perceiving walkthrough. And again, what that means is guards will not perceive me. They will never know that I'm actually there. They won't be weirded out by me. I will be leaving no traces or anything like that. As soon as that guy starts to look in that direction, go ahead and get the first microphone and immediately get against the wall. That's the first microphone, Sam. Five more to go. I'm on it. Get up against this uh, little bookshelf here. He will hit you if you're on the wall. You've got to be on the bookshelf. And then immediately go forward. There is a guy to our right that just passed. I don't know if you saw him. But if you're fast enough, you can get through both of those guys without them actually perceiving you whatsoever. If you've done everything in my timing, you're going to immediately go through here and you're going to get against the wall next to the door. This guy should Fisher, be coming through. Looks like this place has kept a small staff on to take care of the retreat. Civilians? That's right. Don't let any of them get killed. I won't. Once he comes through, we're going to enter into the next area. There is another mic that you're going to need to get that is right next to a phone. Most of the mics that you're going to get, you'll know because there's going to be like a little banner that you'll be able to get them from. However, there is one up ahead that will not be by a banner. It'll be the one after this. What does that mean? Where did you look? Um, like, uh, on the table and stuff. You looked on the table for microphones? Yeah. Gee, did you find any? Uh, no. Ah, never mind. I'll look for them myself. Okay. Well, let me know if you need any help. As soon as they're done talking, you're gonna move forward and you'll see right here. This is where the game wanted you to get the first one, and then it wanted you to go back yeah. At the end of the, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of the level, <clears throat> to get the second one. But since we knew where it was, you can actually pick it up a little early. I'm gonna climb through the vent here, and once we go around to the other side, we're gonna move up a few rooms. Make sure that you shut any doors. If you're trying the challenge that I am doing, then that's what you're gonna want to do. This part can be a little tricky, and there's actually. <sighs> I mean, I'm sure maybe there is a way to do it, but we just couldn't find it on stream whatsoever. We tried everything, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be OCPing the light lantern that is all the way on that uh, far right side that you see there. We tried everything we could to not do anything, but unfortunately, the way the guards were placed in my game just did not allow for a moment to get in to the next area without being seen. Now, you could have got through it and you would have only been perceived. But remember guys, we're going for a no perceivement. So this is the only perceivement you're going to see. And they really don't even react to what I do at all, as you'll see here. What was that? Just a what is that? No one comes for it. They go back and do everything like normal, and that's pretty much the only way I was able to figure out, but maybe there are other ways out there. But every game is different. Sometimes glitches happen, sometimes things happen to where it doesn't work out the way you want it to. But that is the only OCP that we are going to use in the entire video. This is where the mic is that you need to get. 
It is located on the phone, or should I say next to the phone. This one can be easily missed. Yes. That's half of Otomo's microphone, Sam. Yeah, I'll keep my eyes peeled for the rest. Make sure that you shut the door. If you do not shut this door, they will be alarmed by the fact that the door is open that they had shut. And obviously, we don't want that to happen. It changes enemy placements and things change. That's true. South Africans. Here you're going to be waiting a while, so just wait patiently for everything right, to kind of line up, and done. then we can move on with the he's next on section. Way, and he's not happy. What do you mean? He's on his way here? Our offices got turned over in New York, and he's worried about a leak. He's coming up here to tie up some. Oops. Sorry. Good one. They're only yen. Not worth anything since the market crash. Not even worth the effort to pick them up. A penny saved. The offices got hit. By who? The feds? Who cares about the offices? What's this tie-up loose ends thing? Not exactly sure, but this thing with the ship, maybe someone's onto us. But what if... Look, never mind all that. The boss is on his way and things are heating up. We knew that would happen, so just stick to the plan, get this place tightened up, and make sure that this little visit goes off without a hitch. Get moving! So, we have one guard that we have to watch out for. That guard is going to be coming into the room very slightly, and then he is going to leave. He is going to do a few different things before he completely leaves. So you do need to wait just slightly before you start to distract the guy. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the okay. whistle. I don't normally like to Got use it. the whistle, but the only other method is to grab him through the cover no. sheet, and that causes the game world to be changed, and we don't want that. No. So I'm going to whistle that? here that's going to bring him out and then I can grab him. Otherwise, you would have had to grab him through that little cover, and that causes uh, uh, a rip in the cover, and obviously, this is no traces. Shh. Let's not make a scene. Who are you? What do you want? I want to know why you're protecting Zerkezi. How Displace is involved. I won't talk. You're going to make me cut your throat and look for the words inside your neck. Oh, God! Please, let me go. You're not leaving here alive, Nedich. But if you tell me what I want to know, I can make the end a little easier for you. The blockout. We we needed to keep Zerkezi safe after the blockout. And what about the Walsh? I don't know anything about the Walsh. You'll have to ask Shetland. Shetland? Yeah. He, he needed more data from Zerkezi after the blackouts. But we have everything. We... Shetland knows what you're up to. Yeah, yeah. He's the boss. He gave the order to bring Zerkezi here. Where is he now? He's on his way here now by helicopter. That's Nidich out of the picture, but we have a complication. There's a helicopter inbound. Shetland is aboard. Doug, why is he coming here? Either he was coming to see what Nedich is up to, or our assumptions are wrong. You still think Shetland's crooked? I still don't know, and that's what bothers me. Find out what Shetland and Zerkezi are meeting about. So you can just leave the body where I left it. No one will find it, and you should be good to go. We're going to wait for him to come out. Once he does, we're going to move to the left, and then through the room, and into the vent. However, you need to be as far to the left as you can when going up against this next guard, as sometimes he will see you, even though he's turned around and he doesn't actually see you. But if you get close enough, it can just automatically happen. So stay to the left here and be very, very quiet, and you should be fine. Now, the, probably the hardest section is coming right up here. All I can say about this is it's going to take you a few times to get it with no uh, perceivements, and it's not easy to do whatsoever. Very challenging. This part, however, is pretty easy. We're just going to wait and find out where the guy is. Once you see him, let him go a little past, and then we're going to go ahead and climb this pipe. Guys, don't forget to leave a like. Make sure you leave a like. It really helps the channel out. Comment below what's your favorite Splinter Cell. And what is your favorite Splinter Cell Chaos Theory mission? I would love to know those in the comments below. So once we move past here, there's going to be two more mics that we can get. 
Don't make a left, actually make a right. Straight ahead to the left here is going to be your first one. And then immediately to the right and then to the left into the room where the guy is watching the TV will be the next one. And that means there's only one left. So here's the section that can give you a lot of trouble. The reason is because you cannot see this guard and you have no idea where he is. So my suggestion is to either save or wait a few seconds. Try, you can kind of see his foot pass by. So if you have good vision, hopefully you'll be able to see it. That way you know when you can move on because they can see through that door. And once he goes past, then you can go through. This next section is really, really tough. Timing is crucial. The only reason we're making it so much more tougher is because we're shutting the doors. And this right here, if we open the door and don't shut it, and you're not worried about being perceived or the door being open, then it's fine. But as soon as he turns around, run to the door and open it. Quickly shut it. You're going to do a roll into the corner as fast as you can. If you do it fast enough, he will not see you and he will not be perceived by the door. That's the last microphone, Fisher. Otomo will be happy. Otomo doesn't seem like the happy type. Ah, it's just the old samurai Zan Shin. He's really nice in person. Mm. I've heard people say the same thing about Lambert. What does that mean? Lambert's nice. How many of his ex-wives have you spoken to? I can't tell you how difficult it was just to get in that room and grab that without that guard seeing. Just because if you leave the door open, then you're creating a distraction. If you don't leave the door open, it's very, very tough to close it in enough time to actually get through without him seeing you. In this channel, we add so much more challenge than what is normal, and I think that just... It, it, it allows me to be able to play these games multiple times because every single time I come back, I give it something else. I put something else into it and make it tougher. Here, you can easily get by this guy. And then we're going to move on to uh, the final section of the level. Again, shutting all doors behind us. You still can be heard here, so do not run. Just casually walk in here, and then we're going to go into the vent. Now what you're going to do is you're going to want to Fisher, stay up on the roof. Shows you're nearing some kind of tea house. Zerkazy's inside. That's our best guess. Gather as much info as you can before making your move. We might only get one shot at this. We're going to stay up on the roof. Yes. Uh, until the guy looks at us what? or turns around. Once he does, then we're going to make our way down. He couldn't have. And then we're going to get in this corner. The truth. The truth. Make sure you're in the complete corner here so that you have as little light on you as possible. truth is what we need it to be. And the truth is, we did the right thing. What do you mean? Proof of concept worked. It was ugly, sure, but it's over now. You mean, you mean there will be peace? Well, peace isn't something that just happens, eh? It has to be enforced, just like in the old days, you know. Sheriff wears a shield, sure, but he also wears a gun. Gun? That's right. Oh my god. And we can't have that gun falling into the wrong hands, can we now, Abe? What? What are you... No! My god, Fisher! Don't let Shetland escape! Is he a target? He's the target! Alright, so if you've done what I did, then he should not perceive you whatsoever. That can be really tricky to, to, uh, to get around, so... We're going to open this door. Now, he is going to perceive this door being open. That is only because we cannot shut it. You literally cannot shut this door once you have opened it. So, unfortunately, that just has to happen. It's, there's no other way around it. So he will see the door open, so you're going to hear him say, I didn't leave this open, or something similar to that effect. It should be open. Right there. There's nothing you can do about that. It's just, it's, that's it. So, it's scripted. Once you get a little bit closer, the helicopter is going to raise up and go past you. Stay along the side of the wall. There's a guard looking in this direction, and the helicopter can see you. 
complete the rest of the mission. I'll see if we can track him. Stay in between these two. There's another guard straight ahead and to the left. He can see you sometimes as you're coming That's out of that area. That's all your primary objectives, Fisher. We can extract you at any time. All right. So all I can say is that you probably won't get it on your first time. If you do, awesome. Most of the time, it's not going to happen. Sometimes you're going to be seen by that guy. And if you did not grab the first mic, then you're going to have to go back in and get the first mic and then come back out. But we grabbed them all. Once you get in here, go up against the cover and then move along. If you don't, the guy on that side right there will see you. And then you can freely make your way towards the beginning of the level. Now, this guy, again, the literal... And we're not kidding when we say this. The best guard in any splinter cell. Um, very, very tough to get around him. However, I'm going to make him look pretty stupid right here. I was only trying this just to see if it would work. We were trying like 10 different times to get by him the normal way, which is going down in the same way we came up. But this way actually works. I only tried it once and it worked. My assumption is it would work every time just because I think it's scripted that the guard turns to the left. So if you can get up behind him, get against the wall, inch your way. As soon as he turns around, then we can move down. And as long as you're not moving too fast, you won't make any noise. As you can see, the noise meter is about 35% up, or maybe 40%. And as you can see, we can make it and get through. And so, ladies and gents, that is Mission Hokkaido in Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Expert 100%. Stealth. All I can say about that mission is it was a little frustrating a few times. Sometimes guards would see you even when they're not actually looking in your direction. And again, it could be a glitch in the game. I mean, it's an older game, obviously. 2005 and we're playing it on a new PC. Uh, but there you go. 17 minutes, 7 seconds. We have completed Hokkaido. Today, Ambassador Long Dan announced Chinese support for the North Korean claim that they did not intentionally launch the missile that sank the Walsh. We are monitoring these developments while continuing to seek a peaceful resolution. Make no mistake, the Chinese People's Republic will employ all means at our disposal to protect our interests in the Asian subcontinent. Our intelligence estimates that the current number of Korean troops massed at the border runs as high as 200,000 men. Monty? Montgomery Lewis, The Times. Do we know what the possible North Korean strategy will be if diplomatic efforts fail? We've known for decades that the NKA would move to capture Seoul as quickly as possible, regardless of the cost. That is how our defenses are structured. But with the capital less than 40 miles from the border, and well within artillery range of the big guns, it is clear that war would be catastrophic in terms of damage done and lives lost. Fisher, I know you think the shortest distance to solving this problem is to go after Shetland. You might be right. Unfortunately, the diplomatic situation surrounding the Walsh incident is not softening. We are less than 24 hours from open war on the Korean Peninsula. We've located the battery that launched the missile against the Walsh. If there is any credence to the North Korean claim that the launch was unintentional, we need to prove it. And fast. I've been reverse engineering the data you recovered from Zerkezi's computer in New York. Zerkezi's algorithm is an advanced extrapolation of the mass kernels made infinitely more complex by recursion through Dvorak. I think that if you can access the BIOS memory of the missile launchers at the battery, I should be able to ID a fingerprint that the algorithm would have left on the system. You'll be doing a halo insertion into a forest two clicks east of the battery. You'll enter the battery's secure perimeter and infiltrate via the main air shaft. The battery itself has been around since World War II, but intelligence and satellite imaging show it's been retrofitted several times since then. We have some limited mapping data. We don't know what you'll find. Since the destruction of the Walsh, the USS Ronald Reagan has assumed C&C duties for the battle group in the Yellow Sea. Our fleet is on red alert. In case of war, we are prepared to conduct precision sorties against high-value targets aimed at reducing North Korean coastal defenses for insertion behind their advancing front. If intelligence indicates that the Koreans are picking a fight, then it's a fight they'll get. Anyone in that battery, when the whistle blows, better find himself a tin hat and a Bible. 
Japanese ISDF has been instrumental in determining that the missile that sank the wars was indeed fired from this battery. You have the complete support of all branches of the Japanese self-defense force in order to determine the rationale for this insane move by the Korean aggressors. We do not have the capability to strike the facility directly, but ISDF will use any means at our disposal to interfere with their capabilities in the event that our great American allies are forced to declare war. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistrino One, your host, and welcome back to more Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. This is Battery. This is our 100% stealth walkthrough, and we're going to be doing this no knockouts. We're going to go ahead and get right into this. We're going to be using the assault loadout because I want to make it as challenging as possible. Fisher, it's starting to look like war is unavoidable. JCOS is asking all sources for current division level intelligence. So, besides stopping World War III, is there anything else I can do for you this evening? The base commander should have up-to-date intel about NKA divisional strength down the Kaesong Moonsan approach. I'll try to schedule an appointment with the secretary. We'd like to add a few extra Fisher, challenges to the mission as well. Since everyone is asking everyone for intel, I'd love to have a few chips at the big table. What can I get you, Will? Looks like this battery has repair and maintenance capability for mechanized warfare support. Any shipping or repair logs you can recover would be a big help. I'll find what I can. He saw me slowly look, kind of look up before I left that little exit there in the vent because there is a guard that sometimes will be there. It is random. There's a lot of RNG in this level that we're going to get to once we come to those specific points. This guy, if he is there, sometimes he won't be, but if he is, uh, you can get by him just by staying to the right side of the room as much as possible, and he will not see you. Uh, but you do need to, uh, to be quick before he starts to get up. Uh, we need to complete our side objective here, which is going to be to grab these. You can do them using your binoculars. You don't actually have to go in the room, but you have to make sure you click on the right one as there is a few different ones. Good work, Fisher. Looks like they track shipping and repair through four separate departments. Gotta love military bureaucracy. See if you can get the logs from the other three. Now serving number 67. Don't forget to leave a like. Let's see if we can get to 300 likes on this video. It will just give me the motivation to keep going because these missions are going to start to get really, really tough and take a lot of time uh, to complete. Check out the live stream if you don't believe it. It is very, very difficult to do, especially towards the end because of the RNG. So it just ended up where the guy was over on the other side, which is perfect for us. There's a camera as well. It was looking in the opposite direction, which is why we were able to pretty easily scoot onto the right side. However, if things are different for you, wait until you get to that exact way the enemies are situated, then you should be able to get through without uh, a problem. Same thing here, we're going to use our binoculars and aim it right at a small part of the computer. Do not aim at the actual monitor. You have to aim below, as there are different ones that you can get, but only one of them will actually scan the data information that we need. Don't worry about this guy if he is here, as he will not be able to, uh, to do anything because you are still perfectly hidden. Remember, even if that meter goes up even slightly, you will be seen if someone is looking in that direction, even if it doesn't make any sense. So just keep that in mind when you're going through some of these, is you need that meter down to zero if you want to get by without being seen. All right, well, that's our work done. Let the control room take over. Who's in the control room? How should I know? So what? We're just going to leave the missile hanging there? Orders. Deliver cargo to Loading Bay at Facility 27-290. Nothing in there about working a bunch of cranes that we're not trained on. Fair enough. As soon as he says fair enough, wait about two seconds and then get up and move back. Uh, you saw me have a little trouble on the ladder because sometimes you won't get the climbing animation for you to actually be able to climb. There's, which I prefer that there is no contextual climbing buttons in this. Um, there are contextual buttons, of course, uh, but not in the sense of some newer games where, like when you're trying to sneak up on someone, let's like say in Hitman 3, uh, the subdue button is the same button as some other things, and it can be very tough if it doesn't appear above their head. However, it's the same in this game, but I think it's a lot better. It's, it's better done in this older style game. So we're going to wait till he turns around, and then we're going to move the conveyor belt up there at the top. It's going to allow us to be able to move on to the next section. This is going to be a mission where we have to use our uh, OCP. Uh, there's really no way around it, as there is a camera here. You need to use your OCP to take it out 
because the only way to get through to this section, and I looked, there is no other way to get to this other side except for this right here. You have to. So use the OCP there to get the cameras um, to kind of divert its eyes so you can sneak by. Don't stop, continue to go. There's a few moments where you won't have perfect stealth here. So you need to make sure you're, you're at Ari at this point before this guy up here turns around. The next thing we're gonna do is because the guy that's sitting in the chair, he will see you in the red lights. We don't want that to happen. Remember, this is again, it's a no perceivement walkthrough unless we have created that um, reason for the perceivement, unless it's purpose. So we're gonna use uh, this diversion again. This is gonna get the guy in the chair to look in the other direction. And you also did it before the other guy walked past the camera. So he is no longer looking this way. They're both looking in the direction of the camera, which is the opposite way, which allows us to get through without worrying about being truly seen. This is scripted that every time you get about to this point, that guy's going to come out there. If you've done, if once you drop down, it's kind of like how these older games run. Uh, they only run at certain points. Once you get close enough to a specific area, then that will start to trigger them in the mission. So we're going to climb this uh, vent here. The reason we're coming over here is only for one thing, and that is a side objective. Now, if you've watched my previous walkthrough on this game, you'll notice that I actually took out the general. You don't need to take out the general in order to complete the mission. So it's not, uh, you know, detriment to anything that you're doing here. You can still get 100% without doing it. Therefore, we are not going to do it. We're only going to grab the specific uh, secondary objective that we need. Now, once you're up here, this is going to be a script of where as soon as you go down and you open this crate, a guy is going to be coming through the door. So you need to be quick so that he doesn't see the crate open. Or you can wait until you think he goes by. But you can't see him unless you go out. So that's why I think it's better to go out now, close it quickly, and then get up against here. Otherwise, he will see the crate open and you'll ruin the whole illusion of what we're doing. Which is the whole purpose of my walkthroughs, is to create the illusion of true stealth. Sir, we, we have finished our preliminary inspection of the West Launcher. And what is your report, Captain? We did every test we could, sir. And? And, well, there was no malfunction, sir. One no thing you'll notice here is that the guards will be in different Curious. places depending on there if you've a done a, a save or a checkpoint. Um, it will always change. It will never be the Good same. Good work, Sam. One more shipping log to go, and we'll have an accurate picture of their mechanized capabilities in the region. I'll find it. But as long as you find a way to get around it, like I did, then you should be fine. Well, Captain, the only two people in this building who could authorize that launch without approval are you and I. I know I did not do it, so if it wasn't a malfunction, I want you to run every test again. Then run whatever test the captain can run until you find out what the hell happened with my missile. Ha. Yes, sir. Get out of my sight. That seals it. The missile came from here, but they didn't launch it intentionally. So that's a good thing. We can avoid a war. Problem is that someone launched the missile intentionally. Isn't that someone Doug Shetland using Sir Casey's algorithms? That seems likely, but I still need to see if there's a Dvorak fingerprint on the BIOS of the launcher that fired the missile. Alright, so we're going to repeat our steps here. We're going to uh, hit this panel here to go down in the elevator and go back down through the vent. And then we're going to head to the other side. Uh, there are two sides to this back level here. It's not a very big mission, but you've got to go kind of back and forth between each section. So it takes a little bit of time to get back and forth. And again, the, the biggest thing that I can tell you is save, save, save. Don't try to be like me and go long periods of time without saving. It'll just add to a lot of frustration when enemies um, are not always doing what you think they're going to do. So here, for me, the guard was going in the other direction, but he might not be going in the other direction for you. It just depends on the time you come over here. So. These are actual cameras that you need to take out. Now you need to be careful here as sometimes this guy will be looking in this direction and he can see you. So that's why we waited just for a split second. And then we're going to move on to the first 
big missile. There are no guards in this area right here, not until you get down here and then you look outside. Now, as far as outside goes, um, the first thing you need to go, do is go down into the, the mission control room that's underneath the missile. They, one guard is going to be doing exactly the same thing over and over, and that is he's going to be working on the panel you need to get to. There's going to be another one of uh, Redding's uh, missions that you need to do here, or uh, one of his little side objectives, I think it was. Um, so a good thing for you to do would be to save just about right here because you never know what's going to be happening in this room. It just so happens that when we came through here, the guy was going in the other direction, so we can easily get up behind here and grab the secondary objective. Good job, Sam. From the parts and transport requests, Whistle here. it looks like this facility is significantly more important than our latest Making estimates. Well, you know me. Always where the action is. So the reason I whistled and uh, I've decided that to use the whistle is, is pretty much you have to because the guy never leaves the, his workstation. The one who is sitting right there where I'm at right now, he never leaves. No matter how right. long you wait, no matter what you do. Casing. You can access the motherboard on the launcher itself and recover any routing data from the BIOS. So therefore, using that distraction actually gets him up oh, yeah. and uh, none's the wiser. So for those types of distractions, it's okay for us to use them. I'm, le I'm allowing myself to do it because otherwise he'll just stay there and we'd have to knock him out. And since we're doing a no knockout run through of this entire game, even though you can't do it technically, but for every mission that you can, uh, we're, we're being careful. As you can see, we almost got caught here because he decided to turn around. He had stepped up on this thing. Obviously, it was an animation glitch or whatever. Uh, so we don't want to take any chances. So we went ahead and just went back to here. So wait until he moves. He's going to do two different things. Either he's going to go to the right, like he's doing now, or he's going to go behind him and to the right. Either way, you should have enough time, and you should be okay to go up here to this computer and do what you got to do. Good work, Sam. I'm scanning the BIOS now. Yeah, that's a Dvorak fingerprint. Where did it come from? The Kaido? The displaced offices? Seoul. What? As in South Korea? Are you telling me the U.S. just got drawn into a war protecting the people that sank the Walsh? I can't trace it back farther than Seoul. Well, what do I do? Sweet Jesus, Fisher. The NKA just committed. They're coming across the DMZ. We're at war. Why? We just found proof they didn't launch the missile. Good Lord, speaking of missile launches, that battery just lit up like a smoker getting off an airplane. They're not targeting our ships, are they? Active radar is up. It looks like a launch is imminent. Fisher, you need to abort that missile. You got it, boss. You saw what I just I did there. Thinking, you can do it. Don't be afraid. They're just going to throw protocol to the wind and leave the warhead case unlocked. Even detonating them won't destroy the battery. No, but it will make an awful big mess. So uh, as long as he's sitting in that sitting position at the actual missile, then you'll be able to go right up to it and do what you got to do, as long as you follow the path that I do. Wait till this guy goes around you, and then we're going to head over to the other side. This is where we started after we climbed that long pipe. And now we're going to go to the right side. A lot of uh, the things that you hear now are going to be pretty much scripted as far as what you're going to hear. So we're going to do the same thing that we did on the other side to this camera. is because we need to do this one as well, just like we did the other missile. Uh, there's a guy coming over. Sometimes he won't be doing that. It just depends on where he is. It'll always, it'll be different every single time. So don't ever expect any of these guards to always be in the same place that you see them for me, okay? I just want to make Good work, that Mr. clear. I'm uploading the army sequence codes for Grim. Lambert, if worse comes to worst, and I'm still here. You don't even need to say it, Sam. So this is the this was the trickiest part because this guard would sometimes just not move. Uh, he is scripted and he is programmed to move, but sometimes that script would not work. It's an old game; it happens when it's running on new hardware. Black hell! You're too late. The warhead won't arm until it's a few hundred meters from its target. If I can dig up the abort codes. Good thinking. Check launch control directly under the platform. I'm on my way. That's Make exactly fast, what you sure. want to happen. Flight time on that missile is three minutes. Good work, Sam. Those are the abort codes. I still need to bypass the override circuit from the missile control room. Hurry. The missile is closing on the USS Ronald Reagan at top speed. Uh, hold on. 
Did you just tell me I need to win one for the Gipper? Uh, dude, what does that even mean? Uh, never mind. You're right, Grim. I am old. So, all I can tell you is watch the live stream to see that this took an hour to do. Right here. What you're seeing right here took an hour to, to get the right one. Because RNG, this guy sometimes will take way too long right here. Other times will take too long sitting down at the other location. And you never know which one you're going to get. So you just got to be patient. Uh, what makes it hard is because you have a, a, a time limit. And in that time limit, it makes it super, super tough to do what you got to do. So as you can see, if he doesn't move in a certain amount of time, you're going to have to do different things, as you can see. If he doesn't, for me, if he doesn't move by 2 minutes and 31 seconds for what I was doing, we figured out that that was when we needed to go ahead and make our own plan and move. Because if you didn't, then it just created uh, a, a completely different thing that just didn't end up, um, you know, being correct. But hopefully everything will end up being correct for you and you'll be able to figure out how to do it. I think once you've done it a few times, it, it'll get under your belt and then you'll realize that, okay, you can figure it out. Okay. Same thing here. We're going to take out the camera. Sometimes the camera won't see you if you go right directly underneath it, but you don't want to take out, you don't want to take that chance. And I don't think Sam would. Now, your biggest thing is you want to try to be here with at least a minute and 50 seconds left around. And you want to wait there, make sure that that guy is not looking in any direction before you open that door. Because if you go through the door and he's looking, it's, it, it screws everything up. Now, this guy can also screw things up because sometimes he takes a very, very long time. One time I went through this and he never left. He stood right there the entire time for like a minute and 40 seconds. And he just would not leave, which means we couldn't get to the objective. Because if he is there, we can't get to it. So you have to just hope that the game is cooper cooperating with you uh, well enough so that he eventually stands back up, stops what, he's, what he is doing, and then he turns around. That's the only way you're going to be able to do this. Now, there was one time that I did it. It was like it... Uh, I, I still had like a minute and 50 seconds on it. So it's just... You just never know what you're going to get. You never know what is going to happen. you got to think on your feet. Good job, Sam. Missile aborted. That's it? It's dust? No, but the warhead can't arm. Even if it gets past the Reagan's phalanx, it'll hit the hull and crumple like a beer can. Crumpling beer cans? That's what sailors are best at, I guess. Very funny. You need to make your way to extraction. Right. I'm on my way. Now, this guy is going to be in different locations. Sometimes he's going to be all the way down at the other end. Other times he's going to be down here. I mean, you just... Because of the checkpoint and everything like that. Uh, now, if you can get it on a first run, maybe it'll always be the same, but it's very difficult to get any of these missions here on a first run because of just the way that this game is, is structured. But that's going to be it. I mean, we've, we've, we've done it. We've reached past everything. Make sure no guards are out here looking. You're good to go. Right here is the exit. The sun to victory. But I just can't, I can't tell you how stressful that was, but I can show you. Make sure you check out the live stream if you want to see just how brutal it was to get through just the last two minutes of the level. That's how crazy it is. But let's check out our statistics and see how we did. 16, 59, 100% stealth, zeros down the board. That's exactly what we wanted. Initial estimates place the combined casualty count for the first 24 hours at, oh my god, 6,000? Is this a typo? 90% or more of those are enemy casualties. Estimates put our losses at less than 1,000 men. Less than 1,000? You say that like it's a good thing. Sir, it's paranoia. Our saber rattling has their leadership in a panic. It's a preemptive strike. Our own intelligence indicates that they didn't launch that missile intentionally. And until we can prove it, Seoul is on the block. What are our military options for holding the city? No reasonable strategic assessment has ever claimed it was possible without nuclear capability. And if that's the way it has to be... 38 hours ago, the NKA committed to open war on the Korean Peninsula. We've known for 50 years that their objective would be to capture Seoul within 72 hours. It appears they have a real shot at it. South Korean and U.S. forces are using orchestrated retrogrades to channel individual NKA divisions along discrete corridors. Six hours ago, the first of those divisions reached Seoul 
and is seeking to capture critical infrastructure. High on their list is a telecommunications switching station north of the city. Unfortunately, the IW attack that sank the Walsh came through this switching station. If the NKA gets their hands on that information, they'll be able to justify their invasion and possibly force the world to allow them to hold the country. We need to get that information before they do. The information warfare attacks that launched the missile that sank the Walsh came through Seoul. I wasn't able to trace them back any further than the switching station, and I don't even know for sure that they didn't originate there. It's entirely possible that South Korea has manipulated us into war by forcing the North to attack the U.S. I would just try and hack my way in, but this is a fat, secure data pipe, and damage caused by the fighting has already isolated most of the entry ports. You need to get in there and recover the data manually, then broadcast it out point to point so we can take a closer look. CIA maintains several safe houses in Seoul to facilitate insertion of agents and recovery of possible defectors. Usually, they're set up to look like ordinary residences. I'm currently working out a plan to have you forward inserted into one of these safe houses before 2ID performs another major retrograde. Once you're in, our boys will retreat, and the NKA front will overrun and bypass your location, leaving you in the wake of the main force, but still in advance of the support troops. You'll have a small zone of comfort, and I would strongly advise you not to stray from your AO. You don't want to encounter a battalion-sized force. The USS Ronald Reagan is ready to launch an EA-6B Prowler rigged with a point-to-point -point laser receiver rig. Your man will be given a special transmitter that will track the plane and transmit the data. This comm setup is 100% secure. Nothing is broadcast, so nothing can be intercepted. Never mind decrypted. Once your man is in position, we'll send in the plane and get the data. But this is still a highly risky operation. Whatever you're promising me better be worth it. These planes are worth $60 million, you know. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to more Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory Stealth Walkthrough. This is the sole mission, and we're going to start with the assault loadout. Welcome to the three-block war, Fisher. The main advance has bypassed your position. It expects sporadic fighting among units separated from the main force. Whose side am I on here? Your own. You're not a legal combatant. Anyone who sees you will attack on sight, friend or foe. Listen, there aren't any alarms to worry about, but anyone you encounter will probably already be alert. I'll be careful. Fisher, critical update. I have other assets on the ground not far from your position. Another splinter cell? Splinter cells in training. They're on a black bag op. Their target was just relocated by NKA special forces. So I need to bring in the target? No. You need to interrogate one of those special forces to find out where they took him. Okay. Don't kill them before you talk to them or I'll pull you out. Yeah. So of course this is going to be a stealthy mission, making it as challenging as possible. However, in this mission you will have to take out one enemy guard, and that's going to be this guy right here. You're going to need to knock him out because you will need to interrogate him. Uh, or else the mission will not be able to continue. So because of that we will have one knockout on the screen at the end of the mission. So it's pretty easy to grab him. Make sure you get against this wall here. He's going to turn and then he'll go the other direction. Grab him when he goes the other direction. Then we have to wait a little bit as uh, the interrogation will play out and then we'll continue on from there. Don't forget to leave a like right now. Helps the channel out. Stay quiet you might live. Shut up. Lambert, I've got one. Good job, Fisher. I'm going to patch you through direct. Hold on. Stay calm. This will just take a sec. Okay. All right, Fisher. Go ahead. I've got someone who wants to talk to you. Roger. Ask him where they took John. Where did you take John? I... I don't know what you're talking about. He's not answering. Should I kill him? Negative, negative. All right. They say I should kill you, so... Wait! Okay! John, we moved him to a cyber cafe just off the fish market by the river. Is that what you needed to know, guys? Uh, affirmative. Thanks a lot, sir. We owe you one. Welcome to the team. You want to tell me what's going on, Lambert? Sorry, Fisher, but you're getting too old for this kind of work. Stop listening to Grim. If you go by her definition of old, you'd need to issue diapers with every set of goggles. If I listen to you much longer, it'll be adult undergarments. That was cool. All right, so first of our optional objective that is in this first portion, there are two portions of the level. First one here is to grab this propaganda. We need to do a total of three of them. Good thinking, Fisher. 
Shut down those propaganda broadcasts, and our boys will be in better spirits. Our boys? I'm just doing it because it's annoying. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and move on from here. Again, that's the only guard you need to take out. The rest are going to be uh, able to be bypassed. However, the first part of this entire level isn't that difficult. The second part is very, very RNG heavy, so we're definitely going to get into a lot of challenge once we get later ahead. Sam, a Predator drone just spotted a mobile command center in the area up ahead. See if you can tap it for intelligence. You don't want me to take it out? No. We could have done that with the Predator. So immediately, as soon as you get down here, you're going to want to wait. It just depends on if this guy is here or not. He could be not there in yours, depending on if you followed exactly what I'm doing. You cannot go above this little thing until he is out of the way and going in the other direction. We're going to grab the second of the propaganda, and the third one is also in this level right before we get to the next section. There are only three of the optional objectives in this first part, and then there is, of course, some optional objectives that we have to do in the second part of the mission as well. This can change. Uh, sometimes this can take a long time, and sometimes this can not take long at all. Um, you'll see here coming up. So what's going to happen here is pretty much this guy is supposed to be headed out of the truck. For whatever reason, Sometimes he will take a long time to get out of the truck. Sometimes he will take a short time to get out of the truck. You don't really know which one is going to be. It does change things because it means that some of the guards are in different locations than they would be. The one preferably is if he comes out sooner. Um, the one you don't want is the one here because this means that you have to worry about another guard, two guards seeing you, whereas normally they wouldn't see you because you'd have already been past this point. The other thing is, depending on what he does, if he actually does what he's supposed to do, it changes things a lot. Good job, Sam. With an inside line on the NKA's command network, we should be able to funnel useful intelligence to the regs. Always happy to lend a hand. So if you see him actually working right there and doing what looks like he actually has a task, that means you cannot move. If you see him just standing there and he's not moving whatsoever, you can go ahead and move the same route that you're going to see me do. But because he was doing his thing, it means that we had to wait. So what this means is that the other guard is going to be in that specific area up ahead, so we're going to have to wait even longer. Again, this is all RNG based, and it won't always end up being the one that you get, so you just kind of have to think on your feet when you're playing Splinter Cell a little bit, or else it might not work out for you. But if you stick to the left here, go up the stairs, there's a door you can enter. However, we're not going to do that because we need to grab the third propaganda, which is going to be down here and to the left. Climb the ladder and then grab that. I bet you a lot of people missed out on this the first time they played it because they didn't know that there was a side route. Last of their propaganda stations in this area. Thank God. I'm starting to lose my mind. Fisher. Those are the main servers for the National Data Trunk. Every bit of data that moves through here gets tagged in transit. It's smaller than I thought. And getting smaller every year. Listen, you need to recover the main drive so I can see if the attack that launched the missile came from somewhere else first. Good. Now get that drive up to the roof and we'll transmit it to the EA-6B. Why can't you just read it from here? It'll take too long to guarantee a secure link. And if the DPRK intercepts it... Then this mission is a waste of time. Good idea. As you see, you need to stand back here so that you don't get caught in the explosion. Now, I do believe I remember it is possible to get up a little further, but it is hit and miss, and sometimes you'll die and sometimes you won't, so it's best just to stay back here and wait for them two to go by, and then you can go ahead and keep moving on. Here, all we need to do is pretty simple. We're going to be climbing up here. We're going to get against the wall, and we're going to wait for the guy to go past us. Remember that he does have a flashlight that he lights up as soon as he starts leaving. So your best bet is to get up against this area right here. If you move yourself just far enough forward, his flashlight will not hit you once he turns it on. Then you can make your way uh, towards the next area. 
However, do not go to the elevator as there are going to be guards coming out from it. You need to go into here, hide for just a few seconds until the guy passes. Wait until he's completely passed. Then you need to sneak your way into the elevator and the rest should be good to go until we get to the second part of the mission. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the video. Again, don't forget to leave a like. Thank you to the Patreons that make it possible and the members that make it possible for me to be able to make these videos. Again, soon I'm going to have actual credits with Patreons and members' names showed up on all of my videos from now on. Uh, I'm still in the process of making that. And once I do, then you're going to get hopefully the credit and recognition for the hard work um, that you guys or for you guys helping me uh, to be able to keep doing this is what I love to do. And I'm just so proud and honored to be able to after you know 11 years or 10 years however long we've been going 11 years now that I'm still able to make these videos for all of you and, and bring some type of entertainment next next stop top floor once I transmit the data I'm on to extraction that's the plan if we can confirm the LZ is safe we'll extract you directly from the rooftop and if it's not safe. Lambert, I'm in position. This is Begin transmission now. All right, so the second part of the mission, like I said, is the toughest uh, because we have, you know, wall mines, we have the um, a, um, UAVs, the drones. Now, we're going to challenge ourselves, and the biggest challenge that we're going to do is by not taking out any of the drones. That is going to be the goal for the second part of our mission. However, we are still going to need to use the OCP. That is not going to be a goal is to have no OCP. you got to use the OCP. There's really no way to get around without using the OCP. Trust me, I've tried. You just can't do it. In some situations, as soon as you enter an area, you're automatically just seen. So you have to use the OCP in order to be able to do it. However, there will still be no perceived um, events in this, so there's going to be no chances where Sam is getting seen or perceived by anyone. However, you will get perceived with the OCP, but Sam himself will not get perceived. And that is a word that we've used already like five or six times in a matter of like ten seconds. That's the last time I'll say that. So we're going to move on to the next area. You can easily do that by getting around that guy. This is our second encounter with the drone. The first one was at the very beginning, but you didn't really notice him because, excuse me, you don't really have to actually go up against him. But here, the drone um, will come along your way. You do need to be quick. There is no time to mess around. Quickly get over to the other side and get over here. If not, you will be seen by the, dro uh, the drone. Use your uh, scan here. Sam, we have RF confirmation that there are only two P3Rs left in your area. As you can see, you can get by the drone pretty easily. You don't have to worry too much about it if you're a little quick. And here you just want to be careful because sometimes you can take damage when you're trying to fall. So just 
slow your movements. You got no rush. There's a couple of guys talking down below. One of the funniest guys is down below. I want to make sure you guys hear what he has to say. Because this guy, he's a mama's boy. I found out what that beeping sound was. Is it? Is it a dud? I don't know. Check it. You check it. Okay. It's one of the things I love about this game is just the awesome commentary. It's so bad, it's good. Uh, the I want my mommy is such an infamous line. It's it, To me, it's equivalent to uh, uh, Agent 47 uh, having to go to the bathroom, you know? It's one of those kind of lines that just is, is so awesome. Use your EEV or whatever you want to call it here, your ops ad thingy. Scan uh, the computer. Whoa, good grab, Sam. Looks like the complete technical specifications on North Korean UAVs. So what, we can just switch them all off now? Huh, <laughs> no. But we can pass it up the chain and inside of a few months find ways to disable them. Well, that's not much help to me then, is it? Of course, and that's an easy, missable thing right there. So with this, uh, we're going to start getting into the point where there's a lot of RNG. And for those of you that don't know what RNG is, and, and I, I know most of you probably do that are watching, but for those of you that are not familiar with my channel, familiar with stealth games or gaming in general, RNG is when uh, things, ha things have no rhyme or reason. It's random based. It's just, it's like something happens that you can't predict or you don't know that's going to happen. It changes every time. And these sections here have a lot of that RNG type of moments here as soon as we get up here. We're going into the street level and sometimes guards can see you and we just shoot you automatically. So it's a very RNG heavy AO. type of level. Great. So once we get over this here, you're going to want to definitely save first off. And there's going to be a wall mine up ahead so you need to be careful. The best way to get around the wall mine is to have your weapon out and then you can move forward. If you do this, the wall mine will not blow up in your face. And you want to wait until this guy on the right side is going to go back into the area. You have a very short amount of time and it doesn't always end up being this way. Sometimes it can take longer, sometimes it can take shorter. This is one of those random elements that you have to just think on your feet. That's what that classic RNG is. Once he's moved forward, make sure that no one's looking back, and then move forward. Immediately, get up against the boxes just to make sure. As you can see, we barely made that. He's not looking in our direction, which means he didn't see us. He's not shooting at us, so we are good to go. Now we can uh, continue on. Now the next section is even tougher because you have a tank to worry about. This tank will see you during specific moments, and those moments are when the tank is actually angled down to where you are. You'll see here. Sometimes the tank can even hit you from across here. So you have to be careful because this is, again, one of those moments that you're going to restart over and over again until you get the one time you're able to do it. But if you time everything right, you're going to go over here to the back side. Now, there's a guy on the left side. You can't see him right now, but he's there. So you want to wait if you're going to go to the left side. You can also go to the right. You can take out that light and you're going to get shot most of the time. So wait till you see him. Once you see him, give him a few seconds. Hopefully, he will move forward like he does for me. Now, you want to wait until uh, that thing is not focused on you whatsoever and stay as much to the left as possible. If done correctly, he won't see you and the tank itself will see you. So there's a guy shooting in the tank and there's also the, the tank's weapon. They're both different. One will just aim randomly, the other is actually a person. So it's not like the person sees you, then the tank sees you. It's, they're both independently and can see you at the same time or different times. One more P3R to go, Fisher. I'm fine. The last one of these is going to be in the final area right before you start to save the two downed pilots. This is the section you're going to have to use a lot of OCP to get by. It's one of those where you can't really walk out without being seen. So save here, of course. And take out that. Again, they're going to perceive the light. However, they're not perceiving you. Again, I tried many times to see if you can do this without taking the lights out, but you really can't, especially since we're not taking the drone out. All 
going to shoot this one as well. Then we're going to get underneath this tent, and we're going to stay under there until it comes back on. You see that light right there? That's actually the drone kind of moving around. The drone is what makes it really, really tough, and another guy right here. So you see exactly where I'm at. That's exactly where you want to be. Don't move any more up, or else guards will be able to see you, and then you'll obviously have to start over. So once it's back up, shoot it. Again, they perceive the light, not you. And then make your way around. Remember your noise meter? You can move a little faster because there's a little bit of noise in the area. At this point, if you've done everything the way that I have, you should be able to run up, get to this location here on the left, and then you should be able to get past the drone. And then up ahead is the final section of this level, which is, some would say, probably the toughest. But I would actually consider that the toughest part of the level was what we just went through earlier with that first tank. That was probably, because you can just die so many times over and over again in a short period of time. Here, it's tough, but I have a way that, that, that should uh, be able to help you get around. So, you're going to see the tank, right? Here, you should be good to go. For whatever reason, the tank will never see you when you come across this the first time. I don't know why, but it never shoots at me. It never does anything. I'm always able to go right across if I don't look at it. It's not until I actually look at it, that's when the tank starts to become deadly. So first off, grab the final um, laptop. Way to go, Sam. With those P3Rs out of commission, it'll be a lot safer to extract you. Wow, you mean you're actually planning to get me out of here alive one day? The plane is too badly damaged to recover the data. You need to fall back and designate the target for an airstrike. Use the structure down the street for your platform. Let me get the pilots to safety first. We don't have a lot of time, Sam. An NKA recovery team is en route. Are you ordering me to leave these guys here and call in an airstrike? I'm telling you what the objective is. Trust you to complete it. Have your orders. Bishop, if you compromise this mission for those men... Save it, Irving. You gave me my orders already. So the biggest thing to remember here is the tank and where the gun is looking. If the gun is facing in any up direction, it will not see you. I repeat, if the gun is up, it will not see you. It's when the gun is looking straight at you or down. You see how it's going up, over, down, whatever. When it's like there, it'll see you. However, again, when it's up, it won't see you, but then you have the light to worry about as well. So you got to kind of find the best routes. you got to mix it both, okay? So it's going to the other side. As you can see, it's up. When it went over to the other side, it was completely up, which is why we were able to get by. All right, Fisher. Good job. You should be safe from the blast here. Designate the wreckage with your EEV from the roof. This section here, again, it's random based, but most of the time you're not going to be seen. You can just move forward as soon as it's black. You can run a little bit. The next time you come through and you get the other guard, uh, the other guy, um, there is going to be a guard that comes over and this Sam, makes an area a little tougher. To the... No point in rescuing one and leaving the other. And that's why I always admired about Sam, is Lambert's just doing his job. He knows what it is, but Sam cares about every life, and that's something that I've always admired about Sam. And uh, at least when I play him, but remember, the whole point of Sam is is to to you be who you exist, are, Fisher. and this is who I am. I'm the guy that saves this. the people. Metals don't help me sleep at night, Lambert. You don't have to; it won't uh, affect anything. But it's a great thing to do. It just makes you feel all gooey inside. So wait till that thing is down. Go all the way to the right here. There is a there is a guy. You'll see him, which is why we were sticking on the far side and came all the way over here. Now at this point, you're going to want to stand up. Standing up allows you to move faster, and you still don't make any noise when you have a body in your hand. So if you want to make this, you need to go immediately. It doesn't even matter if that uh, thing is going to see you or not, because you can actually make it. If you're standing up. However, if you're not standing up, it's going to be significantly tougher. All right, the pilots are safe. Take out that plane. With pleasure. Here, you're going to need to do some more OCP loving. Take out this one, and then move up. Again, no procedures by sand, only by the, uh, the top of this structure. All right. Once you get up here, you do need to be careful because uh, they can see you from up here still. So what you're going to do is, as soon as you get here, OCP the light, come up, 
do the call for extraction, and then immediately go back down where they won't be able to see All it. right, Fisher, you have an F-117 inbound. Stand by. Roger, target is bait. Hello there, paper boy. This is Postman. We have your glare. Stay on target. Affirmative, Postman. And there you go, paper boy. Package is in the mail. Visual on the package, Postman. Have a better one. Postman in. There you have it, ladies and gents. Soul is complete. Again, very, very tough and difficult. If you want to see how all of this was done, I highly recommend you check out the live stream and you can watch it done in its entirety, all the misses and everything. So 2156, one enemy knockout because we had to to interrogate. Other than that, there you go. The What do you mean the attack came from Japan? They're our allies. Mr. President. These attacks represent the most sophisticated application of information warfare ever imagined. The missile launch came through Japan, yes, but it seems likely it was triggered by elements of a private security operation, Displace International. Displace? That's Doug Shetland's outfit. We have contracts with them. Who's Shetland? Former Marine Recon, among the very best. He was one of my top candidates for third echelon a few years ago. No love loss for the military or the United States. Rumor is that we hung him out to dry for political reasons over an incident that wasn't his fault. We can only speculate as to what his agenda is. Well, how do we defuse the situation until we know? Maybe the Chinese can help. Gotcha. <laughs> Echelon tracked down Doug Shetland in Tokyo six hours ago. He's mobile and he's wireless. And from what we've managed to decrypt, it looks like he's about to wrap up his business with whoever his Japanese contacts are. From what we've managed to pick out of the air, it looks like he and his men are about to converge on a bathhouse in the middle of the city. We need to find out who Shetland is meeting with and do everything we can to prevent him from closing his deal. Clearly, the attack that crippled the Walsh and forced launched the missile from the battery went through Seoul, but it originated in Japan. Shetland has something to do with it, and my line into the displaced servers shows that he's definitely profiteering on this war. In order to shut down his operation and prevent any further escalation, we need to ID his business partners and make sure they don't leave there with any more of Zerkezi's weaponized algorithms. Fisher. The bathhouse where this meeting is going down is a semi-public place. There will be civilians in there, and probably a boatload of goons. Shetland's men seem to be popping up all around Tokyo in the last hour or so, and converging simultaneously on the location. Frances Cohen has been in Asia for the last few months, and she's found some ties between the bathhouse ownership and a Japanese criminal organization known as the Red Nishin. It's possible that they are Shetland's partners. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistrano, I'm your host. Welcome back to more Splinter Cell Chaos Theory with the toughest mission in the game by far. This is called Bathhouse. We're going to be going with Redding's recommendation because we're going to need some smoke grenades and we're going to need some um, sticky cameras. So without further ado, don't forget to leave a like for the toughest mission and we're doing no knockouts, adding as much challenge as possible. It is go time. Fisher, I just got a request from Francis Cohen. What does she need? She's been trying to get a man inside the bathhouse for a long time to keep tabs on the Red Nishin. She wants to know if you can tap the phone lines in and around the building. Francis? Of course I can. You can move as soon as you see that guy actually look the other direction. Good work, Fisher. That's the first phone line. 
See if you can tap into the rest. So make sure you do not move until you see him turn and talk to the other guy. Here we're going to go ahead and OCP the light. There is another stealthier route that you can take. However, you still really have to OCP this light. So it doesn't matter which one you do. This one's a little bit quicker. That way we can get through this a little bit easier because the toughest part is more ahead. Uh, otherwise, we'd be taking a long route around the top of the buildings, which is still stealthy, but it takes a lot longer and it's the same outcome. Here we're going to go ahead and use our weapon. We're going to equip it, which will allow us to walk through this water without making any noise. If you do not have equip it, even if you're going as slow as possible, it doesn't matter. You will still make noise and you will not be able to get through that without them kind of perceiving you. Just a you. reminder, Sam. You'll have some civilians in the bathhouse. Do not, I repeat, do not kill any of them. I'll be careful. Be more than careful. Be Gandhi. Yes, sir. Here, uh, there's enough distraction and sound that you can actually go by this guy, still moving at a relatively fair pace. Just stay a little bit away from him. What we're going to do is use a whistle here. Normally, you can go ahead and OCP the fan. However, I disagree with this method as it puts him looking straight at you, and at least on the PC version, it's not a great idea to have him looking straight at you. So go ahead and whistle here. Those guys don't look Japanese to me. Yeah, expensive suits cut wide in the shoulders. They're packing for sure. Exactly. I make them for displays, trying to keep a low profile. Makes sense. Doug knows how to stay discreet when it's necessary. And we can go ahead and move on. Fisher, in order to figure out who Shetlin is meeting with, you'll need to head up into the private offices. Ooh. Check upstairs to the north of your position and past reception. On my way. So there's a few different things that you can do here. You can go to the left or you can go to the right. We're going to go to the right. I found that this is a safer strat to do. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot more darkness over here and we can get to the same objective and we can actually get to it faster than we would if we would go left. Don't worry about him. Uh, if everything is where it should be, uh, those guys will be going around, get against the wall and you're good to go. Everyone is looking away, and you can go ahead and enter the room. The room, as soon as you open the door, you're still completely in the dark. So you're good to go as soon as you enter, but you need to enter the vent as quickly as possible because there is a guy behind you who's going to be opening that door. If done so correctly, then you do not have to worry about going to the left side, which can cause some problems because you don't have a lot of darkness to move around in. And since we're going no perceivement, again, uh, it makes it quite a lot more difficult to pull any of these things off. The upstairs are your might be some red nation guys up in the private rooms, but I didn't disturb them. How about the front? It's tight. A truck is blocking the alley, and I sent the guys unloading it. We only have one chance to do this, meaning that we have one that we can actually use, as you'll see. So you have to kind of think on your feet, one on your 167.20, and you got to kind of figure it out where it is. You don't get a lot of chances. Well, don't forget to expense that. Yeah, no kidding. Make sure you deactivate the camera there, so that way you can climb up the stairs. I think there is an alternate route that I used in my previous walkthrough that you can go outside, but I think this is probably the safer bet. So wait till you hear him come past. We're not using EAV vision, that's why we're not uh, showing where they are. Or thermal. Thermals will let you know exactly where they are. We're not using those visions, we're making it as tough as possible. He just went up the stairs. You have to really pay attention to the sound so that way you know what's going on. Stay to his left so he doesn't hear you. As soon as we get up these stairs, we're going to go ahead and get against the wall. I know it doesn't make any sense because of the shadow there that they would not see you, but they don't. Whatever reason, you're still complete darkness right there. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially since that guy coming from the opposite side. Now, there's multiple ways you can do this room right here. Um, one being is you can go into that room and wait for the other guy to kind of do his path and then you can go past him from there or you can follow directly behind the guy. Now because this is a video game and RNG is a thing of this game, they will do different things. Never expect them to do the same exact thing. So you'll notice here, um, the guy is going to be going down, this guy is going to be going this way. Sometimes the guy who went downstairs can come right back up and if he does, like right here, you'll clearly notice that it's not, um, it, could, it can be different. Sometimes he won't come back up. If he doesn't come back up, then you can immediately follow the guy who just left. Otherwise, we're going to stay here. So I'm giving you two options. If, he does, if that guy does not immediately come right back up from once he left, then this is what you want to do. If he doesn't come up, then follow behind him, get to the right side at the end of the hallway, and you can get around him and then continue on. 
Here we have to wait for this guy to come back, so it takes a little bit longer because at this point we can already actually be at the door and using the code. So the code is 3650. You can get this by interrogating the guy inside the room on the right. However, we've played this game so many times we don't need to do that and we don't want to take anyone out. You can also hack the keypad. Hacking the keypad does unfortunately cause a distraction and you don't want that, right? So we want things to be kosher. So 3650 will get that door open and none's the wiser. Got it. Shetland's meeting in the private baths in the back of the bathhouse in a little while. Who's he meeting? Red Nishin from the looks of it. Cohen was right. The bathhouse owner is pretty high up in the Japanese mob. Fisher, those two aren't displaced. They're ISDF assault troops. What is ISDF doing here? Maybe the Red Nishin has sold Shetland out to the ISDF. Eavesdrop on that meeting and figure out what's going on before ISDF blows this up. How are we going to stop them? I'll get on the horn with Admiral Otomo and make sure we're all on the same page. Listen, we're not using our optic cable and we're not using thermal. So if you listen, you can hear the footsteps of when this guy is moving away. That is when you want to move. And if you are fast enough, you can get to here and you can open up this door and close it before he turns around. We're going to be exiting through the window. There's a guy sleeping here, so you don't want to move too fast. As you can see, there's any sound in this room will uh, catch him. Should be able to jump out, head down here. Now, the other thing you have to worry about is this guy goes back and forth. I don't know where he's going to be on your playthrough. This guy can be in different places as well. He's He can be all over the place. If you want to check out the different outcomes of where he could be or where anyone else could be during these videos and live, check out the live streams that I do for this specific mission. As you'll clearly see that when you restart checkpoints and you do things like that, Enemy behaviors and movements, they change. They're completely different. You never get the same one that just goes exactly the way that you think it's going to. That's what makes this one of the better stealth games. Because when a game, when you know what's going to happen next, then it becomes less fun. But you're always surprised by here. So it just so happens that we need to wait right here for just a little bit. There's going to be a guide coming through. This might not be the case for you. It just depends on when you're going through. If you've changed anything in the timing, it could be different. This guy's going to be coming through here, and then there's going to be a civilian coming in on the left. You need to immediately, do not waste any time, immediately exit as soon as you have an open space to do so when this guy turns to the right. When doing so, you'll have just enough time to enter or, or the next area before the door closes. And then you can get in here and move to the right side. As you can see, they're both going in that direction, which gives us time to go right in. Don't rush, because if you run just a little, you're going to screw yourself up. So here, uh, you've got to OCP this light, or you could do a whistle, I mean, or you could just go by and he'll slightly see you. It doesn't matter, but since we're doing no perceivements on Sam himself, we're going to go and OCP the light. Otherwise, you have to do something with that guy. I mean, you just, you just have to. There's no other way to get around without him at least seeing a little bit of you or creating some type of distraction. This next room is tough, but not so tough. It's the little hallway in between that can change things up dramatically. So here we're going to go ahead and move forward. We're going to head down into the pool. You don't have to head down to the pool. You can go to the right side and then go up the catwalk there and then climb to the other side if you want to as well. But we're going to go ahead and switch this off, not pierce. This is going to cause a distraction on these guys. Sometimes they'll do different things. Sometimes that other guy will go to the left instead of the right. Sometimes he'll do what he's doing here. Either way, should give you enough time to go in, get up over here, immediately head to the left, and get your second box. Your second tap. Now, the next room can be very tough. Way to go, Sam. Cohen says there's one more phone line she'd like you to tap. Wait till he's done? Sometimes there's a guy not in here sweeping. Sometimes there's a guy in here sweeping. It's so random, and it'll change every time you restart checkpoints. You never know which ones are going to be. However, in mine, he was always there, and he never was not. So I had to come up with a strategy to get around this guy without knocking him out. So, split jump into an OCP. Stay up here. Notice how he stays, and he'll stay here almost the entire time. Um as long as you stay up. But if you were to drop down too quick, he immediately will come back the other direction and then you have to go back into a split jump again. So I don't recommend doing that. I recommend staying up for just a little bit until he moves forward. 
Then you want to get up against this back area here and make sure you are against the corner so he doesn't see you when he goes by. This also changes the room when it comes to when the smoke or the steam comes out. If the guy is not in the room, the steam will come out early. And when the steam comes out early, you're able to move quicker through this room. However, when the guy is there, and you have to do all of this maneuvering to get around, the steam will take a lot longer to come out. And because of that, you have to think a little bit on your feet. These guys are going to be almost done talking before the steam will even come. So that means we need to... You don't really need to do a split jump or anything. I just do it because it's cool. Um, but the guard's going to come back over to this area. You need to wait until it's fully steamed up. And then once it's fully steamed up, then you can freely enter the room and then follow the route that I do, and you should be fine without them seeing you. But do also keep an eye out on the civilian guy. Make sure he's not uh, checking you out as well. Again, this guy doesn't come in the room, so you could stay against the wall and be all right. Give it a few seconds. As you can see, the bright, bright light tells you that that steam is there. Once that is full like that, that means it's time to move forward. So at this point, you can go ahead and move forward and no one's going to see you. And again, if you want to learn how I do all these strategies, check out the live streams. Make sure you click the notification down below. Uh, and also make sure you click the bell icon to say you want to be notified every single time we're live or a video comes out. Helps the channel. Here, uh, you can pretty much immediately go in. I think uh, either way, you're going to be safe no matter where he is. We're going to use this valve and we're going to turn it. This is going to turn the steam on. It's not very, very important that you do depending on where he is in the room. But as you can see, if you don't get to this point before he turns around, then that steam, then then um, he's going to see you without the steam, right? So that's why you turn the steam on. Now you can obviously turn this uh, turret on or off. It's up to you, but as long as you stay away from it, go behind it, and then make sure it's on the other side when you go around the room. You notice that he's right there, but he will not be able to see you at this point. Uh, you're far enough away, and plus he moves to the other direction, so you're good to go. Once this turret's on the other side, we can go ahead and move forward and head on to uh, the more difficult part coming up. We need to grab the final tap. Once we do that, we're going to be very, very quick and move through this area, do exactly what I do, and hopefully save as well here. Hopefully you should be good to go and do doing what I do. It's very tricky, though. That's the last phone line, Fisher. Cohen sends her thanks. Tell her it was my pleasure. There's going to be a guy here. You don't want to, obviously, let him hear you. Get up against this wall here. He's going to go past you. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting for quite a while for this room. Here, you're going to want to go ahead and wait. Don't go around too much. You don't want to be seen by this guy here. Get up against the wall as soon as possible, and then wait here. He's going to pass. You're going to move to the exact opposite side of the room and get up against the wall. He will do different things, so I can definitely tell you there's a little bit of luck in everything you're doing here. And then we can enter inside once he goes back in that direction. Yes, sir. Be quick about it. The meeting will start soon. I'm on it. This room, fairly easy. He will not see you when you're down here, even if you're in a little bit of light, as you can see. Jump up here. You remember, you got to jump a little early before you think, or else you'll just hit your head. Go all the way up, follow him, but go to his right, and then get up against the wall. I tried to do a split jump in this room, but you can't do that, because that would have been pretty cool, too. He's going to turn to his left. Again, that's why this works, because he turns to his left and we're on his right side. Now, go up, quickly get the objective. You can get the objective in two different spots, here or when you move up later on when you're going through the level after the little light flickers on and off. Also, save, do a hard save here just in case you are seen uh, in the vent. ISDF is in the building. Are they making their move? Get back immediately. A guy will see you in here, even if he doesn't show that he sees you, and then it'll screw everything up at the end for your rating. Wait a minute. Just wait here and let everything play out at this point. We have a hard save in case we need to come back to this point if we don't get 100% because of the glitch. But if you do it this way, you should be good. If not, then you can get the computer later on in the level. Jesus, Lambert. SDF isn't here to take Shetland down. They're meeting with him. They're his partners. My God. Stay there. We need to hear the details before we go to the Joint Chiefs with this. So bring them? 
We're not going to follow you across Tokyo. Relax, Kaneda. I'll just download them and turn you a disc. Ha! Huh. You take me for a fool. You are not stupid enough to download them over a public network. What are you up to? I said relax. You're right. I'm not that stupid. My men just finished setting up a shadow net. Completely secure wires, discreet from the web. Now sit. We'll have your algorithms in about four minutes. Call it! Lambert. Let it go, Fisher. We know the truth. We'll pick up the pieces after the dust settles. David Kaneda, I've seen it before. You're defending your honor to cover up your lies. Should I check the account, or should we start shooting and see who walks out of here? Kaneda! That's so... Immediately when you can go back, start heading back and you're going to save right before you get to the vent. We're switching the fallback. The chopper's on its way. Good. Secure this area. No one comes through. Yes, sir. Fisher? Kill Shetland. I know. Good thinking, Fisher. Looks like Shetland is using Mukasey's infinite return code to run genetic algorithms that allow him to remotely organize his men. Why? Wow. <laughs> Wait for that explosion and then leave. Don't rush right there, you still could be seen. Here we're going to move up. There's going to be a flashing light on and off. This is also where you can get the computer too if you didn't want to get it earlier, if you just wanted to wait behind in the vent. Wait till that is flashing off, then go. If you go to the right, right, or left right there, you'll see that that's where the computer is. Here you gotta go slow, there's a um, wall mine. We're gonna get out our smoke grenades. This is really the only way you're gonna get past this room uh, without taking anyone out or them seeing you. Remember they have night vision thermals, so they're gonna see you almost every single time. So throw your smoke grenade about right there. It'll land, it'll give you enough cover. Wait for it to uh, kind of disperse a little bit. Then you can move forward. So this next section is tough to talk to. We're going to be placing a lot of sticky cameras, a total of three. Place them in the exact spots you see me do. Go slow here. There's another remote mine. Um, if you do so, it's a very, very lucky. So you're going to want to save after you've done the first one. All right? This is pointless, Sam. You won't know what to do if you catch me. Why bother chasing? My God, Fisher. Shetland has rigged the place to blow. There are bombs hidden in the furnace room. You'll have to find them all and fast. So we're going to place three sticky cameras. One on this side. One directly below where we are right now. And one on the far side to take care of the final guy in the area before we leave. Now, we're not using these sticky cameras to gas. We're using these sticky cameras to distract. Otherwise, there's no other way that you're going to get around these guys without being seen. It's literally impossible. You, you can't do it. Because of their thermal visions, there's nowhere you can hide in this level that they don't see you. If, if they have any direct sight on you at all, even if you've got zero meter, that's it. It's done. It's over. They're just going to immediately kill you. So once you um, deactivate this first bomb, immediately save afterwards, and then do not save again. Repeat, do not save again. It will change things, and then then you'll have to adapt from that change, and you don't want to do that, whereas you would rather adapt from here. So the first guy is going to be coming up, so you want to go ahead and switch over to your cameras. Go to the one that's on the bottom. Wait till he gets a little close, and then use it. Use the noise. You can only use the noises so often, so you've got to really time when to use a noise and when not. He's coming down, so you want to stay back enough to where he doesn't see you. If it's out of sight, out of mind. If you're in his vicinity, and even if you're in the complete dark, he will shoot and, and take you out. It does not matter. Here, for safety measures, and this is how it worked for me, it might not work for you, I'm going to throw a smoke grenade into this corner over here. This is going to slow down the guys just enough for us to be able to get through the rest of it which can just be ridiculously tough, and I know all of you that have completed it, your masters, this is one of those levels that is just crazy. You've made yourself the instrument of a policy you won't believe in, Sam. Walk away. 
The trick here with the sticky cameras is to try to line them up the best you can so that they go as far away from where you're going as possible. And it is a very tricky thing to do. See? You got one guy up there. Actually, they're all pretty much right up there. So, we did it just at the right time that all three of them, I think, are going to head uh, the other direction. But look, there's one guy that's coming in that direction. So you need to do this again with the other one here that we place on this side. As you can see, it can be very tough, but as long as you've got all three of their distractions, it will give you enough time to get over here without them hearing you or seeing you. We still have one more to go, though. Blood is thicker than water, and you and I have blood a lot together. You're trading your honor for their agenda. This is a tough jump. Very, very tough. But you have to make this jump or it won't work. you got to get over here quickly. Immediately go down and go back into stealth. Go slow. Don't go past your meter. Or try to. It's very tough to do, though. Get your thing out. Switch to the third one so that it gets his attention. If done correctly, you can get by the other guys, he will move forward, and you are 100% good to go. Congratulations, you just completed the toughest mission in all of Splinter Cell. This mission makes Kalina Tech look like a picnic. Doesn't have to end like this, Sam. No, but it does have to end. On that, we agree. We've been fighting their dirty little wars our entire lives, and where do we end up? Staring at each other down the barrels of our guns. Nothing has changed, Bishop. And it won't change by degrees. We have to tear it down and start over. It's the only way. Your own little chaos theory. Throw the world into war and hope that what comes out the other side is better. It will be better. Because this war will change things, Sam. Every other war has been about keeping things the same, but the status quo doesn't work anymore. America's sick, Sam. She's dying. The politicians, the bureaucrats, the whispered backroom deals. It's all life support for a sick old lady who was dead a long time ago. The only backroom deals that I've seen lately were made by you. You're a murderer and a war criminal. Those are the only names the state has for the revolutionary, Sam. You only become a hero after the war is over. You know the truth. The world is built from the bottom up, not the other way around. Honor, courage, fidelity. We don't inherit these things from the world, Sam. We build the world from them. I know you. You believe in these things more than any government. And I know that because of it, you wouldn't shoot an old friend. You're right, Doug. I wouldn't shoot an old friend. There you go, ladies and gents. All objectives completed is plus the bonus objectives. And we got 100%, 23 minutes, 35 seconds. Events today jeopardized diplomatic efforts when North Korean armor encountered a so-called self-healing minefield while attempting to withdraw from the area. North Korean forces were adequately cautioned that self-healing minefields along the DMZ should not be considered cleared obstacles. We're back at the brink of war, and now we find out it is the Japanese? The Japanese are allies. I don't care if they're the Christmas elves. They sank the Walsh. We don't know that their government was involved. We know Admiral Otomo was involved, and we know where the gentleman is. We have to go in now, immediately. The fact is, we don't know how far the conspiracy goes. If Otomo's actions are sanctioned by the Japanese government, then the only solution is military. But, if he's acting alone... Your man again? He's already in position. Send him in. The State Department has lost contact with all of the U.S. officers who work at the Kokubo Social with the Japanese Self-Defense Force. It looks like the SDF have taken them prisoner, and they're refusing to answer our calls. In typical fashion, 
the Japanese are circling their wagons. Either they're afraid to admit they've lost control of Otomo, or they're actually sanctioning him. If that's the case, we'll have to come clean with North Korea, which will spark a massive war in Asia. If not, we need to find out what our officers know, and figure out what to do about Otomo before North Korea finds out what's going on. Sam, even if the Japanese government is not sanctioning him, Otomo still clearly has the capacity to strike. If he's still in control of the information arm of the SDF, you'll need to deal with him very carefully. There's no telling what kind of havoc he could unleash. Last contact we had with any U.S. personnel in the Kokubo Sosho was a fragment of a phone call from Major Harper, a logistics advisor to GSDF. From the sounds of the call, the room he was in was raided by Japanese troops and he was taken prisoner. It doesn't sound like anyone has been killed, and if there's any hope of maintaining peaceful relations with the Japanese, you're going to have to keep it that way. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome to the final mission for Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. We're going to be going in with the assault loadout. Thank you so much for watching. I can't stress Go time. this enough. If one Japanese soldier dies, we risk World War III. Any fatalities and I abort the mission immediately. I understand. Locate our officers and find out what the hell is going on there. I'll find them. So, after the previous mission, which is Bathhouse, this mission is pretty much a cakewalk. There's just a few sections that can kind of confuse you a little bit, but under the gnats, it really is a way simpler mission to be able to get through nice and stealthy. And you can, of course, do it without knocking anyone out. So first things first, we're going to open the door. There are two different locations you can come through here. There's also a camera there, so what you want to make sure you do is stay away from the camera. So when I pass this little section right here, there's another door right there straight ahead. That is where you can go through to get to the same place we're going to be going here in just a minute. However, there's a faster and better location that you can do here. However, it can be a little trickier because there's one jump that you have to do with a guy who's kind of like mopping the floor. If you don't want to have to worry about that guy, then I definitely recommend going the other direction. However, you have to use more distractions. Uh, you have to take out a light. You have to go through the bathroom, and that just causes you to wait a significant amount of time. And if you don't want to have to do that, you want to get in and get out as quickly as possible, then this is going to be your best method for actual infiltration. You can come up here, and there's going to be a little thing that you can jump on, and you're going to be right above the floor that you would come out of where the bathroom is. So this takes off a significant amount of time to get you where you need to go. So once we jump up here, you're going to see there's a guy mopping the floor. There's also a guard on the left side who's turned his back to you. What you want to do is you need to time this right, and you need to wait. It can be a little hard to see, obviously, because uh, Sam's kind of head can get in the way a little bit. So once this guy turns around, you still need to wait a few seconds before you move forward. Make sure you land softly, because you're going to get just when he's not looking, and you can sneak right by him. Otherwise, that might take you a few times, so you know, try to save right before there, and you should be good to go. Also, uh, to make a note, is I've turned the volume down significantly in the game, unless someone is actually speaking, because my live stream got copyrighted completely, and I want to try to prevent that from happening. It still can get copyrighted, so I can't stress enough. If you want to support the channel, to make sure to uh, either uh, leave a donation in the link below that you see in the description, or become a Patreon or a member, so we can continue to do this. Uh, this is pretty much what we do for a living, so it really helps the channel out when those of you that are able to step in and uh, help the channel. With that being said, as you can see, we're pulling up right in front of the two guys that we need to talk to. Uh, we came from a different location in our last walkthrough back in 2012, which was actually coming from like a great behind that area over there. Uh, so this is a completely different new method. You don't have to climb the thing on the outside and distract with the lights and stuff. You can come right in here and do what you need to do uh, rather quickly. So we're going to talk to him for a little bit, and then we'll continue on. Hey, you, you're American. Maybe, but I'm not here to rescue you. That's okay. We're not really hostages anyway. What's going on? Not too sure. SDF rounded up all the U.S. personnel and locked us up. We saw some generals and ministers being brought in earlier. Where did they go? Into the war room in the sub-level. <laughs> the doors to the lower levels are sealed. Captain was just up here looking for combat ready volunteers to go down there. Maybe the doors are open now. Perfect timing. Somebody will come for you later. Sam, we need to record everything that happens in that meeting so we can present it to the Joint Chiefs. It would speed things up if you'd let me remove some of the threats. Forget it, Fisher. Until we know who the enemy is, there is no enemy. No enemy means no kills. Deal with it. 
So once Lambert is done talking, we're going to head back the same way we came, except this time we're going to be moving to the left. And we're going to be coming out on this above floor, which is above where we would have come in if we would have went the other way. And we're going to head over the railing. If you do this correctly, um, you should be able to make it down easily without being spotted. Just make sure that you kind of angle yourself a little to the right so you're not directly in front of that guard right there. You should be able to drop down. You won't make any noise. And we're right in front of the door we need to get into. Here, we're just going to wait until he actually turns around. Once he does, we can head inside. And then we're going to be on that little escalator kind of thing where it's just like rolling downhill. All you want to do is make sure that you stay in the dark places and keep moving up. You can't get on that center section. I tried. It wouldn't let me jump over to it. So just keep going down. Try to stay up uh, in a specific dark location and wait for them to pass. If you do get knocked out, they will Fisher, interrogate you. From the looks of it, these guards are LTL equipped. Less than lethal. Why? There's only one reason I can think of that they'd issue them to combat troops. They'll want to interrogate anyone they catch. Well, I'm not the talkative type. As you can see, the simple matter of just continually walking forward, back up it, and you'll stay right here, and you won't have to worry about those little sections of lights. Wait till they're done talking. Uh, once they're done, the guy's going to start heading up this way, and then you can make your way down. If you want to see what it is to be interrogated, I recommend saving here and then just getting caught. That way you can kind of see what it's like when Sam gets interrogated. Uh, he goes through a cinema and it's pretty cool to escape. But obviously that's not the method that we're doing. If you want to see that method, you can check it out in the live stream because we showed it off. However, there's no sound for it. So this section can be actually pretty tough. I recommend you save here. And then there's a camera there, so you want to stick to the left. This guy's going to turn around pretty quick. So if you're fast enough, you can come over to here. Get against the wall because you're in total darkness. He's going to immediately turn back around and come this way. So as you'll see, there's not enough time to get down the stairs. We tried. Unless you moved just slightly earlier when you were coming down the stairs the first time. Or the, that long path of stairs. We're going to go to this corner. So their paths are like this. They're going to come together. This guy, I, it's either this guy or the other guy, is going to come down the stairs. I think it's this guy. He's going to come down here. And he's going to stand there for a few seconds. Once he turns around and starts heading back up the stairs, wait just a second to make sure the other guy is not looking. Then we're going to head over to the eye scanner. Now, normally in Splinter Cell, you would have to knock out one of these, not knock out, but you have to grab one of these guys and use him for the eye scanner. But you don't actually have to here. You can hack it. So because you can hack it, you don't get any chances to make a mistake. So it's very tough, happens very quickly, and you just got to be on the ball to picking this one. Probably the hardest hack in the game. Once we make this corner here, you're going to see the uh, door to the right. That is where you would come out if you were interrogated, so we don't need to go in there. We have another hack that we could do here. Uh, this one you get two chances. So I missed both of them, so I had to think on my feet here and find the right one. But they're not too difficult to find, and you can do it. I barely made it, though. It was back around. Now it should update and tell you that you need to record the, meet the meeting room in the war room. So we're going to go back out where we came and go back up those little stairs. And this time we're going to head to the right of where that guard was. Now the trick part about this is these two can make it very tough to do what you need to do. So come over here to this corner. Sometimes their animations can get stuck. You're going to be waiting here a little bit. Maybe this is not exactly where the guards are when you play. Remember, if you've done everything to my timing, it's where they're going to be. But if you've been slightly off... For any reason, they could be in different locations, and you might be able to go quicker. So this guy's going to be coming around, and that guy's going to be in the opposite direction. They're going to meet. This is what they normally do. However, sometimes they will stick in an animation, and you can see that on my live stream, and they'll just stay there, not move. If that happens to you, don't fret. Just OCP the light that is in front of them. And then you should be good to go. The one that's up there, right there. Or the camera. Just OCP that camera right there. And then you're good to go. Otherwise, you're going to wait till him to come by. And you're going to follow him as closely as you can. Immediately when you enter the door, head to the right. Because the other guard will see you if you try to go forward. Fisher, GPS shows you're nearing the war room. Intelligence says it's a tempest hardened cube. The only way you'll be able to record what's going on in there is to find some way inside. Tempest hardening might keep out electronic intruders, but I'm betting the room isn't airtight. Probably not. 
You need to take this camera out. It's looking right where you're going. This is a very tricky part to get out of. The camera also doesn't last very long as far as being OCP'd, so you need to get up here rather quick. And then head through the grates, and we have a long, like, kind of little uh, information exposition that we need to do. Sam, I've got some details on the building's infrastructure. This vent should come out directly over the war room. I'll try and laser mic the meeting from there. Good. We'll let you know when we have enough to make the Joint Chiefs happy. We cannot. But if he has control, political suicide. We have already taken the Americans. Hello. Sir, he is Admiral Otomo. Admiral? What is the meaning of this? You will repeal the post-war constitution. You will order the immediate militarization of Japan. Who? Return control of our oh, nation. That's why I'm worried. This is impossible. Even if we repeal the constitution, the Emperor would never. The Emperor will do what the military tells him. I am not an unreasonable man. These efforts will take time. I have faith in your honor and prudence. So I give you 96 hours. 96? The people will never allow it. If in four days these demands are not met, I will initiate the launch of a North Korean ballistic missile and sacrifice a Japanese city of my choosing. I grip this will kill millions. But it will steal the will of the people if your appeals cannot. For the sake of your honor and for the sake of Japan, I plead with you. Force my hand in this matter. That's it. He caught the signal. My God. Good God, Fisher. That confirms it. Otomo has been manipulating the Japanese government the entire time. At least they're not sanctioning his actions. What's the next step? How do we stop Otomo? If we're lucky, we might not have to. What do you mean? Grim? I'm worried about that general, Fisher. He's been awfully quiet working on his laptop. Access it from here. Let's see what he's planning. Will do. What are our options? Can we retake the command center? Affirmative. Put Ronan in position. Waiting for the word. Ronan, uh, you, you are go. I'll repeat. You are go. Affirmative. Ronan! Oh, come in! Ronan! The Admiral again, sir. Admiral? We... Fool! You waste your time to scheme like a dog. If you are unable to act honorably, then I will force you to act. You will not be able to deny the demands of the people after North Korea destroys one of our cities. You will know which one when it is annihilated. We are doomed. We cannot do that. We cannot tell the Americans. It cannot fail. He has lost his mind. Good Lord.
Tomo is going to launch a North Korean missile at his own country. What's the time frame? Could be hours, could be minutes. Get down there and destroy his servers. What about extraction? If you can't take out those servers before Otomo forces a launch, there won't be any reason to extract. And if I do take out the servers? We'll make that part up as we go. That's half a plan if I've ever heard one. Once you're exiting here, you're going to want to... This is a very tricky shot, as you'll see. I'll miss one time, but then we'll get on the second one. Make sure you save right before this point because it can be very frustrating. This is the only way you're going to be able to do this if you do not want to be perceived. If you don't mind being slightly seen, then you can drop down that area to the right of when you or to the left of when you exit. He'll not see you. He'll hear something, but you're still 100% good to go. Just get out of there and move on and then continue this way. However, you can OCP this light from there. It's very tricky to get and it will take you a few times and then we can exit towards the elevator and then we'll take it down and then head on into the new section again you want to get up against a wall though because you never know where these guys are going to be it just so happens that they're pointing in that direction so we're good to go into the elevator make it go all the way down to the very bottom floor i just got off the horn with the joint chiefs i'm lifting the non-lethal mission parameter fifth freedom with everyone except otomo you're kidding me we need to capture him alive his profile is pretty clear he won't lie to a war crimes tribunal in the face of the evidence Bend his sense of honor. You need him to take responsibility so the rest of Japan is off the hook with North Korea. Exactly. If Otomo dies, we're right back at square one. Bring him in breathing. All right, so we have our new objective. What's going to happen here is the elevator is going to stop, and then you need to go through the little grating in the floor and just kind of uh, head down and keep going. Sam will automatically kind of attach to the the ledges whenever he drops past them you don't need to press any buttons uh, it does it pretty much automatically and then from that point follow what I do while um, uh, you're heading into the next section this parts the next parts are pretty easy especially not to be seen uh, they're not as difficult as you might originally think Fisher North Korea just contacted NORAD and the president they report that they've lost control of a launch facility they can't abort, and they're not sure that they can destroy the missile on time. How long? They say three minutes until it's away. I think I can reach the server in time. Hurry up! Here, all you're going to want to do is you're on a time period, but you've got plenty of time. Just stay behind here until they get set. Notice how there is a lot of um, remote explosives right here. So what you want to do is equip your pistol. That way you can move the fastest while maintaining a slow enough speed to not actually hit those. No one notices the door open and you're good to go. Obviously stay underneath these uh, because you don't want to be, you know, hit the lasers. And uh, pretty much when you get to the next room, we're going to immediately head to the right and stay away. There's two guards that are in the next room and they will not see you as long as you stay uh, pretty much to the right. And even though I save here thinking that, you know, maybe I'll mess up the first time, but from here on out, I mean, I don't mess up at all. It's just, it's a lot more simpler than you might think as long as you take it slow and stick all the way to the right. You'll see that there's a turret that is coming back and forth on that little top thing there that you need to kind of uh, pay attention to sometimes. But uh, if you stay the route that I do, you're going to bypass all the guards that are right here and uh, none's the wiser. Make sure you land soft. Now, this is where you're going to get your bonus objective. So not only do you need to plant the explosives, but you also need to use the computer. A note is that uh, the computer will not set itself off if you mess up. Or should I say, if you don't do anything before the time expires. It's when you hit something and do the wrong one, that's when it'll mess up. So keep that in mind, as you can do this infinitely as long as you don't hit anything. They say 60 seconds until it's away. Good thinking, Fisher. Any line on what's going on in this place can only help. Absolutely. All right, so now we set the charges. Now you're going to go back the same way, go underneath that little area again, and then you'll be able to detonate at the last possible point. Once you do so, more guards are going to come into the area, so that's why you want to be down here when you do it. And you'll be able to bypass them all and then head to the, uh, the last part of the mission, which is pretty easy. God, Fisher. That aborted the launch. Yeah, but I think it woke up the neighbors. Get through them, Fisher. Then bring in Otomo alive. My pleasure. 
as you can see, you're bypassing them all. And you're one stealthy, uh, <laughs> stealthy Sam Fisher, aren't you? So go here, we're going to listen to a conversation, and then we're going to head in and save him. Say tomato. Americans always turning to their jokes when their hearts are full of fear. And you should be afraid. I may be defeated, but I am a man, and my ideas are stronger than men. You may even prevent this war, American, but the dragon has awoken, and he will not be so easily sedated. Now what? I think someone is taking himself a bit too seriously. We can't afford to let him die, Fisher. Get in there and stabilize him. Fast. Sure, he's stable, but we still have to get him out of there. You're going to have to blast your way out. We're over a hundred feet underwater. You're not pressurized, Fisher. It will be a shock, but you won't get the bends. Next time, you're going on the mission, and I'm making up the crazy plan. And that's literally it. You just do this. You want to make sure you back up enough to um, not be, you know, hit by the blast or whatever, and... You're 100% good to go, ladies and gents. You've just completed Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. 100% the entire game. Congratulations. Especially with our challenging, or the way that we made it even more challenging than it normally is. So I really do hope you guys enjoyed the walkthrough, but let's check out how we did here at the very end. Tomo, former head of the Japanese Information Self-Defense Force, made a surprise confession today on the witness stand at the Hague War Crimes Trial. Otomo openly admitted conspiring to instigate war between the Koreas and the United States, claiming that the... In other news, China's ambassador to the United States, Long Dan, received the Nobel Peace Prize today for his efforts in defusing the Korean conflict. President Bowers today addressed the nation following the crisis that brought us to the brink of war. Finally, I want to take a moment to thank those unsung heroes in the intelligence community who may very well have saved our nation and the world from certain disasters. Thank you, Mr. President. The boss seems happy. How about that raise? They're cutting us back. You'll have to settle for a vacation. <laughs> as you'll see here mission completes only one bonus objective when you do that towards the end and there you go see was down the line 22 minutes seven seconds we're going to click on overall then we'll be able to get an overall uh, summary of every single mission that we've done other than that thank you so much for watching hopefully you all enjoyed it's been my pleasure to bring the walkthrough to you guys you're awesome be safe Thanks again for watching. Moving on with Double Agent Now, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Bitches.